What's going on, awesome people? Durud Bar Shoma, and welcome to the 12 hour live stream that is for the celebration of Noruz 1402. My goodness gracious, we're about to start an endeavor of about 12 hours together. I hope that you have your phones charged. I hope that you're uh, surrounded with family and loved ones. As I'm saying, phone charge. I'm charging my own phone right now because it's going to be a long day. I got my Lava Shack ready. Shout out to our friends at LavaShack.com. I have my chai ready so we can drink together. It's actually cold Persian iced tea, but you know, you get the, the gist. Um, I'm grateful to have all of you here on this special day. Um, first and foremost, uh, I hope that you're truly surrounded with your favorite people. Uh, your loved ones, your parents, your children, your siblings. Ruishun Shad, Dusanike, Vahanavadaike, Nisan, Bahamun. But they are with us with uh, their energy, with their souls. Uh, I'm definitely missing my father today more than any time in my entire life. It's my first Noruz without him, so it's difficult for me, my sister, my mom. But that's why I dedicate this entire program to my father, Paviza Hushmant. Um, so definitely, let's take a moment to just reflect on uh, the special souls that we've lost um, that are not with us here um, in flesh. So I would love to just begin with a moment of silence for all those that we've lost and all those that we've lost in the revolution for the past six months. The more than 500 innocent souls, the children that we've lost. And so let's just think about them before we get this program started as we celebrate the new year. And let's also keep in mind the more than 20,000 people that have been arrested that are in the, in, the, in, the, in the horrendous conditions of the prisons of Iran. All these individuals that have sacrificed their life, um, their well-being, all for freedom and for basic human rights. So let's start with a moment of silence in their honor. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome again. Uh, the celebration of Noruz, just in case you guys were wondering why in the world I decided to uh, put this 12-hour program together. Well, first and foremost, as you can tell, I'm still trying to get comfortable and in the right form here. Um, we all know that this is not a regular Noruz. As much as, you know, there's so many beautiful elements of Noruz, as much as we try to celebrate Chasha and Basuri, as much as we're looking forward to Sisa Vedad, the reality of the matter is that there's no way that this is um, going to be a normal one. So I, uh, I felt a few days ago that the only way that I can feel as though that we're keeping the conversation about Iran alive, that we can continue to remember that there's a revolution happening, that there's people that are dying and being tortured and blinded and raped and, and kidnapped and, and beaten and uh, threatened, that we have to make sure that on this day that we remember them. And the best way that uh, me and my team at United Conquer could figure out how we could do that, it was going to be with um, having a, a live stream all day. And so I figured that uh, we get to do all that, bring attention to what needs to be, you know, spotlighted, uh, and at the same time, spend it with, uh, with our community, uh, a beautiful community that I've had the privilege of, uh, of being a part of, and, and the love and the kindness that all of you have been um, projecting towards me. Um, I just felt like this was the way that I wanted to spend Noruz, and I'm fortunate enough to have my family around too. So throughout the entire day, I'll be doing little breaks here and there. I'll be walking away as I have some amazing fellow Uniters stepping in as contributors and co-hosts of this program. And so at this moment, uh, I want to introduce a couple of those special ladies. They're going to be coming on to briefly introduce themselves in case you don't know them, but they will be coming on throughout the entire program. They are Sare Kazemi, they're Mona Hariri, Mariam, uh, Mariam uh, Aronson, and also Shiva Saber, as well as Paris Mansuri, she'll be joining a little bit later. So let's start just briefly welcoming these fabulous ladies. And Mariam, they're going to be coming on for a second too. So just help me welcome these Shirzans that I have the pleasure of spending all of Noruz with. What's up, Sarah June? What's going on, Iman John? Noruz at Pitta Pish Mubarak. Happy New Year. 
photos of Hoya Tan Pisha Pisha Hora. I get to see. Is my whole head cut off now that you came on? Just the tad. Your your head. Yeah. yeah. All, right. All right. Well, here we go. Once once additional guests come on, this is what happens. In the meantime, uh, can you can you introduce yourself for those who don't know you yet? Yes, happy to. Hi everyone. My name is Sare Kazemi. I've had the great fortune of working with an amazing group of individuals that truly care so much about Iran and our culture and preserving our history. And over the last five, six months, I have learned more about my country, my culture, my history than I ever dreamed of doing. And uh, a lot of that was made possible by. Iman, um, who really truly brought us all together, despite all odds and despite tremendous hardships, uh, he doesn't give up. He's like the machine, the little <laughs> not so little bunny that keeps on going. But yeah, I'm I'm a mother of one. I'm a, a, a daughter to my parents, Moshaba Kazemi and, and Nahib Mogatam, and I'm married to Orang Mutfi. And this is my family and my priority. And I'm happy to be here today to celebrate uh, with my virtual family with you guys. Love it. It's great to have you here, Sarjan. Let's see who the other ladies are that are joining. We got the yeah. sisters, Mona and Mariam. They're going to be come on to, coming on too. All right. Hi, Daddy. My dad is on. Oh, nice. Dudu Basham Ray Kazemi. Looking forward to having him on for some poetry later on. Hi, Mariam. Uh, hi, Mona. Jun. Hi, Mariam. Jun. Hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> I love it. What a beautiful sight. Look at these amazing shoes on. Good, good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good Hi, happy Nowruz. 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 So, so uh, Mariam and Monajun, why don't you guys do a brief introduction? Uh, actually, you know what? Most people already know you, Monajun. Let's start with Mariam. She is the sister that I'm so grateful that you brought on to the United to be more involved. Mariam, Jun, please give a little uh, background about yourself. Okay, so I'm Mariam, and I um, I live in South Florida, and I actually I work in HR. I'm an HR director, uh, like Mona. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> so um, um, yeah, so I wanted to help out more, so I asked to join the Uniters, and I'm happy to be here. I, I really want to contribute and help, you know, our people, and, and, and also on. Honestly, to show my kids who are half Americans that this is a huge deal for us, and and it is, and because they see how much involved we are. Awesome. Well, well I it took you a little while to join us officially, but you unofficially been a uniter <laughs> since day one, and it was great always seeing you yeah. and your whole family coming out, and uh, you know your your American husband. He's been so supportive during this whole thing. Uh, seen him so many times. He was at our Bakhtar event on Saturday. And it's just great to have non-Iranian significant others that care so much about their their, their husband or wives uh, nationalities and fighting the fight with us shoulder to shoulder. So exactly. great to have you on board, Mariam. Thank, Thank you so much you. for helping produce today's program. Uh, Monojo, go ahead and give a little intro on your behalf before we introduce Orly June, my ghost host at 1130. Okay. Uh, everyone knows me. I'm uh, in a United from the beginning. And, uh, I, I mean, to me, it's my duty to and I give up until we and our people have been freedom as we do here. That's and to declare that I am happy helping out a lot in the background of uh, my United. <laughs> Mona, are you in some kind of tunnel? What's going on? Uh, I don't know what's happening. Yeah, you're, it's a lot of echo. It's, oh, it's, I don't know. It's, it's maybe it's the room that I'm in. Yeah. I, need to I'm, switch I'm, I'm, I almost want to send a rescue team to go get you <laughs> wherever you're from, you know? So when you come on later on, let's just make sure that the, the audio is perfect. Uh, but yeah, so, so how about each of you share with me, we'll start with Sadr again. What are you most excited and looking forward to on this particular Nodules? Yeah, I'm, I think I'm most excited about showing my daughter that it is possible to persevere during the hardest times and to keep the best of of us at the forefront, right? In terms of our culture and our, our history of persevering through challenge in any way we can. We're survivors by nature. And I look forward to showing her because she's had full visibility into what's been going on in the revolution. 
to show that nobody can get in the way of our work and us celebrating the best of us as Iranians. Are we going to actually have, because we were thinking about having children and parents and grandparents hopping on and sharing different perspectives. Uh, are we going to have Sabo on later on? Has um, that been confirmed? Um, that's the goal. Right. That's the goal. That's our aim. So we're, we're, we're moving that way. I can't control that little one. Yeah. But that's no. the goal. I know. Maybe, 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 maybe. maybe appearances when I don't want her to. So maybe if I tell her she's not allowed, then you might actually see her. Just, yeah. just tell her it's a one-on-one -on -one with me. Don't tell her that other people are watching. Exactly. Exactly. But it would be great to have lovely Saba Jun there. She, she's been at so many protests. It's really interesting to see, you know, how, how the children have been handling this revolution. I mean, it's, it's pretty, um, it's pretty, um, I wish they didn't have to experience it, you know, but now that they are experiencing, it's great to expose it to them and, and, and talk to them about it, educate them, you know, and, and then also definitely hear from their side. So what about you, Mariam Joan? Do you also have a, a little one? And what, what are you looking forward to this? Uh, yeah, I do have two little ones and, and they are, you know, th I, I wish that I could have spent the Nuru's with my family in Iran. Uh, I have actually never done that. I, if I have, I don't remember because I, I was not, not raised there. So, um, it's, it, it would have been a different feeling and different, you know, ex experience. So, but, you know, we do as much as we can as a family to keep the tradition going on. But uh, yeah, that's what I, I, I want to show them what's important to us. And, you know, um, and, um, you know, our tradition, basically, what it means. Yeah, it's, uh, um, it's very sad and frustrating to have gone our entire lives without celebrating Nuru's yeah. in our own homeland. Mm -hmm. You haven't, I haven't. Sara, Mona, have either of you? I mean, I've been there, but I don't recall it. I was six when we yeah. left, so I really got no memories, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean like, people who have spent Nuru's and Sizabadad and Charsham Basuri in mm -hmm. Iran, especially the good days before the, re the first revolution, you know, just the way that they describe Nuru's, like, it's just like two weeks of holidays, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I, I, wanted, I wanted to experience that and hopefully we will soon. Uh, Monojan, what, what are you most excited about this Nodus, given the circumstances? Oh, well, yeah, exactly. Given the circumstances. I mean, I'm usually the one in the family that um, does the half scene. I grow my own sabze and like bring everybody to my house and I try to cook, but my mom takes over usually cooks most of it and then uh but we, we get together and i make sure that we're together but you know if i'm gonna be honest i this year has been very rough i didn't even put out a half scene it, it's very tough i am conflicted with myself about what to do um but i'm hopeful and i'm praying for a free new year that's what I want for everybody. That's what I want. And Iman, I think that's what the beauty of this conversation is that we're all in very different places, as you can see, kind of like, honestly, we didn't even get, to ask. you should answer the question too, but we're all in different places. And it's really important that this conversation happens so that we know, like, you know, you're not alone in how Mona might not be alone in how she's feeling. I'm sure there's going to be so many others. And if you're feeling that way, you know, let Mona know because she needs to know she's not alone in that. I'm sure many are experiencing that. Some of us may be more, you know, optimistic than others. And it's so important that we know that we're not in a silo. So I really appreciate this conversation for that purpose. Yes. And speaking of which, uh, for those of you that are tuning in, please feel free to comment, um, share your thoughts, you know, especially if you're not around um, your immediate family today consider this uh, live stream as an opportunity for you to uh, all be a part of our, our family right here. So anybody that's joining us throughout the entire program today, you, you are certainly an extension of our family and we're doing this so that nobody feels alone and so that everybody feels that they have a safe space to come and, and be vulnerable and, um, and just you know, reflect on the, the good and, and the sad things that are, that are happening right now in our, in our homeland. So. Uh, our virtual house is your virtual house, as they say. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, well, it's 1126 in just a couple of minutes. We're going to have our first of many awesome guests from around the world. Um, 
I was hoping that Shiva Saber will join us, but I guess her meeting went a little bit longer. And uh, we know that Paris Mansu is going to be introduced later on. But I just want to thank Sada, Mona, Mayam Jun. Thank you so much for being co-hosts of today's program. They'll be dropping in uh, throughout the whole program. They'll be leading certain segments while I step away for 10, 15 minutes. So I'm looking forward to, to them uh, running the show at times and taking over the wheel as I step away for some uh, quiche breaks and some uh, family <laughs> breaks. Sorry, this conversation is rated R at times, you know? <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll do our best uh, to carry forward the Iman energy when you're gone. I don't know. I don't know if we'll have it or not, but we'll do we'll it. We'll try yeah. Pretty great. We're going to have to have some Red Bull, some chai with some vodka, perhaps, to kind of make it through all the way to the end. And, and Mona Jo, I'm counting on you to uh, show some wine glasses at some point. For sure. um, but yeah, but I first of all, I just I do want to thank you all for uh, on short notice carving out some valuable time from your family time to be here. So thank you so much again for everything you guys are doing today, what you guys have been doing the last few months and what we're going to continue to do to unite Iranians in South Florida and beyond so much love to you all and see you for the see you soon, see you soon. Bye. Bye. all right so yes so our program is going to have a lot of amazing guests and i'm so glad that our first guest is is a is a really sweet 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 young lady who um captured the attention of iranians uh globally especially during the pandemic um her her instagram name is my ghost host her real name is uh, Orly El Yashar. And, you know, she, she cooks with passion and she presents certain dishes uh, with so much love and with the story behind it. And so I was like, there's no way that I can have uh, a celebration of Noru's live stream and not have this lovely friend of mine who has been blessing us with such great content. And if you've never, um, you know, stumbled upon her Instagram page, I encourage you to do so so that um, you get to know all the amazing stuff that she does to represent our culture, to represent our food, to represent our arts. And on top of that, she's just an incredibly sweet human being. And I'm, I'm bummed that I've never had a chance to meet her in person, but thank goodness for technology, we've been able to uh, build on a friendship uh, from, from quite a distance as she is in California. So even though she's opposite side of, um, of, the, of the country, we forged a great relationship, and I'm so happy to welcome her in about two minutes. Actually, you know what? She's already on, so let's not keep uh, her waiting or any of you waiting. Please help me welcome the one and only Chef Orly from the West Side. <laughs> Calling me a Hi, young lady, by the way. I appreciate it. <laughs> I am of course you so are. honored of course you are. How to... you doing? Just be a part of this. This is so cool. I love that you're doing it. Thank you. Oh, oh please. Yeah, uh, I was, I was like, I'm, so I can't have a program honestly, without Orly Jones. I so. woke up today and it was, uh, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm happy. I'm great today. Good. Good. Yeah. What are, what are you? What are you? What are you most excited for? I'm excited or happy for. for specifically today i get to go in my kitchen and i get to fill my kitchen with the smell of noru's and for me it's such a distinct <laughs> smell of the sabzi polo all the greens i have like uh, greens i have to chop which i'm not looking forward to but the smell and the feel and family <laughs> coming over tonight i'm just looking forward to just sharing today with those that I love. That's right. As, as, as a chef, uh, you know, you, you have certain senses that operate at a much higher level than average Joe's. So for those who don't know about Chef Orly and your passion for, for cooking and hosting, uh, could you kind of get, because the, the whole name, my ghost host, even the story in it by itself is pretty unique. So for those who haven't had the pleasure of, of getting course, to know you, can you just give a little uh, background? Orly. Um, I'm here in... I was going to say sunny Los Angeles, but we have a storm coming in a little bit. So, uh, I, I, I'm in rainy sport. Miami, so don't worry. So <laughs> I am in Los Angeles. Um, right. The name Ghost Host came from uh, my friends asking me to go to their house and set up their homes when they had guests or help them cook. 
So I was like a ghost writer, but I was hosting. So I'd go to their house, do everything and leave. Yeah. And so that's when it came about. I'm a licensed chef. Um, I teach. The great news this year is that I related all of my recipes into this big pile of papers that I'm going to make into a book soon. Thank you. It took five Oh my years. God, congratulations. Of I course. Operate yes, very yes. That's so, amazing. <laughs> So that's happening and I'm excited and I love talking about our culture. I love sharing and, you know, the last five months have been really heavy, but I feel like we're all doing our parts. And um, for about two months, I wasn't able to like walk into my kitchen at all. And when people posted food, I'm like, how could you, how could you even think about food? But then I found myself relying on cooking for my own which I always have and that's why I got into it and just decided that I was going to implement whatever was happening so even when I made like a bouquet of flowers I posted it with too much in the background and talked about too much so you know just doing what I love and sharing it life is short you have to do that and spread all the love you can How did you, because um, I'm sure your love for food and cooking wasn't only for Iranian stuff, but almost majority, if not all, of the content you create in some shape or form is representing the Iranian uh, elements of food. What kind of like, what's been the catalyst or the motivation to like, to tell the whole world about all the different types of uh, Iranian ingredients and dishes it's very and, organic. and all that good stuff? Um, it's something that's been embedded in me ever since I was little, like, I was the only 12-year-old listening to Moine, and my, like, I would ask for my parents to put Moine in the car, so the culture has always been a fiber, like, it's just been there, it's not, um, I'm not fabricating anything, I love Persian food, I love our culture, I love our music, I love our art, I love our people, and, you know, how could you not? I operate from that mindset of much to offer and it's so rich and it's so deep and it's so, our history is so beautiful. And so, I mean, it just happened organically, to be honest with you. When was, I was six. When was the last time you were in Iran? Wow. And do you, do you, do you remember, like, were you there you know, for Nona? You know, do, you, do you remember any part of Nona? ago. I went to this uh, clothing store with my friends and I picked up this ugly striped sweater. And I'm like, things are embedded in our subconscious. And my friend's like, put that down, that's so ugly. And I'm like, I don't know. So anyway, fast forward, I come home, we're looking through albums. It was the sweat, I wore a sweater very similar. My last note was there. I have a picture at my neighbor's house sitting next to her half scene. And so I think all this stuff with us. So even though I was there when I was six, it stayed. And I, in the house, I put up my half scene. It just makes me happy. I put it in my, by my front door. I make sure my kids see it. I, you know, so annoyingly every day. And so it's important for me, for my kids to see it and have it be a part of them. And I give them, you know, the Jewish guilt. And I say, when I die, you better do this at your house. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, by the way, there, there's, can I get some response from people that are um, in the in the chat? Is is me or Orly's audio or video, is it coming? Okay, okay I'm reading a couple of comments that, um, that maybe it's your video or my video. I just want to kind of hear from people let us know how we sound or how the video is yeah maybe one of us need to switch are you on wi-fi or legion or is it on? you're clear to yeah? me okay let me just okay okay yeah actually you are to me too but i saw maybe. a couple comments i wanted to... maybe it was just temporary so um so tell me about um what it, what it what like um what is the first thing that you would do when iran is free and we go back to Iran. I'd love to kind of like hear it what says, your vision It says, Orly's audio is not very good. You're is. breaking up. 
I'm breaking up. Huh. How about this? Can you can you swipe down and get off Let's... Wi-Fi and maybe just through regular um, data, it might be better? Audio. Sometimes, sometimes data works better than Wi-Fi. Don't ask me why or how. Although somebody just said they're both good, video and sound. So maybe it's just them, not us. <laughs> Let's see. Like to me, your video is actually some people. Okay. All right. I mean, this this is what we're gonna get IG live. But anyways, um, but yeah. So your first thing to do when you go back to Iran, I'm My always curious what everyone's like wishes is to walk the bazaar. <laughs> That's such a chef thing to do, of course. Yeah, I, I want to smell all of the spices. I want to buy from a dealer in the bazaar. I want to experience the bazaar. What's, what's, you know, what, I have what to tell city? you, my whole family, we come from a line, we're from Hamadan there but okay. of course you i would go to tehran because you have to experience that that's where i was born love, love it what about some noru's wishes that you would like to share with our viewers today uh you know we, we we all know that we've gone through the most turbulent of last six months but hopefully we're turning a new leaf so what are some of the wishes and hopes for iran hopes for iran is for like people to not to feel discouraged we're going to feel bumps. We're going to have bumps where things quiet down and then they're going to get loud again. And when things are quiet, I don't want anyone to feel discouraged. And when people say the revolution is over, I'm so upset because it's not. So my wish is for people to hang on, keep making, oh, there, yeah. I don't know what's happening. I'm sorry. But if you can hear me. People not to feel discouraged yeah. and keep making noise. That's that's my wish. Don't feel discouraged. Even when you're down and you think it's done, it's not. Keep going. Keep keep screaming. Keep posting. Keep saying their names. Keep doing doing all of that. Um, it's not over. Yeah. No. I I, I fully agree with you. Like when I um. I just feel like it's a sign of giving up. Like the moment that you just say, Nadi Genemisha, that that's it. You've lost hope and we cannot lose hope, you know? And like whenever, when you still see people fighting inside of Iran, even if one person is being arrested or tortured or, or killed, that's that means that the revolution is still happening, that people are still willing to risk their life for, for that freedom. So for me, yes, I know they, they think that there's not hundreds of thousands of people on the street. But there, there are still right now people that are willing to risk their lives for freedom. And if they can do that degree of risk and sacrifice, then the, the least that we can do is continue to, Stop to create silent. content. Stop, Stop posting nonsense. Do, do the nonsense. Do the food. Do the parties. Do all of it. But also <laughs> do the important stuff. Yeah. Don't say nothing. Because right. I know we've talked about it before. I, it's such a shame. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I feel like the moment you tell people that, hey, there's a big party, big concert, all of a sudden you get everyone's attention. But when you're kicking and screaming and asking people to share stuff about Iran, both. all of a do sudden both. you kind of see a, uh, yeah. Your party. Yes, but when both. you go to exactly. your party, right. the next post, say, hey, free too much. That one hashtag makes a difference. Do it. It's not a I big agree. deal for you to take a break from your life and give from yourself to others. It's, it's, we have to. One last thing that I'd like to hear from you is what do you do when you are um, down or when you're um, not feeling well and you are perhaps discouraged at times, like what do you do to kind of like lift yourself up, to motivate yourself, to kind of get you out um, of like the dark Lean days? into what makes you happy. And for me, 
what makes me happy are my children, my husband, and I lean into them. I have their picture on my, uh, and I just stare at them and I'm like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay for them. Lean into just what feeds your soul and my family feeds my soul. So I, I take energy from them. And when I see them, I'm like, we're going to be okay. Yeah. Gratitude. Absolutely. And then the last thing is that when you do have your husband and your children and you are so grateful for them and you've been given the task of making your favorite dish, what is Chef Orly making for that special occasion to give the people that you love so much an I'll incredible like dining friends, experience? So. <laughs> well, that's their problem. What's no, your favorite dish? I love dish? <laughs> and And I've become, uh, you know, Happy. I've been known, now I'm known as the eggplant tachin creator. And so I think when I make that, everybody has that like, <gasps> moment and when i bring that out and i see their faces that's soul food for me how beautiful it is that's for me i'm like all right that's what feeds my soul i love it. well ho hopefully one day you soon i'll have visit. the honor of enjoying your attaching in person i know next time next time i'm going to come for a few more days so that i can actually see some of the can i just take a moment yourself. to acknowledge um, you and to say thank you yeah. to you. You have been one of the uh, main characters in this, in this diaspora making noise. And I wanna say thank you to you because you are working so hard and it does not go unnoticed. You are such a light and you're so, thank you. Thank you. you're here for the women. You're here for everybody. And heart is something else. So. Love you. Merci. I appreciate that very much. Uh, you're going to see all the incredible people that help make all this stuff happen. There, there, there are so many uh, really incredible human beings that have become my family. And so we're, Thank you to we're all doing of you. all of Thank this you. together. But I do appreciate you. Uh, you yeah, I know this. producing Thank stuff you. like this is very difficult and how much time goes into everything. So thank you. <laughs> I know. We're Appreciate it. And, and we're going to be inviting you to an upcoming episode of Countdown very soon, the, the program that we do every Wednesday night. Uh, we, always have, we always have a special guest, somebody that has been using their platform, such as you have, to raise awareness while also sharing your talents and, and creativity. So stay tuned to that invitation, and we're going to have you on hopefully one of these Wednesday evenings. I wish you and your family the best of no ruses. And hopefully next year, we'll be in the bazaars of Tehran you just know, never know. <laughs> you just never know. So had we told you where you were going to be today, it would, it would mentally, be last year, you would have never fathomed it. So you know what? Good things are going to happen. No, for sure. Yeah. No, this is Mubarak. Inshallah, inshallah. Okay. Thank you so much for joining. Bye-bye. All right. So really grateful for Orly June joining us. Uh, if you... Uh, don't follow her. Please follow her. My ghost host. She's amazing. And uh, if you're into cooking, then there is no better person than her um, to kind of get some recipes. And I'm excited to hear that she's working on her book. That's going to be an amazing cookbook. You can um, count on that. Uh, so in just a couple of minutes, actually very soon, we're going to have Massa Townsend joining us. I'm very honored to have her. She's been a force to be reckoned with. Uh, in this entire revolution, if you've been, it's kind of hard to have been online and not come across some of her passionate, uh, empowering uh, videos. Some might call it controversial, but I call it the truth. And so she's, um, she's definitely unapologetic. And I respect individuals that stand by their word. And um, hopefully she'll be joining us very soon. So I'm just waiting for her to, let me just kind of check my messages. By the way, I'm going to be very khodumuni throughout this whole program just because we have so many people coming on and coming off. So I apologize if I'm looking at um, my, my, my phone and my laptop. So just stay tuned. In the meantime, tell me where you're joining from. If there's some new people that I've never met before, I would like to um, virtually welcome you to the celebration of Nowruz. My name is Iman Hushman, and I'm looking forward to spending 
the next ten and a half hours with each and every one of you. Um, good morning. All right, I just want to make sure that I did have the correct time. Oh my God, I'm an idiot. I said, oh wait, 12, 15. See, this is how you make mistakes. Um, all right, so ladies from, my, from Unite and Conquer, uh, if anyone would like to hop on real quick, I made a little mistake. I thought that Master was joining at 11.45, but she's actually joining at 12.15, so I'm the dummy. But, um, but yeah, where are you guys joining for? I see San Diego, I see Los Angeles, I see... Iranian Nose, that's Farid. Um, he's been doing an incredible job with Iranian Nose. He's going to be on later on at, let me tell you what time, at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. We're going to have the founder of Iranian Nose. Uh, you know, it's really been an incredible uh, platform that he's been um, creating. But yeah, so let's see who we have here. Okay, Sardar June is going to come on. I made a little boo-boo with, with, the, with the scheduling. So here we are. We have Sara John. Hi, Sara. How are you? Hi, Manjan. I'm well. How are you? Uh, good, good, good. Yeah, so I, I, I made a mistake. I put the wrong time for a master. I thought she was coming at 11.45, but she's actually coming at 12.15. So, um, okay, the beauty of doing things live. Yeah, but I saw a message, and I, thought, I think that you did say you wanted to come on a little bit earlier, too. So I think this is what they call this, Matt. Yeah, let, <laughs> let's make it work. I wanted to switch. My dad is coming. He's on his way, but they're coming from therapy. I didn't want them to rush. So we'll yeah. make it work until they come. Okay, fantastic. And uh, if I, Mona I, and Mariam are available, we can we can have them join too. Yeah. And if have they the are, conversation if, we intended. If they are, they can go ahead and hop on. In the meantime, I see Alba for president. Alba June, I don't know if you see this, but I messaged you. Maybe you missed my message. If at any point today you'd like to hop on and give some notice wishes, uh, message me and I'll tell you which time slot that we have available. Uh, Orly Jun, thank you for the kind words. Appreciate you hopping in. Sorry, have you, did you know about Orly beforehand? I did. I'm actually a big fan because I love her recipes. I, I didn't follow her, unfortunately, prior to this, but I'm so grateful to have met her and to, I can tell from her like free candid conversation that she's the type of person I imagined when I was watching her story. So. She's yeah. a great energy. I was really happy to see her. I, I thank her for joining. Definitely. And it's just, you know, it's really amazing how uh, different people with different uh, backgrounds, careers, specialties, they've been doing their part to bring attention to the revolution. You know, and she's been able to do it through food and the incredible content that she creates in the kitchen. So it's pretty cool. Love her. She's I an amazing it. person. All right, ladies, welcome back. It's been a long time. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so what segment were you guys going to have? And, you know, I'll, I'll step away for a few minutes to, for you to have it. But what is the segment about? Yeah. So as you guys heard in our introductions, both Mona and Mariam June are moms to beautiful children. And I realize that I'm so lucky to have this 15 minutes of time with them because we're all in a very similar scenario in that we're raising Iranian or Iranian American children um, and wanting to preserve our culture in an already very strong dominated culture in, in the US, right? And so I don't know if you're like me, but I, I have been trying to work hard every year. And let me just back up one minute. I myself have been raised here and I was raised here since I was six. And because my parents wanted me to be integrated into the culture, they immersed me into everything. Not only did they continue Noru's, but they were like, here's Christmas, here's Easter, here's Halloween, here's St. Patty's Day. Here's everything good and happy that makes you feel transitioned smoothly. Here's at it. So I literally have experienced everything um, regardless of religion. Um, and because my parents wanted me to do that. And certainly I love Christmas. I love Thanksgiving. I love Easter. I don't even, you know, it, I don't really see a difference. I see it as like very happy things that we should all celebrate because life is hard enough, right? But as I'm getting older, I'm realizing, wow, I don't want my daughter to like be so looking forward to Christmas, but not have that same feeling as it relates to Noru's. So I would love to have a conversation with you, beautiful mom, to tell me like, do you share this shame challenge or how have you overcome it? Because I see you're, you know, like Isabella is very much into the Iranian culture and I'd love to learn from you and, and, and have that conversation. And I'll, I'll step away for a few minutes, but enjoy that conversation. I'll be back. Yeah. yeah. So well, maybe we'll start with Mona. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Isabella, I mean, it's easier because she's older. And since we started this when she was born. So we've been doing it as long as our children have been alive. So um, she understands it more. And I guess that's what it is. But it's funny because even though uh, she's so much more into the Iranian culture and she's been helping a lot with the revolution, this, the, the rallies and all the things that we've done. I feel like she's still a kid. So there's days that she's in it and there's days that she's like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like True. I was talking to her about it, about no rules and what it means and all that stuff. And she's like, oh, I don't really remember. And then I'm like, but you don't remember what it stands for? And then she's like, oh this and then and then so we start talking about it she's like yeah, yeah now i remember and and so you know they're kids and and it's gonna be like that and i i never force her into liking anything i like same as our parents did for us we're doing the same but trying to integrate the the iranian culture because it's very important for us because we don't want them to lose it um growing up here so it's just it's it's just important to just keep it going and make it fun so that yeah. they they have good memories from it definitely, you know definitely, definitely. Uh, to I me know that's that, what's important absolutely i know it has a lot to do with us you know like i realized very quickly me growing up i really looked forward to christmas i loved it and uh, you yeah. know when it came to noru's it was um, i hate to say it but sometimes it was like an afterthought or my mom would put the half scene um, so let me ask you, Mariam Joan, what, what has been your experience, especially with a non-Iranian, um, you know, uh, spouse and managing your children? How have you, what have been the choices you've made? There's no judgment here, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I was younger, I didn't care too much. But when I had my own kids, I feel like we were starting like we have to do it every year just to you know, show them that oh, we start more and we start like, just to keep the tradition of, alive and so that they know more about their culture because it's really sad that they don't get to you know how uh, me and my husband we can go and visit his family which we're doing today actually we will visit his family in another state or we can go and see my family we were raised in sweden uh, you know in the summer but we can never go back to like we have not been able to run and you know i want to show them that that part of our you know our um, our culture or you know being yeah the, the best we can with whatever we have but you know um, is is I mean I'm is I'm happy that my uh, my American husband he's willing he goes to every protest he's like he does everything that you know we uh, we do and if we have a celebration he comes every year but uh, you know it's not I, I just wish I, I mean I we I hope. I'm hoping that next year we're going to Iran and celebrate No Rooster. <laughs> yeah, because you're saying it's not the same. You don't get immersed into it the way you would. Here we have to create the environment. There it exists. So you can mm -hmm. just enjoy it with your children. I totally understand that. So speaking of, I know, I know this year I completely understand and respect the fact that, you know, Mona, you didn't put a half scene. But perhaps think back to prior years where it was, a little bit more enjoyable or a lot more enjoyable for you but like how did you how did you teach Isabella about because I love that the half scene has each each thing stands for something and that it actually aligns with the springtime which is all about rejuvenation and new life and new you know new things happening and a clean new slate I love that about our new year landing on that you know spring equinox rather than just like a random day of the calendar year but how did you talk to Isabella about, you know, what the half scene actually stands for and the meaning of it when you introduced it to her the first time? Well, at first of all, I got I, I bought a book from Amazon, a children's book about yeah. Nauru's from Amazon. That is beautiful. And we read, read it every year. I even put it on my half scene and oh, wow. we read it every year about what it's about because it's 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 once a year it's hard, it's easy for them to forget as soon as it's over you know and i also make sure that isabella is involved in 
making the sabze with me. I like, mm-hmm. she gets to water it. Um, you know, we've killed a few, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> but, God, but you know, so but, but, but we, we're trying and we're doing it like from scratch. So, and also like it starts with Char Besuri. I tell her what the fire means and like that we want a healthy new year and, and explain. And he, she has to say, um, and it's so cute with the American accent that she has. It's, I mean, I love it. So that's, that's something that like, like you said, we have to create it, even if we don't have a place and, and South Florida is not a big Iranian community. Even if we don't have a place where, um, people are celebrating Charge and Besuri. We put up, put out candles on the floor and we jump over the candles and we make it our own. So whatever we can do to um, to celebrate, we, we do it. How about you, Sarajun? So first, shout out to Kababi Cafe because they were one of our first sponsors for Countdown when we had it and on a YouTube Live. And they did host a... Um, Charshan Basuri and uh, events, which, by the way, Hamid Shidel had held off on doing any of that over the past several uh, months of this revolution, has been a big supporter of, you know, being respectful of, of what's happening in Iran. But, you know, he felt yes. like it's now time to kind of look forward and, and wanted to celebrate that. So he did host an event. I believe one of our Uniters, Sam, was actually yeah. there. I didn't get to the yes. Shout out to him for keeping the culture alive and making that possible for some of us in South Florida who attended. I think there was a sold out event, but absolutely um, same. Mona June. I feel like Miguel over the this this New Year's for me. Ironically, you know, for you it was it's sad and it's very sad for me. But it was like it empowered me to know like I can create that environment for Saba because I have now brought so much of Iran into the forefront of her mind over the last several months, and she knows about what's going on um, fully. And so I feel like it's important to also show her the positive side of things. So this year, for the first time, I've always put a half scene since I've been, you know, on my own. But this year, for the first time, I tried my own sabze from from uh, mosh or mung bean, and I <laughs> I was able to save like this much of it and put it on. <laughs> there was That's a, something, it counts. that came out. <laughs> So I'm happy to know you've killed a few, but I, I feel like I'm still growing and evolving to answer your question in terms of being a parent and understanding how important it is to like make this make this experience for Sabo because I she's always known it, but I, I'm positive she looks forward to Christmas and things like this more so than she does to New Year. But this year yeah. to know that this year is a little bit different. And so I'm trying to lean into that a bit more, but it definitely takes some work. Yeah. No, I love the po- posit- positivity and that you're looking at it from a different light. I love that. Thank um, you. I, I'm going to call out that my best friend is on also the live. She just joined and she has two children as well. And she is like the queen of making everything happen for them. She won't admit to it. She says, I have filtered lenses on when I look, when I look at her. <laughs> But she can comment. I won't say her name, but Baraya Azadi is on, and she is amazing. And she also does a lot. And she is also from Sweden, so she carries forward the Swedish, you know, Christmas new, uh, traditions, the Iranian, <laughs> Noru's things, and Christmas for her kids. I love her for that. I just have to shout oh, her out. See? That's, ah, ha, ha, ha. Why we don't you say her? Why don't you say her name? Because it's say her a name. public account. That's my googly. That's oh, okay. I okay. her do it. But okay. she's amazing. She knows it. She but, doesn't want to comment. But, but she knows it. That's one of the things being also raised in Sweden and then living here. Our children are so confused. That's right. I yeah. mean, it's hilarious because. Uh, yesterday, we were having some um, Lava Shack from LavaShack.com. Thank you very much. Thank you. Amazing Lava Shack. Thank you for bringing us back to Iran. And uh, we were having some, and Mariam's daughter goes, oh, this is candy from Sweden. And we're like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> and my daughter goes, that's Lava Shack. I'm like, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, and we know. Thank you very much. She got confused. With the, you're all confused all the time. You don't know which one is Sweden, which one is Iran. <laughs> <laughs> that, I remember when my son was like three years old or two and a half, we were in the store and we were buying 
groceries and I said something funny to him so that nobody else uh, understood. But like, why do you speak in Spanish to me? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's definitely challenging, but when they get older, they'll appreciate being multicultural and oh, yeah. informed about, you know, emo, you know, cultural sensitivity and such. And so it's 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 a challenge, but it'll benefit them in the future. And I'm sure you both ladies are doing amazing, amazing jobs to kind of raise Iranian Americans to be the best of both cultures. I know it. And exactly. speaking of so, which, we so also have you. Idiot. Oh, thank you, Azizam. We have Hedia Seperi on the line. She's, well, she was on. I don't know if she is now. I can't tell with these IG things. But she is a super mom of <laughs> oh, two, yeah. and she does it all. The other day, she made an entire New Year spread while working, while taking Zoom calls, was and she posted it. She, and I was like... Was she also running a marathon probably, while doing it? Because I, I wouldn't be surprised, because that's what she does. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how she... She does what she does, honestly. Exactly. I don't either. I don't either. But how about, how about other people that are on the, on the live? Comment. Do you have children? Do you, how do you manage raising Iranian-American children in the United States? Are we seeing anyone comment? Have you guys seen anything? No. No, not yet. It's Oh, Google said her name, Nazli. Nazli, <laughs> thank you. I didn't want to. I don't want to call you out, but <laughs> yes, we know you're a wonderful mom too, Nazli June. <laughs> so you guys, give me just one minute because my dad is supposed to be the next segment yes. between you us and um, Massa at six fifteen. But I just need to check to see if she's if he's here yet. So give me one okay, minute. Perfect. I'll be right back. No problem. Okay? No problem. I can't even go off because then I won't be able to come back. <laughs> it's okay. okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. One second. Okay. Yeah, in the in the in the in the nature of zooms these days, it's a good thing I'm wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I want to know what else that, that it has joined us, that our parents and are dealing with the same thing of the different cultures. And I know not everybody is Iranian that's joined us, but like the, teaching your children the different cultures and keeping your cultures from your um, own country, teaching them the languages that you speak. There's just so much more, more responsibility for our for us that are not living in our own country, you know, to teach our children so much more than mm -hmm. just re regular people, right? Yeah, exactly. And yeah. Is, yeah. on top of it, my husband is Jewish, so we have to like, to separate, like, he's not that religious, but still I, we want to like expose them to all these traditions. So. So it's um uh, yeah he says that their, their children are produce produce <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that shiva so maybe if you can send shiva's on the line shiva can you send a message to iman that my dad is here if he wants me to get started we can yeah I don't, yeah go ahead do you want do we're gonna get off so that your dad can come on no because i can't i can't add him but he can come and sit so it was supposed to be iman and my dad so okay. Iman has to come back. But if someone can send okay. him a message. Iman took the chai and the lavashak and left. <laughs> <not coming back. laughs> that love is so good. Right? That's so funny. This is the beauty of life. Someone message Iman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this Happy is my June, June, I believe. Is my Happy New Year is my June. My June, Iman is Iman. Iman is very <laughs> oh my god! Let me oh, see. She's doing it now. Exactly. Good Thank job. You. Good, good job. Thank you. Let me see you June. June. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so why don't I tell a little bit about my dad? Since oh, Nazi, I have a, a ton of um, Lavoshak. You can come thanks to lavoshak.com. Yes. Yes. My yes. cousin who's visiting, who attended Bokche, actually won one of the raffles which the prize was, not raffles, yeah, yeah raffles. Yeah, the, yeah. the prize was a huge box of uh, all different kinds of lava shack. All the lava shack you can want is in that box. And then we each individually got a box full of little lava shacks that I can't stop eating. Oh my so God. I'll bring That's you so some. Good. 
Yeah. That was the only thing I was rooting for. I'm yeah. like, I don't care about this six hundred dollar Botox thing. I just want to have a lounge. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I wanted Nusha dermatology uh, treatment. Yes. That was like oh that my was god. Wait, no, shout this... out to Nusha for for sponsoring the yes. podcast. Yes, Nusha. So I mean, I, honestly, all the prizes were amazing. Amazing. I mean, everyone sure. that offered anything, shout out to you. <gasps> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> That's not my nice. dog. That's Mariam's dog. I was going to say, Calvin's gotten bigger in this overnight. <laughs> no, no. Calvin doesn't even bark like yeah. that. Okay, Calvin doesn't even bark, honestly. Okay, now, now that they're both barking, so I'm going to mute myself. Okay. Okay, Iman is coming. And I see... Ready? Some people are saying, Iman Naya. Apparently, we're doing a good job as co-host. This will be my debut. I'm adding it to my CV. I, we carried forward Iman's energy. My dad is walking into the room. So those of you who haven't met my dad, Boba be a push This is my dad, Mochtabo Kazemi. He has been an honorary uniter since before I knew what a uniter was because he's been fighting this revolution. A long time ago, he used to go to Kanun and I'd be like, Dad, bastard again. I'm sick and tired of hearing of the drama, but he'd go you know, week after week after week, um, because now I understand why. Here I am myself week after week after week on the call with you guys, which I personally think is way better than Kanu and Menecho. That's my bias. Oh All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch seats and let my dad sit down. Ladies, thank you so much for uh, holding down the fort. Before I go, I'm not going to lie. I love you all. But he's my favorite. Aww. Out of all, of, the his poetry is my favorite yeah. by far. Okay, okay. I love, him. love you right. guys. Nice okay, bye. Let me transition. Thank you. Bye. Imo just said, "Don't worry, that's not my fault." He's so well behaved. I said that before. As in, that for you to share with him, I want to use this opportunity to share. سال نو رو به شما و همه ایرانیا در هر گوشه دنیا تبریک بگم و آرزو بکنم که حداقل در سال آینده ایرانی آزاد داشته باشیم با کنار در کنار دوستان حالا در این فرصت های اگر قرار شد که من باز با هاتون صحبتی داشته باشم شعرهای آماده کردم که براتون میخونم ولی الان یه شعری براتون میخونم ارتباطی به این بهار و عید نوروز و سال نو نداره ولی به ایران مربوط میشه اونایی که علاقه به ایران دارن به نام ایران به سرزمین ایران دارن اینو حتما دوست خواهند داشت بسیار عالی اتفار ما خواهد بود بفرماید آقای کازمی خواهش میکنم میگه شب شعره شب شعر توی ذهنم با حروف تازه تازه شب انتخاب واژه تا ترانم و بساسه مثل پروانه زدم پر میون باغ الف با مثل پروانه زدم پر میون باغ الف با یک به یک را دوره کردم از الف تا همزه و یا میون حرفای صدادار داد زد آی کلادار منو بردار با یه و ره بنویس دوباره از یار اما من یاری نداشتم با کسی کاری نداشتم این سه تا حرفی که داشتم یه گوشه کنار گذاشتم باز دوباره پی حرفا سر کشیدم تو کتابا گشتم و گشتم و دیدم باز دوباره حرفی از آ الف و یه و ره و آ اگه با نون 
جرمی اومد برا من قشنگترین اسم توی شعرم در می اومد از ته سفره بینان از ته سفره بینان از دل خانه ویران نونی برداشتم و دیدم اسم شعرم شده ایران 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 مرسی عزیزم که منم دعوت کردی در این شوهد باشم باز هم در فرصت های دیگه سعی میکنم بیشتر در خدمتون باشم امیدوارم این شعرم پسندیده باشی و اینجا جا داره که من از شاعر این شعر آقای همایون اوشیار نجادم یادی بکنم شعر از ایشون بود قربونشو برم تا فرصت دیگه خیلی ممنون آقای کازمه اصلا نمیستم که فکر بکنم شعر قشنتر از این این برنامه رو شروع بکنیم سپاس فراوان حالا در طول روز شما افتخار داریم میدین و تو برنامه اجرا میکنین دوباره و خیلی خوشحال میشیم که ببین مرسی که امروز روز نوروز رو گذاشتین در کنار ما باشین قربون شما برم خوشحال شدم میبینم تو قربون تو من جا میدیدم به ساره قربون شما All right. So, so okay. ladies, that was amazing, Sarjan. Phenomenal. Okay. Loved it. Nice. Loved it. We need to have them all count down every freaking episode. Um, okay, we'll make it happen. Mashallah. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do actually, because it's a 12-hour program, I want to make sure that we uh, chop these uh, episodes up so that we can put it on YouTube. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to log off for a second just so we can save this uh, you know, video. And then I'll come back on, and in just a couple of minutes, Master Townsend will be joining us to share some Nodu's messages. So please, just hop back on the IG Live. Don't disappear. Basically, consider this a one-minute commercial break. I got to do this so that we have these videos up on YouTube, on our United Conquer YouTube channel, which if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the United Conquer YouTube channel. I'll be right back. Just hop on back. All right, all right, all right, all right. Welcome back. This is part two of the celebration of Nowruz 1402. Just because we want to transfer all these videos onto our YouTube channel, I'm, I'm cutting the program every hour or so. So a few more people are going to hop on uh, in just a couple of minutes. Uh, we're going to have the one and only, the incredible uh, Masa Townsend joining us. I'm very excited to have her on. Um, in the meantime, just want to thank all of you who have joined so far. If you're not familiar with what's going on, this is the celebration of Nowruz 1402. It's a 12 hour live stream. It started at 11, 11 a.m. Eastern. We're going all the way to 11, 11 p.m. Eastern time. All the most amazing freedom fighters that have been doing everything in their power to talk about Iran and bring awareness. And here is one of those lovely. Bring her some virtual applause. So happy to have her. Every conversation with Masa is, is even more empowering. Hi, Masa Joon. Hi. Good morning to you. Oh, my gosh. Good morning. Oh, my God. This is so crazy. Oh, good morning. <laughs> Hi. Oh, my God. Oh, hold on. Hi. It's, I, it's good. Look, the, 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 famous, the famous library background. Oh my, I know. I know it's the only room. Oh, you want me to take you to a different room? It's no, it's so no. up in here. No, it's great. So, so many incredible, passionate, powerful, inspiring videos have been created with this backdrop uh, in the last six months, and I'm grateful that you've spent a little bit of your Noruz with us and our viewers. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having me. Happy Noruz. Kind amount of mercy. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know what's wrong with my voice. It's always. It's it's okay. It's, it's, it's all good. But, um, you know, again, thank you so much for joining. Let's just kind of start off by uh, asking you, what are you most excited about? I know that it's a, it's a wor worst type of notice to have given all this happening, but hopefully there's elements of notice that you're looking forward to. What are you most excited about this notice? You know, you know um, I, I'm excited. I hope that for the people of Iran, that this is the year we wake the rest of the world up. Um, you know, obviously I have three kids and, you know, we want, we celebrate, we try to stay in the moment because time is, life is short for those people who have kids, you blink and they're older. And, um, so, we're, we're, you know, I, I try to be in the moment, but I would say what I hope for next year is 
health and happiness for all of my loved ones, for everyone around the world, and most importantly for the people of Iran, that for the rest of the world to wake up and join them in this fight for freedom. Um, and I, I'm just very hopeful that, that that is in the near future. Before I ask you another question, can you just move your camera up a little bit? The top half of your head is cut off and it would be a, it'd be a shame to not have the entire lovely face in this uh, segment. I don't know how to, is this better? Yeah, there we go, much better, here we go. Um, so first of all, for those um, who don't know, when, when was the last time that you were in Iran? Have you ever celebrated Nowruz in Iran? Yeah. Oh my God, yes. Probably the only memories that I have uh, in Iran are from Nowruz. Um, I left Iran when I was 10. So yeah, I remember going to my grandmother's house and all of my cousins being there and getting the cash, you know? So we, <laughs> it was some of the best memories I have is from Nowruz and during Nowruz in Iran. T tell, tell us about like one of your favorite memories of Iran during Nowruz. I, I, the only thing is I just remember my grandmother's house and um, and my cousins and, and just the eight Dideni and how exciting it was. It was what we looked forward to every year. Um, Charjan was a, was was really exciting. Um, I just remember being excited about it like kids or Christmas, but I don't have any vivid memories of Iran. I feel like there's, a, um, I have to live vicariously to some of you who've actually experienced Nowruz. Like my hope is to just one Nowruz, spend it in Iran. Like I, I was never able to uh, enjoy it. So at least you enjoyed it a little bit and hopefully we get to enjoy it in the future. Um, you know, you were six months in, you've been one of the most active individuals, um, you know, putting everything on the line in, in regards to being the voice of Iranians. How hopeful are you now that we're six months into the fight? Where, what, what, what are you feeling? You know, the, the most frustrating part in this process is not acknowledging that our current administration is not enforcing sanctions against the regime. And I no, I sound like a broken record and I keep talking about the same thing, but all of these other measures are absolutely pointless when the regime is getting richer every month. And for those people who say sanctions don't work, they hurt ordinary people. When we saw the people of Iran pull their money out of banks, when we saw oil workers striking, they're trying to collapse their own economy. They're trying to bring down this regime the only way they know how, which is economically. And so it is very frustrating seeing our current administration say they stand for women's rights, they stand for human rights. And when it comes to this issue, they're turning a complete blind eye and the regime is becoming more powerful. Remember, we started this saying, we need to close uh, all of the embassies. We need to send back the diplomats. We need to shut down the Islamic Republic intersection in Washington, D.C. Not only have they not shut a single one down, they opened a new one in Saudi Arabia. Uh, IRGC has a terrorist designation because of our previous administration, not because of this administration. And I want to send a loud message to the EU for, for the EU who continuously lectures the United States on women's rights and human rights, guess what? The price of oil was more important to the EU than it was doing the right thing and listing the IRGC and giving them the terrorist designation they deserve. Never forget that the EU failed to do that. The United States has that designation because of our previous administration. The EU does it and hasn't done it. You know, a part of me feels bad that I'm I'm starting off your early morning on no rules with this, but this is why we love you, Masa. And like, this is like, you are, like somebody even commented right now that you're not just one of the most active, but you're the most effective because you're going right to the root of the problem. You're trying to put a massive magnifying glass on top of this and trying to awaken people. And listen, I know it's frustrating, but you are converting individuals and you're opening up eyes every single day. So we appreciate 
all the heart, the soul, the passion, the frustration you're putting out there, know that it does not go unnoticed. And just to kind of uh, upset you a little bit more, let's talk about the, what's happening in about a half an hour at the White House uh, with the Biden administration. I, okay. Before we go there, I want to say one thing. The Iranian community has been incredible. Yeah. Incredible. I've only said things. I look at these young, um, and I say young because I'm so much older. They're in their early 20s, starting Twitter groups, starting Instagram groups, creating a Mahsa Act army, calling every day, spending their own money, their own time on their breaks from work, regular Iranian Americans, some who've never even been to Iran, like 20 year olds, working so hard. This is their work. And the fact that the Mass Act, this bill, has gone as far as it has is because of them. And I just want to say what these groups, these young Iranian groups have done for free with their own time and money, the most expensive lobby groups in this country have not been able to accomplish. So this is, this Nowruz belongs to them. Now let's go to the White House. <laughs> I mean, this is what, when I meet with this, these uh, politicians, I tell them this, and a, a young girl, Melika, is the one that gave me this. She said, useless action is worse than no action. It insults the intelligence of our community. So in one hand, you're gonna empower the oppressors by not enforcing sanctions. But on the other hand, you're like, but we'll have a no ruse party for you guys. And what frustrates me from our community is that we fall for it. We fall for it. So I'm hoping that the members of community who are going express to the Biden administration the importance of enforcing these existing sanctions and then the million and a half to two million Iranians in the United States aren't gonna fall for this nonsense anymore. I do think it is a slap in the face to not at least invite Shahzadeh. I think they should have at least extended the invite to the, the most significant members of our community. And he certainly is one, but um, yeah, I, I would not get that invite, trust me. Yeah, well, it's so funny because I won't name the person, but um, somebody called me a couple of days ago. They're like, Iman, I, I invited you for this thing, meaning like to get the invitation. And so for the last few days, I was waiting for like this invitation. But then a part of me was like, I was like, I don't think they want me there. I was like, I'm sure if somebody's doing a little background background check, they're not gonna want me to be there. Uh, but hypothetically, yeah. let's say you were there and you had an opportunity to speak to President Biden. What would you say? I would say saying that you stand for women's rights and human rights is not a campaign slogan. And the Democratic Party is really dropping the ball by not leading the charge on this issue. No women in the history of the world are more um, oppressed than women in the Middle East. And it is an absolute embarrassment that we're letting them down. And I would just throw one last thing. The United States is the most powerful country in the world. This notion that we could not have defeated the Taliban that are basically cavemen, these are not edu educated scientists, that we couldn't defeat them and we, that exit out of Afghanistan, what's happened to the people of that country, the fact that we left $2 billion worth of weapons there is an embarrassment and you'll go down, President Biden, as the worst president in American history. That's what I would say. That's why I wouldn't get invited to this party. <laughs> Happy no ruse. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Ma when I say that Master June is unapologetic, if you never got to know her before, now you see exactly what I'm talking about. And this is why we appreciate you, why we need you at the front lines of this revolution. And, and I wanna say to activists in the United States, we have to put our political affiliations aside and put Iran and if you believe in human rights and women's rights, put your political affiliations aside. I'm telling you, I've met with people I never, my husband, 
was not excited that I met with Adam Schiff or Eric Swalwell. But you've got to put that aside and say, I'm willing to meet with and do whatever it takes for the greater good of 87 million people in Iran. Don't put your career in the United States first by having to kiss up to a particular political party. Stand up for what's right and say, look, I'm a lifelong whatever. Do the right thing. I love it. Masajur, um, I wish I could talk much longer with you. If there's a closing message that you would like to do, perhaps speaking to all the Iranians inside of Iran, if you'd like to share with them a Noru's wish or just hopes for Iran Iranians, let's use that as a closing part of this awesome segment with you. I want to say two things. I want to say one to the Americans in the United States. As we shower our children with gifts and dote on them, Remember, the only difference between children in America and children in Iran is where they're born. So that's really, really important for us to remember how blessed we are. And also that blessing comes with a responsibility to do for them and be their voice while well, they can't be their own voice. And to the people of Iran, ma hamishe ba shama hastim tanha nemizayim inja shama bemoyim ba ta unjay ki seda darim صدامون رو بلند میکنیم برای شما امیدوارم که نوروز شما پیروز باشه و به امید آزادی oh, oh. Love that message Thank you so much for uh, those beautiful words and on behalf of millions of Iranians around the world keep on doing what you're doing it's incredible, it's inspiring it keeps me on my toes every time I see your videos I'm like I gotta do more shit, I gotta do more shit so uh, you've, been, you've been a trailblazer you're by definition a shizan and I hope that you get a chance to spend quality time with your family today and take a little break, give your voice a little break and I hope that they shower you with the love that you deserve as well. Thank you. Happy Nowruz and thank you for having me on Iman John. Thank you. Back right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Oh, man, I just love talking to her. She's just um, a firecracker. It's amazing. Look at that. It's like 8.30, 9, 9 o'clock in the morning and you can tell and see and feel how much passion, how much love she has for, for her people. And, you know, imagine if we had like 10 million of Maso Townsends. Oof. First of all, Iran would be free in about four hours. Uh, so shout out to her, appreciate her. Going down to the schedule at 12.30, my next guest is Dina Nasser Khadimi. She's gonna be joining us in a second. I'll actually give you guys a little bit of a background about her. Um, but she she also she created a campaign that has these shirts where they've been giving away these shirts um, to certain individuals like you can't really buy it anywhere. Um, and I wanted her to kind of like share a little bit more about this background. But she is an independent advisor and consultant specialized in international contemporary art and cultural strategy. She helped develop the profile for Iranian modern and contemporary art internationally through numerous initiatives including symposiums held at the Guggenheim Museum in New York, the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston, and the Museum of Contemporary Art in Los Angeles. Um, oh my God, I just saw a ridiculous comment right here by Free Iran 2023. Holy crap. Um, uh, Dina Joan, there's a little plus button inside of the camera. You press that and then you request to join and then I bring you. But Free Iran 2023, like, are you kidding me? It's like, it's such a ridiculous comment. I'm sorry. Like, I'm going to, okay, anyways. So back to Dina until she kind of like, no, but Dina, Dina, you have to press the little button inside the camera. Request to join next to the people. Oh, there you are. Okay. But uh, she curated a landmark exhibition. Uh, I'm trying to do two things. Uh, including Iranian artists at the Venice Biennale, as well as the Shirin Nashad's first exhibition in Baku, which, by the way, I hosted one of her uh, exhibitions. At the, at the, at the watch. wait, there's a little bit of feedback. Hi, Dina Jun, how are you? Hi, I'm good, and you? Can you hear me? Good, let me see. Can you, can you log out or log back in? I think there's some type of echo going on. Okay, hold Sorry. on. Yeah, so I'll let her talk about it. Hopefully when she comes on, there's gonna be a better audio. Let's try this again. And no, free Iran, the truth does not hurt. What you're saying is absolutely ridiculous. That's what, that's the truth. (sighs) 
All right, how's this? Is it working? Yes. It's my first IG yeah. live. Okay, great. Perfect. Okay. Well, actually, there's still, there's still some kind of... There is an echo? Yeah, do you have a headphone by any chance? Is this better? Yes. I can, but I don't think it's connected. Hold on. Can you hear me? It might take a second, I know, but I keep on hearing an echo. Hmm. Are you, are you connected to Wi-Fi? I'm not from where I am. It's my regular phone. Hold okay. On. I feel like I hear your voice. Oh, wait. I think it disappeared. I think we're good now. Yeah? Yes. Perfect. Okay, good. All right. Uh, all right. So, Dirajun, I'm, I'm sorry. I keep on. I feel like, I feel like it's, it's back again. But okay. So, um, Dirajun, for, for those who don't know, um, can you please tell them behind the message of the shirts that you created and the whole campaign that you created? Sure. So, first of all, check, check. Can you hear me now? Because my yeah, headphones are connected. Okay, fantastic. Okay. So... <laughs> So the idea of the shirts, um, it's actually, I work in, in arts and culture. So um, I figured, you know, when I started trying to support the revolution, I first did it through my Instagram, which for me is something now at this point, it's like part of my everyday routine. Obviously, I post every single day and I curate my content. And I try to do it in a way where people who are non-Iranian also understand what's happening. Um, and the result is, there you go, I love that you're wearing it, you support it really well. I figured afterwards, once they did, when, I remember when, early October, when the shooting happened um, in Sharif University, I really felt like I, I needed to do something that was not just virtual, I wanted to do something in the physical world. And the first idea I came up with was to do shirts and bags, like tote bags and t-shirts, just to get the message out there in at the time it was the freeze art fair in london because i work in the art world so that it started from there honestly i had no idea what i was doing i just wanted to put the message out there and basically from there this project grew um you know it became a collective with friends of mine and long story short fast forward we're now in uh, we're about to be in 30 cities by next month all around the world it's basically become a chain um, the idea behind the shirt itself is that the shirt already tells a story because you basically have the first line is the slogan in Kurdish because the origins of the slogan are, are Kurdish. And then you have it in English and French, reason being because obviously there was a political, like, you know, a little bit of a clin d'oeil uh, for in terms of our history, obviously in in 79, but right. also today. Uh, and then the last line is Farsi. And then we had the idea to include a QR, which then would take you to a site that would be educational. And thanks to Tara Grammy, who I was following at the time, she had shared this really cool site because I didn't have time back then. It was like something we did like on the go. And that site is then what we sort of linked to the shirt. Right. Um, so essentially it started really as something very grassroots and it still is by the way, very grassroots, but it's expanded into 30 cities in the world. And the idea is really that when you wear these shirts, essentially they become not only just like a, you become a mini billboard because it's really the slogan of the revolution, but it also starts a conversation. The actual idea already to have those four original lines tells you the story really of, of where we're at. And then we always add a fifth line, depending on where we do the drops. So the one that you have is the one that I did in Miami, which has also the Spanish line, because obviously there is a very important community that speaks Spanish. That's right. Um, we did the one with the South African version, for instance, via a friend of mine who's South African, because South Africa was very symbolic during the apartheid. Um, we, we just did one now in Hong Kong right now with, with Mandarin. So the fifth line, always varies according to where we do the drops and then the idea is really that this becomes a bit also like a little manual for you to know about what's happening instagram accounts to follow that are educational because i figured if people really understand what's happening then they can really support it more efficiently otherwise we're just another country in turmoil in the middle east and they don't understand that actually our history our culture is different um, I think there is really this layer of education that we need to add to what's happening because we were all so young when the revolution happened. 
And as a result of that, I think the narrative of where we come from has been heavily distorted through the Western lens, but also in general, I think we all left, right? So, I mean, at least a lot of us in the diaspora mm -hmm. left. And so many of my friends never went back. Um, and I feel like this was something that I could do for our own community on the outside, but also to help be the voice of those in the inside uh, by making sure that the Instagram accounts that are linked to this QR really show what's happening on the inside, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I mean, the, so the, the QR code takes you to a very uh, diverse call to action, you know, a lot of different uh, links that you can kind of follow to make even more of an impact. What is the campaign called? You have a whole separate Instagram yeah. account for it too. So why don't you share it with our viewers? Sure. So it's called Post It Forward. Uh, WLF. Why? Because I came up with the idea when when the everything was happening in the very early days, our revolution really began. Obviously, Baroye was a huge element of you know something that brought us all together. I feel like we a lot of us had this awakening. I mean, I've always been standing for for our culture. I was just never you know really discussing politics about our country openly. Um, one because I used to go back, and two because. Back then, you know, it felt like it didn't really make a difference to openly talk about it. So I always used to feel like I should talk about the culture of Iran and our history and our identity. Um, and long story short, when all of this happened, the posting element of our movement was so important in the revolution. Um, so the idea with Post It Forward was that when you take a picture with with you wearing this shirt, you're essentially supporting the revolution and you're supporting the movement and you're taking your picture and you're posting it. So there is this whole layer linked to posting and social media, but making it, giving it more of a human layer by taking a photo. And that's why I also have the idea of the campaign is really the power of connectivity. So these cannot be sold, they can only be gifted. And the idea is, you know how you say it's a small world because one person knows another person, etc. Um, that's how we got Patty Smith, for instance, through a friend of mine who's in the collective in Paris and who went, saw her in a museum, gave her the shirt and she posted on uh, Women's Day. And Patty Smith is like a huge icon for those of us, obviously, who work in, in arts and culture. I mean, she's a poet. She's like a rock star. Um, so, so there's all these elements where you realize that so many people can impact you know, the chain and it can become bigger and bigger and it doesn't need me to be there micromanaging everything. Ultimately, everybody who enters the chain gives it to somebody else who then gives it to somebody else. And then suddenly you just realize that, you know, some super famous like singer or poet is wearing it. And for me, as somebody who works in the creative community, it was very important to spread within that community internationally. And that's actually how I met Orly. I met actually a lot of amazing people, Nazani Noor, Tara Grammy. Um, but it's because I've been following everything that everybody's doing. And I figured, you know, it's also a nice way to sort of bring everybody together. Um, and for us to have this uniform, it's like our, our war uniform, no? Oh, it's, am but, it's amazing. I mean, you, you you've so definitely accomplished what you set out to do. I mean, it's become a chain reaction of good goodwill. Um, there's a couple of people that are asking about, you know, how do I get this gift and how do I, um, how can, how, oh, I'm sure they want to know how they can support this movement even more. So sure, uh, in the last sure. couple of minutes, just kind of share, share some details. Sure. So look, the way we've done it is, um, you know, I had this big dilemma. A lot of people told me, you know, you should sell them at cost. And I, I just don't want to do that. Several reasons. I don't, I don't feel comfortable selling something that, as of today, still, um, you know, represents the oppression of our people. So for me, it's much more beautiful to um, to gift them. Uh, now, that being said, of course, I cannot produce t-shirts until infinity, but within the stocks that we have around the world, if people write to us on the page that I created, um, then I can, you know, send it to the different like places where we have stock. And if there is any available, by all means, we'll give them. I don't want this project to be elitist. I don't want it to be only for celebrities. Um, celebrities, of course, help in amplifying the voices, sure. which is why sure. the strategy is very much directed also, of course, into giving it to people who have big followings. 
but ultimately that's not the message the message is really that you know i want it to be which is why in art basel miami i gifted it just at the fair randomly to people who wanted it um we do it in different different ways in different places so but to to answer your question if people write on the page and if they're located in a city where we distribute them usually we we send them or we tell them where to pick them up that's but it's a chain great. Really. Yeah, the, the Instagram grassroots. again is posted forward WLF. Uh, if you all have the Instagram account, uh, just drop it in the chat below so everyone can follow it. Uh, I'm sure that Dina Jun can can benefit from you all's support in some shape or form. So if you if you appreciate this movement, if you think you can bring value to it, if you think you can help grow it, if you can help amplify it, reach out to her or just message her Instagram right over here. Uh, in closing, the last two minutes, Dina Jun. Uh, if you have any messages for Noru's, any messages of hope for our Iranians, the virtual mic is yours. Well, I think, first of all, Iman, I want to thank you for everything you do. I actually met you through this revolution, and I'm really impressed with everything you do. You're really committed. Um, I discovered what you guys do when I came to Miami for Art Basel, and then that's when I remember you and I connected. Um, I think really the thing that's really important, it's what Orly was saying earlier as well. I think it's really important to stay consistent with this movement. Um, it's obviously, it was never going to be easy. I mean, we're not only fighting the government in our own country, we have to fight the hypocrisy abroad as well, right? So um, I really think that it's important to stay united. I think that it's important to stay consistent, to uh, persevere. I think that we have already made history. We've come a long way. Um, and I think it's very important to just stick to what we're doing and to keep going no matter what. And uh, eventually we will succeed. Um, I think that we've come a very, very, very long way. And that, of course, it's tough. Some days we get very tough news to swallow. I think we've all seen a lot of traumatic things over the past five months, um, equally beautiful, equally traumatic. But I think it's very important to stay committed to this revolution. Um, and, you know, this is going to be probably the window we have in our lifetime to get our country free. Um, so we just have to stick together. And I think that the fact that we all um, were, we exploded in all different corners of the world 44 years ago might just finally make sense now because we can all make a difference together. Uh, throughout, you know, the different countries we live in by being united and by helping um, our Hamdatans from the outside. Um, so we owe them a lot. I know you always say this. Um, we've lost a lot of people last year and we owe it to them and their families never to give up. We owe it to our families um, and we have to keep going. This is something, no turning back. So that's my I appreciate message. all those words. Thank you so much, Dina Jun. And, uh... Okay. I love how everybody's using their own passion and experience and skills to do something in this revolution and what you've done is amazing and kudos to you. Thank and I, you. I hope that you continue to have the support that you need to continue to make the impact you. that you're making through art and our culture. Um, I want to thank all my friends, Iranians and non-Iranians, because this initiative happened. Half of my sponsors are non-Iranians. Half of my ambassadors are non-Iranians. And obviously the other half are Iranians. It. But it just shows the love. It means that these, it. everything is possible. Well, you have the full support of all the Uniters. Thanks for everything that you're doing as well. Thank I hope you, you have a wonderful no rules. And hopefully next year we're celebrating a new year. A new, a three year excuse me. For sure. <laughs> Take, <laughs> Take care. Take care. Bye. 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 All right. So ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, the lovely, the fabulous Dina Nasser Khadimi. I've never had the pleasure of meeting her. Until now, but I hope now you see why she's an awesome person doing some incredible things during this revolution. All right, so up next is my longtime friend, Arsiyeh Ruzagar. Actually, he's a Ruzagar. Oh my goodness, he's going to hate me for this one. Well, but he's not uh, here yet, so I have to make sure that he gets on here. I want to make sure that he's getting my message. I hope you guys are enjoying the program so far. If so, let me know. Uh, let's see. Where is he? see. So yeah, hopefully um, he gets on this uh, Instagram very quickly. But in the meantime, wherever you're joining, uh, I hope you're having a good notice so far. I hope that you're getting ready for a family to come join you. I hope that, um, hold on. I'm sorry, I'm trying to, uh, um, sorry, I told you guys, very informal, uh, 
live stream. Oh, as I kick over the camera, we're just waiting for Arcia to uh, join. You got to press the request to join button, brother, so we can get you on. How about this? In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and uh, read you his bio. Born in Tehran, Iran, and raised in the Washington, D.C. area, Arcia always had a passion for heroes, myth mythology, and creativity. For years, his professional work was seen on comic book pages as a color artist for titles such as Marvel's Iron Man and The Incredible Hulk. His most recent effort is as a creator and author of the children's book titled Shahnameh for Kids, an illustrated series retelling ancient Persian mythology from Ferdowsi's 10th century poem, The Shahnameh. Shahnameh for Kids brings Iran's rich tales and legends to a brand new audience with colorful children's books that anyone of any background can enjoy and appreciate. So um, I'm really happy that he's going to be joining us. I, Every opportunity that I have to tell the world about Shah Number for Kids, I try to do it. He is an incredibly passionate uh, compatriot, patriot, and, um, you know, just wants to make sure that these great stories of the Shah Number and of Iran uh, are passed on to um, um, the next... Um, generation of Iranians. Give me one second. He's having some technical difficulties. Bear with me for a second. Are you requesting to join my personal? He was on the wrong side of the universe called Zoom, but it's IG Live, brother. Sorry, guys, for the slight delay. Hope, where's everybody joining from? I see here. Let me see if there's any questions. Oh, I feel like somebody was asking a question about, I don't know if I should even address it. I feel like it's an inappropriate thing, but hold on. Master, can you talk about how someone who loves Shaw like you can collaborate? But I'm um, just waiting for Arcia to hop on sooner than later. Oh, and by the way, let me tell you who else is coming up in case you guys want to join later. At 1 o'clock, if you know Pejman Fiasi, he's going to be uh, joining us. He was our guest on Countdown. If you don't know what Countdown is, every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, we produce Countdown to Freedom in Iran. It's a one-hour live stream program that is... is um, uh, dedicated to Iran, what's happening to Iran, the latest news and updates. Uh, it's produced by um, my fellow Uniters that are producing uh, with me, and it's an incredible program that we get to kind of catch up and make sure that we continue to amplify what's happening in Iran. All right, here comes Arcia. He finally made it. And to answer your question, is my camera still reversed? I feel like we're continuously trying to play around with the camera but I don't know why it's uh, getting reversed. I'll try to fix it. I see you, John. Durud. Durud, Shalom, John. Yeah. How are you, man? You were waiting for a Zoom <laughs> link, huh? Yeah. Oh, Zoom. <laughs> I was watching you on IG, man. I'm watching you on IG. I don't know what I was thinking. It's, it, it's okay. Like, um, I, I apologize for the last minute. I mean, everybody was last minute invite. We decided to do this a couple of days ago. So I appreciate you making time on short notice. Um. So unfortunately, we only have 10 minutes now because uh, no worries. Say, but let me let me jump right into it. Uh, first of all, what do you I know it's a very weird circumstance right now. We, we're not in the best of circumstances with regards to what's happening in our homeland. But what are you excited about uh, to celebrate Noru's and, and Saltad in a few hours? Uh, I guess spending time with my brother, um, uh, talk to my family. Live, live, live talking, uh, live stream with my family. Not live stream, what do you call it? Live video chatting with my family. I'm sorry, the word escaped me there for a second. We have video chatting with my family. But um, but like you said, this this notice is definitely not a shod one at all. Um, all our hearts are heavy. Um, we know it's not a happy notice per se, but, you know, we, we got to do what we we can though, but the, the important thing is that we still celebrate notice and um, recognize it and make sure it's there and is, 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 um, it's in our culture and, you know, cause that's what they want. They want it to be go to be erased, you know, but as, as far as I'm concerned, we're not going to let that happen. No, for sure. And, and, and I told people earlier, a little, your background for those who are not familiar with Shah number for kids, um, 
do you do you talk about can you talk about any of your books that you talk about nodus and maybe just kind of integrate talking about what you create and and perhaps Ooh. any way that you want to talk about nodus yeah actually my newest book just came out um I, I only have my author copy. I haven't gotten my, my copies to send out to the backers who have supported the books on Kickstarter and, and whatnot. But the new book actually discusses Noru's and its origins. Um, I have the copy here. Here's the new book. It's called Ancient Tales of Greater Iran. And nice. I'm, 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 yeah, we worked really hard on it for the last two years. It's it's a big book. It's almost reminiscent of the OG Shahnameh. But it has lots of different tales in there, like the first Shahs. It has the origins of fire. Um, basically how Iranian civilization and culture started and, and began. And one particular part is about Jamshid, the great Shah Jamshid, who is one of the most glorious Shahs in Iran. And according to the Shahnameh and legend, uh, Nodus began with him. He, he founded the Holy Nodus. And there's one particular spread that, uh, uh, that you see Jamshid and Nodus is celebrated. And I explain how the first Nodus happened under his reign. And it's a tradition that we still celebrate today. So yeah, the new book does talk about Nodus and it talks about other holidays as well, like Sade and Mehrigan and lots of cool origin parts and explanations of, of our culture and our, our legends. I love it. What, how, how come this one became so much bigger? Like all, all the other ones have been smaller what was there a certain intent behind yeah. making this one uh, yeah this one has a, a specific theme that's a theme of fat use id fat which is like this this providence that uh the the shah must must have in order to be uh the ruler of iran and um so uh that that theme is from the beginning to the very end so it was hard to kind of split it up. I could have split it up into two books. That was possible, but I felt like that theme of fat was was an important element of the storytelling, and I wanted to make it one long book. And I saw like, somebody in the chat said, asked what the, the title is. The books are called Shaw Name for Kids. Yeah. You can go to shawnameforkids.com or Amazon. If you order from shawnameforkids.com, I can sign the books for you. But this is only available on Amazon today. I'll probably get my copies later on, but... And and you also have uh, your, the the Instagram page Shah Number for Kids as well, so they can follow there. Yeah, message him directly. I mean, I've I've said this so many times. There are not that many people out there like Arsia, and like I, I that's why I want to make sure I always have an opportunity where I can introduce him to right. my network because people like him, they need the support. They need people to kind of purchase it, and and really your your kids would truly appreciate having this in their, in their library and, and just learning through um, a way that really connects with them, which is through cartoon, you know? And so uh, I, I can attest to the fact that they are truly quality books. The storytelling is authentic. It's, it's accurate. I mean, I trust Arsia of it being accurate. I can't confirm myself, but um, I, I feel like they, they, they continue to need the, your support of the community. So um, thank you. Any, and any other uh, no rules wishes you'd like to share in closing? I just want to, my thoughts are with my brothers and sisters in the motherland in Iran and what they're going through, especially those who we've lost, unfortunately. I'm always thinking about them and my, my family, obviously, in Iran as well. Um, and I really, really hope we can spend next Noruz in Iran. That's, that's like my biggest dream, my biggest goal. One of my, my, from the bottom of my heart, I want to experience Noruz in Iran one day. So have you, have you ever? Next year. Only my first one, just the first one. So you yeah. have no recollection either? No recollection, no. Was no. that also the last time you were in Iran? Actually, I visited about 10 years ago. I went and visited and saw my, my, my grandparents for the first time since I was a baby and um, visited the various sites like Takhta Jamshid and, and Aramga Kurosh Bozorg. Uh, I did some pilgrimages to, to areas that were important to my culture and my people. Um, if next Nowruz, Iran is free, what's the first thing you're doing when you're going to Iran? I'm going to kiss my grandmother. <laughs> Biggest okay. kiss. Yeah. Love it. Well, um, uh, sorry, man, that got me, that got me emotional. Um, I see, I just want to appreciate you being like a, a fellow soldier. We always chatting on the side and we're expressing our frustration and anger about all this. It's a battle, bro, man. It's the world versus Iran. It really is, yeah. man. 
Yeah. It's always been that way. If you study history, it's always been the world of it versus Iran. But you know, Mopidu's machine, we're gonna we're gonna come out victorious in the end. We always have, even in the darkest of times in our history, the light always overcomes the darkness. And it's always darkest right before the dawn. So I think we're gonna see through this. Definitely. Well, I, I appreciate you making time on short notice to be a part of the program. Congratulations on on the new support. I hope that everybody here that's watching, that you follow Arsia, that you follow Shahnama for Kids. If you have children or nieces or nephews or grandchildren or cousins that are younger, uh, I think this would make for a great belated Nooru's gift or perhaps a great birthday gift or just a gift for no occasion other than wanting to keep our culture alive. So Arsia, John, much love to you. Thank and you. I mother. hope that you do get a chance to kiss your grandmother's cheek even before Nodos of next year. Hopefully we see that Peter Z uh, right around the corner. Thank you for everything you're doing for this revolution. Thank you, my John. Zanzan Nigi Azadi. Zanzan Nigi Azadi. Nodos Peter Z. Nodos Peter Z. Take care. Uh, fellow Washingtonian that I respect and love very dearly. Um, just a little side note. Um, back when I was in D.C., I was in Washington, D.C. for 30 years, and I had the pleasure of... Um, organizing some really awesome uh, Noru's events and um, more than like 12, 1300 people would come. And I always wanted to have a traditional room and a room where it would be for children. And every time that I asked Arsia to come and read the Shah number for kids for a room for the kids, for Kamala Mel, Mio Madunja, and he would spend uh, a few hours uh, just reading the Shah number for kids book. So uh, he's really been a great supporter of what we've been doing. And I'm, that's why I'm always trying my best to reciprocate um, what he's done for our events. So that's Arsia. From one awesome Iranian dude to another, my next guest is Pejmane PRC. Uh, I had him on an episode of Countdown a few weeks ago, and he brought such great energy and light and love that I felt like we need to hear him out on Noru so he can give some Noru's wishes and... Well, we're gonna. I'm sorry, he's got to come on first. Pejman John, go ahead and punch that request to join button so that we can get you uh, involved. And it's one o'clock uh, Eastern time at 1.30. We're gonna have Eli uh, Lakshi, she's one of our uniters. She's gonna come and say a few words and some share some notice messages. And then we're gonna have, I'm gonna be taking a little break and we're gonna have a little segment led by Paris and then with Shiva Saber. So stay tuned. We got a great program going all the way until 11, 11 Eastern time this evening. Here comes Pejman. Pejman. Hi, Juan John. How are you? I'm good. How are you? So great to see you. Pisha Pish, no Ruz, Piruz. <laughs> sorry. Kind of... Kind of just waking up. I was I was studying very late last night. So, <laughs> first of all, can, can you can you adjust the camera so the top of your head is not cut off? We gotta get you. We gotta get a full good looking face in there. You know. There that, you go. Okay. There you go. First of all, what were you, what were you studying for? Uh, I'm studying to take my cosmetology test. Okay. Uh, so it's it's like 13 books and they're like pretty thick. Like, and I think, why do I need to study about? <laughs> every fracture of every bone in the body when I don't, I'm not a doctor, what I need to know these things. Which, which part of, I mean, cosmetology has so many different tentacles. What is it exactly that you're going for? Uh, hairstyling, you know, to be to be a hairstylist, but um, uh, it's, it's a lot of information that I, 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 I don't think I'll ever need in my life. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they just they just gotta they just gotta put you to work and justify an expensive exam and then you know get you through the whole path. But I'm sure it's gonna be great. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, but how how are you spending uh, Noru's? I know it's a weird Noru's, but uh, what what how are you spending yours besides studying? Um, I think today um, I'm just laying back. I wanted to go visit my family, but I kind of need a little me time. So I don't think I'll be going anywhere today. Um, I've been invited a couple of places uh, throughout the next couple of days, families, friends. So I'll get to go see everybody. Yeah. So that's that for now. Well, hey, 
I mean, so sometimes you just need to, you know, carve out some time for yourself. And so today is your me time. So I appreciate you taking time out of your me time to be with all of us. Absolutely. Um, for, for, for those who uh, haven't had the pleasure of knowing you, um, can you give a little bit of background about yourself? And, and then we'll kind of talk about, you know, why you've been so motivated and inspired to dedicate your platform to um, bring awareness of what's happening to Iran. So first, a little background about yourself, and then what's been the catalyst for why you've been doing what you've been doing? Um, well, I'm half Persian, half American. life um, growing up in Iran seeing the beauty and meeting so many wonderful people is what really has pushed me to become part of the revolution and to try to fight just like everybody else has um, unfortunately I don't have my platform anymore I think I told you already it kind of went down the drain with all of the content I post, so but it's it's really not really a big deal if if Iran's free. Fuck it, like who cares? Well, we need, we need to, we need to build up your platform again. You'll get you'll get back up real quick, but we need your voice to be amplified to as many people. But yes, that's I feel I feel I wouldn't see much prominence as is just me being on there because fortunately there's so many people on there who are spreading the good message, but. I think what's really important is um, to try to put pressure on our government here in America, Western governments in general, people with um, who have hands in European departments. I think that should be our main emphasis. I know everyone wants to help, but I just don't see much help when people just only think that consistently sharing stories of what's going on in Iran is the only thing. Don't get me wrong, I feel it's it's important for us to be aware of what's going on in Iran. It it adds fuel to the fire, you know, you know, to keep it burning and keep going, but um it doesn't mean an actual fight when it's you're not taking any actual action. It's just, oh my God, I'm seeing this it's like you see like a, a hospital right next to its own fire like oh my god you just stand there it's like well, what am i doing about it i'm just i see i know now oh my god that's so tragic like well that's not helping just now that you know like help is running in there and taking in physical action what what more is, what more would you like go ahead what more would you like us to to do well i'm not expecting everyone to be hooked on the the phone every single minute of the day like but to try to make phone calls to gain support for the mass act because there's so many people who are putting in that effort for the mass act to not get in power um uh i've been calling congressmen and they, they ask me they say so do you want it to be supported or not supported and I'd be like, what do you mean not supported? Why would you even ask that? And he's like, well, we have people who say they're against it. So there are people who are trying to push it to not go forward. And they see that we're just like, oh, whatever. Yeah, like they're smart, you know, like they know how to get into it. And we need to learn to be smarter. So, yeah, that's that. What what is what have you what was the last time that you spent no rules in iran oh, oh i'm trying to think i'm trying to remember my last no rules ten years ago do you have do you have any fond memories of that no rules? of that last no rules? yeah Trying to remember, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> it's been quite some time. 
It wasn't my funnest, but it was okay. I'm not going to lie. Um, I've had fun on Norwoods for sure. I remember my, fo- my first Norwoods in Iran was, wow, like the coolest ever. How, how, how old were you when you had your first Norwoods experience? I was, I was 10. Hey, can, can you share some details about it? Yes. Well, first, uh, first off, um, we lived in my grandparents' house. They had this big bar, and it was huge. And um, you know, it was just you know, like everything was just like just barely green. Everything had just started to sprung. You know what I mean? Um, but they had planted so many flowers. I remember going to Tajish for the first time. And just seeing all those das furushes selling mm-hmm. fish, flowers, turtles, um, anything you can think of existed out there, not just things that are for half scene, you know. And it was probably the most exciting, the most interesting thing for me. But the most cooler part about, about even then that was Saltafil and then getting 80, of course. <laughs> is always is the best part especially in the middle of the Qurans you know but like the yeah, kind of age and, yeah. and my grandpa amongst his siblings he was the eldest so the first day um for the most for the majority everyone would come to visit uh so we would have a lot of guests and that very particular time I'll never forget like I think that very first day we had about a hundred people come over throughout the day like calling and ordering food and like it was a lot a lot a lot a lot but funner was the next days but we went starting visiting everyone else's houses and then getting the ad that was i don't know that was exciting for me like just seeing and if i ever went somewhere and i didn't get 80 i'd be so pissed i'm like they didn't give me 80. <laughs> i would get pissed when they sign the the money and then you can't use it because it's like you're just supposed to look at it it's like Come on, no, I really want to put that hundred dollars to good use. <laughs> I still spent it. I still spent it. Um, you know, last time when, when I had you on the countdown episode, you know, you you talked to us about a book that you have. Um, can you share a little bit uh about the book? What is the book about? What was the catalyst behind you putting the pen to the pad and wanting to write such a book? There's not that many people that at your age, you know, they, they write a book. So Tell, tell us what it's called, tell us what it's about, and how it got started. Uh, the name of the book is The Handsome Twist. It's inspired by the actual events in my life. Although it's fiction, uh, there's a really large feel to the realness behind it. Um, I think... I don't know if I could put an actual Tim, but there's a point of, there's a high amount of feminism in it. It's a, it's political to an extent. Um, there's a dash of spirituality. It's, it's a big mix because it's, it's supposed to represent life. And I couldn't really categorize it, to be honest with you. But if I would say, oh, what kind of book would you put it in as far as fiction? I'd say probably spiritual and coming of age and horror, maybe something like a mix of that. I don't know exactly what. What, what, what made you decide? Sorry to cut you off. What made you decide to like, like why not make it an autobiography versus making it a fiction that has a lot of truth to it? Like growing up, did you just like writing fiction, and then you got to the point where you wrote a book that also integrates real parts of your life? I'm very curious about how you made the distinction. I love fantasy. I love fantasy. And I have a very, very vivid imagination. I think I'm still able to put in truth into everything, even though it's fiction, I still get my point across. And I think that's when you really can articulate actual art. And you can turn something and make something new out of it. So that way I got to express my emotions and tell them what's going on behind the curtain. What did you hope to do with the the book that you wrote? Like when you have people reading it, um, 
what what do you want them to walk away with? I haven't read it yet, but Mona, one of our uniters, she has. She's told me already on the side that she like loved your book and stuff. And but I haven't had a chance to read it. What 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 do you want the readers to walk away from having read it? Well, uh, to be honest, um, before I ever started writing it, um, I think it was back in 2018. I wanted to join New York Film Academy because I'm my biggest passion is acting, and um, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to join New York Film Academy due to my circumstances and financially, it was just not a doable thing at the time. And I had wrote, I wrote a little essay actually for school, that school, to get admitted for a scholarship. And I actually did get approved for the scholarship, which was the very cool part. And even though I was, I felt very defeated that I couldn't join school. And the counselor said, you know, you have a very good nick for this. Like, it looks nice. Like, give it another touch. And I think maybe perhaps two weeks later, I met a director in Hollywood. And she was, I was just telling her about the whole concept. And she said, oh, well, have you written anything? I said, well, I've written an introduction. I've written a first chapter after what I was been told. She said, I want to hear it. And um, we went out to, you know, the Grove in LA? Yes. At the, yes, yes, of you know, course. We went to the Barnes and noble and on the third floor there's like this very big window that you can sit at the ledge mm -hmm. and just sit down and watch everything from the side down there and i took i'll never forget i was writing on actual a little a crappy little notebook an actual pencil that's how authentic i started writing this book and um i read it for her and uh, she, she cried and she said that was very intense and she said that you really should continue writing. You really have a nick for it. Like maybe you don't realize it, but you're very good at it. And I never thought to see myself as a writer at the time. I'm like, well, I'm just writing for the fun of it. But I think it kind of fed fuel to it. And two months later, mm -hmm. I was so deep into writing that I really fell in love. I don't really know how to explain it, but. I was, it was very romantic, just like with my own self. I, it just, it was very, very intense, and I felt like maybe it's perhaps because I was able to be so vulnerable and honest and really express myself from the bottom of my heart. I was able to put out things that I was never able to really talk about before, and I. I think that's what just really kept fueling me more to keep going and going and going. My intention, however, for writing this book was to talk about, not just talk about, but <clears throat> I really want to tell my story to the world because not to play the victim card, but unfortunately I have a very, very messed up past. <laughs> um, but regardless of everything that I've experienced in life, I'm still able to be here, standing tall, you know. And I didn't become a, a serial killer, which I think anyone in my position probably would have. I look and I read about, like, because I've always been fascinated by these kind of things. And if most people who have been in my spot would have become a mass mind criminal or something, I'm like, I'm so happy that I followed my heart and not my ego, because many people don't do that. That's a uh, so, that you, you have no idea how much strength uh, it takes to say what you just said. I mean, like you are a hell of a survivor, and for you to have turned all of that, like you use the word mess, and make it your message, you know, and make it a force of good and positivity and hope for other people. Um, that is, uh, that's inspiring. And um, I appreciate you sharing that, you know, and I hope that you continue to be in the, in the lab and you continue to write and you continue to inspire and you continue taking right. <laughs> part of your past to make it a great future for yourself and for all those who, um, 
resonate with your writing, you know? And so keep, keep, keep it alive, man. Keep it alive and head up, chin up. You're an inspiration. We love and appreciate you. Thank um, you. And we, we're grateful that you joined us for a few minutes on Noru's. And I hope you uh, get the chance to unwind, relax, have some me time, and that you crush that cosmetology exam. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right. Well, I'll give you a, I'll give you a virtual hug, brother, and uh, Noru's Piru's. Are we done? We're done, if you don't mind. We, I mean, it's just a 15 minutes. But feel free to give a closing segment, my friend. Um, I want to see if it's possible we do a little prayer together, if possible. Oh, with pleasure. With pleasure. You lead the way. Sure. Okay. Paradigara, a hazate ishq. Me do nam ki in ruza khelga imanishun sos shade. The hot result my ki didan. خیلی صدات زدیم گفتیم خدا کوشی اما ندیدیم که باید درون خودمون تو رو اول بیابیم تا بفهمیم در واقع خدا چیست ازت میخوام که در این روزها در این لحظه ها اتحاد رو به ما بیاموزی به ما یاد بدی که همیشه دست و دست هم باشیم تفاوت هامون رو بذاریم کنار به هم دیگه مهربان تر باشیم بیشتر عشق بورزیم به همدیگی کمتر تهمت بزنیم اتحاد ما رمز پیروزی ماست آمین First of all beautiful words and also I had no idea that your Persian is so uh, so good so damn it yeah that was amazing we needed that uh, Pejbarjan we really really appreciate you uh, wanting to add this to our little conversation thank you for that Thank you. Oh, I'll let you go, Iman Jun, so you can have a little rest. <laughs> yeah. ten, ten more hours of this, no rest. But, but this gives me energy. Conversations like this give me energy. They give me hope for a free run. So, uh, like I said, thank you so much for being a part of this. I hope that it is a great rest of the day for you. And you. sending you and your entire family love and light and an Oru's Pirus. All right. Well, Mila Azadi. Azadi. Make sure you follow Pejman. Check out his book, The Handsome Twist. Later on, Mona is going to come and share her thoughts of the book that she read. Um, I was trying to have her come on now, but I'll have her come on later. Take care, Pejman Jun. And what I'm going to do is because we've gone another hour and a half, I want to uh, turn down this uh, IG Live right now so I can upload it on YouTube later. And then I'll hop back on in just a few minutes. We're going to have Aray Kazumi give another poem. And then we have one of our uniters, uh, Elham Lakchi be our next guest. So stay tuned. Come back onto my IG live in just a couple minutes. Don't go anywhere. Uh, we'd love to have you continuously part of this program. We're here until 11, 11 p.m. Eastern time. So like I said, just check back in in just two minutes. Let me just upload and I'll be back. All right, all right, all right. We are back and the celebration of Nodus 1402, 12 hour live stream continues. Um, I've been chopping up these videos because I want to make sure that we upload it onto our YouTube channel, um, which if you have not followed our YouTube channel, please be sure to follow and subscribe the Unite and Conquer YouTube channel. At 1.30 p.m., we're going to have Elham Lakshi, one of our uniters, uh, come on. But before that, another beautiful poetic piece. It is the father of one of our awesome uniters, Sade Kazemi. So, uh, please put your hands together for Araya Kazami. Durud bar shoma. Durud bar tu azizam. Qabl az in ke man mikhasam azat ye ijaze bigiram. Qabl az in ke un sheer ro bekhunam. Mikhasam ye do beiti taqdim khodet bekhunam. Or ora shoma befam. Ye do beiti taqdim khodet bekhunam. Badam miram un sheer ro kamel sheer badi ro barat mikhunam. شما میدونید که شمال ما واقعا دیدنی و یک عطری داره که در هیچ جای دنیا نظیرش رو نمیتونیم پیدا بکنیم میگه عطر شمال باید بیاد عطر شمال باید بیاد تا باغ شعرم گل کنه باد جنوب باید بیاد تا قلب
قلبم رو مجنون کنه عطر شمال باید بیاد تا باغ شعرم گل کنه باد جنوب باید بیاد تا قلبم رو مجنون کنه چشمه خشک عشقم و جاری تر از کارون کنه قلبی به وسعت زمین در این قریب سرزمین به خاطر تو میزنه ای سرزمین نازنین این دو بیت تقدیم به خودت و بچه های گروه اما شعرش میگه به یاری و امید حق به یاری و امید حق اگر که برگرده ورق گل میریزم به زیر پات بغل بغل طبق طبق با این که نیمه جونم و نمونده بر تنم رمق نمیشینه رو پیشونیم از شرم بی کسی عرق از گذر ناباوری به شهر باور میرسم از اول کتاب عشق به خط آخر میرسم سلام همسایمونو با جون و دل جواب میدم گلای خشک گلدونو به روشنی آب میدم کوچه به کوچه میرم و کوچه به کوچه میرم و میرم به سوی میخونه اون جایی که عاشق و مست مثل خودم فراوون دیدن دوست و آشنا آن همه یار جانفدا برام مثل این میمونه برم زیارت خدا به یاری و امید حق اگر که برگرده ورق گل میریزم به زیر پات بغل بغل طبق طبق با این که نیمه جونم و نمونده بر تنم رمق نمیشینه رو پیشونیم از شرم بی کسی عرق اینم به شعری بود که برای بار دوم خوندم حالا شعرهای زیادی هست در فرصت های مناسب تقدیم میکنم ای جم بله هم قشنگ آقای کازمه شما چجوری انقدر حافظه دارین که بتونین این شعرها رو اینطوری بالا <تصفيق> علاقه انسان ها به مسائل مختلف خیلی در این کار به حساب دخالت داره از شاید که من از بچگیم به شعر علاقه من بودم یعنی از سن نوجوانی به شعر علاقه من بودم و شعرها رو خیلی دوست داشتم نمیخواستم شعری بخونم که از شاعرش خیلی مثلا به عنوان مثال سعدی حافظ این البته میدونم شعراشونو ولی علاقه داشتم که شعرهایی که در جامعه مطرح میشه مخصوصا از سال پنجاه هفت که یه مقداری جنبه از شود این داشته باشه که حالتی داشته باشه که بتونه از انتقادی باشه انتقاد بکنه این شعرا رو وقتی سه چهار بار که میخونم تو حافظم میمونه با اینکه سن من الان دیگه هفتاد و نه سالمه ولی خب با این حال باز شعری که میخونم چون حالت انتقادی داره در حافظه من میمونه عزیز آره زیباد. ما با حسی همه این شعراتون رو فیلم برداری بکنیم و همینطوری فقط بتونیم پخش بکنیم که دیگران هم لذت ببرن خواهیش میکنم لط دارید من هر موقع شما ارده بفرمایید در خدمتون هستم ساله رو به کار میدازم که بیشتر فیلم برداری بکنه که نه بتونیم پخش بکنیم ما سه دقیقه دیگه مهمون بعدی ما میادش برای قبل از اینکه الهامو بیاریم شما دو دقیقه بفرمایید یه پیام نوروزی میشود کنیم بگیم میدونم با شعر گفتیم ولی از خودتون 
بعد از شفت که از سمیم قلب خودم این پیامو به تمام ایرانی ها البته اگر چشمام اجازه بده تبریک میگم آرزو میکنم که این سال سال نو در مرحله اول پر از خیر و برکت و سلامتی برای عزیزان باشه تمام ایرانیان در هر گوشه ای از دنیا در مرحله دوم آرزو میکنم ایرانیان داخل کشور کسانی که در داخل کشور زندگی میکنم سال خوبی داشته باشم نعمت بتونه به سمت اونا بره بتونن از شر این آخوندا و این حکومت جهنمی نجات پیدا بکنن و سال خوبی داشته باشن در هر صورت برای همه ایرانیان من آرزوی سلامت و سالی نو پر از خیر و برکت و سلامتی براشون آرزو میکنم در کنار شما خیلی خیلی ممنون آقای کازمی We're gonna have Mr. Kazumi join us a little bit later too for another poetry خیلی خیلی ممنون دوباره که این وقت رو میذارین روز نوروز که میدونم چقدر مهمه واسه هم همه این واقعا این لطف خیلی بزرگی داریم میکنه که برنامه ما رو بهتر بکنه سایش میکنم در خدمتون هستم عزیز روز به خیلی بعدا میبینم شما رو دوباره خدا حافظ پیش پیش نوروز روزم پیروز بلکه فکر میکنم شما رو بعد از سال تعویل میبینیم دوباره زنده باید قربان شما خدا حافظ so, so that was another great segment with Mr. Kazemi استاد بزرگ پدر ساره کازمی I'm so grateful to have met this incredible family و uh, he's, he's trying to I'm uh, trying Yeah, no problem. Madam Angusha is a big fan of the problems. No problem. But after that, we have now Elham Jum. Elham, please make sure that you request to join so that I can patch you in. Um, in the meantime, I would love to hear from you guys in the chat. What's your favorite part of Nooruz? If there's something that you'd like the most, is it the Hapsin? Is it the family? Is it the music? Is it... Bue aid, you know, so go ahead and share that with me as we wait for Eli Jun to to join. Let's see if um, hopefully she'll do that sooner than later. In the meantime, this is a great opportunity for me to remind you about um, Wednesday nights, countdown to freedom in Iran. Every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, on my IG Live, me and my fellow uniters uh, that are producing this program, we present to you an hour program that has the latest news and updates featuring Paris Mansouri, who's our awesome um, um, journalist, and she puts so much effort and due diligence into presenting the latest news out of Iran. And then we have Uniter's updates, and then we have like a mindful moment, and we have um, a mental health minute, and a lot of great stuff. And then we always have a special guest, and the special guest is always somebody that is uh, using their platform to raise awareness about Iran. So this one is going to be episode number 12. It's going to feature Chelsea Hart. And um, Chelsea has been one of the loudest, if not the loudest voice from non-Iranian's perspective, um, speaking on behalf of Iran. So this Wednesday, Chelsea Hart, looking forward to having her. Bah, bah, Eli Jun, Durud Bashama. Durud Bashama. Oh, I love, I love the eggs. And uh, is that part of your half scene, I'm assuming? Yes. 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 Eli, I'm I thought that you'd bring a little bit Aiden Oru's uh, spirit. Thank <laughs> you. I love to stop here. I want to show you some, some few stuff that I... Oh, yeah. Actually, actually, perfect. Go, go, ahead. go ahead and describe oh, each element. Really? Okay. Uh, so I should start with the fish. I usually get uh, live fish, but this time I decided to get this fish. You made Maybe a lot I of made Made a lot of people happy by having no real fish. It's good. Yes, good I'm not going to do that anymore. And usually I, uh, I put um, Quran here, but this year I decided I just start my, my year with my uh, God most merciful. So I, I thought um, I want to be one with everybody. I don't want to choose any religion. I just want to be uh united with all people i don't feel like it anymore i'm i'm still a muslim but <laughs> i want to say that we are all one and um, we are we have one creator and um 
you have to be united. And um, this is my horse. As you know, I have a background of Kurdish. So we love horses, we're proud of the horses. And uh, horse elements of um, um, heroism and um, being tough and uh, calm. And I have a little surprise here with the king. I usually don't put this, but it's a, it's a lion. Wow. I got this chair because of Shirzan, but this is a <laughs> sheer sheet. And I made this task with it. Love it. So we pray with it. And oh, I love this one. My Iran. All right. I love this. What else I should show you? And uh, I have some small knickknack here. Oh, my sake. Beautiful. You need some money for sure. Everybody money needs some money. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> and I have to add some stuff. I was running around and up apple of as course. health uh, for a health. And, and you apple know, a day I keeps a doctor away. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. My grandpa, um, he um, passed away age of one something, one ten probably. He was way too old. It was just I thought we thought he's not gonna die ever. Really, <laughs> <laughs> shot. shot. But he had apple every day, one apple a day, and one apple at night. And I was like, whoa! And he believed in it, and I saw the results. Anyway. I, I, I hope I hope you're having two apples a day too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. I have allergy to it, actually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> so thank you for inviting me yeah, um, as a guest. I'm honored and um, happy to be part of Uniters. I love you all. It's our honor. So yeah, so I mean, for those who don't know, Eligen, we met uh, here in South Florida. You know, we've been very blessed to have a group of individuals that have come together. about like the, the the thing that you created um is it called like a drape or something like what what was it called um how do you call it the one that you had like the whole writing on it and you open like a wing oh the the zanzan digi azadi i made it like a chador like yeah. people wear um as a hijab and my message was like um you can be free with it or without it it has nothing to do with hijab we respect all people with hijab and uh, it's it's it doesn't matter what you wear it's matter what you have in heart and your soul and um i'm hoping that one day um, probably i'm not going to be alive then but <laughs> one day every um creature in the planet be happy and healthy and they understand each other and have a, a good life in this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful earth. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, quick question for you. What, uh, what, what was the last time that you spent uh, Nowruz in Iran? Um, I was there 21 years ago, but I remember my mom, I lost my mom unfortunately when I was almost 16, after um, I 16 years old. So, um, but I remember, and I still have all the picture, even if the eight and Oruz was 4 a.m., she woke us up, we had to put dress on, we had to all flowers, we had to take a picture, we had to go through everything, even if it's like 4 a.m., doesn't matter. We put the song, we dance, and I had my mom, I, I was with her a very short time, but I learned a lot from her. Um, in the day that she was in pain or whatever, still she put a smile on, she put a colorful dress on, and she showed me that go one day at a time, you will make it. Those were, those were encouraging words for sure. Um, we're definitely missing um, our loved ones on this important day. And we're just, we're all we're all just trying to continue to uh, make them proud, you know. Like they 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 were so wise, and and I think I'm speaking for myself at least. You know, you take them for granted, you know. Like the moms and dads who they sacrifice so much, and so when they pass, you just hope that you can uh, make them proud in in every which way of or, or possible. And 
you've been doing it for sure on your end, Eddie John. You've been such an integral part of what we've been doing at Uniters. Parchame Kordesano, you raised. Parchame Girano, you raised. And, um, you know, I, I always appreciate your your honesty. You know, we were talking about it at the Bokhche event that, you know, you, you always know where you stand on something, you know, and that's very important for connections. You know, it's a very sincere trait that you have. I appreciate and, um, yeah. it's been it's been great to have uh, met you um, in the last few minutes I get for our hambatans and if you have any messages of hope for our Iranians uh, I would love for you to spend the next couple of minutes to just kind of uh, share whatever it is that you have in your heart um, اون صفا و صمیمیتی که توی خون ما هست و تو کالچر ما هست از شعرامون از غذامون از عشقی که داریم خواهش میکنم نذارین خب این دولت جمهوری اسلامی فتنه به وجود میاره هی نفاق به وجود میاره هیچ نفاقی نیست و خواهش میکنم تعارف رو بذارین کنار و یه چیزی که من واقعا برام مهمه ولی که میگی آنس حرف میزنی بگم از اندو خواهش میکنم اگر حرفی میخواین به کسی بزنین به دوستی آشنایی به خودش بزنین با عشق بگین با احساسی بگین که واقعا از ته قلبتون بگین طرف میفهمه با متلک این متلک و از تو کالچرمون تنها چیزی که من دوست ندارم و پیچوندن حرفه اگه پیچ... پی... حرف پیچیده نشه همش عشق به بق... سو تفاهم پیش میاد به خاطر همین من خواهش میکنم به عنوان یه زن به عنوان یک همبتن ازتون خواهش میکنم که بعضی موقع نگین آه طرف این نه فقط آنست باشین همون جوری که میخواین دیگران باهاتون رفتار کنن همون جور باهاشون رفتار کنین ما ملت عشق هستیم و باید عشق رو به نسل های آینده خودمونم نشون بدیم امیدوارم یه روزی بچه های من خاطری خوبی از من داشته باشن بگن آخه مادرمون روحش شد <تصفيق> ایدا این کار رو میکرد خدا جوره این باشه فقط خواستم بگم ما خیلی عزیز از دست دادیم این سال گذشته ولی افتخار میکنم به تمام مادرها به بچه ها و فرزندان ایران و پدرها که واقعا قوی هستن با خانم دایم صحبت میکردم گفت نمیدونی برای چارشن به سوری چی کار کردن و باعث افتخارین کیپ اپ دی گود ورک ما برای اینی که هم خوشگلیم هم پول داریم ایرانیا هم کالچر داریم خیلی دنبالمونه پس مواظب خودمون باید باشیم دشمن زیاد داریم پس هرچی هم دیگر رو بیشتر دوست داشته باشیم ساپورت کنیم زندگی بهتری برای خودمون و نسل های آینده بون خواهیم داشت دوستتون دارم words thank you so much and um speaking of support if you're in south florida and you need to get a nice hairstyle done <laughs> this is one of the queen bees of it you can follow our instagram ellie lux she hair i think the ladies mona are dropping it in the comments i appreciate uh, that. as soon as my hair gets longer i'm coming to you okay? <laughs> um but uh but again thank you for everything you do at unite and conquer thank you uh, I, I want to say thank you to you actually uh you create this you made us it just you're awesome thank you thank you for for your we, we we made us we all made us you know we're all we're all part of this great nucleus we're all little atoms that yeah. together we're this nucleus so um appreciate everybody that believes in everything that we've been doing including yourself i wish you and your family an amazing uh noruz and a happy sort of tavir and i hope that next year we get to be in kurdistan and you get to give us a tour of your incredible um uh land so we're going to be hopefully celebrate in honor of your yeah. grandpa yeah i'm i'm going to start eating a lot of apples i don't care if you're allergic to it if your grandfather lived 110 you years because he had two yes, apples i'm having a few apples my mom would be very happy because she's been trying to feed me apples my entire life so maybe she knew something that i don't know about yes. um but yeah and uh and uh have a wonderful rest of the day. Beautiful outfit. Thank you for eight. Don't me the dinner. Bye bye me the outfit. Hold off. Thank you Elijun. Bye bye. Namaste. All right.
Oh, namaste. And the namaste too. Namaste like that. means we are all one. Just want to add that. Oh, we that's very cool. One. I actually it's, did not know that. Important to know yeah. that. We, all, we are all one. And namaste. Namaste. <laughs> All right, so we got a little bit of um, yoga in today's live stream as well. If you're just tuning in, this is the celebration of Nowruz 1402. Although Paris is going to tell us later how um, it's not really 1402. You can go ahead and log off. Um, yeah, thank you. Chance, you? Um, there's actually a lot more years than just 1402. So hopefully it's no offense to anybody. I know that we go beyond that, but you know. Most people know it as 1402. But anyway, it's a 12 hour live stream. We're going to be here all the way until 11, 11 p.m. Eastern. A lot of awesome uh, guests are still coming. Somebody's asking, can you uh, list all of your IG guests? Um, I will do it for when we um, post it on YouTube. But in case you want to know who's coming up uh, in just a couple of minutes, I'm taking a little bit of a break. Um, but we're going to have a segment led by Paris Mansuri, Shiva Saber, and Mona Hairi. These are awesome uniters. Um, I just knew that the only way that I can sustain 12 hours is by walking, getting a little stretch in. And so they're going to be doing a, a segment talking about some important stuff, some facts about Nowruz that you're going to like. When it comes to facts about Iran and Nowruz, uh, Paris Mansuri is the queen bee of that. So, uh, and yeah, art by Nolibug, it's 2582. Yeah, so technically it's a celebration of Nowruz 2582. Uh, but yeah, so in just a couple of minutes, we're going to have these lovely ladies come on, waiting for them to hop on. And um, But yeah, upcoming guest is going to be Dr. Nusha Lajavardi. She's been a, a uniter in South Florida, been doing a lot of stuff to help with the calls to action. And then we have uh, Pej Ahmadi. He's, he's got a podcast. I had a pleasure of being on his podcast uh, a couple months ago. He's doing whatever he can uh, to also spread awareness about Iran. And then we have have uh, Afsaneh Afsahi, the amazing therapist that has been going above and beyond to amplify the voice of Iranians and help them out with their mental health needs and so much other, the emotional um, challenges. Uh, she's been a true trooper in this revolution. There's a lot of great people. Donya Del Suz, Fadi Najafi of Iranian Knows, uh, Dr. Shiva Jahani. We're going to have Goldi Ramari. She's a uh, part of the parliament in Canada. We got our other therapist, Shala Nikpur. We got Namito, the incredible DJ. We got um, a lot of cool people coming up. So, but for right now, we have Paris coming and Mona coming. I'm excited for these ladies to be running this segment. Here they are. Paris June, how are you? Hi. Oh, the light. I, I'm my hair is horrible. <laughs> oh, well. You got the it vibe. is what it is. You're live. <laughs> <laughs> Paris, 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 you look wonderful. I'm to look human, you don't look you guys. so sick. <laughs> well, that, that, I was wondering why you look so familiar. There's a lot of Cubans in Miami. It sounds like you look No, familiar. I said human. <laughs> Oh, I thought you said Cuban. Human. No, human. I'm trying to look human. <laughs> you look great. Uh, I, I know that you're fighting uh, a lot of full, like cold or flu or allergies. So thank you so much for still making time to make our program better. Of course. And uh, we're going to have Shiva join, join us as well. So we got this dynamic trio coming up. And um, first of all, Pish Pirosun, Ada, Noruza Piruz. Um, and there's Shiva Jun. All right. So great to have Shiva on IG Live. Woohoo. So great to hi, see hi, you. Hi, everyone. Hi. It's good seeing you. Hi, this Paris. Is a, this, this is the awesome trio that's going to be running the a segment for another like 20, 30 minutes or so. Uh, Paris, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about Nodus, but we're going to talk about Nodus facts. And can I just highlight Dr. Lori Petito, who's watching? I think she's somewhere in Europe and she's saying Happy New Year. Thank you so much for tuning in. Honestly, the non Iranians as well, we're hoping that you're going to, well, first of all, we're grateful that you're celebrating with us, but we're hoping that you'll have some nice takeaways as well. Awesome. Yeah, so these lovely ladies have been co producing this program behind the scenes, putting together a nice program, and they're now co hosts. So I will step aside and just kind of uh, get a little refresher, but they're going to hold down the fort and I'll be listening into the background. So ladies, take the lead, do your thing. Can't wait to um, 
see you in about 20, 30 minutes. Bye, Jose. Thank you. I can't believe he's <laughs> trusting us with this. He's actually, guys, he walked away. Now I'm nervous. <laughs> I know. He's trusting <laughs> us with his audience. Let Forget him walk away before we say all the bad all things the we things. want to say. Guys, if you have any questions about Iman Hushman that everything. you did not feel comfortable asking him, now is the time to ask. Seriously. Ask so now guys, we have like 20 minutes. Um, so, Happy New Year, ladies. How is it looking for you guys there. on your end where you're at? Um, um, I was actually listening to um, how you didn't set up and have sin and you feel guilty about, you know, even and like celebrating and like I'm actually sitting next to my half scene and I decided it like yesterday that I do want to do a half scene um even though like the feeling is not the same ever since like you know I was in Iran my last um no rules in Iran I believe I was 16 so this is about 18 years ago and every year that I celebrate no rules and I set up my half scene for me it's not the same because like I always associated Nowruz with like visiting family and like the first place that we would go and visit was like my grandmother's house. And it's just has this sense of loneliness here that, you know, we don't have like the entire family will get together. I think like all together we we're around like 50, 40 people on the first day getting together, celebrating at my grandmother's. And it has not been like that ever since we left Iran. And you know, quite honestly, most of the Nuru's I'm just by myself, you know, or I get to see family like in the next couple of days. But the Salat Ahvil, the, that moment, I'm always just by myself. Um, I have like TV running or something watching the celebration. But, you know, like I felt guilty setting up a sofra. But like now I'm looking at my sofra. I'm like, there is, I know like all of of us are sad about everything that's happened in the past, you know, couple months. Um, but it's the little bit of joy and, you know, the celebration that we could bring into our life that gives us the power to continue going and be able to continue this fight. So it's, it's a little bit of mixed feelings and emotion for me. I actually don't, I mean, I, I have family in Iran still, but a lot of the people who I know, first of all, I don't have a large Iranian community around me where I'm at. So I'm always fascinated when I experience conversations with Iranians who have experienced Noruz, Charshan de Sudi and um, in Iran. And they, they tell me, especially the ones who are like over 20, who've had enough chance to experience it under different um not different laws, because we all know how the Islamic regime feels about Nowruz, but there's been times where it's been more lax, there's been time where it's been more strict. And the stories around needing to celebrate in hiding or needing to be worried about the celebrations and how you celebrate and how open you are with it or um, how free you are with it. Is that something that you also experienced? Um, I think for, for the most part, like, you know, I come from a Baha'i family. Um, so a lot of the times, you know, there was always that sense of that, who is getting arrested in the community. Um, and, you know, for the Baha'is, I know we're going to talk about, you know, the culture and, you know, we're ending the the month of the feast. For us, no Ruz is not just, you know, no Ruz. We have, you know, for us, it's like we've been fasting for 19 days. And this day is like, you know, a rejuvenation and a sp start of springtime as we reflected on everything the past 19 days by fasting. Um, so like, you know, I never felt when I was younger, I always felt that pressure um, that, you know, during school or things like that, we could not freely talk about the religion. But, you know, we were able to, for the most part, to celebrate the Nowruz the way that everyone else was, you know, we would go out and, you know, go to the bazaar, do all the shoppings and just that sense of, you know, springtime, especially in Shiraz. It's like, I might, I might be biased, but I think it's the most beautiful city in Iran um, with a lot of culture, with, you know, with a lot of history um, and that just that smell of spring. And here, like when I go out, like I can smell the trees, you know, blooming and all of that. Like I automatically associate that smell with Shiraz and Nowruz time. So I'm like, spring is coming. Um, I felt, you know, we felt a little bit of pressure, but for the most part, we were able to freely, um, 
you know, celebrate no rules and get together. Um, I think it got a little harder for my family, for my cousins, um, as I recall when we left Iran and things just got tougher. Um, but I think for the most part, what I remember, you know, it's the good times. And I do remember the hardships in school and knowing that we were always like pressured because, we, you know, we were practicing a different religion. But I would say for the most part, I remember the good things about Nowruz. You know, I never knew that Baha'is fasted before Nowruz. Like I had, I, I have to be honest, it's not a religion I've had a lot of exposure to and the learning I've had is just basic understanding of, oh, like, you know, it's, it's part of, you know, our Iranian community. We have Jews and Christians and Baha'is, but I don't have, I actually had no idea that, that the religion is intertwined with Nowruz as well. That's amazing. Because Islam is not, it has no association is, um, with, with Nowruz at all. And the fact. No, they, for us, it's like, you know, it's a 19 days of reflection um, as we fast. The fasting is very similar to, you know, from sunrise to sunset. Uh, we don't eat or consume, you know, water. But I mean, with children, the, our parents were always more relaxed with us. It's like, hey, if you need to like, you know, eat lunch, you know, eat during lunchtime when you're at school and, and also not to bring attention to us that, you know, we're practicing Baha'is. That was like part of it too. It's like, okay, if you were saying that we're fasting, there were a lot of questions around that from, you know, the schoolmates or even like the teachers. But it was really like, I mean, I don't, I was like, I always like resisted the fasting part. Like I would do a couple of days, but I would never do like the full on 19 days. But I, you know, I saw my family and my mom, you know, continuously like, you know, honoring that and reflecting and, you know, doing that for 19 days. Um, but it was also like a sense of that, hey, you know, we have reflected, now we are rejuvenated and it's a springtime and we're welcoming the new year and it the new so spring. Much sense. Like, you know, honesty, because I mean, don't we do that generally, like before the beginning of a new year, we always, you know, take a moment and, and reflect on the year past and what we want for the new year. And in, in you know, the Baha'i faith, you guys are mandated essentially to do that. It's like, okay, now we're pausing. Like, you know, the, the hustle yeah. and bustle is going to stop for a minute. You, you're going to really take in what's happened. It's it's so beautiful. Thank you for, honestly, that was, I think, the intent for the count, not countdown, but for, for this, for, for why Iman created, you know, the show today is to have these kind of conversations as well. And also for us to share um, these stories, because on, honestly, even we've had so many conversations generally in from countdown to lead up to this show and you've never said that and that that's really fat i'm like maybe we should all be fasting right before and maybe we should all be like because it's so it's like spring cleaning period because i'm not baha'i and so for us the lead up to noruz is always like rush hustle like clean everything make sure everything is like there's no dust left anywhere the food is ready like it's it's so much rushing until saltahir and i feel like what you just explained is so much more like let's pace ourselves when we started the khuna takuni like, when you know, were fasting and starving i always wonder i'm like well if you know, i was actually like I was cleaning a couple of days ago and I'm like, well, this is like almost my khuna takuni, right? Um, like cleaning up the entire house. I'm like, I don't know why we did it. Like, well, we waited. Like, did we really wait until the end of the year to like clean our house and dust the house? And, I mean, I honestly, I don't, maybe you could talk into that, but I don't really, like, I didn't get like, oh, we have to clean everything from top to bottom because the ruse is coming. I guess like I understand that the association with like the new year and springtime but i was always like why are we doing so much and i did always have that question i was like looking at my mom like you're fasting you know why are you doing so much um so yeah we still did all of that but you know in the meantime we also wanted to make sure we reflected on the entire okay. year no, as we went into the the fasting. one last question around it and then we'll we'll go on to the year because i noticed somebody said it's 2585 and We'll talk about that. We'll talk about other facts around Nowruz. But is there any other times during the year where Baha'is fast? Because in, in, for Muslims, they fast 
um, during Ramadan, but I don't know that they have any other fasting. And then Jew, uh, Jewish Iranians fast during, Yom, well, not just Jewish Iranians, uh, <laughs> people who practice Judaism fast during Yom Kippur. So I'm wondering for Baha'is, is this 19 day fasting period the only fasting period or do you have other ones? That's okay. Said. said, we only so not fast during Ram during You guys don't do Ramadan. It's Okay. No, so our calendar, um, our calendar year basically starts with the springtime. Um, so it's like each calendar day is 19 days. Um, so the last month of the, the basically the okay. calendar year is the 19 days. that we Monojun, you've traveled as well. You didn't always live in the U.S. What did Noruz look like for you as an Iranian child, teenager, adult? Oh my gosh. First of all, I don't want to talk because I love Shiva I stories. Uh, I, I want to hear more about that. <laughs> <laughs> I just, like, I want to just sit here and listen. Um, but uh, yeah, I, you know, we always did celebrate Noruz, but I, like many others, I was six when I moved out of Iran. I don't remember Noruz in Iran. Um, I do remember, even in Sweden growing up, I do remember us getting the goldfish, which we know better now, not to torture animals, so we don't do that anymore. Uh, actually, my aunt gave me a really beautiful bowl, and I'll do. I'll show you guys next year when I actually put up a half scene. It's a beautiful bowl with hand painted fish inside, goldfish inside. So when you put water in the bowl, it looks like they're moving. Gorgeous. So I use that for my half scene, and then. Um, and so I do remember us celebrating Noruz, but it was more like, you know, getting together with uh, friends and, and their families. And there's a lot more Iranians in Sweden than there are here in Miami. So we would get together, either invite them over or they, we would go to their house, you know, bring Shirini and, you know, hanging out with uh, friends, basically. Because we none of us had family members close to us, so we just hung out with friends, and um, so that's why it was very important to me to be with family and and teach what Noru stands for and all that to my child and my niece Amazing. and my nephew. I'm just looking over our chat. Hushang Academy says Happy New Noru's from Oklahoma. Thank you so much. We have Iranian knows who said Iman got fired. Listen. Talk to Mona and Shiva. I think uh, I, I think that was it. I think that was it. That's um, it. He's never coming sending back. Us flowers. No. Uh, thank you to everyone who's joined. If you have, look, I think living in the diaspora, we've all had our own experiences. Johnny, I see you're here. Hi. Uh, Miriam Aronson says, and you start definitely. We definitely all have our own experience. Like, our own unique experiences living in the diaspora as Iranians, especially like I know those who came as students and who literally had nobody. And, uh, you know, who like some of the guys I've met, um, I have a cousin who lived with us for a little bit when he moved here from Iran and some of his classmates also became friends and they like, they didn't know the first thing about setting up the half scene first time on their own. They're, they're men in their twenties and it's their first time on their own. And they have like no idea where to start. And it was really cute to see them try to like arrange little things here and there. And it, we, it, regardless of whether we had it down or we don't, whether we have a huge community or we don't, I really believe that sharing our stories is going to remind all of us that even in our differences, we're all very much pretty much the same. We're all, pretty much children of an orphan nation at one, at this point, um, regardless of whether we want to go back to the homeland or not, we are still partly connected to that. And we all have part stories that connect us not only to that, but to each other outside. So if you do have your own experiences that you want to share in the chat here, please do. If you're alone, this no rules, please know you're not. Iman is going to be here until 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be joining him on and off. So you will not be alone. We will definitely keep you company. And obviously, if you're sharing your message in this chat, we'll be able to, to respond and engage with you. So to all of you who are watching, Happy New Year, Pisha Pish. Is that how you're supposed to say it between English and Persian? 
<laughs> going back and forth. We see Amit <laughs> yeah. Tuja says Mona Jun has shared the traditions with her non-Iranian family as well. I'd love to hear that, Mona Jun. What does that look yeah. like for you? So it's uh, my um, sister's husband, she mentioned, is a Jewish American. And uh, so we make sure that they, they're involved and they learn about Noru's as much as our children do. And it's very nice. And they teach us about their Jewish traditions. So I, I love that, that we can share that with each other. And I want to give a shout out to Sasha, who is my brother-in-law's sister, that she has been a huge supporter of Iranians and like posting things constantly and even going to a 10 person rally in Providence, Rhode Island to support. So shout out to Sasha. Thank you for being there for us. It, and we really appreciate when non Iranians support us and uh, Honestly, we love you guys. It's like, especially when we live in a diaspora, like we see so many. Uh, I'm sure you guys see that in the in Miami with the Cuban community. I mean, we have to help each other out. And if we help elevate each other's voices in different communities, gives exposure, shares our stories. And even though we come from different nations, so many of our plights are are, are similar in so many different ways. So thank you to you. I see Dr. Lori mentioned here, and actually she might be a good guest uh, ladies, maybe for countdown. She says, my friend Sima Gol, an Iranian Jew, wrote her story, Fle Fleeing the Hijab. Super interesting. I've actually heard of this lady. She is Iranian um, of Jewish descent. And after 1979, her and her family did have to flee because of persecution. So thank you, Dr. Lori, for bringing that up and definitely something that we could perhaps look into and, and help share her story as well. We've heard, like, we get so much out of Shima Jun sharing her stories. It would be really amazing if we got more people from the community of different backgrounds. And again, when we're talking about facts, a lot of times we hear the word ethnic minority um, used in Iran. And it's really important to remember that we're, in, Iranians are equal in their identity. In North America, in Canada, in Europe, we have immigrant nations where so much of our nations are built out of immigration. And so we cling to our original nationality and we become hyphenated. So I'm Iranian Canadian, for example. I will never be fully considered Canadian and I will never be fully considered Iranian because I lived here my entire life, but I'm not a minority in Iran at all. Just like Shiva Jun is not a minority in Iran because her religion is of a, of a, 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 a smaller group that practices her religion. That's all. It is really important that we don't use the same uh, ethno-linguist terminology that we apply to our societies and to our population in North America. In Iran, Iranians are native to our land. So whether you are Baluch, whether you are uh, Gilak, whether you are Kashkai, whether you are Baha'i, Lod, Jewish, Christian, we are equally native Iranian and we identify as Iranian and whatever you are, just because you're Jewish, you're not a minority, you're Iranian, you have every right as an equal citizen of Iran and to be considered equal and not a minority. So I understand that it's a contentious term, but it's really something that we have to be aware of, especially in a nation that's 2,500 years old, actually more than that, but we have 2,500 years of written history to acknowledge that our citizens are equal and not minorities and that they should not be othered because they are just as Iranian as each other. And especially like my heart goes out to our Zoroastrian, to our Jewish, our Christian community. They predated the Islamic invasions, and those are the ones, the Baha'is, those are the ones that really withstood the, the forced conversions, the forced acclamation to something that wasn't there. And if we're looking, I mean, we're all looking at the heroes of our times, and we're looking at the heroes of history, the ones who are Jewish, the ones who are still Christian, the ones who are still Jewish, are the ones who withstood that kind of challenge. So it's incredibly inspirational. Those are the descendants of our greatest heroes. So let's celebrate them. Let's not call them ethnic minorities and let's celebrate them as the equal Iranians that they are. I will get off my soapbox now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, then that's yeah, absolutely. We'll for, um, right? The other thing I wanted to mm -hmm. talk about is that um, Shiva Jun, you mentioned the, the fish and the water. So it's something I don't know if everybody knows, but Zoroastrian. So Noruz is considered um, a Zoroastrian tradition. Zoroastrianism is the first monotheistic religion to exist. It predates Judaism. It has three tenets, which is good thoughts, good words, good deeds, 
won't go into those details, but essentially the concept of Nowruz dates back to Zoroastrianism and those traditions. It's extremely pagan. It is extremely non-Islamic. It is extremely non-Judaic. It's extremely non-Christian. Um, a lot of the symbolism in our half scene, which is um, basically a New Year spread that we put forward with different elements. They start with the letter S. Again, in the interest of time, I know Imam's going to be coming back shortly. Um, I won't go into it, but it's really important to remember that water in the Zoroastrian tradition is considered a living element. So a lot of people are like, oh, we put water in goldfish to symbolize life. You don't need the fish to symbolize life. In Zoroastrianism, water itself symbolizes life. In Zoroastrian tradition as well, keeping animals for pleasure or for uh, decoration is actually extremely anti-Zoroastrian. They don't do that. It is, an, it is not an accepted practice. So to trap a living fish in a tiny bowl is extremely anti-Zoroastrian. So I understand that a lot of people who put the spread, the Noru spread are not Zoroastrian, completely understood. But if you are putting a half scene together with the concept, uh, putting a fish in there is anti <laughs> concept of Noruz and what we're supposed to be putting together. I had Paris in my mind. I was like, um, I'm missing some things. So I just, you know, I was like, I, 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 I always have a goldfish. So I put them back in a tank. Um, I always have it like a fish tank, but actually all of my fish ended up like dying over the summer. So something was wrong with my tank. So I was like, okay, well, I don't have a fish. I'm not going to get a goldfish. So I'm going to repurpose all my tank and I'm just going to put some tulips in them this year. But I had you in my mind. I was like, if I post a picture with a goldfish, I get no, added by, but, you know. In all Paris, honesty, so. I but, had goldfish in my tank until six years ago, I would say. And it's, we're talking about Noru's tradition. So growing up, my community mo was mostly Jewish. My, most of my closest friends are Jewish. And uh, it always fell around the time of Passover, which is coming up for them. Um, and, but one thing they would always do for me, one of my best friends, she would bring me a goldfish because they would die, right? Because they're so, they're not supposed to be in a little bowl. They're supposed to be in a, in a tank besides the point. So every single year they would bring me one and the fish I have to this day, I have two goldfish left and it's from 16 years ago where she still would bring me goldfish. So that was, we, Noruz isn't something that I, first of all, I don't have a big family here. So it was always just my parents, myself and my brother. Uh, but my best friend would bring me goldfish. That was like my only external communication on Noruz. I didn't have what you have, Mona Jun. So thank you for sharing your story of inclusivity. It just felt like for me, Noruz was either around spring or around Passover. And all of my friends had their religious holidays that that kind of took precedence over it. So I never got to spend no ruse with anybody except my direct family. And that's coming from someone who has nine oh. aunts and uncles. So I really missed out. Uh, in Are they Iran, all in, in Iran? Europe, uh, in the US, a little all over the place. Everyone has their little satellite families. But yeah, so to those in Iran who get to celebrate yeah. and to like you guys who had, I know Shiva, um, Mona Jun, you said you don't have, you don't remember much, but Shiva Jun, the fact that you got to experience it in our homeland and in a city like Shiraz, I think um, it's very, very fortunate. It's amazing. Um, I always like, ever since I've come here, you know, like I, I've always told myself like that I would go back and I would go back. I would like to go back during Nauru's time because I just want to experience that again. And, you know, now I don't know if I can, you know, or who knows when I will, hopefully, you know, by next year, that is our wish. But, you know, I would love to be able to do that again. It's one of like, you know, one of our traditions. I would like to celebrate that, you know, back home. Um, and, you know, ever since moving here, a lot of other things, you know, to be included, you know, we celebrate Christmas on so many other, you know, holidays. But for me, nothing, you know, spring, I mean, I just, I, I do not like cold weather. I do not like winter and all of that. So it's like, for me, it's like a new beginning. And I would like to be able to celebrate that back home someday soon. I don't blame you. Yeah. How is it celebrating <laughs> in Sweden? I mean, there are a lot of Iranians, so um, so it was nice to be surrounded up with a bunch of Iranians. And, uh, you know, it was like you became friends with the 
kids of your parents' friends, and so you would hang out, uh, and and it was really it was fun. It was actually really fun, but we always felt this sense of like separation from not being close to our cousins and you know how Iranians in Iran have it you know uh, it, there's we are very lucky to have um, been away from the torture of Islamic re regime but at the same time they had the community, they had the Hambastegi that we didn't get to experience growing up outside. So uh, we suffered too, you know? Yeah. Go for it. Can you imagine what you're going to say? Well, I, I, same thing, you know, like, like I have eight, eight aunts and uncle as well. So um, some have passed away since I moved here, but my grandmother's still alive. And, you know, it's like that sense of not being with family and being separated all because, you know, the biggest reason for us was like, because we're Baha'i and we don't have access to education, we don't have access to a lot of things that as a human right, it's basic human right. That was like one thing that forced our parents to decide to basically migrate outside of Iran and they couldn't just watch us like not knowing what the future for us would look like um so I kind of you know blame the regime a lot for that and the separation that has come between me and my family and not being able to just have that big gatherings of you know all of the cousins all of the aunts and uncle coming together and I just feel like there is a huge division, you know, between me and my family. I have some of my aunts and uncle here, you know, in Texas, and then directly in Virginia. So for me, the past, you know, 18 years, it's just been me and my parents and my sisters and brothers pretty much. Um, so I do feel like that separation from my family and putting a half in here and celebrating, it's like my way of connecting with them and connecting with the culture and I just hope that, you know, they appreciate that. And I feel like I'm missing out a lot. And I know they get together and they celebrate um, as best as they can, you know, still coming together. But I would love to be part of that again. And just to be with them. Okay, I'm like, but literally, every time you share your stories, I feel like there's so much I mean, as much as we all know, I think the emotional understanding of what it's like to be an Iranian who's been persecuted just by, by virtue of their identity is is not it's not it's not a, a it's not hard to get at all. What it is is just hard to comprehend and hard to internalize because somebody like me who's not Baha'i, I have like that connection to the homeland the same way that you have a connection to the homeland, but the difference is that your homeland has a leadership that rejects you. Like, that is, that is the hardest, like, ugh, I need to get a, like, a sense of my feelings, you guys, seriously, but I can't imagine, it's like loving a parent and wanting to be part of the family, but the parent constantly being like, nope, you're, you're not only not one of us, but I will actively, do my best to make you feel like you're not part of us. And the the strength of the Baha'i community and the desire and in, in what you guys do in maintaining your beliefs, but also the connection to the homeland is so incredibly commendable because I can't imagine, like we're all fighting for Iran, but and you're fighting for Iran too, but you're fighting on so many different levels as well. And when you're speaking about your your family and wanting to maintain like their traditions and, and the customs, all while being persecuted is is I, you know, we talk about emotional trauma and when what we've all suffered. There's so many deeper layers that goes with it for you that I just find it incredibly commendable, honestly. And I honestly like all of the Baha'is are in Iran. You know, um, I mean, I wish I could do more for them. And I see their fight and I see them getting arrested even throughout this revolution. They were getting arrested and being blamed for the cause of the revolution. And, you know, I, I want to like do more. And part of, you know, the Baha'i culture, we're not really supposed to get involved with politics. But, you know, for me this time around, I was like, this is the, I cannot just 
keep standing here and watch, you know, the Baha'i community getting prosecuted or, you know, their life taken away and just, you know, just because they're practicing a different religion, you know, we're all Iranian. So this time it's, it's different, but I wish, you know, I wish for a freedom and a free Iran, but mostly like, I hope with that freedom comes, you know, a day that the Baha'is can freely practice the religion as they wish um, and have access to a lot of the things that everyone else has access to education or just, you know, a lot of different things. Um, and not being afraid in school or, you know, a lot of different things that a lot of us have, you know, experienced. And some of my cousins are here in Texas and they had the similar experience as we, as I did. Um, so I'm very, very fortunate that I was able to be, come here, but still like my heart beats for my people in Iran, my heart beats for my family and my heart beats for the Baha'i community. And I'm truly, I will be doing everything that I can to help. To anyone who's watching who um, doesn't know what Shivajan is referring to when she says the other things, uh, the Baha'i community doesn't have access not only to education, but to every other government provided benefit. So full access to healthcare is denied to our Baha'i brothers and sisters. Um, full access to education, to support programs, to government programs, to government aid, to government care, to scholarships. They are not able to have access not only to that, but they're also not able to be part of the regular workforce either. So um, Shiva Chun is really <laughs> mincing her words, but truly they are citizens of a country where they are denied access to everything that that country provides. Um, and despite all of that, this, this is the kind of uh, woman that has been created, somebody who's still willing to fight for that country and who will still stand with not only her people, but with others uh, in the nation, um, just honestly hoping for, for something better and for something brighter, which is incredible. I hope I, I, I explained that properly, Shiva Chun. You did, and you know, and and like us being here, but there are a lot of them that are still in Iran and they're not willing to abandon the country. They believe that this is their homeland and there shouldn't be, you know, um, one of them being my cousin. You know, we have had many conversations that, you know, why don't you guys leave, you know, come here. But, you know, he's like, this is my homeland. This is my country. I shouldn't be forced out of it because of my religion. So I'm going to stay here and make a future for myself, even with the limited resources. Exactly. Iman Jun, welcome Thank back. You so much ladies i was i was, was in your the back, i was in the background listening to most of it so that was a great conversation appreciate you guys having it appreciate mona jun and shiva jun always willing to share honestly um are there are there last minute facts that you want to share in this segment here no but I think the Uniters are the coolest group of people you've put together in your life. Uh, I would love you to plug your t-shirt again some more. Oh, yeah, sure. So this, our previous guest, um, her name was Dina Nasser Hadimi, and this is part of our Posted Forward uh, w, woman, WLF uh, campaign that she's been doing uh, in different languages. And then the last line is always, um, different based on which parts of the world that they're running these collectives. Very cool, uh, cool story. And I highly recommend people uh, following uh, her Instagram, the post it forward uh, WLF, and you can find out more about it. But we have it here in Kurdish. We have it here in English. And then this one is, is it French? French and Spanish French. and yeah. then and then Persian. Mm -hmm. Some might accidentally say Farsi, but it's Persian. I know I heard i heard but it's okay one step at a time but for the uniters still saying farsi and for the uniters still discussing putting goldfish it's clear they're not watching countdown weekly i just want to say what well, one step at a time one step at a time we're trying to convert people. um so yeah so uh, so up next uh, in case you guys are interested we have um dr nusha lajavardi uh, she's one of our uh, uniters and she's been so active in creating call to action, which is super important. You know, it's one thing to bring awareness and then there's a call to action part of it. That is the second part of this whole process of how we can be impactful. So I wanted to make sure that um, we have a chance to highlight what she's been doing and 
Um, she can tell us what she believes is the most important things that we could be doing to bring attention to what's happening in Iran. And then we have Pej Ahmadi coming afterwards. I met Pej. Pej. He reached out to invite me to his podcast, and uh, I just love what he's doing. So I wanted to make sure that people get to know about him. And then we have Afsana Afse, who she was one of our countdown guests a few weeks ago. Looking forward to having her. And then uh, we got Mr. Kazemi coming to give another one of his poems. How awesome has Sada's dad been? Okay. okay. I was trying to put my eye makeup Amazing. on. Like, if I look wonky, I'm not joking. Tearing. When, <laughs> how does he do it by heart? And then, and then again, I'm like, this is Persian poetry. This is rooted in so many per like Iranian people to have that in them. And Shiva Jun, you're shaking your head. I'm sure, like, we've all seen it. My mom has that capacity, too. Like, you know how an English will, like, early bird gets the worm. Like, you know how usual it is to, like, come like you know come up with like these little quick sayings well for those who aren't aware in iranian tradition iranians regardless of where we are in the world we have that one person in the family who will go into this long like beautiful poetic diatribe so you'll ask them a question and they'll wax philosophical but in poetry and i just feel like Sarajun's father encapsulates that and at one point because i was doing like i said i was doing my eye makeup so i didn't know that he wasn't reading it i didn't know like that he was actually verbally saying it and when you brought it up i'm like <laughs> i was like oh my god <laughs> it was truly touching i don't know if it did it for you guys but i was like doo -doo 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 -doo. it Same. blows my mind every time it's ridiculous i mean he, see, we see our bike bags says my mom is like that too doctor saw my father too see it's you guys other people he's been he's been phenomenal okay. um yeah so i mean um if there's if there's anything else that you ladies would like to share you got the next few minutes um to do so please and then we're going to bring on nusha jim so yes um <laughs> okay what year is it? <laughs> so here's the thing i saw somebody write that it's 2585 in the chat is that wrong? am i crazy yeah. Somebody wrote 2585, right? That's yeah, okay. Guys. So then yeah. I went into my yeah. deep dive yeah. of research and I found this site called Iran Politics Club and they have a way to measure the calendar. Um so there's Persian Imperial calendar the with the western year which is the current western year plus 559 years which is according to the declaration of the empire by king cyrus the great um and then there's the persian imperial year which is hijri shamsi year which is the hijri shamsi year whatever that is which i don't know what that is right now plus 1180 years and then there's a hijri qamari year plus 1138 so I'm not sure what the Hijri Shamsi year is, and I don't know what the Qamari year is. Do either of you know? Sun. I think Shamsi refers to the sun correctly. Um, so it has to do with, I guess, the circulation of the sun or something like that. I'm not sure. But you what might have to fact check year me. is it if it's the Hijri Shamsi year? That's what I'm trying to figure out. So I don't know what year it is according to those two, but... Um, it's 25, if we're going to go to the imperial calendar year, with the, which is the Western year plus 559 years, it's 2023 plus 559, which is 2,582. So I know somebody said 85, but I'm going by this fact website and it's saying that it's, it's 2,582. Now, if we're going to go down in history, um, as we know, um, we had an invasion uh, in 661 and uh, they kind of reset our calendar we reset it back but now in 1979 they set it back yet again which is why a lot of us including Iman Jun say that it's 1402 no I'm guilty <laughs> but it's totally okay I mean obviously we can uh, technically right now it is 1402 legally in Iran we can't go by an imaginary year but if you wanted to go by that imaginary year and go by the imperial calendar it's 2582 if you want to go by the, I'm going, okay, the 
old, if we're not going by the imperial calendar, but by the calendar that came before that. It was a religious calendar. I don't know the name and I don't want to say it just in case that information is wrong. But their date is 3761. So it's in individuals who don't necessarily want to go by Kurosh's crowning and who say we're in 3761. But if for anyone, you, we just want to all agree, forget the religion, forget the crownings and the kings and the imperial and all of that. And if we want to go back in time, according to our ancient calendar, it's the year 7,035. I like that but one. Yet, but, yep. but yet nobody That's uses the one. it. When was That's the last the one. time you saw a celebration of Nuru 7035? You, you know what, <laughs> Paris? I tried to fire him. He keeps coming back. Nobody listens to me. He keeps saying 1402. That's so funny. <laughs> Get with I, I it, Iman. I'll change it for next year. It'll be 17, 7036. But Iman, when it's funny, when you left, Iranian yes. knows was like, I think it was being funny. He was like, did, did Iman get fired? So that was the joke. So in case anyone wonders, he's back. So not really fired. But yeah, 7035, you guys. And it's, I mean, you have in the mountains of Meiman cities that are over 10,000 years old, like cities built in caves that are over 10,000 years old. So our history spans way longer than 7,035, but let's not reset the clock, you guys. Maybe with this revolution, we, go, we can go back to the future, to 7,035. That would be amazing. All right, ladies, well, I appreciate you all um, for covering a lot of um, this time frame, the last 30, 40 minutes. It gave me a nice little break. I was able to have some Adasi, and I'm waiting for the real Sabzi Polo Mahi to come soon. But um, I, know, I, I know I'll Is see you all a little bit there? later uh, throughout the whole program. So appreciate what you guys are doing. Make sure you enjoy family time as well. And we shall see you soon. Can you say something? Sorry, before we go, I just want to acknowledge the people who are chatting. Um, Moonlight says I'm from Panama and I couldn't understand why they do that, but it's beautiful. Um, and then it says, yeah. It's and the then poetry. Retail therapy clinic says it has to do with offsetting leap years. Oh, okay, good to know. Good to know. That's that's a, that's a good indication of where to head next. Um, and then it should be oh for the retail therapy clinic again. It says it should be dated to the establishment of the Cyrus Cylinder, which is what the origin of the Achaemenid Empire dates to. Very cool. I didn't know that the origin of the Achaemenid Empire dates to the establishment. Did you guys know this? I didn't know it was one and the same. Look. How could you not know this, Paris? We all know this. <laughs> no, but I didn't know that the cylinder <laughs> was the establishment of the Achaemenid Empire. I thought it was a, I thought it was established before, but then he did the, the after he conquered lands beyond the beyond um, basically got to, to Egypt and Greece. I thought that's when the the cylinder came out. That's a conversation for another day. But thank you for more research. I'm gonna go now. Oh, that's when it became an empire, retail? not just a monarchy. Count on retail therapy clinic to uh because it marked the conquering of it did mark the conquering of Babylon, the free freeing of the Jews and giving them enough money to go build their temple. That that I know, Dr. but Sal. I didn't, I'm fully aware, <laughs> but I don't know that that's the establishment of, anyways, we'll look into it. I don't know everything, Dr. Song. I'm getting schooled right now by a doctor, by a retail therapy clinic, and I love it. But yes, we're aware. We just need to get the date straight. I'm going to go, Iman's like, can I do my show? <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I'm, I'm actually enjoying this because Sorry, I'm waiting Sorry, for Iman. to join, but she's not joining yet. So the conversation shall continue until she comes, please. Okay, can I say thank you to all the people that are joining us from everywhere in the world? I saw people from Spain, from Sweden, from everywhere, and I love that. Thank you. Yes, for sure. I saw my cousin joined in. I believe he's in Dublin. So <laughs> hi to you if you're still on. Thank you everyone for joining. I saw my sister oh, join it. as well. I'm not sure I if she's it. still on. So well, Nusha Juna just requested to join, so oh, we're going to go ahead and transition out of it. But I appreciate this wonderful segment you guys created, uh, and we'll see you guys soon. Uh, oh, take care, ladies. See you later. As soon as one of them leaves, I'll be able to click. There we go.
There she is. Hi, Nusha Jun. Hi, Imanju. How are you? You were taking Good, some pictures of the you? half scene and you forgot about us for a second, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was joining in and I was like, do I request to join? Should I wait? So yeah, you guys were fine. deep in the history talk. So I you know, wanted to- First of all, I love all the tulips break. around you. Beautiful green dress. Thank you. So I'm in the Noru spirit. It's my favorite holiday. Mm -hmm. um, tulips are my favorite flower. Um, second Beautiful. is hyacinth, so sambon. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much Very for being a be part of uh, this little program. I wanted to make sure that we highlight as many of our awesome uniters as possible. And from the very beginning, even though you weren't technically a uniter until recently, you've been, uh, you've been waving the uniters chat and doing so much. And from the very beginning, it was very important for you to make sure that there's actionable items that were really making an impact. So I wanted you to kind of speak to that. Take us back to five, six months ago and how, while you were super busy running your own yeah. dermatology clinic and having your beautiful children and husband, that you were like, I need to make sure that I make time yeah and that I do uh, this, and this is what you did. The call to action was what you were spearheading. So tell us all about it. Yes, so, you know, like so many other Iranian Americans or Iranians in the diaspora, I felt so drawn to this movement. Um, I felt drawn in 2009, and then when it picked up again in September after the death of Masa Amini, um, I had to do, you know, anything and everything. Um, and thanks to you for coordinating the very first rally, I think it was the end of September, um, which I was there with my entire family and we continued to attend the protests. And as things continue to, uh, continue to progress, there were a lot of these so-called petitions, action items. And I distinctly remember it was uh, before the October 22nd global protest day. Um, Sade Kazemi, who is one of our main uniters and just so amazing, um, we got on the phone and I and we were talking and I said, Sade, like there has to be something more that we can do, that I can do beyond just attending these rallies. Um, there's so much out there. How do we navigate? How do we get our community to participate? Signing petitions, emailing representatives, and so forth. And you know, I have to give her credit. She said, you know, what if we make or in, encourage people to um, engage in these action items at the events. And we can do this, maybe you could have a table. Um, and then from there, I said, okay, what if we have QR codes displayed that would directly link to petitions, directly link to phone scripts, um, email templates, just make it as easy and seamless as possible for the community to engage. Um, I think that some of the obstacles are, are just that feeling that one may have that they can't do more or how do they do more um so when you present people with easy options it's just it's just so much um it, it, so much easier really it's and it's so, so interesting to kind people. of like hear back the conversations you guys were having because you know this is our first time going through a revolution like this at this time uh i mean we've always we've had these waves throughout the years but this was like the first time that really so many people felt like this could be it. So many people getting into the streets. And then, um, you know, last time around, you know, QR codes and call to actions might not have been a thing. So we were all kind of learning as we go, you know. And so it's very interesting to kind of see, um, you know, how, how what the catalyst was of how you got involved because you were truly making an impact. Like those people were going uh, to the protests and, you know, doing those things. So it's been great. Yeah, they were coming up to our table and i think exactly what you said the technology has advanced so much over the years um through social media and different avenues and um you know why not make use of it in this really great productive way and so you know it evolved from petitions to email transcripts to phone scripts i mean people don't even know how to find out who their local representative is and so connecting that and realizing that you can make a change because we are constituents and we have this, um, you know, this right in our country to speak our voice. You just have to do it through the appropriate avenue. And maybe everyone doesn't understand what that is, but we can help. And so that was really my calling and still is. Um, and now, you know, we're at the point of the MASA Act and there's been a lot of sponsorship and hopefully we can get that moving to codify sanctions. Um, you know, and the momentum is going, you know, there's highs and lows of this revolution, but I really feel it's about unity and, and every 
um, Iranian in the diaspora so feeling that act, they can make a difference. I was going to ask you, like, right now, if you had a magic wand and you can get every Iranian to do one thing, let's talk about America because some of the call to action, you know, is more uh, relevant yeah. to this country. Um, what, 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 is, yeah. what, what should every Iranian American in this country be doing right now? an excellent question. Every single Iranian American should be contacting their local representative and their senator to ask them to support the MASA Act. You know, the MASA Act is about um, codifying sanctions that already existed against the regime so that they are not overturned. It's about um, basically making sure that we alienate the regime, making sure that we are not negotiating with regime leaders, because if our country does that, then we're just empowering the regime. And we're going against the direct what our brave people are fighting for, freedom for Iran. Um, so this is something that we can do. And, and truly, our Congress, women and men, they'll listen to us if we say it together, if we're a unified community. But if we don't speak up, then of course, they're going to vote. They're going to vote um, the way that they feel is best, but they're there to represent our feelings, our opinions. So every single Iranian American should be contacting their local representative, their senators, talking about the MASA Act. They don't have to answer. It's about leaving a message, about emailing. Um, if they do want to request a meeting with them, that's even better. You know, a lot of um, Iranian Americans have been doing that. But you know, I really subscribe to the feeling that you know, individually we're a drop, but together we're an ocean. But we can only be an ocean yeah, and, if and we take action. When is like, when do they actually take a vote on this? Is, like, is there like a deadline for having everyone do this? So um, when, I believe when Congress is in session and so forth, it'll come to the Senate. Um, and then from there, they can take a vote. But right now, I know Massa Townsend, for example, is pushing for senators to continue to sponsor. Um, and then, of course, for representatives to understand what this act is and to vote in our favor um, so that we can continue to right. support our compatriots. just mentioned, it takes a minute. Do it every day. So there, there's no stopping this thing. We have to continue to push forward. We have to continue to push forward. It's awesome. the only way, and we uh, can do it In closing, Mr. Jun, I want to make sure you have an opportunity to share any type of notice message you have for our people, any messages of hope for Iran, Iranians. The virtual stage is all yours. Yes, thank you. Um, you know, Noruz is so near and dear to all of our hearts. It's, it's really one of the most, or the most important um, holiday we have. It's, it's transcended thousands of years. Um, and my wish and, you know, Noru's wish and message to all Iranians inside and outside of Iran is um, happiness, success. Um, our collective wish is a free and democratic Iran. And, and I truly believe we're going to reach that together. Um, I'll say uh, a tabik in Farsi too. Noru ze hamegi. تبریک میگم سال نو رو تبریک میگم پر از برکت سلامتی خوشحالی و آزادی برای yeah, ایران قشنگ آزادی آزادی و نوشا جان we really appreciate everything you've been doing here in south florida you've been a jewel in the community and and um i hope that we get to go to iran and celebrate uh noruz there together next time you know hoping and praying for that day and I truly believe it will come we'll be able to walk and celebrate walk the streets of Iran freely and celebrate and in and closing I, and I just, just because I want to always make sure that our hard-working Iranian business owners are supported just take 30 seconds and explain what you do at uh, your clinic the name and the services you provide thank you Iman June so um, I am a physician I'm a board certified dermatologist and I have my own practice, Nusha Dermatology and Cosmetics. We're located in Aventura, so that's North Miami area, um, conveniently located in, uh, close to Miami and Fort Lauderdale. I practice medical and medical dermatology and aesthetic dermatology cosmetics. I see patients of all ages. So, you know, that's my professional passion. And I would be happy to take care of anyone awesome. in our community. Well, so we're thank very you proud of you. You're definitely the ultimate well. Shirzan, a great example as an Iranian professional, a compatriot that's doing amazing stuff, an amazing mother. 
uh, awesome wife, and we, we look forward to continuing to unite Thank and conquer. Yes, I'm so proud of to be a, um, a part of this Uniters family and, and just so happy that we've met, we've connected, and we've engaged our awesome. community Most together. So thank you for the Nuru opportunity Piru, Say well. hi to the family. Zan Zendigi Azadi, Be Omide Azadi. Take care, Aziz. Bye-bye. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, at 2.45 p.m. Eastern, in just a couple minutes, our next guest is going to be Paige Ahmadi. He's a super cool dude. Uh, if you don't know him, you need to get to know him. But right now, I got to do one of those little resets where I shut down the IG Live so we can save the video, and it's going to be uploaded to our United Conquer YouTube channel so it sits there evergreen. So please, uh, as I sign off, please come back in two minutes. It's, that's all it takes for me to sign off and upload and, and, and do this whole thing once again. So please join me in just a couple minutes. Let's keep the momentum going. We're getting closer and closer to the Salt view, and I would love to have as many of you uh, a part of the next couple hours. So stay tuned, come back on. Thank you. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. It is part three of our 12-hour live stream, uh, the celebration of No Ruz. Uh, we've been chopping these videos up so that we can upload them on our YouTube channel. So whether you're watching this program live or whether you're uh, tuning in later on on our YouTube channel, we really appreciate you all being a part of this virtual celebration. Uh, we've been having some amazing guests so far. Uh, really appreciate those uh, who dropped in earlier this, this, uh, this morning and afternoon to be our guests and also to every single one of you that have been tuning in, watching, dropping in, showing a lot of love. Um, this is all I wanted. I just wanted to kind of spend uh, Noru's with as many of you as possible and you've all made that possible and I'm very grateful for your friendship whether it's virtual or real life it's a, it's a pleasure to have you a part of our Noru's and I want to bring in our next guest and I'm going to let him give a little intro to himself but he gave me the pleasure of being a guest on his podcast and I'm, I'm just so proud of what he's doing to bring awareness to Iran and here he is Paige how are you sir? Hey, 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 Iman Jun, what's going on, man? Good to see you. Uh, see first you. of all, can, can you bring the camera a little bit lower so we can see your good-looking face? There we go. Oh, I look, at that, like look at that beard action. <laughs> that's, that's, that's some talent right there. Let me hold it like this. There we go. Yeah, no problem. Are you dra driving to family? I'm, <laughs> I'm actually in L.A. right now. I'm driving back to Sacramento Okay. Uh, in, in a short while, but uh, yeah. I, I hope I hope you make it in time for Saltaville Tavil with uh, your loved ones. I appreciate it. Oh, that means you, Michelle. No, this is what happened. No problem. No problem. Man. No problem. <laughs> Let's do it. Like um, so yeah, so so why why you why you working on the phone for for those who don't know Pej, um, he's got a podcast, but I'd rather you give a little background of yourself and what made you kind of use your 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 podcast platform to want to put so much emphasis on what's happening on Iran. Yeah, uh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, my podcast is Fumble Podcast, P-H-U-M-B-L-E Podcast. Um, uh, I started it in 2021, um, not having uh, any anticipation of what was to come for, you know, with the revolution and everything. It was mainly to be, uh, to bring togetherness. And the main goal was to just learn from all walks of life. Um, and <clears throat> I... I've had all, literally all walks of life on there. And then obviously in September um, with NASA's uh, killing, um, my my focus shifted. You know, I just said, I, I need to, I mean, I just felt empty, not dedicating it to, you know, what's happening in Iran. And, and um, though I still have, you know, guests from other parts of the world on there, uh, I have, you know, uh, regime change in Iran plastered on every episode and uh, since then. So um, I am I am a comedian, but uh, at the same time, I, I'm an activist and I'm passionate for human rights. So that's really what my where my fuel comes from. So, so I was going to mention the, the comedian part of it. How has um, how has the situation in Iran affected just the way that you do comedy? Like how how have you been able to kind of juggle it all together or have you put some of that on the back burner? Tell, tell us a little bit about how you have to make a transition career wise while this revolution happens. Yeah, I, I do. Uh, it's funny because I uh, uh, I have a joke where I say um, um, I'm divorced 10 times <laughs> and and I go into it saying, you know, and they're like, what? What is that? And I'm like, well, I'm Persian. They all left me at once. <laughs> so, <laughs> 
so I do that, and then obviously from there I segue into you know I I, I say give it up for Iranian women. And then I go into what's happening in Iran, like what's the most current news that, that I know. Um, and <clears throat> I mentioned that. And then, you know, I, I, I have a mic, actually, uh, an open mic slash music because I'm also a singer. So I, I do comedy and music here in Sacramento. Well, there <laughs> in Sacramento uh, every Saturday. Um, and we just finished, started our seventh month um, in a row. We haven't skipped any Saturday since uh, since we started seven months yeah. ago. And, um, and I have, you know, Masa Amini in the, on the wall there. Um, it's not even my uh, studio. It's actually one of my good friends. He's not even Iranian, but he's kind enough to let me, you know, put all this Persian Iranian, uh, you know, uh, awareness uh, all over his studio. So if you're ever in Sacramento, come to Front Street Studio. Uh, it's... Uh, it's a loving vibe. Again, it's about togetherness um, and it's beautiful. And if I could just mention one thing about my podcast. Yeah. Um, uh, <clears throat> Weapon X MC, a lot of you might know him. He's a, a hip hop artist in, in Los Angeles, along with Shaheen Samadhi. Um, they just came out with a new song, Pachambala, uh, right. which is out now on all uh, uh, streaming platforms. And their, their music video is actually coming out in 10 minutes. So it's going to be released at, at noon uh, Pacific time. And uh, I did my 100th episode uh, of Fumble Podcast uh, be doing the behind the scenes of the making of that video. Very cool. And that episode is dropping uh, tomorrow. So uh, tomorrow uh, at 6 a.m. Pacific time, um, that video will, that podcast will be out. Um, I wanted to do something big for episode 100 and uh once you know it it all lined up perfectly and um you know so now uh that's being released tomorrow and and during noruz which is perfect so uh, i actually i actually uh stumbled upon shaheen's page uh three years ago or so and i had him on my guest actually the celebration i did a 24-hour uh live stream for noruz two years ago because the pandemic was affecting that he was my guest on that one and he's such a passionate iranian and I've, he did a great job with all these teasers. Um, I don't know Weapon X yet, but I saw all the teasers, so I'm sure the video is going to be great. As a matter of fact, I meant to message him last night to see if he wanted to hop on over here today. Yeah. If you don't mind messaging him yeah. and see, I, I'm, I might be able to get him on for about 10, 15 minutes later on tonight. It's just, you'll be saving me some time. <laughs> be like, if you have time, tell him to just message me and then on WhatsApp, and then I'll hopefully get him on so he can talk about the video. Uh, because I definitely want people to get their eyeballs on that video. I'm sure it's going to be super uh, patriotic. It is. It's for sure patriotic. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely let him know. Uh, right after this, I will definitely send him a message. Um, and uh, I'm sure he'd, he'd love to be on. Um, yeah, man, it's been it's been a crazy time, obviously, as, as an Iranian. Um, now, living in Sacramento, though, it was uh, it was it's a whole different uh, ball of wax. There's not that many Iranians in Sacramento proper. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, kind of maybe similar to Miami, um, you know, like the, the numbers are not LA numbers, but you know, they're, they're, they're up there. Um, but there's enough to, um, uh, make, make a, make a voice, but it's, um, it's, I, I, it's weird. Cause it feels like, like, like yourself, you know, um, it feels like I, I want to do more, you know, I always want to be able to do more, you know, and there's only like so much we're all capable of doing to, to bring attention to it. But um, uh, Sacramento, if you're listening, you know who I am. Uh, and if you don't come to Front Street, because uh, I do this for, honestly, I do right now, my whole focus and, and motive has shifted to do this for uh, my motherland. You know, I haven't been back for 30 years. Um, we talked about it on, on our, when you joined me on my podcast. Um, and, and, um, uh, I know, you know, you're from Germany, you were born in Germany and, uh, the joke is, uh, Iman went from Germany to Germantown and then, uh, and now, <laughs> and now he's in Miami <laughs> holding it down. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, so, you know, my goal, one of my dreams is, uh, to be able to take, um, my creations and my, uh, my comedy and my acting to Iran, you know, be able to go take it in the middle of Iran and just be able to have comedy shows, have music shows, you know, like just like, that's really like, I feel like that would be a poetic way to, to return, you know, totally. and we will have it it's coming soon. You know, these, these, uh, 
this regime is, you know, they got one foot out already. It's just they're, uh, one of my good friends, Kamiar, said it's like a wounded animal. Uh, you know, when, 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 when they're wounded, they're just going to fight until, until they're done, right? And that's, that's a great metaphor as, as what's happening. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, I hope that you, like many of us, will have that dream of performing or working or visiting in Iran very soon, hopefully by next Noruz. Um, on that note, if you have a special Noruz message that you'd like to share with your compatriots, I'd love for you to take the virtual mic and say what you want to speak. Let me get that mic. <laughs> <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Man, I, uh, to all my uh, fellow compatriots, uh, happy Noruz. Um, it's been a tumultuous year, but it's a year of change. Um, it's a year, it's, a, it's truly in the word Noruz. So we, we are living it. We're going to have a new uh, regime. I feel it. We all feel it. Um, it's, uh, I always say, the first revolution that happened, as I call it, devolution, but uh, because we took, you know, we went back 1500 years. Um, but uh, with that one, it and it was not even as contentious as this one is, as far as the government is concerned. That one took 15 months to, to, to get the complete and, and for the Shah to be exiled. Um, this one, though, is it's going to take some time, but just know that good day, days are coming. Um, all of you, I wish you uh, all the best uh, lo love, um, gratitude, um, be thankful with for family. Hope you guys are sitting around your half scenes right now. All I have from my half scene is, uh, is this seke, and, uh, I, but I'm going back. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be home soon tonight, and I will be with my family. But honestly, I think that what happened with Noruz is with this year specifically is it's made all of us family. Like we're all really just one big family and, and we're realizing it. And, and, you know, that's, that's the most important thing I can say, you know, forget, forget, forget our differences because that's just feeding the, the, the beast that's sitting there in Iran right now. So, you know, we, we got nothing but uh, humanity to share and, and that's all that matters. We're, we're all humankind. It's actually in the words. So. Wow, Paige, man, that was, uh, of all the nose messages, that one right now tops them all, which you just said about how we're all family. I just that wanted true. to be at the top. That's <laughs> all I wanted to do. <laughs> That's great, man. Well, listen, I hope you continue to rise to the top of the comedic game, the acting game, the, the singing game. Uh, you know, you can tell good energy when you see it, and you definitely have that great energy, and I'm, and I'm rooting for you, and I hope that everybody here watching, that they follow you, that they follow your podcast, um, you know, you really put a lot of great care. And one thing I appreciate about our segment is that, you know, you could tell you could put you put some time and TLC into making a video of the recap. You know, it wasn't just cut and paste and put it up there. And so I, I know that you're somebody that quality matters, that you're a professional and the cream always rises to the top, man. So keep on doing what you're doing. And, um, and thank you for having me as a guest on your podcast. And I'm glad that I was able to introduce you to our, our community over here. That is your family now, too. I appreciate you, Iman Jun. Continue doing great things. You're, you're changing Iran. You're changing the world. Um, just continue to be uh, focused on your gut feelings because that's what's get, gotten you to this point. And, and, and it's going to take you wherever you want to take it. Thanks for having me on, bro. Thank you, man. Bomida Azadi, Zan Zendigi Azadi, drive safe and to a free Iran uh, by next Noruz. Hatman, Bomida Azadi. Take care. All right. So he's, he's not just a, a funny guy. He definitely um, has some poignant words to share. And I'm very grateful that he was able to spend some of his noruz with us. And um, we're approaching 3 p.m. Eastern time. The lovely Azad Afsahi is going to be joining us very shortly. And I just saw her actually pop up. And I don't know if Bayan is still here, Persian skater. But Bayan, if you're still watching, and if you have time later on to drop in, I have a couple of spots. Would love to have you come and say hi on short notice, haven't seen you in a long time. So Bayon, if you're still there, uh, message me on WhatsApp, please. Hope, here we go. Azadeh Afsahi, for many of you, she needs absolutely no introduction. Um, but I'll let her do the intro just in case it's much better coming straight from her. Azadeh John Durud. Durud Iman John. Great to see you. You too, hello everybody. Pisha Pish, Noruza Piruz. 
مرسی شما هم همینطور uh, I hope uh, that this year is going to be a year of freedom for all the people in Iran and actually around the world cruelty needs to stop um, that's for sure um, and, um, by, by the way the hair looks great you got new curls on this time around so I, I noticed, I noticed uh, the change aesthetically <laughs> thank you this are actually my natural curls oh, okay. usually I don't right. honor them but today I'm <laughs> honoring them <laughs> nice. um, um, for, for those who weren't on the countdown episode that you graced us with a few weeks ago or may not have come across your page can you give a little background about yourself please sure so I am a psychotherapist I am located here in Los Angeles and since the start of the revolution I have been providing therapy for uh, people in diaspora, but also uh, people in Iran, all the released prisoners. Uh, I am advocating for them, providing them with mental health. And obviously, as you know, one of them is too much Salehi that uh, I am fighting. We all are fighting for him to be released. And it's such a sad time that all of them have to be in prison during this time that we are all with our families. They have to be, um, unfortunately, tortured in a, in a cell somewhere. So yeah, that's what I've been doing and bringing awareness to what's happening in Iran. And let me tell you, I won't stop till Iran is free and all those prisoners are free. They don't belong in, in prison, that's for sure. We, we, we won't either. As long as you're doing what you're doing, more push it has him and we're gonna continue to give you as much energy as we possibly can so that you continue to be the engine that could. <laughs> thank you, thank you. But, thank um, you. So, so obviously like people like yourself you've committed so much of yourself the last six months uh god knows how much um turbulence you had to go through dealing with all this especially how you're helping so many people um on this special day how are you able to celebrate no Ruse? are you tell, tell me something that you're excited about that hopefully will give you some fuel for the the, the days to come uh, unfortunately, uh, I don't have my family here. They're back in Sweden. Oh. So uh, I will be um, celebrating this Nowruz, which is a bittersweet. Obviously, I want to be able to celebrate fully to bring in the new year, to bring in new energy and get, her, get rid of all the bad juju that we've been dealing with. But the reality is, it's still our reality. We are still fighting for the freedom of our people. So I will be uh, celebrating with my dear friends. Uh, I feel like friends are the mm, family that you choose. And I will be uh, with them for the ringing in the new year and then have some, you know, sabzi pulubo mahi, obviously, <laughs> the tradition. And just be with people that, you know, you want to be with people that uh, you care about, that you have a bond with and because it's such a vulnerable time that you feel comfortable to showing that vulnerability, whether you want to cry, you want to laugh, you want to hug, you want to, whatever you want to do, you want to be in a safe space. Absolutely. So, yeah. And, and you know, you, you're mentioning how you're going to be spending Saltadville with friends and um, Pej, the guest earlier, he was saying how, you know, like we've all become like a family, you know, all of us that have been fighting for the same thing, you know, the ones that we're aligned with, um, you know, it's, it's been a beautiful thing to see this unity amongst us, you know, like there, there's always going to be certain things that were divisive, unfortunately, but for overall, we've really been able to kind of rally together. What has your impression been the last six months? What great things have you seen of our people during these difficult times? Uh, one thing, my Farsi is impeccable <laughs> because I'm around <laughs> so many Persian people nowadays. I mean, I want to say impeccable. For me, it is. For me, being six years old, leaving Iran, and now that I can communicate without um, inserting a lot of English words, I'm very proud of myself. Um, well, and, and another thing is that, like you mentioned, I have come so close to our people and it feels so good. You know, uh, I don't know if you notice, I always wear, uh, wear my um, too much, free too much hat. And I, not only do I wear it, you know, for protest, I wear it on a daily basis, running errands, going, going to dinners. And every time people see that, they know automatically, obviously I'm Iranian and they come up to me and we talk and it's such a, it's such a unity and I realized that 
growing up, this is exactly what my mom and my dad were talking about that they were missing in Sweden, that unity that you have with your countrymen, that you sharing something that is so special that you can only understand if you're from Iran, you know, for that culture. So that has been great. And I have made such great connection that was going to be for life. And I'm very grateful for this revolution that has brought us closer. I feel like the Islamic Republic has for 44 years have done the opposite, want to divide us. But, you know, unity, this unity is beautiful. And I'm very grateful it for has, that. But and actually, Orly June, my ghost host, just said, bonded by empathy. It was actually a very beautiful thing she just came up with. That's very true. Like, it's the empathy that we have for our people that has really brought us together and tried to figure out how we can be the strongest force against this regime, you know, and you've been doing it from a therapeutic standpoint, uh, which has been, uh, it's extremely important. I mean, like, I, I it's like, um, how do I call this? Like, people don't realize just how important of a role a therapist has been playing in this revolution, which is why I admire so much what you're doing and what thousands of Iranian therapists have been doing. I mean, it's just, it's, it's incredible work. What, when is, um, when was the last time you were, have you ever celebrated Noru's in, in Iran? No, oh, I have never, so I was, when I was six, and I remember we celebrated, and of course, I think it's a tradition, whomever I talk to, it is a tradition, I thought it was only my family, but I remember we would go, and everything had to be new, you had to have new clothes from head to toe, <laughs> and you celebrated, and then you would go, and to aid Didani, like, to the elderly and collect the money. And I was so excited about that money. And I remember my friend, my parents would always trick me. It's like, Aza Nijun, now that you have all this money, what are you gonna do? Do you wanna take us out for lunch or dinner? <laughs> and obviously I would do that. <laughs> and th those are the fond memories I have. And I looking at those pictures, I remember. And I tried to install that. It's like, do those tradition here with my own family that I, I have and then with my friends and it's, it's just great. If, if you were, and hopefully we'll do this next year, but uh, if you were to be in Iran right now and Iran was free, what would you be doing for Noruz? Um, uh, <laughs> it's emotional. I think uh, obviously I will be with my um, grandparents that I haven't seen for so long. And it just, uh, I feel like the simplest things to be able to wake up in, and be in a community that you step outside and you know that everybody is celebrating the same tradition. That's something I really miss. It's like going out, like, who ate me out? Like, I miss that in Iran, you know? Uh, everything here is like, Oh, everything is like normal. All the stores are open, everything. But go, I, I miss that unity being in, in Iran among Iranian people that are also celebrating and smell the, smell the flowers and see the people are going with the hustle and bustle. I, 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 I miss that. I really that's, do. That's beautiful. I mean, even going back to Orly, she was talking about the smell of like no rules, like it's like right there, the yeah. scent is all around. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, we're, we're so many of us share the same feeling that you're feeling is that, you know, the sense of belonging, you can never get it outside of your homeland, you know, like it's great that we're building these communities, whether virtually or in our respective cities. I mean, like we can, some of us who've never, why well, I, I visited one time, but some of us who've never ever spent no rules in Iran, we don't even know just how amazing of an experience that could be, and I and I hope that we all get that opportunity. Um, other than what, what's um what's a message that you have for your compatriots, whether they're inside of Iran or outside of Iran, for this no rules? Uh, for the people inside of the Iran, uh, do we say it in English or do I do in Farsi? I'm doing it right. Okay, I said in English. And I want like you guys. I'm going to show off now. <laughs> um, but I do stand up to this guy Iran has seen. Bedouin that we in ja pushed to turn has seen and we in revolution or in in a tefaki kalan oftar de ke shish ma pish oftar ba mutasafane ba marge masajina amini in miat to قلب همه ماها باشه و ما 
نمیایم این موضوع رو از ذهنمون ببریم و میایم کنتینیو بکنیم که تا اینکه ایران آزاد بشه و همه شما آزاد باشین این برای شما این من این قول رو به شما میدم من فقط میتونم بهتون بگم و میدونم که کسایی هم که اینجا هستن این ایمان جون هممون این فکر رو داریم for the people outside of Iran I am so proud of all of you that we have become so united from all walks of life and we are fighting for one thing and that goal is to free Iran and free our people because we sure do not deserve what is happening in Iran. No one does and especially the Iranian people. So that's kind of what my message is. Well, I love it. And um, since you've been such a, a huge voice for too much, um, what, what, are, what are some things that we can do to continue to amplify the voice of, of too much? What are, are, are there certain places that we can go and do like a call to action? You tell us yep. what we can do to support your efforts. Yes. So too much right now, obviously, it's been over 140 days in solitary confinement. I mean, that's, uh, and I feel like the reason they are keeping him because he's such a symbol of freedom. He's a symbol of, he's the son of Iran, right? So what we need to do, we need to free too much hashtag. We need to keep that hashtag alive. Uh, we are signing petition. We're almost at five, half a million people have signed that petition. And also we need to reach out to our politician to sign an open letter. So then Jill Biden can be the voice of too much. These are the three things that will be very grateful if we can unite on so then we can bring our boy home. Awesome. And is there, is there like a, on your, on your page, do you have certain type of links to petitions and stuff that they can access? I have the open letter on my page but i know his cousins that is shabnam is also another one roxana that is um, in canada they also have it in their page and official too much page also have there's a telegram page that also keeps you updated so what are and you guys can dm me you know dm me and i will more than happy to put you in contact with whatever you need awesome well uh, i'm glad that we had this opportunity to have a few minutes with you other june uh, you do so much for our people that you deserve uh, a couple hours of relaxation and spending some time just for gratitude. And in your case, being around with friends, I hope that it fills your heart uh, and that um, that this year will truly be the year that we get rid of this regime. And it will be partly for sure with all the efforts that you've been putting into the last six months. So, as my late father used to say, and continue doing amazing work for our people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Manjan. Thank you so much for keeping this platform and allowing us to bring awareness of what's happening in Iran. You're doing amazing and we are behind you 100%. Always, man. Much love. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. All right. So grateful for the lovely, the awesome, the amazing Azadeh. And as we continue with our 12-hour live stream, Sorry, I got a little emotional there for a second. I knew it was going to be a roller coaster of a day. Um, up next, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be our favorite poet, Aray Kazemi, Hamraba Sarujun. They're going to give me another little breather, a little break. Not only is there going to be some poetry, but there's going to be some stretching. Um, so for those of you that have been joining, oh, Saba has made it. <laughs> Holy moly, what a great pleasure. Look at this. It doesn't get more perfect than this. Got a cause of me over here and Sabo June. Look at this. Beautiful. No problem. Sabo June, thanks so much for uh, dropping in. We really appreciate you. با بابایی حرف بزن سلام بابا جون چطوری با ایمان جان حرف بزن دیگه بابا چه کم ما صحبت کنیم بعد سبا I have a first of all it's just us four خودمونی هستش I have one question for you are you ready for your AD yeah AD از بابایی میاد از بابایی میاد خب سو ما افتخار داریم یه بار دیگه آقای کازمی قراری که اینجا بیاد یه شعر دیگه بگه سبا جون دیو لایک یور گرند فادر پوئتری ایز پریتی امیزینگ ایزن ای خب سارا جون لید دی وی دی نیکست 
20, 30 minutes. It's all yours. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, for having your father be a part of this program and now your lovely daughter. Of course. Uh, it's, a, it's a family affair right now. So you lead the way. Sure. Thank you so much for giving us this platform. I have to say it's a, it's a kind of an emotional moment for me when I think about it because, you know, um, for those of you that don't know, I, my parents actually, you know, I was born in Iran. And, in, and I was born the year of the revolution in 1979. And my parents, Mujtaba here and my mom, Nahid, actually were well-established bankers, administrators, not wealthy, but they had created an entire life for themselves. And now with two daughters um, facing what they knew was the upcoming future uh, that would be afforded by the Islamic regime that was now in power because of the revolution. Um, and so my parents made this very difficult decision to sell everything they had, um, essentially give up the life they had and move to a country. Uh, we were fortunate enough to all four of us be able to move to a country where they didn't speak the language. Uh, they didn't have any credentials. My father became a painter handyman through any connections he could. And my mom became a seamstress. So. Uh, they worked very, very hard and gave up so much of their life and uh, endured so many challenges. And I know I'm preaching to the choir because many of you in the chats and yourself, Iman, went through this transition um, and saw our parents go through so much. So to sit here and see my dad be such a big part of this, um, you know, this movement now. And Iman, thank you for having him. And then to have full circle, my daughter also be able to join in is really an emotional moment for me because... You know, uh, if it weren't for my dad and my mom and the sacrifices they made, I wouldn't be able to have my life the way it is now and to be able to afford a, a, a nice life for Saba here in the United States and the luxuries of freedom. So we talk a lot about gratitude and being grateful for what we have here. And I just want to like officially for the thousandth time, just say, Boba, as 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 Shoma. I could never thank you enough for the sacrifices you made for me. I'm just the lucky one that has you here to be able to give you your flowers here. Um, and thank you, Iman, for allowing us this opportunity to bring my family on. Of course. And now I get out of the way so you guys continue to have yeah. this conversation. Thank you so much, guys. All right. Push the <laughs> I'll be <laughs> back shortly. Bye, Iman John. Sabli. به بابایی بگو نوروز برای شما معنیش چیه معنی نوروز What does نوروز mean to you? Come on. I don't know. Is it the What is it? What is نوروز? Is it the Persian New Year? It's the Persian New Year. Yeah, and then what did we put? Like, a, what did we have on the table there? We have a half scene. We have a half scene, and how did you? What part of the half scene do you like the best? Um, you like the apple? No, the fish. Well, we don't have a fishy this year, but the funny yes, thing do. No, we don't. We have our own fish. So five years ago was the last time we had a fish on our half scene. And actually during that time, uh, that was the last time we had a fish. And that fish from five years ago is still alive, believe it or not. So we still have that fish and we've maintained it, which I feel very blessed on, but we haven't had another fish since. So... Daddy, Baba. how did it feel for you to be here in the United States uh, for so many years to celebrate Nowruz here? How does it feel? You can say it in English or in Farsi. Baba, I want to say that 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 I want to say عید نوروز در ایران به هم دست میداده هیچ وقت در اینجا به هم دست نداده <تصفيق> و من واقعا اون عیدو که با اون خاطراتی که در ایران این چندین سالی که داشتم من چون وقتی اومدم اینجا الان در حدود 37 سالی که اینجا هستم عید اومده و رفته به دوستانم تبریک گفتم و آرزوی سلامتی کردم ولی اون احساسی که در دلم در نوروز در ایران داشتم هیچ موقع در اینجا اون احساس رو نداشتم نتیجتا 
عید اومده و خیلی هم خوب بوده و خیلی هم اینجا بالاخره دوستان دور هم بودیم و عید و نوروز رو تبریک گفتیم ولی اون احساس در من هیچ موقع وجود نداشته ولی اون میگذره و عیدا میان و میرن در صورت من آرزو میکنم انقدر دبون داشته باشم انقدر اون بکنم که یه روزی بتونم عید نوروز رو تو ایران تماشا بکنم و جشن بگیرم و با دوستانم باشم ایشان در صد در صد بدونید که میشه بابا شک نکنین صد در صد صد در صد مطمئنم من در عرض این از سال پنجا و هفت همش میگفتم شیش ماه دیگه است یه سال دیگه است الان هم به همون صورت معتقدم که یک سال دیگه دو سال دیگه شیش ماه دیگه پنج ماه دیگه بالاخره این اتفاق خواهد افتاد ایران آزاد خواهد شد ایرانی باز بر میگرده به اون فرهنگ و به قول معروف به اون کارچر خودشو نه تنها عید نوروز مهرگان جشنای دیگه داریم از شود که اینا رو بزرگ داشت میگیرن و جشن میگیرن و شادی خواهم کرد به همون روال سابق باز خواهد گشت و ما همیشه امیدوار بودیم و هستیم بله بله صد در صد دردی خوشحالم شما چی نظرتون چیه یا اگر ادوایسی داشتین برای کسایی که میگن که نه این دیگه تموم شده مردم خسته شدن میخوان فقط زندگیشون رو بکنن شما چی میگفتین به همچین کسایی؟ والا تا یکی دو سه سال پیش من همیشه به این دوستانی که از این حرفا رو میزدن کسی نیست خب تعدادشون هم کم نبود به همشون میگفتم بالاخره یک روزی اون چی که نباید اون چیزی که شما فکرشو نمی کنید خواهد اتفاق افتاد و الان مخصوصا تو این یک سال گذشته الان ایران مثل یک به قول معروف آتیشیه که زیر خاکستره هر آن امکان داره این خاکستر بره کنار رو با آتیش بره و من مطمئنم که نتیجه مثبت این جوان ها مخصوصا دختران عزیز ما در ایران اون نتیجه زحماتشون رو خواهند گرفت و ایران را آزاد خواهند کرد و دوباره برمیگردیم به اون فرهنگ و به اون جشن های نوروزی هر سالمون به امید خدا به امید خدا صد در صد میشه به قول نداجون خوشگلم که عاشقشم نوشته پیروز میشیم صد در صد مرسی نداجونم ندادی من بله نه خودمونه دیگه she's like بله. a full lawyer established uh, a complete professional adult but she'll always be our Nedali <laughs> بله ست در ست ست در ست دادی این, این, این دفعه چرا فکر میکنین فرق میکنه و آیا فکر میکنین این دفعه فرق میکنه از ریولوشن از قبلی شما ببین اتفاقاتی افتاده این دخترای ما که واقعا جانشون از دست دادن و همین الان این تو ماج صالحی تو زندان ببین حرفایی که میزنه تمام نتیجه داره یعنی الان ایشون معتقدن که دیگه ترس از بین رفته یه روزی میبینید که این جمعیت اگه الان بیس هزار تا ده هزار تا میان بیرون میرسه به یه میلیون و دو میلیون و سه میلیون که دیگه قادر نیستن جلو این جمعیت رو بگیرن مگه زنداناشون چقدر جا داره نتیجه تن دیگه الان زنداناشون پر شده بی خود نیستش که خودشون اعلام میکنن که بیس دو هزار نفر آزاد شدن خب این زندانا دیگه جا نداره چجوری میخوان اینا رو نگهداری کنن حالا حساب بکن وقتی یه دفعه یه میلیون جمعیت تو تهرون بیاد بیرون دیگه قادر نیستن جلو اینا رو بگیرن و همینطور تو ماجساله ای بارها گفتش که این جمعیت تبدیل به جمعیت میلیونی خواهد شد اون موقع دیگه قادر نیستن که جلوی این حرکت رو بگیرن نتیجه تن ما نتیجه میگیریم و صد در صد پیروز قایم شد Excellent. Merci, Daddy. And on that note, we have about seven minutes until the next session. Oh. You've been doing amazing. Everybody's been texting me that I love your dad. I love your dad. I love him too. I'm a little bit biased, but I'm glad you agree. 
Vali, if you have more more poetry to share with us, let's let's do one now if you have time, if you're ready. Okay, so من یه شعری میخونم چون الان عید و همه با ماهی و اینا سر کار دارن از تو سفره افسینشون یه شعری میخونم به نام ماهی بعد اگر فرصت بود من بگو یه شعر کوتاه بخونم این شعر یه خورده بلنده ولی زیاد نیستش میگه یه ماهی بود یه دریا یه آسمان زیبا یه قایق شکسته یه ماهیگیر تنها یه ماهیگیر خسته با دست پین بسته که تور زندگیشو به سید ماهی بسته یه ماهی که خیالش به آینه های نور بود فکر شب عروسی تو هجله بلور بود ماهی شده بود باورش ماهی شده بود باورش تور اگه بندازم سرش میشه عروس ماهی ها شاه ماهی میشه همسرش ماهی تا ماهیگی رو دید با یک بغل تور سپید از قصر دلتنگی پرید به قصر آرزو رسید ماهی ماهی تا ماهیگی رو دید با یک بغل تور سپید از خواب دلتنگی پرید به قصر آرزو رسید اما نفهمید چه کسی سینه خستش و درید کدوم لب گرسنه شوری بختش و چشید ماهی لباش میخندید ماهی لباش میخندید به قهتی صداقت به دشنه ای که خورده تو سفره رفاقت ماهی هرگز نفهمید با تور و بند سیاد هرگز نمیشه شیرین برای قلب فرهاد یه ماهی که خیالش به آینه های نور بود فکر شب عروسی تو هجله بلور بود بابا جان یه شعری هم دارم میخونم واسه اون افرادی که سن سال خود من دارن یه ده پونزه سال شایدم از من کچیفترم یعنی کسانی که وقتی این فاجعه به نام انقلاب افتاد شاید در حدود مثلا 20 سالشون بود 15 سالشون بود قبل از اینکه شروع می... کنین بابا جان به ازو بپرسم همه بقیه other people on the chat are you enjoying this would you like my dad to, to read one more poem I'd love to see your comments drop a heart in the comments if, you're, if you'd like for us to continue okay I see see some hearts coming daddy i think the, we're good to go the answer is yes and it's always yes i had to drop <laughs> it and say that yeah, thank you're you supposed to be on jump the break in, sorry Jessica. i ready. was doing a little bit stretching right here but i had to jump in and you know make sure i get my vote and my hearts you know <laughs> <laughs> Elon, we have our stretch session next don't do too much stressing okay don't worry i save some i save some sore muscles for there you too don't worry go. there you go daddy you see the hearts coming in the comments i'm in زندگی هم سرفران زندگی هم سفران با همه بیش و کمش زندگی با همه بیش و کمش کوتاهی یا که بلندای قمش قد و اندازه ما بود نفهمیدیم خانمان را دادیم چی گرفتیم تلی از خاکستر بستن بار سفر و فرار از کتل و کوه و کمر نقد خود را دادیم نقد خود خود را دادیم در عوض درهم و شامات گرفتیم که بازار 
دار نداشت و پشیزی در این قرن خریدار نداشت خیمه بر آب زدیم خیمه بر آب زدیم به نخ توطعه آویز شدیم با خداوند جلاویز شدیم و به خود بد کردیم و عجب آنچه نباید کردیم و به خود بد کردیم و عجب آنچه نباید کردیم مرسی عزیزم که من به من وقت دادی در زم من در ایمان جان یه صحبتی کرد خواستم بگم من خیلی پراد هستم از این دوتا دختری که دارم در هر صورت خیلی افتخار میکنم من از زمان شروع از سشار ماه بعد از اینکه این اتفاق ناجور در کشور ما افتد فعال بودم چه در ایران بودم بعدم که اومدم ایران اینجا با اینکه فرصت کم داشتم و کار میکردم ولی میرفتم تو کانون تو مجالس شرکت میکردم و الان خیلی خوشحالم که ساره پاش گذاشته جای پای بابا قربان تو برم آم سوپر آدابیو مرسی دم قرار نبودی یه گریه کنی عشق منم در میاری یا ببخشی نه اوکی هم اوکی بابا جو مرسی دادی you are amazing من I, نمی... I, I cannot I never ever I can't tell you how much I love you and how grateful I am that you are here and that I get to watch your amazing memory all these years. I don't know how you memorize all of these poems and do them so passionately, but we're so grateful to be able to experience your talent, Daddy. Merci. Thank you so much. Yeah, for I حافظم خیلی بهتر از این بود میدونی که خودت واردی که سه چهار ماه پیش من این جراحی قلب رو انجام دادم عجیب رو حافظم تاثیر گذاشته الان باید خیلی بیشتر مطالعه کنم خیلی بیشتر بخونم اون چی که چون شعرهای زیادی من حفظ بودم ولی الان یه مقدارشو از دست دادم ولی سعی میکنم که دوباره برگردم به اون حالت سابقم خدا رو شد که روز به روز دارم بهتر میشه حالا من باورم نمیشه بابا همون روز بیمارست تو بیمارستان بودی سه چهار تا شعر از بر بودی همون موقع برام خوندی من ویدیو ریکورد کردم نمیدم یادته یا نه ولی فرستادم بله یادم ولی خب در هر صورت این جراحی رو حافظه خیلی تاثیر میذاره ولی من قول میدم بهت که برگردم با اینکه سنم بالاست ولی برمیگردم به اون روزای اول به امید حق نه شکی نیست در موردش دادی you're the strongest man I know and I love you so much thank you for everything you can stay or you can take a break daddy but what we're no, gonna... I stay I stay. Stay? Okay. Yeah, I have my water here that sounds good take a drink and forgive me as I walk around Iman Jan you're back did you take a break should I get started I did take a break and I, I, I spilled some adasi on my shirt, so that's really being a Debbie Downer. I see you got a little emotional here, I'm which sorry. is understandable. Don't be <laughs> sorry. Don't be, don't be sorry. You've been such an amazing daughter to your father and taking care of him during uh, all these surgeries and stuff. And, um, and so you have every right to be emotional because he's played a very important role in your life and you have played a very important role in his life and this is the beauty of being iranians we care so much about our parents we care so much about our children and family is everything and i know it's also one of the reasons why you're doing this fight is because you want everybody to be enjoying the relationships that you have with your parents and people to have the relationship with their their children and we have people inside of iran that that has been stripped away from them so you're you're fighting it because you know that this is a privilege that you and i have you know Absolutely, and, so, and I, I can't help but notice that my Zandri Simin from Iran is actually in the comments that she's the one that wrote in Farsi. Merci, Sare, Merci, Murshtaba, Mamnoon, Inshallah, Hamishe, Salamat, Bashid. I'm so amazed that I just read that in Farsi. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> but 
زنده ایسی مینا شدتونم مرسی که اومدین میبوسمتون از راه دور سوری من هات تو دو دات اوکی ایتس گریت سلام میرسونیم و هم هم هر هر همتنی که تو ایران الان هستش و داره نوروز جشن میگیره پیشا پیش نوروز رو تبریک بهشون میگم من ایمان جان سعی میکنم که یه مقداری هم از شعرهای تنز از حالی خورسندی دوست خوب خودم و همچنین از از شود که از آقای حالو آقای حالو از این به بعد اگر یه خاصی یه تعدادی تنز از اونام بلدم که خیلی جالب بعدا تو برنامه تو سعی میکنم اونا هم براتون اشاره بله حتما و دوباره ساعت هفت شب شما برمیگردین که این شعرا رو میتونین اون موقع ادامه بدین. چش شعر تنز رو براتون میخونم. خب حالا مثل که سارا جون یو هاف سم سیونت اینینگ استرچینگ دت یو وود لایک تو شیر وذ اس؟ یس یس یو گایز هاف آی ام شور ایوریبادی این دی این دی چاتس رایت ناو هاز بین اون سینس 11 11 ای ام سو آی ام گونا چالنج یو بیکاز One of my, my dad's passions is definitely poetry, but another thing he instilled in me is fitness and exercise and movement. Up until this surgery, my dad has worked, uh, walked over an hour a day, every day for as long as I can remember. He lifts weights. And so now that's definitely something that's a big part of my life. Amazing. And so it only made sense for me to incorporate a moment of fitness into this live stream. All right. Let's right. do it. So, everybody. I'm going to encourage you, if you can, safely, just stand up. We're going to do some light breathing, light stretching. You've been sitting the whole time. If you can't stand or if you have any limitations or if you're in a studio that doesn't allow you to stand, <laughs> you can stay seated and just follow along. We're just going to do a few I'll quick do, things. I'll, I'll do seated. There you go, Iman. Yeah, you can stay seated. Um, but remember, in, whether you're working or taking a day off, it's always important to stand up. Breathe, our, 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 our amazing expert consultant, Dr. Sam, has always talked to you about fitness and stress reduction. And just a few minutes of breathing uh, using the te techniques that Dr. Shiva Jahani has given you or some stretching can certainly decrease your cortisol levels and help reduce stress and just make you overall more functional as you take your day forward. So today you've been sitting, you may be working, Even if you're running around getting things ready for bringing in the new year, just take one quick minute. Let's stand up or sit down and take a few deep Sar breaths together. Sarjun, Sarjun, can I cut you off for one second? You know how I told you earlier that my friend Tehran is at the White House and stuff, and oh, I yeah. told him to jump in. Let's have Tehran jump in real quick. He has probably some updates, and then we'll get to the stretching. Just, I know he's going to yeah. be in and out. No, so that's, do you need us to jump off? No, 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 just hold on tight. You know, he'll, he'll be on the quadrant over here. Let's see if his uh, connectivity will... Let's see. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt the no. stretching set. Oh, no, that's important. Teron was one of the guests at the Noru's uh, lunch at the White House. And so I asked him to kind of hop in and throughout the whole day and just kind of give us some updates. I don't know if it's not connecting on his end or mine. Nikki will never forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try and keep the fan girl down to a minimum. Let, let me see. Uh, let, me, let me just message him real quick. Hold on. Give me one second, guys. Thanks for your patience. Oh, now it's unable to join. Okay. Um, Okay, well, he, I, I, I guess he just not, he, he kind of left for a second. I just messaged him. So continue with the stretching. Let's see if he'll come back in a little bit. Okay, but feel free to interrupt me. That's important. Okay, so let's just start with some deep breaths, okay? So we're going to take three deep breaths, and I want you to inhale deep. Exhale out. Go to the limit that you can. Exhale out. One more deep inhale. Exhale out. Now I want you to take both hands up and stretch all the way that you can. If you're standing, plant your feet down all the way. If you're sitting, sit tight on that chair, but pretend you're pushing your hands up and pushing your bottom down. Stretch. And 
down. Okay, one more time up, stretch. Now while you're there, with your right hand, grab your left wrist and go to the side slightly a bit until as far as you can go. If it's just a little, that's okay. Take two deep breaths, holding that stretch. Back to the middle, switch your wrist. Now with your left hand, grab your right wrist, stretch over, two deep breaths. Now back up to the middle and down again. You should be feeling some tension perhaps in your shoulders, some release in your spinal cord. Now just bring your right hand across your body with your left hand stretch so you can get a stretch in that shoulder of yours. Hopefully this feels some relief for you. Okay, back across your other hand, your left hand across your body. Great. Now I want you to take your hands back behind you, connect them if you can. So I have my hands connected there and bring it up to the level that you can. So if you can go only to here, that's fine. If you can bring it higher, that's fine. If you can bring it even higher, stretch up to only to what feels good. If you feel pain, let it go. And open that chest, look up and let go. Now bring your hands forward, push forward, reach forward, stretch. You can see the arch in my back. Open up that back. Now down again. We're going to take two more deep breaths up. Ready? Up. Inhale. Down. Exhale. One more time. Up. up. Inhale. Down. Exhale. Okay. So if you are standing, we're going to do some stretches for your legs. If you're not, that's okay, but make sure you stand up and get some movement, okay? You want to stand up, legs a little bit slightly bigger than whip, hip length apart, and just go down and stretch. I'm doing it off camera. Okay. It looks less embarrassing. My dad is sitting there on his seat and doing it, pushing his knees out and bringing them back in and up. Okay. Now down, out, and up again. So now we want to try and do what we call cat crawls. So. Don't laugh at me. Mona thinks I'm twerking here. I'm not. <laughs> up. Now down. Now stretch it back. Now up. And stretch it back. Okay. Two more deep breaths from the top. You're going to reach for the ceiling now again. Okay. Ready? Up. Reach. Down. Exhale out. One last time. Up. Down. Exhale down. So hopefully you feel a little bit of stretch in that spinal cord, a little bit of opening of your chest and the rounding of your back to help relieve some of the stress from being stacked on top of each other from sitting all day. So hopefully you enjoyed a little bit of that stretch and breathing. I will, always remember, this as, I will always remember this as a moment that you twerked in front of your dad on, your, <laughs> on our live stream with family watching from inside of Iran. That's all I remember. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right, well, no, that was actually great. I appreciate that. You loosened up some of the tension. Yeah. And I hope everybody benefited from that too. You know, as we're getting ready for uh, the sabji polo mahi and stuff. I think everybody now feels a little more comfortable to uh, to get their food on. Yeah, or if you could take a walk before you eat, even better. But if not, that sounds good. Definitely. Well, Sarujan, this was 
great. I mean, this was the ultimate halftime uh, program that you could have possibly delivered alongside your amazing father. So uh, thank you for the poetry, the stretching, uh, getting your, your daughter in to kind of uh, say a few things. It was a, <laughs> it was a beautiful family affair for uh, a bit of the program. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having us, Iman. I hope you actually got a break. You were here the whole time. I did. I did. I had some more lentil soup with my mom and I poured it on my shirt. So there's the lack of loop down here. <laughs> it is what it is, Diga, you know? Okay, but, uh, say hi to your mom, too, and thanks again for the time. We'll talk to you a little I, I, later. We'll, we'll, we'll see you at 7 o'clock. That's right. Pish a pish. Um, no rus pirus. Bye. No rus pirus. Bye. All right. All right. All right. So we're chugging along. It is 3.45. Oh, this is so much more comfortable. 3.45. Um, we're going to be having a segment led by Shiva Saber. Uh, and I am doing, I think maybe actually Sarah's going to join back uh, as well. And then at 4.15, we have Doña Delsus. If you haven't been following Doña on, on um, social media the past six months, you've been missing out on, on a great writer um, and, and just somebody that has been able to bring awareness to Iran in, in a very unique way with the type of content that she's been creating. So she's going to be on. Speaking of unique, unique and important content, uh, Farid Najafi is a founder of um, Iranian Knows, uh, which has become a very popular Instagram page where they're dropping a lot of different types of knowledge. <laughs> nice, Sarah Jeff. Good job. <laughs> I'm going to make sure to Sorry, save. I'm, 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 I'm going to make sure to save this video. This this segment right here is going to be a great one. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Sorry. And so, uh, and then so, so we have Farid Najafi at 4.30, and then at 4.45, we have Isabella, who's going to be uh, is Mona uh, Hayri's daughter, and she's going to be talking. I wanted to get perspectives from different ages. So Isabella is a 12-year-old daughter of uh, Mona who performed to Baraya, a dance program at one of our protests here in Miami. And, and then the program will keep on going. And don't forget, Sal Tadvil is at 5.24 p.m. Eastern time. And so we can't wait to ring in the new year with you. Now, I believe I have, oh, I don't have Shiva yet. Okay. So Shiva, join whenever you get a chance, hop on to request to join. And if Sarah and Mayam are joining you guys too, then let's, let's have them come on as well. In the meantime, it's a great opportunity to, first of all, thank you all for joining so far. I hope that wherever you are in the world, that you are, um, that you're getting ready for a new year and you're being optimistic that this new year is going to uh, bring you health and, um, wealth and laughter and hopefully a free Iran. So that's hopefully uh, on top of the list of things that you're going to be uh, enjoying in the year to come. I see Shiva Jun is uh, about to join. So we're going to have Shiva start her segment. And there's my niece in the background. I was wondering whose leopard uh, heels that was. <laughs> Hi, Shiva Jun. How are you? Great to see Hi. you again. Hey, Thanks for uh, being a part of this live stream. Yes, of course. Yeah, was, Thank you, Sarah, for the was, stretch. That was good, right? <laughs> yes, for, um, for sure. You, Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Dad, obviously, um, for the yeah, poem. His poems definitely. are very and beautiful. Now we have Maya Amjun joining as well. Um, so, yeah, so this, uh, there she is. Hi, Maya Amjun. How are you? Hi. Good, good. How are you guys? Great. And uh, Maya Amjun, I know like you have so much going on today with family and Noru's and you're traveling later today. So it's, it's, it's greatly appreciated that you've been able to kind of juggle all of these to make today happen. So, Shiva Jun, what, what, what is the topic that you wanted to discuss in this segment? I'll be here for it. Um, so, so uh, earlier with Mona in Paris, we talked about the Baha'is. Um, no Ruz is also a holy day for us, um, in addition to the Persian No Ruz, the traditional Persian No Ruz is the last day of, or the first day of the Baha'i calendar year, uh, as we end the 19-day the fasting. Um, so it's sort of like the both cultures or the religion and the tradition is like infused together. Um, so we were going to talk about that a little bit more. Um, and I know, I'm not sure if Sarah is joining. She mentioned that her husband is Baha'i as well. Um, so we could have talked, we could talk about, you know, the experience she has um, 
and generally just about the Baha'i culture and, you know, the difficulties so, uh, that they experience. And I'm sorry if I missed it earlier, but there's 19 days of fasting during Noru's for Baha'is? Yeah, so the, uh, the Baha'i calendar is consists of, of 19 months and each month is 19 days. So the last month is the, the na last 19 months of the year is uh, it's fasting uh, from sunset to sunrise, sun sunrise to sunset. Um, very similar to the, I guess, the Muslim culture, uh, Ramadan, but uh, it's really only 19 days. Um, so and it's also the start of the the last day, which, which is like the the Noruz is the first day of the Baha'i calendar. So um, it's kind of like intertwined together for us. And it's also a holy so day. Um, the fasting for us as well. is, is nothing like the same as like Muslim, no food, no drinks for 19 days. I mean, for during between sunrise and sunset. Yeah. Correct. Yes. And, and for us, it's, it has more spiritual meaning. Um, not to say that it does not for, you know, it doesn't have the same for the Muslim culture. Um, but we, we take that 19 days and we reflect um, on the entire year. Um, and as we prepare for the new year, um, and the, um, I guess the celebration of the new year, and really, the spiritual of the spirituality of it is that um, it symbolizes both individual and mankind's, um, um, I guess, the mankind and like individual like renewal right. for the new cool. year. And, and I'm sorry if I missed this earlier, but what day are you are you in this 19 day right now? So today would be well tomorrow. So as the year news, yeah. um, Ruza Farvardin, it's the new year. So it's the same thing. So today oh, okay. would be actually the last day. Um, so for us here in the east. I guess East Coast, like because the mm -hmm. fasting time falls on five o'clock, um, like by yeah. technicality, we wouldn't be fasting today. Um, so, like if you know, solid tahvil, it really goes by solid tahvil. So, if your the solid tahvil falls in the middle of the day, we won't be fasting on that day. But if it's like after sunset, we will Got be it. fasting, and that would be considered All the right, last perfect. day. Perfect. All right. Well, we'll carry on the conversation. The ladies are here too, so. Um, so really, I and we talked about it earlier, and I was saying that I'm biased towards Shiraz and how Noruz was and the feel and, you know, the feeling of Noruz has never been the same for me ever since moving here. Um, I wanted to add that the Baha'i religion is actually rooted in Shiraz. That's where the founder was born, um, Bob and Baha'u'llah. They both were born in Shiraz, um, where I was actually living um, I think the last couple of years in Iran, we were not that far from the house that was demolished by the, basically the regime um, years ago. But, you know, the, the location was still a symbol for us. And a lot of us would go there and would take a moment and we'll say a prayer. Um, that was actually not far from my house. It was like, I think, less than five minute walk. Um, and it's very close to Shahid Chirag which is like one of like the huge mosque in Iran, which we actually had a shooting on earlier, earlier in the revolution. That's where we had a shooting inside of the mosque. Um, so the two locations are very close together. Um, and it's just, you know, for me, like, you know, the message of the religion is what actually like, you know, we have the option. We were never forced into the religion. We were given the option to continue the same path. Um, so the message that it really, has is that um, that humanity is one single race, and I'm reading this because I don't want to get this wrong. The the main message of the religion is that humanity is one single race, and that the day has come for its unification in one global society. Um, and really, the earth is one, but one country and mankind in its citizens. Um, so for me, it's always been unity. It's the main message, and. That's why, you know, I kind of like the message of this revolution and uniting and um, even your, you know, community that you brought together, Unite and Conquer, it has like a deeper meaning for me. Um, so I wanted to talk about that as well. I know, sorry, you mentioned that your husband is Baha'i. Um, I'm not sure. Do you 
you guys like practice some of the ba Baha'i culture within your household? How does that work for you? And I know you have with Sabah, how does that, you know? Yeah, um, no, thanks for the question, Shiva I will say, it, admittedly, and most honestly, like most recently, we haven't, but it hasn't been because of choosing Baha'i or any other you know, religion has taken the place of it. No, or even, you know, like the practices. No, it's just been a, uh, in the most recent years, because of personal reasons, we haven't had the ability to, or we haven't had, it hasn't been the priority to kind of bring that in and instill that in. But I recall when I, you know, first met Orang, when we first got married, we were very much involved in the Baha'i community. And I was also so touched by um, exactly what you said, the level of tolerance, the ability to come together and, and despite all differences. And I'm talking about the gatherings that we had on a monthly basis were comprised of people from all walks of life. I have never seen um, truly either a religious gathering or a community gathering get together with have all different types of people, whether they were Iranians or Americans or, you know, different uh, cultures, different ethnicities coming together and just truly displaying the power of tolerance and unity in these gatherings. Um, it was the one thing that truly impacted me. And I love the fact that a lot of their thinking and a lot of their um, decision making is rooted in like science and the evolution of generations. Um, it just makes so much sense. And even as you were mentioning, the number 19 comes with some significant, you know, it's a, a significant number in the Baha'i faith. And it's, it's, it's rooted in, in science and what makes sense astronomically. Like it, it, it makes sense when you deep dive, dive deep into the Baha'i faith. And that's what I really remember um, impacting uh, me the most. And I, that's honestly what I have translated to Saba. And so she knows fully that if maybe not her father isn't the most practicing, her, her grandmother, who actually lives in Semnan, Iran right now, is a strong Baha'i follower, and you know, I know that if she were here, she would want to teach Saba some of those some of those things. So I do my best, but uh, yeah. Oh wait, in some ways or another, like I wouldn't consider myself a practice, um, and I try to like stay connected to a lot of the traditions or a lot of like. Uh, but I don't like I don't I don't remember the last time I actually so every 19 days there is a gathering that everyone comes together and I have attended many of those when I moved here and you know when I would go there like you know in Iran we attended it. everyone is Iranian and when I went here we had a lot of different people from different cultures different race and you know even that message of unity like it was even more clear for me but I don't, I don't necessarily practice the religion on like a day to day basis or, you know, attend as many events. And maybe I should because, you know, everyday life and a lot of things that does, does get in my, our way. Um, but, but I've never like, you know, I've the message is still like, you know, still in me and I will never like, you know, uh, let that go. Um, so I think for me, that has set my path. Um, so I, I know that I had like deep impact on me for lifetime and I know Iman mentioned um, you actually attended a, um, a meeting hosted by one of our uniters members um, a couple months husband. ago yes. could you, uh, you know, a, a question it was very informative actually it was very cool what they what they do um, my question to you is since the revolution began would you say that you become closer or you felt closer to the Baha'i faith or is it um, is it less? Is it the same? How 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 much has your faith in 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 being a Baha'i been altered in any direction in the last six months? Uh, I know in the beginning, um, you know, um, I think from certain community that had reached out to a few of the members um, and actually in the United members that we should not be engaged. Um, well, really. The Baha'i community, they, they don't encourage us getting engaged in the politic, um, so like a separation. Um, but not to say that, I mean, I'm not sure if there is any consequences as like me being involved in the revolution or doing what I'm doing. Um, but I don't, for me, it's important. You know, this revolution is important as part of it, not only just for freedom of my country, but also because as part of, you know, what Islamic regime has done, our, uh, the Baha'i people have been, you know, deeply impacted. A lot of us 
have fleed the country in many ways or other uh, just to be able to have some of the basic human rights, the access to education, access to um, free health care, or a lot of the things that is offered to a lot of people in Iran, but we do not have access to. Um, I know like a lot of my family members, the properties were taken over um, just because they were Baha'i. Uh, my cousin was in prison just because he was Baha'i. And still to this day, even during the revolution, a lot of Baha'is have been arrested and still are being arrested. And, you know, they've given, um, I believe someone most recently was given 10 year prison sentence. And, and the whole thing is, you know, circled around being a Baha'i. Um, there isn't a crime that they have committed or anything of that sort. So what, I mean, it, it just has brought on a lot of the emotions and, you know, the difficulties that we experienced and hardship from the regime and how it impacted us when we lived in Iran. So it even pushes me more to be involved and make sure that we will overthrow this regime because ultimately that will provide freedom for Baha'i people to be able to practice the religion as freely. Um, I know other religions, like when I was in school, I had uh, Christian friends and I had a couple of Jews friends, like they still had some ability. I wouldn't say they have as many freedoms, but they still had some of the abilities that we did not do, we did not have. Like I could not publicly come out and say I am Baha'i without the risk of being expelled or suspended from school, which has happened to me multiple times because you know, I, I was always a rebel, so I wouldn't, you know, and I would talk to my friends. I, I was a child. I was a teenager. In my mind, you know, I didn't think, why is the, the, the religion I'm practicing, why should I keep that to myself? I wasn't trying to convert anyone. And I think the worry was that, you know, us talking about the religion freely is some way is us trying to convert, you know, the students or other people into the religion. Um, so that was like a big no-no. Um, but I would say it has brought on a lot of those feelings and emotion um, as the revolution started. Shiva Jun, can I say one quick thing that I thought was interesting? Like when I first met Orang and, and uh, you know, what, we were, you know, dating and my parents got to know him and, you know, found out he was Baha'i, they had to have a moment of, of you know, reflection for themselves because we often think oh it's the islamic regime that's per persecuting the baha'i faith but we have to remember now that there have been a couple of generations that have been raised in this mentality that they are somehow less than not equal not good and you know it's not kind of like un unintentionally people may have this subconscious bias just from being raised in that environment and my parents truly had to go through that like oh wait a minute you know no, we don't actually believe this and we are okay with this. And he is an amazing individual and his family is wonderful. And that is not a deciding factor and that's fine. But it really was a moment of like, let me make sure because they, they're just been living 40 years at that point, 30 years of, you know, this mentality that it will, you know, kind of subconsciously, even if you're not intentionally trying to develop these prejudices, it will impact you. And so the Baha'i community is not just fighting the Islamic regime, but unfortunately, the ripple effects of their backwards mentality amongst the people as well. And it, it'll take some time. That is true. Um, as a result of that, you know, mentality, um, I would say I did not have a lot of friends. Like when I was in school, i I tend to change the school quite often. Um, so it, and that was like one of the mentality. It's that I would end up being in the situation that I, some way or another, my parents felt like, hey, you know, it's no longer safe for you to continue going to school here because everyone's mentality is that, you know, you're Baha'i and it, it mm -hmm. just started a lot of the difficult things. And as I was like in high school, you know, I think it was like the second year in high school and, I openly was like talking to a lot of my friends and, you know, came to find out a lot of them or a lot of like the kids did not think that way. So I actually started building friendships and to the point that I would go and visit them in their houses. Their parents in some way had more trust in me and, 
you know, compared to their other friends, then they would know that my upbringing has been different and I would not in some way or another, you know, crop their kids uh, or attempt in converting them. Um, so that was like an impact that it, it did truly have an impact on us. Um, Mariam, Jun, you have been quiet. I'm not sure if you have a lot of experience with yeah. Baha'i religion uh, or... You know, I was listening to you had... because I I was not raised in Iran uh, and I was raised in Sweden actually so it's very interesting because I I did not know much about the Baha'i uh, culture so it's very interesting and when you talk about it um, I had a question um, when did you leave Iran because it looks like you you had a lot of like experience there before you left. Um, I believe I was 16. I remember when we got here, I was 17. Um, we actually uh, moved to Turkey. Mm -hmm. So we migrated. We seek refuge in Turkey uh, under the religion. So we, had, you know, had to go to UN. But I was there until I was 16. So I was in high school by the time we left. Um, and although, like, but, you know, I did not like, I mean, I liked everything about, you know, the country and, you know, the people. I did not like the regime and the, what they were doing um, to the Baha'is and being arrested and all of that or not even freely be able to practice or even a gathering, you know, hey, we're getting together this month, you know, we're celebrating or something. We're at so-and-so's house. We always, there was always that fear that, hey, you know, they might come knock on the door and a few of us, if not all of us. Um, but I did feel the majority of like the difficulties I felt in the school. Um, like, and I know, and my parents knew that ultimately we didn't have access to education after high school. Um, so I know a few years after we left, uh, they allowed um, a lot of the Baha'i kids to take the entry exam um, to the university universities um, and you know the majority of the ones that were the top rated were the Baha'i kids um, so it was almost like if the regime feared the Baha'i kids and just because we were smart or I'm like I don't understand it it I really at that time I didn't understand it I did not understand that why can't I you know as a Baha'i kid attend universities why is my future different than someone else and I, I remember when these people like take to took the entry exam a lot of I mean majority of them were not allowed to enter the universities so it was almost like a it, it was a game that hey we're allowing you to take the entry exam we're giving you that freedom but we're not going to allow you the entry to universities and eventually over the years I have you know heard uh, stories or have talked to my cousins or friends that they eventually were granted access to universities and could go to university. But even that, it was the same hardship that, you know, throughout the school years, they were given, you know, hard time. Uh, they were suspended. My own cousin, you know, in the third year of university, basically expelled from the school. Um, so like, you know, and he was studying architects. So oh, Mariam dropped out, um, but he was studying, but, you know, I, year three they basically kicked him out and he never went back to the university and they never allowed him um, access to university after that um, so it's always been a back and forth um, they allow some or they give you certain things but they take it back and i believe over the past couple years it's even been harder there's been more arrests um, in every corner of the country it's not just one Absolutely. single city yeah, my, my husband and, and sister shared the same <clears throat> experience as you, Shiva John. They are a family of uh, four siblings, actually, and their older sibling was actually arrested. And to this day, we won't talk about like what happened, but I know it was, tr you know, traumatic. And, you know, m my mother-in-law is extremely tight, like she would never have allowed her family to be dissipated all over the all over the world, you know if it were not for the fact that her oldest son was unfortunately detained and, you know, traumatized as a result of this. So once that happened and they were fortunate enough to get him back, she was then willing to allow the rest of his siblings, they left and then she let them all leave. And my husband is the youngest of four, but he went with his uh, two-year-older sister through the same route that you did. And, 
you know, came here on their own and essentially had to establish a life here on their own and trying to find refuge here. And that's, it was the same exact story. And his mom, you know, remains there alone right now and trying to, you know, continue to practice what she thinks is, you know, what, what's valuable to her, but under constant fear of what's going on. And to your point, they're, they're giving freedoms only, they give you one only to take back five. I mean, I think we all know at the end of the day, and never going to allow any body of individuals, especially ones that are, you know, believe strongly in education and progressive growth and evolutionary change to kind of step up in any meaningful way, because that's exactly where their Achilles heel is. And it's unfortunate to see, and I hope that there's a brighter future, because there's a lot to be learned from, from individuals that practice the Baha'i faith for all of us. Absolutely. And I think it was the same for my mom. Like, you know, she was like that I would never leave the country, even though my my dad was the one that over the years, like, you know, persisted that we should go and we should, like, you know, pack our bag and leave because there is no future here for us. Um, and ultimately, I think, I think as we got older and, you know, we were reaching the high school age and going to, you know, reaching the point that we needed, like, more we what was life after high school for us that my mom came to the realization that I think it's time to leave and I think during the time we were leaving you know at the same time my aunt and a few of my cousins were leaving the country as well and some of our friends um, that have like you know moved decided that they want to leave the country as well and I said earlier like I have a cousin that's been arrested about two times and, you know, he still refuses. And I have asked him a couple of times that if they would leave. Um, and, you know, he had mentioned that this is his country and he would not abandon his country. And it does not matter if he's a Baha'i and he would build a future here. And I'm truly happy for them as they've been able to, you know, build a future for himself and his children. Um, but I have seen the hardship that he experienced during the time that he was arrested. His business also was closed as a result. And, you know, ultimately it was money that freed them from, you know, the prison and not because that there was a judicial system or any sort of, okay, what is this person's crime other than being a Baha'i? Um, so it, it did impact a lot. I mean, ultimately, I think, you know, my parents came to that realization that it's best to leave, um, even though, you know, it impacted us and we pretty much had leave everything behind and had to yeah. start from zero. When so we many got of here. these type stories and I can't help but acknowledge um, Sohela Jun in the chats. She told her story of when she left Iran in 1973 for the US. She had graduated high school, but when she was in school in Iran in the summertime, she you know, described some of the horrific things that people did simply because I imagine she, she practices the Baha'i religion, <clears throat> a Baha'i faith. Um, throwing watermelon peels and unfortunately, you know, including pieces of glass and snowballs. And, and, and sadly, she wrote that this was a norm. We were still getting persecuted, but wasn't openly being talked about or endorsed. And so, you know, it's really important that we have this conversation to bring awareness to what's going on. You know, uh, we've all experienced some level of, 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 you know, stereotype or racism and it's really important to stand up where you can. So make sure that we're bringing awareness that this exists and there's so many reasons to fight the Islamic regime in Iran. This is one of the most important ones as well. Absolutely. Yeah, it's also, oh. it's also important to teach your kids about. Yep. So I'm, I'm so yep. happy that I can talk to my kids now. They're at, the, at an age where I can talk to them about like what the Islamic Republic is doing is wrong and why. Definitely. I, I look forward to speaking to your niece, Isabella, at uh, 445 yeah. to kind of get her perspective. But um, I, I have Doña Des who's coming at 415, but I got to do one of those resets. So I want to thank you, ladies, for, for having this conversation and, and Shiva Jun dropping more knowledge about the Baha'i faith and the challenges and, and the reason why you continue to do this fight. So thank you so much for coming on and sharing this. And Sara Jun, Maya Jun, as always, appreciate you as well. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. So I'm, I'm going to turn down, turn Bye. off the IG live, everybody, but please hop back on in three minutes. We're going to have Doña Del Sus be our next guest. I have to cut this off so that we can upload it on YouTube. Uh, so stay tuned and come back in three minutes. 
and we're back awesome people it's part four of um our live stream our 12-hour live stream um the celebration of no rules and we've been spending a lot of time with a lot of awesome people since 11 11 a.m eastern time and we're going all the way until 11 11 p.m eastern time if i'm starting to look a little bit tired i apologize i'm trying to get my red bull in and i'm looking forward for the injection of sabzi polo mahi to keep uh, the energy up high but appreciate you all for joining i hope that as we're approaching Saltavil, which at this point is one hour nine minutes and 28 seconds and counting until we uh strike a new year and we cannot wait for this new year because it will bring us the freedom in iran that we've been yearning for so um if you're joining from a city um or any city just i want you guys to kind of drop in and let me know where you're joining for. I'm always curious where um, everybody's from. So don't be shy. And I see Doña Delsu's uh, right over here. And just to give you guys a little bit of background about her, she's the founder and CEO of All Borrow, a green tech startup. Prior to starting her company, she was in the marketing and branding space for over a decade and was a consultant working with various companies across diverse industries. She's a passionate activist. And if you've been following her for six months, you know that. Uh, using her platform to educate the masses on the current human rights crisis in Iran. She holds an MBA from USC and currently resides in Orange County. I see Holland we're representing. I love it. Netherlands in the house. Welcome to Donia Del Suz. We had her as one of our guests for Countdown to Freedom in Iran a few weeks ago, but we just couldn't have enough of her. And so that's why I want to have her here to say a few words on Notus. Hi, Iman. How, how are you? Are you? Good to see you, Aziz. Can you hear me well? I feel like my reception is not the best. No, right but now. We're, oh. we're good. Well, okay, perfect. We can hear you perfectly clear. Thank you so much for spending for a part me. of your Noru's with us. Thank you so much. Thank you for doing this today. I mean, you're taking your entire day to dedicate to this. So thank you. Or when it, it's, it's, a, it's the least that we can do. We wanted to make sure that we're doing something to keep the conversation alive. And now that you're part of it, first of all, what are you doing for Noru's? So after this, I'm about to head to my cousin's house. She's kind of hosting a little, little Noru's get together and probably going to be eating sabzi polo mohi. So I'm very excited for that. Yeah. And then back to work after it. So. Oh, wow. You're going to back, go back to work. You didn't, you're not going we to use our, <laughs> Yeah, we had a large uh, family gathering. We have family coming from, you know, all over the world. Um, and they're in town right now. They're from Iran, from different parts. And we had our big gathering yesterday, prematurely. We celebrated. So... Yes. Today's going to be a short one. Good. Well, um, Donya, let, let's say somebody that doesn't know what you've been up to in the last six months as it relates to Iran. Why don't you kind of give them a nutshell story of how you've been using your love of words and your skills in writing to be able to amplify the voices of Iranians? Yeah, I mean, I've just tried to do what I can to contribute. I think we all have. And for me, putting these infographics together on topics that are essential, whether it's the history of Iran and um, the people and pre post 1979, what happened or what is currently happening in terms of all the discriminations and putting it into little digestible infographics that could be shareable um, to the masses, especially to non-Iranians who want to get a better understanding of what's been going on, what's been happening, to get a, get more of a context of the discrepancy between the regime and the actual Iranian culture and what's what the Iranians want. Um, that's kind of where I saw I could fit into the puzzle and contribute. So, you know, like I, I was having a conversation earlier with somebody and how like, it, you know, we're all going through this revolution, like for the first time, you know, like, yes, there's been many waves of it, but for the most part, the individuals like yourself, it's not like you've done this before. You kind of just like were either in, in the industry or like you had this creative background and you're like, let me leverage social media to kind of share this message the way that, that I know best. Did something, um, did you kind of follow somebody else that was doing it just like that? And you're like, I got to copy and paste this and do it for the Iranians or like, what was it that kind of like, Made, made you want to do it in this shape or form? Yeah, so that's a great question. I, I wish I remembered the exact these. I think we were, we've all been running on adrenaline, um, especially in the beginning. So you just kind of go with it, go with the flow and just are quick with it. So it wasn't a specific thing. I do remember the first post that I made was really just out of this dire need to articulate 
that it's not just women wearing hijab that is the discrimination. It's so many other things that are so absurd, but we just don't talk about it, right? Um, and I just, I didn't even do an infographic, I just wrote. Um, and I turned that into slides. And um, there was a lot of, you know, feedback on it. And I have a good friend of mine from Toronto, and she works with a, a celebrity. And she wanted the celebrity to reshare an infographic. And she messaged me saying, why do we not have many people um, that have English information for the masses? Because at first, in the beginning, it was all in Farsi. Yeah. Um, and as great as that is for us, we wanted a global movement. So that's when, you know, I, at first I was like, you know, well, let's start a team. Let's find people to do this. And it's just hard to coordinate that. And so I started making them. And that was kind of the trigger point. And, you know, like, of course, we're trying to reach a non-Iranian audience, but the reality is that, I don't know about you, but I don't read Persian. And so like, for me, I was having difficulty, like even absorbing new information. So the way I look at it is that the way that you were putting out this descriptive and inform informative uh, content, it's for people like me too, because I was constantly looking and searching for the best way to get more information, get educated, get involved. So I feel like you, you brought on a lot of people off the bench and into this war because of what you're doing. So you kind of kill two birds with one stone, you know, reach a whole global audience, but also some Iranians that may not have been born and raised in Iran. Well, which is also including myself because my Farsi reading, I can read Farsi, but I'm not great. I'm very slow. So a paragraph to read will take me 30 minutes. So I need to give a shout out to all the people that I would send screenshots or copy paste. <laughs> like, can you translate this for me? So, um, I mean, Google Translate is great, but it comes off wrong. So I would usually like copy that and be like, can you fix this? So there was a lot of people behind the scenes <laughs> who helped with that because my Farsi is not, you know, I can speak great, but my written Farsi, horrible. So it definitely was beneficial for me too. When, when was the last time you were in Iran? 2017 was the last time I went, September of 2017 um, for two weeks. And honestly, it was a big shock for me just because um, I used to go every couple of years, but that year was like the final and um, it, it was more of a sad trip as opposed to happy just because you go and it's just so different and people are just, you see how, how they, these all throughout the decades have just deteriorated and the spirits are coming down and they're just the unhappiness everywhere. So I remember that trip really had a negative effect on me, even though it was amazing to see family, I just felt sad. And I, you know, you see all these kids in the streets and you see all the, and you just want to give money to everyone and you're walking around and you're just feeling bad for everyone. And, Unfortunately, as one person, you can't help everyone. So it was kind of a, after that, it was hard for me to plan a trip to go back. Do you, do, uh, have you ever spent no rules in Iran? I have not. I mean, when I was a kid, um, I was in Iran until I was eight years old. So um, yes, then, but after that, I never did. I wish. Do, do you happen to have a, a memory from any of those younger age notes that you'd like to share? I, Iman, I don't know what I ate yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I mean, uh, I can imagine how wonderful it was. I and mean, I, I come from a very large family. I have like, in total, 46 cousins. So um, I, I could just imagine it was a house full of kids and a big sofre. I know my grandma always on my dad's side would have a sofre on the floor, actually, from one side to the other, and we just gather around it. So I'm sure something like that and a lot of, a lot of food. <laughs> so. That's hilarious. So... Um, let's say, for example, you were right now in a free Iran for Noruz. How would you be spending Noruz right now if you were in Iran? What city and where? Well, let's manifest this. So hopefully, hopefully next, by next year. Next year, for that, sure. Uh, that's what I keep saying. I know a lot of people wanted to like cancel Noruz, but I'm like, this is the one thing that we have that's an ancient tra tradition that they can't take away from us. And it's actually a um, pre-celebration. I think we're like early celebration of what's to come, right? So... Um, I, I can imagine if next year we're all in Iran, it's going to be a big, big festivity with a lot of dancing, with a lot of singing and a lot of food and family all around um, to be able to finally all be together would be just, I mean, I, I get I'm thinking about it. So what, what city is your family from? So my dad's side, most of them are in Tehran um, and my mom's side, they're actually from Shomal Amun, so a small town. There. Yeah. So when you used to go back to Iran, would you go up to Shomal as well? All the time. Every, every trip, yeah, um, definitely would do the drive at least and stay there half the time, half this way. You know, what, one so. thing, I, I've, I've done one trip in my entire life to Iran, and it was two weeks, Tehran, Shiraz, Esfahan. It was like a whirlwind, quick trip. 
And like, I see these Instagram channels. One of them was actually great, Iran Guide One, with beautiful scenery of the different parts of Iran. And like, it pisses me off that like, we have so much beauty, so much of a vast land of diversity, you know, music, culture, languages, dialects, ethics. I mean, and then we've been deprived of that. We haven't been able to really go see every inch of this uh, ma magnificent land. I think that is that is one dream I have is to be able to go truly explore all the different parts of Iran because I see a, you know I have I don't know if it's Iran guide that I've seen but I've seen different Instagram pages and I'm like I cannot believe this is Iran. Yeah. Um, I feel like that we have a little part of all these different places in the world within Iran um, that like we have the deserts, we have the oceans, we have the forests, we have the waterfalls, we have it all. That's so um, I hope we can we can explore it soon. No, it'd be amazing to backpack through all of um, Iran. Mm -hmm. um, in closing, I'd like for you to kind of share any type of Nuru's wishes that you have for our people, any kind of messages of hope. Uh, the virtual mic is all yours. Yeah, I think um, this is I think this is an early celebration for all of us of what's to come this year. I truly, truly believe that this is a new beginning for Iranians um, and we get to be in a very um, different state in, in the next year where we're all going to be celebrating together bigger changes and that is a downfall of the Islamic regime. So I think that we need to put all of our focus on that. It's a new year, um, new hopes and dreams, and we're going to conquer them. So, yeah. From your mouth to God's ears. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe, I just want you to know that the stuff that you've been doing online has had a massive impact and I want to project as much energy as I can to you. So you continue doing it because we need people like you put that pen to the pad and, and just be able to continue creatively share um, the stories of what's happening inside of Iran because it's incredibly impactful. And the way that you do it, there aren't too many people. And so I'm rooting for you to continue to be our voice the way that you have been so that hopefully next year we are celebrating inside of Iran. Thank you so much much Iman and thank you for all that you've been doing you've been going strong so <laughs> I commend you <laughs> trying but let us have a great have a great notice with your family enjoy it and then try not to go back to work later just have your <laughs> <sabji> <laughs> for the mahi, chai before, like you know get persuaded not to they won't let me so yeah okay well good luck but thank you again for joining us appreciate you much love take care all all right, so happy to have had Doria Joe as part of this as well. If you haven't followed her content, please make sure that you do and drop her a hello and tell her thank you for all that you've been doing for this movement because um, I, I genuinely believe that the type that she does, there aren't that many people out there. And so we need to make sure to, to give people like that the energy that they need to continue because it is very time consuming. It is very emotionally exhausting. Um, you know, it's 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 a lot of it's a lot of work. It really is. So, kudos to her. Speaking of somebody that's been spending a lot of time and energy um, in this movement, it's been Farid and Najafi, and I'm sure that you guys have um, come across his Instagram page. It's Iranian knows. It's Iranian knowledge, but the but the Instagram handle is Iranian knows. And I look forward to welcoming him as soon as he requests to join. We're about two minutes ahead of schedule. If you're just just joining. Oh, by the way, somebody, um, not somebody, Yegar Najum was asking what time is Salt Tabil exactly. So this is a great time to let you know that it is at 5.24 p.m. and 28 seconds Eastern Standard Time. So if you're on the East Coast, it's 5.24 p.m. But no matter where you are, we are 56 minutes and 5, 4, 3, 2, one second. We're 56 minutes away from Salt Tabia. So wherever you are in the world, in 56 minutes, we get to ring in a new year that will hopefully, after 44 years, bring us a free Iran. I genuinely believe that it can happen this year if you believe that a free Iran is in sight in the next 365 days, then drop it in the chat. Let's manifest it. Put put hearts, do whatever you got to do, but let's project this energy of freedom in Iran in the coming year. And it's crazy that in 55 minutes, we, tur we turn chapter on a yet another year. It's not the notice that we were expecting, but we're gonna make sure that uh, we make the best of this and that we will continue to be the voice of Iranians. And just by being a part of this program today, 
you're doing your part to continue to keep this conversation alive, which I believe is necessary. And if you're watching it today with us, and I believe you do too. So continue doing whatever you can to bring awareness. And we're just waiting right now for Fatty John to join us. And while he uh, requests to join, if you're not familiar yet with what we do on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m., it's called Countdown to Freedom in Iran. What is Countdown to Freedom in Iran? It's basically a one hour live stream that we put together. And the goal is to essentially provide you with the latest news and updates about what's happening in Iran. And then we have our uniters giving an update on what United Conquer is doing. And we also have like a mental health minute, a wellness minute, uh, and some mental stress, uh, stress stuff. And so a lot of great things to kind of help with the mind, body, and soul while talking about Iran. I'll shut up now because I want to bring in uh, Fatty John. He's waiting patiently. So I wanted to bring him in. He's joining us from the beautiful city of Vancouver. Bah, 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 Fatty John. That 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 looks like a, a backdrop that is like a filter, but it's it's real. There he is. Hey guys. Fatty John. <laughs> How are you? Hey, Manu. I love the, the fireplace. It it looked like a image at first. It was so Pristine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how's the day going? It's going okay. Hey, we're like at the at the midway point of the program, so definitely starting to get a little bit uh, tired. But we get energized when we see people like you, amazing freedom fighters. How are you? Good. Thank you very much for having me on your show again. Of course. It's good to see you, buddy. Always our pleasure. Um, how's Vancouver? How's the weather? Uh, it's pretty decent today. Uh, sunny yesterday. I spent. Uh, the whole day out, outdoors, we went for a bike ride. Yeah, you, Miami is always, obviously always nice. <laughs> most of the time, yes. Do you, do you live like right on the mountain? Because a couple of times we've been communicating and you're like, I'm snowboarding. And I'm like, are you literally like on, on the hills? <clears throat> I do live on the hills, but not uh, like, the, I'm, I'm not where the, uh, the ski so um, <laughs> hill is. I'm on a different mountain, yeah. Okay, nice. But it, but you're obviously very close to it because it seems like whenever you feel like it, you're like, I'm just going to go snowboarding for a little bit. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, it's kind of like the end of the season. So you try and uh, get as many rides as you can in before the season ends. Right. I, I'm actually, I just got started with snowboarding. I'm kind of a new, new sporter. I've been boarding for a few years, but it's fun. I've learned to like do all of it now. Excellent. Good for you, man. Um, all right. So for those of people that are joining in, and they have no idea about Fadi. They don't know about Iranian knowledge. Can you go ahead and share a little bit of information? Uh, yeah. So Iranian knowledge is basically uh, a new media company. We have uh, we do two things. One is we do research-based uh, content on Iran in English on our social channels, uh, Iranian knows uh, on uh, Instagram and on uh, Twitter and TikTok. Uh, another part of our work is uh, we basically do research on uh, information on uh, prisoners and people that were killed and IRI affiliates and IRI judges, and that goes on our website and our database. And that's just basically for people to uh, uh, gain access to information. If they're looking for it, it's free. Uh, anybody can go and search for information. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, I, I actually forgot or didn't know that you guys uh, are on TikTok as well. Did you guys start both at the same time? Uh, no, no, no. We started um, our Instagram page is about a hundred days old. Our TikTok is uh, maybe I would say two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we just kind of throw some of our videos on it, uh, but our focus is on Instagram. Uh, but well, one of our videos did go viral. It did go get about I think hundred fifty thousand views. So on TikTok. Um, and yeah, yeah. It's it's a very strange platform. Um, um, I don't know if it's the right place for our uh, our brand, but are some of our videos where we're trying to raise awareness, it's a good spot to put it. And, you know, so it's something that we're also uh, working on. Yeah, it's a little bit hit or miss uh, on TikTok. It's like you can't really put the same Instagram content on TikTok. I mean, yeah. if, if, if it goes viral, then you just really got lucky. It must have been really good. But most of the time, it's got to be a little bit more creative, whether it's like yeah. a person doing it, or just visually uh, think, but I mean that's that's great that you're on there. It's I'm sure in some shape or form, it reaches yeah. a whole different demographic. It's, 
Yeah, it's kind of out there. So it's growing small, slowly. We're at like 600 followers. Um, but, you know, it's 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 something that uh, works good for videos that, uh, you know, like the one that did really well was the one of the five girls dancing. And we basically had text over it, just telling their story yeah. and how they got, um, you know, how they're not allowed to dance and they can get arrested. And so... Uh, people are still talking about that, which is interesting. Yeah, I mean, I could definitely see how that video would be a great fit for TikTok. Um, how how are you spending um, your Noru's? Well, I'm I'm at home right now. Um, my uh, family is out, but uh, we're basically going to spend it with my family and uh, just kind of uh, didn't go to work today and just going to stay in and uh, spend some time with the family and uh, you know uh, get used to the, the sort of the no rules. It's interesting, you know. I, I ever since this whole movement, I've been very much into the Iranian traditions and celebrating no rules and just learning everything about it. Because I'm, I'm just kind of, I, I have to do research as I go along to educate people. So it, I'm also educating myself. Uh, so I've been more into the culture and really just kind of being close to my roots. Yeah. Yeah. So be before this, like. Uh, were you as informed or are you literally learning as you go and then you're sharing it with the rest well, of the I, world? I would say I was informed, but not as informed. Um, I mean, some of the details in terms of uh, some of the topics that we've been sharing on Iranian knowledge, um, it really goes into detail. So, yeah, no, I have been learning a lot as I go along. Uh, every every topic that we talk about, I've been learning. Um, I did want to mention that there's been a... Um, some people have been very hesitant about whether we should celebrate aid or no rules this year, you know, given the circumstances and how a lot of families have lost their loved ones. Um, my opinion is that you should, uh, and there's two reasons for it. Uh, one, uh, uh, no rules is a symbol of resistance. Um, it has survived a lot. It has survived uh, the Arabs, Arab invasion. It has survived the Mongol invasion, and no matter what our country has been through, it has survived and people continue to celebrate it. So that's the reason number one why you should celebrate it, um, it's just because it's symbolically an act of resistance. Um, two, um, we've been kind of at this uh, stage of being in grief and shock for six months. It's good to kind of give yourself a break and just kind of recharge and, you know, just I think a break from uh, being in that sort of state of mind and just taking a break because you need to be recharged if you want to continue. It's just kind of a long game. So those are my two reasons I recommend people celebrate no roses and some of you are hesitant. I, I heard some friends don't put them, didn't put half scene together. I think you should. I think you should definitely yeah, celebrate. No, of course. I, I think the, the word, the, the word celebrate is a tough one for people to kind of like take in because it's hard to celebrate it, but we definitely have to acknowledge it. I mean, the regime has done everything it can to strip away our culture. And this is our tradition, our culture. So for sure, we need to acknowledge it. And there's so much um, beauty and meaning and message behind the half scene that um, I definitely agree with you that we need to continue to um, acknowledge it and, and share it with the world. And, and also educate the rest of the world about the beauty of uh, and the meaning behind no rules and, and a new and a new year um yeah and and you, you know feel free to recognize the people that we've lost you know uh i i i just watched pahlavi's speech you know he recognized the loved ones he he recommended unity and solidarity and uh we can we're only gonna, gonna fight this battle through collaboration and and for people to uh, help each other out and be, you know, for people, families that have lost children, you know, act as the, as their children or if uh, kids have lost their parents, act as their parents. So it's a great speech. I enjoyed it. Um, I actually translated it to English. I was being trying to post it, but my Instagram is uh, for some reason cutting it to, ni to 90 seconds. Um, I don't know how to get around it, but uh, I've been I battling think, that. I think you got to put it as a post instead of a reel. Maybe yeah. that's what it is. I am. I am. It's hmm. something to do with my account. It just doesn't want to let me do it. It just keeps cutting it. it doesn't give me a trim option. Let me, let, let me WhatsApp Zuckerberg and I'll get back to you to see what's going on. <laughs> um, when, when was the last time you were in Iran? Um, last time I traveled to Iran was 2001, just before 
Um, I was a young man back then. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Um, I was there for about two or three weeks, uh, but I haven't gone since. I got my passport recently about five years ago, and I was about to go, but then I just, uh, I think it was around the 2017 protests that were taking place, and so I decided not to. Obviously, now I probably never have to never go back until the, there's a free year on out yeah. there. Yeah. Um... And it's so funny because last time I was there, the first and last time was the year two thousand for two weeks. So we were we just missed each other by a year. So oh, yeah. uh, do you do you have any um have you ever experienced notos in Iran? Uh, I have because um I grew up in Dubai as a child. So in the summers when I was in school I would travel to Iran. So I spent a lot of time in Iran even though I left when I was four. Did I spend Noru's? Um I can't recall, to be honest. I can't recall if I did, but probably because, I mean, Norris is in March and I went to Iran in the summers, so maybe not. What about you? you you've I, never been. Um, I've, I've been, I've, I wasn't there for Norris. I was there like in January, cold time, um, um, and, then, and then that's it. So I've never experienced it and I would love to experience it hopefully next year. Um, what 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 notus wish i'd like to close off on you sharing any kind of notice message that you have with the people of iran any hope that you have for iran and iranians and uh, uh, before i give you my notice speech there's one thing i want to share with uh, with the people that are listening um Iranian knowledge is going to do an online survey uh and ask people some very important questions it, it, it has to do with uh foreign uh policies of the u.s government just want to share some of the questions with you before it comes out it's it's really interesting uh one of the questions is uh do you believe the policies of democratic or republican administration are best for to support the iranian revolution so you get to anybody can go and uh, basically answer these questions once it's out uh Another question, on a scale of 0 to 10, how effective has the Biden administration's policies been in exerting noticeable or meaningful pressure on the Islamic Republic? Uh, do you believe the special envoy for uh, Iran, Robert Malley's mandate and goal for negotiating with the Islamic Republic, has it been effective? Should he be fired? So it's questions like this. Um, given the circumstances and revolution, do you believe uh, that special envoy for Iran, Robert Malley, should be fired so there's a poll coming out it'll just kind of give will give us an idea of what the public sentiment is out there you know do you see uh do you see like will you still vote republican will you still vote or if you're a democrat will you vote for republicans since the democrats are not doing much of their activities may light so it'll give us the public sentiment and we'll uh basically publish the report uh in terms of my uh Norris message uh, i'm going to do this in farsi i think it's, it's probably best uh بچه‌ی عزیز ایران می‌خوام بهتون ایدتون رو تبریک بگم از 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 صمیم قلبم خیلی دوستتون دارم و و امیدوارم یه روزی با هم تو ایران نوروز رو جشن بگیریم you know, you put so much of your heart and soul into this revolution, man. And I, I'm so proud of you and so grateful for all that you've done. And I know a lot of people watching here have been, uh, you know, grateful for what you've been doing at Iran. You know, you and your entire team. And uh, if we get to this freedom, it's because of people like you. So keep on doing what you're doing. And we will for sure be celebrating a free Iran very soon. Thank you, Iman John. Have a great day. I want to wish you a new happy Norris as well. I know you got a long way to go. You got what, another seven hours. Yeah, don't remind me, but it's okay. I'm spending it with people like you, so I, I can't. I can't be complaining. Uh, all right, all right, man. Have a good day. I'll I will come in once in a while and check in and see who's please, talking. Please do. Um, but I, you know, I get my work done as well. Please do. No rus pirus. Salut a tutti. Damit gerne for the office. For the office. All right. So as Navid is leaving, we're trying to get. Um, Tehran on. I, hopefully, he can kind of come on right now. We've been hit, we've been missing each other. He went to the Noru's uh, invite by, by Biden and the administration, and I've been trying to get his um, account on how it went. I haven't had a chance to be on social media to see what others have been posting. So let's see if he can come on or not. 
I keep on pressing accept, but I think I keep on missing him. I'm going to give it a minute or so. Let me just message him real quick. I'm very curious how it's been going. And if you guys have seen pictures or videos of what's been happening at the White House from other people that have gone, I would love to, um, I would love to hear about it. So drop, drop a comment over here. I want to know who went. I want to know what they've done. Um, my personal take on this whole situation is that it's unfortunately like a, a PR um, ploy on behalf of the Biden administration. And under normal circumstances, it would have been great and an honor to be invited to um, this White House. And I just hope that perhaps Biden is saying some things that he will actually back up behind it and put maximum pressure on the regime and not continuing to do things that are actually empowering the regime to do all the torturing and the killing and the beating and the arresting of our innocent people, you know? So um, it's a very conflicting feeling under normal circumstances. You, you, we should be happy that the White House of the United States of America is, is hosting its most influential Iranians, but you know, let's, let's, let's see what becomes of it. Um, so yeah, so I guess Tehran just kind of left. Again, we're, we're going to keep on trying. He's going to come on at some point. I really need to get his uh, first take view on, on noticing. Um, Mona Jun, let's get, okay, here, here he is actually, perfect. All right, I think we should be able to get him on. Tehran has a lot, lot of fans. He's a good dude. I've known him from the DC area for almost 15, 20 years. Has worked incredibly hard. There he is. Yo, who do I need to sleep with to get on your Instagram live, bro? I know, like, we've been going back and forth for a while. My bad. I was, there's some Nazmi cat that. <laughs> yeah, bro, this on my Instagram live. It's beyond, yo. I'm a, 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 I was at the White House. They let Tehran into the White House, bro. Can you, Can believe, you believe that? that? Dude, give, they let give Tehran us, give us into scoop, the White House. Man. Give us the freaking scoop. Let's go. Listen, first of all, first of all, we definitely need to check the security of this nation. They let me into the White House? No problem. They didn't even stop me. In a hoodie. They just let me right in. Yeah, in a hoodie. I had a hoodie. I rocked it. I rocked the whole nine. I didn't let them get away with stuff. So... You know, and shout out to all the people that did. Anyway, I went to the White House. Um, it was very cool to go to the White House. They had a half scene. They had Danny Asadi performed. Rana Mansour performed. Uh, Joe Biden spoke himself. President Biden spoke himself. Um, he did. First of all, I have a new mission. My new mission is to make sure that everyone in America says Iran, not Iran. That's my new mission. <laughs> Iran. How hard is Iran? Iran. Okay? No Iran. Well, he, he, no he, more he Iran. Has, he has some dementia issues. I so give him a break, you know? I mean, honestly, <laughs> I'll tell you something, bro. He gave a really good speech, and even though he messed up Shiraz and said Shiruz, okay, which was very funny. By the way, are the cops chasing you again? They are the security. Listen, Secret Service, Iman, Secret Service watched me like a hawk, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they watched me. They were all uh, they were all over me. Okay, Secret Service inside the hallway. They weren't playing games. And here's the best part. So a lot of Iranians were there. Surprisingly, there were some Iranian Americans who I felt should be there that weren't there. I felt like you should have been there. Farmers Aslani should have been there, invited. There were a lot of people who weren't invited, but you know they work on the guest list. They do the best they can. Um, there were some very cool people there. The funny and Farsi lady Firuze was there. Jason R Razan was there. Uh, Seppi Shine, who's going to be running for Congress, who's the mayor of West Hollywood, was there. Nazani Noor was there. Tara Grami was there. A lot of a lot of cool people were there. So it was good, but I wish there were other people there also who should have been there. Uh, I wish there was more of a program if they did something more. But President Biden was there himself. His wife spoke first. Dr. Biden spoke. She spoke first, and then he spoke. I don't really remember anything specific what they said. A lot of, you know, just speaking to get, that's what it's, uh, they talk. It's politics. No one actually, no one actually does stuff, and when they do do stuff, it's the wrong stuff. So, 
they were speaking, but I thought it was very respectful of them. There was a band, there were like the White House bands playing. It was very cool. But then they came to kick us out and the Iranians wouldn't leave. The Marines came. The Marines came to kick us out. Well, also Iranians, they take a long time to say goodbye. So they have to first. Yeah, exactly. Joe Biden. Uh, I have a question for you. So a lot of people were probably saying that, you know, like, uh, it's great that they're putting a no rules event, but, you know, why aren't they putting the right actions, the right sanctions to, to really uh, negatively impact the regime? What, what do you have to those people who are kind of like saying, don't go there. It's like just a PR stunt and don't be a part of it. What's your, what's your response to those people? So, so my response to people who feel that way, and I understand why they feel that way. However, being involved is always the best course of action when you can. We need to show face. He needs to see how many Iranian Americans there are firsthand who are valued members of the community and of this country because you had a lot of important people in that place. You had a lot of respected people who were politicians, who were investment, who were financiers, big donors. So he needs to see that because remember, President Biden or President Trump or President Obama or whoever's in president in the office, they're not the president of Iran. They're the president of the United States and they do what's best for the United States. So we need to show them that we, Iranian Americans are very much a part of the United States and that our interests align with the United States interests. That is how that works. That's why it's so important to be involved, that we have so many people like uh, councilwomen. I met councilwomen from Atlanta. I met the person running for state senate in, in Phoenix, Arizona. All of these people are Iranian. It's very important. So many times do Iranians like back off, don't be the one there. This is in Haq Mas, Kemos of As in Azadir Bayan, that you have to use Amrika, 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 and speak out. And so it was very important that we were there because that shows how valuable the Iranians are. Boycotting doesn't get us doesn't get us as much. There are times when we should boycott and then there are times where we should show the most force. Don't boycott the protests and then tell people to boycott the White House. Go to, to everything. Be there. Be a part. Be a voice. Joe Biden saw this hoodie on me and saw my Tehran hat. I wore a hat and a hoodie at the White House. And trust me, I represented. I'm glad you did, man. Did, uh, did anybody else, as far as Iranians, speak over there too? Or was it just uh, Jill and Joe? No, uh, Jill Biden spoke, Joe Biden spoke. And then there was uh, Yasmin Mulgav Bagav. I don't remember her last name, but she's an astronaut for NASA. And apparently she's going to be, she's a lieutenant colonel at NASA. She spoke. So that was really cool, too. Okay. She's an astronaut. You know, we're even in space, bro. Well, what was the favorite part of the program for you? The favorite part of the program for me was when Joe Biden called it Shiru's. When he said Shiru's, I had to be Tehran. Like, you don't understand how many Tehran things I did at the White House. I did so many Tehran things. I'm never, they're probably never going to invite me again. What did you, but, what did you steal? And, yo. <laughs> As a souvenir, you know. I would never steal from the White House. <laughs> I would man, never steal dude, from the White House. We, we would have had, we would have had such a great time together there, man. It would be like the good yeah. old days, man. It would be like the good old days, two of us. But then they decided to do their due diligence on Iman Hushman and realize that this guy is probably going to cause a ruckus over here, you know? So they're like, no way. Cause a ruckus. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, honestly, it's actually very, 
important that they celebrate these things because Iranian New Year isn't just for Iranians. It's for the whole world. Yeah. And I tell people this all the time because they'll be like, oh, I can't celebrate. I can't go to that sh You're not Irish either, but you go to St. Patty's Day. You're going drinking St. Patty's Day. You're not Irish. It's the same thing. Why is our culture less than it's equal to it's been around for 3,000 years, and a lot of us, true Iranian Americans who were born in this country, but still have a cultural connection to Iran, but have a geographical and political and sociological connection to the United States. I'm not the only one who's half. We're all half. You're half, too. The difference is I just look half Iranian, half American, but you're Iranian and American, too. Right. No, absolutely. Hey, there's a, there's a few people asking some questions. They're very curious about it. One person's like, "What did they have for food there? What did, what did you did you have?" Food? I mean, they had this chef. Yeah, they had this chef. I think her name was Nasim. She made these like fusion Iranian, um, like basically appetizer things, and they were absolutely amazing. She's apparently a world renowned chef. Okay. Any other standout moments? Like, who were who were you happy to see there? Um, <laughs> you know, honestly, it was a good, it was a good experience, but I got to go down fire, the fire, God damn it, off, Hello. <laughs> it was cool. I mean, okay, Tara, can you tell the story of how your annoyance of not being invited to listen, the uh, Obama listen, one a few years ago started for people who don't know the backstory? Listen, I will never, I will never forget. I mean, man. I don't care about the politics. I care about principles. So when President Obama was in office, he had a Noru's at the White House. And somehow everybody, White House was in so then they didn't invite me. So two days before the thing, I posted something like black president and not a single black Persian at the White House for Noru's. And then the girl who was in charge messaged and was like, I was going to invite you, but you posted this and it was inappropriate. And now you're not invited. <laughs> Yamishkun.com. You were going to invite me two days before the event? I lived in L.A. at the time. I can't just jump, walk to White House. Like, yo, you weren't going to invite me. So I've been mad about that ever since. Ever since I'm mad. Iman didn't get invited either. Iman and me were the only two people in all, I, I promise you. Like, they were like, Dr. Musabie. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Abdar Chi? The Abdar Chi got invited? I didn't get invited? Oh, man. So this time I was invited, and I tried to get Iman invited, and they, I guess they, but to be fair, they closed the list. The, the, they, they told me they had closed the list. They had closed yeah. the list. Of, for the next six years, I'll make it a Facebook status up, and I'll complain about how I didn't get invited. And so hopefully in 2030, I'll get the invitation. Actually, actually, I'm going to tell you, this was cool. You know what I'm saying? Maz, I definitely went this time, Maz. Thanks to Maz, by the way. Maz and I are doing, we were supposed to do a charity show tonight, and both of us couldn't cancel. And Maz let me go to the White House, and he stayed back, and he's doing the charity show oh, in that, L.A. That, that at the Midnight fun. Mission. And I've told this to everybody because everybody kept asking me today about Maz. They were like, what happened to Maz? Where's Maz? And I was like, Maz sacrificed himself. Thank you for your service so that I could go. I could go to the White House. Maz stayed. He's performing at the Midnight Mission. That's true, actually, because, uh, you know, he, last time he hosted it, you know, he did like the welcome for the Obama one. So that's very nice of him that he decided to give you the opportunity to go. And so, well, t tell exactly. us more. Tell us more. Oh, there's Maz right there, actually. Maz, thank you for checking in. That was a very nice thing that you did. Um, Tell us more about the fundraiser. They can go check out in LA. I know it's a good call. I saw Mel Shoshani post about it too. It's for, it's exactly, it's for Midnight Mission, which helps homeless people in Los Angeles. Uh, and we obviously have a homeless 
there's a homeless disaster, like, and it's, it's, the government needs to step up and do, but when they don't, we need to do for ourselves. So Midnight Mission has provides a million, almost a million meals a year for homeless people. It provides housing. It provides a job, a job training, re-entry into society, all those things. And they've been going since 1914. And so because of Katya, we, we've all gotten together and they do a Noru show and we're there every year. So this is the first year we're going to be there for the last, you know, couple years in a row. But Maz will be there. Amazing. Well, Tara, man, I, I appreciate you hopping in on such a busy day. You've been looking forward to going to the White House for such a long time. And you finally had the opportunity. And you represented it the way that I know you would with the capital of Iran and your name on your hat and woman life freedom on your chest. We appreciate everything you've been doing the last six months to bring awareness to what's happening in Iran, to amplifying the voice of Iranians. Uh, and we, we appreciate you and we love you and um, grateful to have you as a friend, man. That's how we roll. They're never going to let me into the White House again, Iman. They're never going to let me into the White House again. Bro. <laughs> they, they, they're going to be looking at the security footage and, and retracing all your steps at the White House, for sure. hundred percent. A hundred percent. Joe Biden's like, he said Iran. I'm like, Iran. It's Iran. <laughs> oh, man. Well, from Yo. Tehran to Shiruz, uh, love you, man. Bohomida Azadi, Zan Zendigi Azadi. Edema Warai. Zan Zendigi Azadi, Tom Hamitor. I should have live streamed from the event. I know. I you think, would have I loved think, it. I think I you was were hilarious. Trying. You were trying. I couldn't get you in. I was. I was trying when I was there. I was trying to message you because you were live and talking. At one point, you got up and left. I don't know what happened. You just left the stream. Like, the stream was going on, but you got up and walked away. I was like, yo. I, dude, I need, to, I need to go and stretch. I had some people, uh, you know, doing, doing the live on my behalf for a few minutes. You know, it's a little hard yeah. to sit on the couch for 12 hours. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I, um, you know what? I do it all the time, so I don't know. <laughs> actually, sure. actually, I was going to say, never mind. You literally do it all the time. Watching, That's literally uh, my time. Watching CSI Law or whatever it's called, whatever crap. You no, watch. Law and Order. Law and Order SVU. Law and Order law SVU. Law and order. That's there the you show. go. All yeah. right, man. Love you, man. Peace out. No, Ruz. Actually, <laughs> I, you have to add that Bemir part. That's an inside joke. But uh, Tehran, actually, you know what? Yo. Because, because some people, they always still get surprised when you speak Persian and you're so great at some poetry. Let's end this live with you saying one of your favorite poetic moments or po poetic lines. I mean, Bani Adam, Azay Yektigara. You know, I'm sure that Azay. در داشته باش این شعر سعدیه که درباره اینه که ما خب انسان هممون با هم هستیم دنیا یه چیزی بگم تعداد آدم متاسفانه زیاده متاسفانه تر اینه که انسانه که کمه انسانیتتون رو از دست ندیم ما همه با هم هستیم هم بستگی اتحاد این چیز مهمه نه جربه است نه نکته های کوچیک که بتونیم دعوا کنیم اینا مهم نیست و آخرین خطی هم که بهت میگم پرواز را به خاطر بسپر پرنده مردنیست الان ما همه در حال پروازیم یادتون نره اشاره که پرواز بکنیم به تهران and we get to enjoy a great great celebration of Nowruz next time this year so thank you man be well من بهت بگم ولی ایران نمیرم ها ایران بله. نمیرم به خاطر اینکه مجبور میشم سقاطی با همه ببرم می چقدر خرجم میشه سقاطی سقاطی از لایک یو اصلا all your chama doing is فقط سقاطی با بچه مردم لایک یو آی دونت ایون نو یو برو آی دونت ایون نو یو من مثلا سقاط تازه ازشون میپرسی نمیگم مثلا بولیز بیار میگم لپ تاپ بیار نمیدونم بازم Tehran, yek zan basam the kon zan biar tu chamadun. Like whoa. Just, just go to Ross and get some socks and shirts like you always do I on know. your faces. <laughs> Ross, listen. Iranians 
when you drive by a Ross and you're like, how do they stay open? Iranians keep Ross open. <laughs> Iranians keep Ross open. Ross and okay? Costa. That's a real thing. Yeah, somebody, somebody visits D.C. or L.A. from Iran, they might never see the Hollywood sign. They might never see the Washington Monument. They might never see the Capitol. They might never see Malibu or the beach. But they will 100% go to a Ross. I promise you. They will go to Ross. And they don't just say Ross. They say Ross, dress for less. Okay? <laughs> Ross, Dress for less. Daily, oh, Mohammed. Oh, to nare. Dress for less. In am good share, bro. Good stuff, man. Hey, man. Most okay, bye, y'all. Bye, guys. I want to talk to you. Bye. Uh, we're less than 12, 15 minutes away. Take care, buddy. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining in and hopping on and Tehran for giving us an inside account of what happened at the Nourouz at, um, at the White House today. So in case you're dropping in because you're a friend of Tehran, um, We've been doing a 12-hour live stream today in honor of Iran and Nowruz. It's a celebration of Nowruz. We started at 11, 11 a.m. And then it went all the way. It's going to go to 11, 11 p.m. And so uh, we're still only at the halfway part, part of the program. Uh, we have Saul Tabil in 18 minutes and 54 seconds. It's going to happen at 5.24 p.m. Eastern time. So uh, and I've been keeping uh, our, our dear Shiva Jahani on hold for a second. So here's what's going to happen, guys. Uh, every hour or so, I've been cutting the IG live so that we can uh, upload it onto YouTube so that uh, we don't have a large file. So right now, I'm going to do a little reset. Please uh, don't leave for good. When I close this IG live, hop back on in two or three minutes. We're going to have Shiva Jahoni doing a mindful moment. And in less than 18 minutes, it's Saul Tabi. Uh, would love to spend Saul Tabi with all of you. So stick around. Just come back in a couple of minutes. I promise you, we'll be back in a couple of minutes with Shiva Jahoni. Shiva Jun. Request to join when I come right back. Or whatever. Thanks for your patience. All right, awesome people. We are back. This is part, I think, five. I've lost track of which part it is. But we've been chopping up every single segment of this live stream. Uh, we've been going on since 11, 11 a.m. And going all the way to 11, 11 p.m. Eastern time. We just had Tehran give a hilarious account of what happened at the Nowruz lunch over uh, at the White House today. Uh, you definitely want to go back and check it out if you missed it. I want to quickly bring on Shiva John. She's going to be a heart coherence and mantra meditation. I appreciate her patience. Uh, she was supposed to come on a little bit earlier. And here she is. Hi, Iman John. Shiva John, Durud. Thank you so much for your patience. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you for we, were, we were trying to get Tehran in. Hopefully, you got some laughs in, you know. That's okay. <laughs> Great conversation. So, Avalan Pisha <laughs> Thank you so much for, for spending uh, a part of such an important day with us and with the viewers. Um, I, you know, we have 15 yeah, minutes to go to South Tavis, so I don't want to keep you for too long. You, your, your specialty. Um, tell people what you do, and then tell us what you're going to do with us here today. Go ahead. You lead the way. <laughs> Yeah, first of, of course, first of all, thank you so much for having me. And also, I'm really grateful for facilitating this space for us, you know, to just, I'm, um, I'm honored to be with you and uh, all Uniters and, you know, all of our Iranian people for this special moment and day and uh, meditate together and sending love to our people. So that's all about sending love and comfort and uh, uh, kind of like happiness and uh, joy to them from us. So that's what it's about. It is like heart coherence meditation. So we are settling our mind and sending love to our I people. Love it. Our well, community. let's do it. Lead the way as is. Thank you. Okay, so I just will explain to you. We are going to take three steps. So for first is heart focus, and second is uh, uh, heart breathing, and third is um, heart feel appreciation. And then we are, you know, the steps is these three steps, and then we are uh, going with uh, closing eyes all the time, and then I will uh, guide you through this. Let's do if you're it. ready, we just uh, can start. Okay, so first of all, what you need, just get comfortable. Get comfortable and relax your body, relax your shoulder, and whenever you're ready, close your eyes. Let your feet uh, grounded and uncross your legs. And 
when you feel ready please place your your palm on your heart i would like to invite you all to focus on your heart and bring your attention and your awareness to your heart space Breathe in, breathe out from your heart, deeply and slowly. Deeply and slowly. Continue breathing in, breathing out. Breathe in, breathe out, deeper and slower. I would like you all to feel up the feeling of appreciation from your heart and whatever brings you joy, happiness. Let, let them come to you and feel them welcome. Let the feeling of appreciation fill you all. Anything, any experiences, your loved one, your pet, something you care about. Now I would like to invite you all to send out your energy, your love, your peace, your comfort to your family, to your friends, to our people in Iran, to all women who suffer. Take a few deep breaths, breathe in, breathe out. Whenever you're ready, hands to your heart and slowly open your eyes. Thank you so much. Sending love and comfort to all your family, friends, our United and Iranian people and world. Um, had a very rough year, and uh, we are hoping for Irani Azadu Abad. Zanon to God's ears. Thank you so much. Um, so you kind of said it, but perhaps you can kind of elaborate on this. Uh, if you have any more messages for Noru's or messages of hope for Iranian Iranians, I'd love for you to spend a couple of minutes and asay makal har koy dilatun bezani. <تصفيق> من واقعا از تمیم قلب هم آرزو میکنم برای همه هموطن هم هم همه اونایی که تو ایران سال خیلی پر درد و پر بحرانی داشتن امسال یک سال پر از امید باشه برشون به این امید برن که سال سال جدید سالی باشه که همونی که میخوان یعنی واقعا آرزوی من آرزوی اینه که تمام 
زنان ایران مثل ماها که اینجا هستیم این آزادی انتخاب داشته باشه هر جور که میخوان بپوشن و هر جور که میخوان انتخاب کنن و واقعا همه این متلاشمون در اینه که صدای اونا باشیم و اولین حقوق ابتداییشون که همین که انتخاب داشته باشه حق انتخاب داشته باشن و اینو بهشون داده بشه و اینو بگیرن و این آرزوی همه ای ماست که در این مدت سعی کردیم صدای زنان ایران باشیم و من این آرزو از همه قلبم برای همشون دارم که یک در سرزمین خودشون این انتخاب آزادی رو داشته باشن انشالله که ما هم اونا رو ببینیم به زودی همه همون در ایران سال بعد همین مراسم اونجا در میدون آزادی داشته هم که باشیم نوروز هم بتونین قشنگ با خانواده الان باشین لذت ببرین در ساعت مرسی واسه همه کاری که میکنین واسه Uh, Unitedز and that you're part of our countdown program uh, where you continue to share this type of positivity hope and and love and and um, kindness so thank you so much for all that of course and I really appreciate your you know leadership and your support your kindness and all you do you know I mean is it's like a tremendous uh, job and we all are and grateful for you and what you are doing and what you have done you know and just have no words have no words خیلی ممنون برای همه چی عید مبارک به مامان و خانواده و همه یونایتد همه اونایی که هستن سال نو مبارک و قلبتون پر از امید و زندگی آزادی امید آزادی thank you for making this program so much better for us thank you of course all right So, so, thank you so much. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're down to six minutes and 48 seconds to go to Salat Ahvil. And, um, you know, I was kind of torn on how to or what to do exactly at Salat Ahvil. Um, I was going to be here for it, meaning like continuously just kind of, you know, be here as it becomes Salat Ahvil and then a few minutes later. But, um, you know, for those of you who've... Um, know me for quite some time. I lost my father on July 7th. And so um, this Nowruz was not going to be the same anyways. Uh, and, and for that reason and for the fact that there are still our compatriots that are dying, being raped, being blinded, being tortured, being held captive, being kidnapped, being um, threatened. Uh, I just could not fathom um, just sitting nor normally and having another Nowruz when I know that so much of, um, so much of what Nowruz has always been for me. It wasn't going to be the same. And so, um, with five minutes to go to Salat Avid, I want to make sure that I spend it with my mom, my sister, my niece, and my uncle who's visiting here from Austria. Um, because I want to make sure that I'm, I'm there um, during that moment. Sorry. But, but if there's anybody out there that is spending notice alone um, if they've lost a mother or a father or a, a loved one or um, just a husband a wife a child um, I want to make sure that you know that I'm with you and that I send you so much love because I know how hard it is to lose somebody very special especially when it's very recent and so I want to make sure that you never feel alone and that you know that you have the entire United's family and the people that unite and conquer, that their entire goal is to strengthen our community so that when we are at the lowest of our lows, that we have each other, <clears throat> that we can be a support group for each other, that we have incredible therapists that will be there, that we have people like Shiva, who herself has lost her father and a, and, and a sister in tragic accidents, and has made it her life's mission to be able to find purpose in life and find uh, things to be grateful for and be able to uh, you know, get the love and the strength to continue to do uh, what our life requires us to do. 
and that is to live a life of purpose. And all I want, uh, in addition to a free Iran, is for us to have a community of Iranians that will truly want to look out for each other, to truly support each other, to uplift each other, um, and to be the best version of each other. I have, have so many uh, different aspects of my life that I need to get in, get in check. Um, and I'm working incredibly hard to make it happen. And I, I want to make a promise to this community that I've been blessed to have and that we're trying to grow each day that I'm going to do my best to be a better uh, human being, a better leader for you all, um, a better boyfriend, a better son, a better brother, a better uncle. I feel like I, I say this every year and I'm just really trying um, to just improve a little bit more uh, just because looking back at the past year, I've, I've failed so many people, including myself in many ways. And um, with two and a half minutes to go, I want you to know that I'm going to do my damn best to improve in all aspects. And I hope that you give yourself this promise too, because you are the person that you shouldn't let down. You should be able to look at the mirror and be proud of yourself and be proud of your improvements. So I'm going to spend the last two minutes heading over and, and kissing my mom and kissing my sister and kissing my niece, kissing my uncle. And if you cannot do that in person with uh, where you are right now, I hope that you, as soon as possible, get to go on a video call we're blessed to at least have technology so that in some shape or form, you get to embrace, if not virtually, uh, the most special individuals in your life. And I'd love for you to continue to be a part of this community, to help us foster this community, to help us galvanize this, uh, this community so that we can be the best versions of ourselves individually and collectively, because we are a great people. And unfortunately, we've been held captive for 44 years, but we are going to overcome this. I promise you, if not this year, for sure next year, but I promise you it'll be this year. So I'm going to go and, uh, and give my hugs and kisses, but I promise you I'll be back. We have some incredible guests still lined up that are going to be coming uh, for the rest of the evening. We'll be here until 11, 11 p.m. Eastern. So I'm sorry that you guys are going to be looking at a, a empty. Well, it's not empty. These are beautiful images of a revolution. So just sit tight and just know that in less than one minute and 10 seconds, we go into the year of 1403 which translates to another real year for us so without any further ado pisha pish saw the time and i actually see that my mom is here my sister is here so they're already uh, around the corner right now so just stay tuned and i'll come back in just a few minutes after some hugs and kisses but there's 50 seconds to go <laughs> there's, there's 42 seconds to go They're actually all gathering here by the by the half scene. So there's 32 seconds to go. I hope you're grabbing your loved ones. Okay, so good. So they're all in the room. I'll be right here, but you keep on doing your thing. <laughs> this is so cute. <laughs> 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 22 seconds to go. Okay, I think we are, we have one sec, ladies and gentlemen, Sala Tavil is here, Tavil Peshawar, Nourus and Piruz, go enjoy and hug and kiss and love for a few minutes, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, wow. So I don't know who was sticking around for the last 10 minutes, but it was very emotional, uh, 10, 15 minutes. If you uh, had a chance to enjoy it with your family, um, count your blessings. I'm grateful for my mom, my sister, uh, my niece, my uncle who are here. Uh, my mom actually recited uh, some words that my dad wrote before he passed away. So that was very emotional and touching. He wrote special messages for me and my mom and my sister and my niece and nephew. And um, it's amazing. The man was full of love. Um, he was an incredible role model and he exemplified love unity he was a massive compatriot or patriot actually and if i could only be one tenth of who he was i would be a much better version <laughs> of myself but at least i have something to aspire to and want to be like so happy notice everybody happy notice i really hope that this is the year that will bring us freedom some some joy some celebrations you know, we've just been surrounded with so much tragedy and sadness, and it's just been overwhelming. So, Tabik Bit Miguel, thank you again for, I mean, just thank you, just not enough for people like Sara and Mona and so many of the Uniters that have been helping us do all we're, all we're doing at United Conquer. Thank you to Ari Kazemi. Um, so, at 5:45 p.m. in about 10 minutes, we're gonna have a segment led by one of our Uniters, Maya Jun. Uh, with Paris and Mona. It looks like Sarge wants to come on now. It's actually very helpful because I don't have much to say. So it's great timing. And I'd love to have my sister here from another mister. Hi, Sarge. Hi, Manjan. How are you? Sarge Namo Borak. Thank you so much for wanting to come on video call. I was really short on words. 
<laughs> so I felt like you you sense it. Your your sisterly sense was like this guy needs help. Of course. Of course. Of course we talked about this. I couldn't leave you hanging. Kind of like, it's hard. No, no, no. I, you you have this like passion to keep going even through <laughs> you know so David when you should be completely disconnected and you know reflecting on I know how hard it is I I I popped in right as you were talking about your dad of like missing your dad understandably but yet you choose to kind of be with us in this virtual space I can't leave you alone there so I just have the world of respect for you Iman John and I know he's looking down at you and just so beyond proud so beyond proud that you're carrying on in his footsteps in your own way and just making an impact in everything you do i can tell you like fr- you know from me you've made an impact on my life and so many others i mean i i i i you're like my brother and i love you and i wouldn't leave you alone here thank you so much i mean like this has been a journey that um could not have been done alone and i've been i've been blessed with some incredible people that have like gravitated towards me in this uh in this venture so just very grateful very happy and i'm very optimistic like i'm i'm looking i'm already feeling like we just turned a new leaf a new chapter and that this is the chapter where we're going to shine um and all this darkness will will be a thing of the past you know agree iman i think i really believe it even when i lose you know when i when i'm less optimistic at times i just the one thing i wholeheartedly believe in is that going back to the way it was is just never going to happen it's impossible it cannot be so much has happened since it started so no matter where we are at each moment whether it's the highest peak of the high or the quietest moment of this revolution it's still a revolution and that fire like my dad said like a like a fire underneath a soot of ashes is always going to burn and with each event it burns brighter and brighter and soon it won't be contained So we just have to know that that fire is there. There there are two words that you in your speech uh that you gave at Bachelor the other night that you wanted to get out of your uh vocabulary. Share those two yeah. words that you want to make encourage others to also get rid of. Absolutely. I want everyone on this live stream, everyone who will listen this listen to this, you know, moving forward to get rid of two year to get rid of two words out of your vocabulary. And that's hopelessness and helplessness. And the message I gave earlier was that it is within your power to change those feelings. We are not our feelings. Those are just passing thoughts, and we are way more powerful than we think we are. At a drop of a dime, you can change that feeling of helplessness to powerful, of hopelessness to optimistic and hopeful. And you can do that. As I'm saying it, I'm getting goosebumps. it really is within our control no matter how difficult it feels there are some things that are out of our control but these are not it so let's collectively decide that even when it's quiet that even when you don't see news coming out of iran that even when you don't see like the most active of activists happening activating that there is still a fire burning and that you have the power to add one more ember of fire to it and we can and we will And you know what like really conversations like today continue to give me that hope because you see so many people that feel the way that we do that there's no way that anyone's going to be able to um uh, there, there's there's no way hi mona jo thank you so much for joining join thank you uh, uh, i mean did you wait, wait you wanted to come yes. on now right or were you yes. expecting yes. to come at 45 no okay, no sorry. no <laughs> i wanted to but yeah i mean join. like i just hear, hearing so many people um passionately talking about Iran and and wanting to continue to do what they're doing that's all we need to see around us you know like we see that there's enough people that are willing to do whatever it takes to take over this regime and uh, and we're headed that direction yeah. so yeah and not just the people talking about it but the number of people coming in and out right like i've i've been encouraged by the like the variety of people new some recognizable some i've never seen before joining and maybe not chatting or engaging but at least they're listening in and that's encouraging to me you know people do care and we need to continue to focus on the positive and and like i said you know rejoice where there is opportunity to rejoice reflect where we need to reflect on what's happened in the past but also be able to you know like gather energy gather power gather motivation from one another so that we can continue this communication that's really all that we can do is influence change like Nusha June said in her segment and continue the momentum on the conversation to keep it at the forefront of everyone's mind and i'm optimistic that we're doing that at least in every powerful way we have 
Mona, how are you feeling now that you're about 10 minutes into the new year? Well, um, so we called our family members uh, in Iran and talked, we got to talk to our aunt and my grandfather. And of course, I got emotional right away and I couldn't even talk to them. It's very hard. Yeah. Yeah. But, but in the spirit of hopefulness, they were telling us to listen and the people outside in the neighborhood or from their balconies were chanting death to the dictator, death wow. to Khamenei. And that was amazing to hear from myself, from Iran. Wow. Beautiful. And we, just, we have somebody here tuning in, uh, advocating from India, uh, Jit Sutar, saying we're supporting you and we appreciate oh, that. Thank you. Truly from all around the world that are, um, that are feeling our plight, you know? Absolutely. Um, Thanks what, for what sharing is, that, Mona. It's always so helpful to hear what's actually happening in Iran. You know, it's, you know when, when you do have a conversation, sometimes you're afraid to ask the question. You don't know who's listening. You don't want to influence anything. But at the same time, yeah. I'm so desperate to know what's happening. Yeah, you know? that was, it, it was, was an amazing idea. moment yeah. to, to hear that for yourself, you know? And, and when you think that people are slowing down and people are not caring as much and you hear that and you see that, it just gives me more fuel to keep fighting. What, what, one thing that really gives me hope is the fact that the original revolution in 79, how it basically took like 15 months, you know? And so we need to just kind of understand that this, is, this has truly been a marathon that we started six months ago and we're like at the 12 mile run. I don't know where it is. We should ask Hedy if she knows marathon. <laughs> yes, I don't know what the, exactly. whatever, whatever the mile point is right now, we are like, you know, at the halfway point, hopefully. And so I, I see the finish line. It's like literally like right there. Yeah, and um, the other thing, and not to harp on what I kept saying, uh, beating a dead horse, but remember what happens in the world or it, whether in Iran, outside of Iran, or even your own little circle of influence shouldn't be what drives you. So if there is a quell, then if there is a, you know, slow down in the movement, you feel like it's not, people are not responding the way they should be. I would just say, turn that focus back into yourself and remember your why, because your why didn't change. Your purpose for doing what you're doing didn't change. No matter what everybody else is doing, your reasons remain the same. Until you reach your goals, your actions shouldn't change. You know, if your actions are not leading to the outcome you want, change the action, but the end goal doesn't change, right? Correct. Um, I love you both so much. I really do. Like, love you. I, I couldn't, I, I didn't want to start off the new year with anybody else besides the two of you. Aww. So appreciate, appreciate you all hopping on on the call so quickly so that I can, you, you're the first few faces. So is, um, is, is uh, Paris and, and Mariam joining and then somebody dropping off or what's... Uh, I'm dropping off. I just want to say Happy New Year. I love you both. And I'll oh, be okay. on later on today. Oh, okay. Well, love you, Sarah. Love, love you, Sarah. Sa Sa Thank you again for everything. And then, um, uh, Mona, you're going to stick around and we're going to have Mariam Jun in Paris coming shortly. Yeah. Um, apologize to Isabella on my behalf. Let's figure out um, uh, what time to have her on. Um, yeah, we'll bring her in yeah. a little bit later. Yeah. It's There's fine. a chance that Namito, uh, the DJ, he's not going to make it at his time frame. If not, we can have him come at that point. Okay. And, but I mean, you're going to have to explain to her because she's super offended that you, <laughs> you know, I'm going to, I'm going to replace her with 10. I'm going to shoot her like, a message. We're going to, we're yeah. going to give her, we're going to give her a massive stage very shortly. <laughs> All right. All right, so we got, we got the, the Hairi sisters, Maya and Mona, <laughs> back in action. I, yeah, it was such a rush hearing that death to Khamenei outside. Like, they, they went outside, they're like, listen. And I was like, wow, that's actually loud. I can, like, hear them really loud. And they're like, yeah, this neighborhood is loud, but the other neighborhood down the, down the street is even louder. And, and this, this was in Tehran? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Very wow. close that... to the Ekbata <laughs> neighborhood. <laughs> she, she, they're like, Ekbata's flag has never come down. It's always yeah. been raised. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. That's, that yeah. is very, that's very optimistic. I mean, to, to, yeah. see, to see them do that. I can't even, 
I can't even, even when I watch videos of those kind of recordings of people like, um, um, uh, you know, people you know, chanting and stuff like that, I can't even imagine being there present inside of Iran and hearing people say that off the balconies. I mean, like, yeah. that's just, that to me is just fascinating and very inspiring because it's just yes, such it a, is. it's such a, it's so illegal there that like yeah. the punishment is insane. And to have this chorus of death to Khamenei is in insane. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, it, it was nice because uh, they, they, they like, you know, we, it was more emotional this year, right, Mona? It, I feel like it was so much more emotional this year because last year, I don't, I didn't cry last year. This year, it was so much more emotional because we couldn't be, I, I mean, I, I feel like they're so close, you know? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and they said it too. They're like, next year we're gonna celebrate it together. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, so when was the last time? Happy New Year. 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 Sweden or Turkey. So we see them almost every year. My grandmother, unfortunately, she, she, we would see her every year for the last, I don't know, 15, 20 years. And then she got sick two years ago. So we were not able to see her. And then these are the kind of things that, like, how, how can you not go and see your grandmother when she's sick? Or, you know, um, or go to her funeral, you know? So it was hor uh, horrible not to be able to do that. Thank God we have amazing aunts. They involved us from the you know beginning till the end, the whole ceremony. Like they, they involved us in everything. It just that is sad that you cannot go. You know. So yeah. We were very close to my grandmother. I appreciate you sharing that. Um so so Mariam John, you you're you're leading this segment. Uh, go ahead and please, uh, sh you lead the way. We have our, our guest at 6 p.m. is actually one of the parliament members uh, uh, that's going to be joining us at 6 p.m. So a fellow person from your end, Parashun, you know, uh, yeah. looking forward to having her at 6. But go ahead and lead the way until we have Goldie uh, Amari at 6 p.m. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. No, I was just going to talk about how, um, you know, uh, how what, what I was saying before, how it's so difficult not to see your family, especially do, during Nowruz, is such an important day for us Iranians. And, um, and uh, Paris, uh, you probably didn't hear it, but when we just called our aunts and they brought the phone outside in the balcony and we could hear people chanting death to harmony. It was really nice. Like it was such a rush just hearing that. It was amazing. So, um, uh, yes, uh, and also, uh, you know, involving our kids, you know, it's, it's sad that our kids don't get to see, you know, our family. So, uh, Mona, stop crying. <laughs> <laughs> she has, a, she she has her emotional, emotional service dog with her, too. Yeah, to I know. That, this is what I need to stop crying. Um, no, I'm I'm reading the chats. <laughs> so, Paris June, you have um, a lot of family in Iran, right? Yeah. A lot of aunts and uncles. Yeah. A, a lot all Did over. Did you get to call them? A lot all no. over. I don't. I unfortunately don't. We have a little bit of contact here and there, but we've had really bad luck. I feel like a lot of people, first of all, as you guys know, it's very limited what we can say um, and how we say it. So it's obviously talking in code. Um, but yeah, it's hard. It's hard. Um, and it's very expensive for them right now. Like, even if we're the ones calling on our end, it's still yeah. charging them on I their know. end. Um, um, so it's terrifying. It is very expensive. I was talking to my aunts where one of them said that she, it's so expensive. They can't, like, buy this. They can't buy that. And, and then she did mention that, you know, uh, but I'm hopeful because I have, I see 
I go online, I see what all you guys do out there. So I'm very hopeful. This is nothing. We can handle this. We're going to get our country back and uh, it's, it's all worth it. We're gonna, gonna we're gonna take our country back. Yeah, it's, we're gonna take, take it our back. Take it back. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, I was gonna tell you a story. Uh, my daughter, uh, I, when this revolution started happening, she uh, they they have uniforms in school. So on Fridays, when they don't have uniforms, she she started going into my closet and take one of my free Iran, you know, women like freedom shirts, and wear it to school. And I got a really nice message from uh, her teacher one day saying, you're raising such an independent girl. I see what's happening on the news. And, you know, uh, I'm so happy that, you know, she's fighting for what's right. It, it, it was really nice hearing that. So it was great. I love that. And she always goes and takes one of my free Iran shirts. <laughs> always. So, um, Mona, <laughs> tell me, <laughs> you're so emotional, you didn't even, yeah, you, yeah, you I couldn't even, even talk to anyone because, yeah. um, yeah, I'm always emotional, I'm always crying, so, uh, it's gonna be fine, we're gonna, we're gonna, this too shall pass, and we're gonna take back Iran, and we're gonna build it up again, and we're gonna be able. But are you, are you, are you finding it more yes. emotional this Absolutely. year than in previous yeah. years? Yes, this year, and also two reasons: because we we obviously because um, of everything that's going on, and also this is the first New Year without my grandmother, so. Mm -hmm. It was very hard to call them and sh her not being there because she's always the life of the party, of course, dancing and singing and uh, everyone's around her. So that's, yeah. that was hard. Yeah, definitely. And also, this, this is also one of the few years that we're not going to see them in the summer. So yeah. that's good. That's hard. What have been some of the traditions that have allowed you, and even you, Iman, I'm not excluding you from this conversation. What are some of the traditions that have allowed you, all of you, to feel that sense of closeness or um, create a sense of tradition or a sense of identity outside uh, and, and just be able to foster that, especially as mothers as well? I'd love everyone to like pitch in on that one. I mean, Iman, for you, it just feels like every year you're throwing a no Ruz event. So, like, regardless, you're, like, bringing together a community can, wherever you are again, in the world. Is there a door open in the background? There's a lot of noise coming from outside. I don't know, I don't know which one is coming from. Mona. But, um, I mean, listen, for, for me, it's been, through, it's been through events. It's been through events that I've been able to have some kind of connectivity with, with our culture. I mean, uh, that's just been my way of kind of, like, satisfying my own personal need for this connectivity and the sense of belonging. So... Um, that's why I couldn't stay put, you know, like the whole past, usually around Noru's six months prior, we we're planning and producing a massive Noru's event, you know, and then everything changed during the pandemic. But then even during the pandemic, um, I was like, okay, well, we got to do something online. Like, what are we going to do? Do nothing. So, so we did the whole 24 hour live stream. And then this time around, I was like, we can't throw a party, but I feel like we need to do something. So it, it, I feel like we went back to like pandemic mode where we're doing like Noru's virtually, you know? Like I didn't think that we would ever have to do Noru's virtually again, but we, it, it was just impossible to have the idea of like producing like a regular type of Noru's event because of how irregular of a Noru's this is. So yeah, for me, it's been through events. Yeah, it was, it was nice actually that we did, we went to the Bokche event that Iman hosted. It was, it was, I think one of the, few parties that are Iranian, you know, like events that I have been to. So uh, here in South Florida, you don't have too many of them. So it was really nice. Um, but we tradition, what we have started doing, Mona and I, uh, Mona usually hosts Noru's at her house and uh, every year. 
So whether it's on a Tuesday, Thursday, we live uh, an hour away from mm -hmm. each other, but I will always drive there with the kids and we celebrate Norris at her house. This year we did it, she came to my house. <laughs> Switching up the roles. Mm. All yeah. right, so, so the last five minutes, who's going to give the closing statements of this uh, segment here with you ladies? You go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lead the way. What's you want to you 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 end on another notice fact leader. fashion? I feel like <laughs> we're no. facted it out no it, it, the only fact that i just want to remind everyone is that it's not 1402 we are not the year of our muslim invaders we're not we're not going to go by the year they're trying to enforce we understand that it's legally the reality in iran and yes we don't have another choice but acknowledging that that is the year they're celebrating in iran but that is an islamic year and Persian New Year has nothing to do with Islam. Our people have nothing to do with Islam. Yes, we have Muslim Iranians. They are 100% part of our the fabric of our society. But to say that our land is Islamic and that the rules that govern our land should be wholly Islamic is wrong. Um, and so we don't want to recognize 1402 as our official calendar year. And yeah, so... If you want an imperial calendar year, go by that. And if you want to go by our ancient calendar, you can say happy 7035. I'm that people who left Iran after the revolution that they, they kept on using. Because I've been, this whole number of like 1380 or 1390, 1400, this has like been, I've been surrounded with this for all these years and nobody was questioning it. And um... Stockholm Syndrome. It's not, it shouldn't even be called Stockholm Syndrome anymore. Mm -hmm. It should be called Tehran Syndrome. Like we are, we are so typical on so many different levels of our society and culture and language. Even the word aid, the word aid, yeah. it's aid. It's an Arabic word. It has nothing to do. It's not aid. <laughs> this is no ruse. You know, and Mubarak, it's another Arabic word. And I understand they literally, you guys, for 200 years, we were not able to speak Persian in Iran. It was for 200 years. The fact that our language has even survived is incredible. And I understand that following through with tradition and Nowruz and celebrations is hard. But this is exactly what they tried to kill in us. The, the desire to celebrate and actually our Zoroastrian tradition has song and dance rooted at ev in every facet of our daily life. So for them to try to steal this from us is 100% the modus operandi. So they're succeeding if we don't celebrate or if we don't put our half scenes up. And if we think about our compatriots in jail right now, you like obviously we don't want to celebrate and like feel like we're dancing and celebrating while others are losing their lives for our freedom. But at the same time, they are losing their lives. So we all have the right to be celebrating as we are. So let's honor them as we're doing it. Um, I think it was Bahadur Alas. It's an Instagram account that I follow. And in his half scene, they have pictures of um, some of the individuals that we've lost throughout this revolution. So we can definitely honor them while celebrating our traditions. Perfectly stated, Parish, and as always. I have to, now I have to look up uh, Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> No, I'm not even going to try to explain. <laughs> like, just go look it up. No, I'm just joking. I know it. But, it, but you guys are from Stockholm. Yeah. We're not from Stockholm. Well, We're from Gothenburg. Oh, okay. I learned the difference. My... It's the same country. Same country. Got it, got it, got it. My bad, my bad. But um, we're going to Stockholm this summer, so... Oh, are you? Yeah. yeah. But you're not going home home? We're going to Sweden, Gothenburg. to Gothenburg, and to Stockholm. Okay. We're going to Borg. Okay, very nice. Um, well, in just a minute or so, we're going to be joined by the lovely Goldie Ramari. Um, pa Paris, have, have you, are you familiar with Goldie from being from Montreal? Listen, I've never met her. Um, I have heard of her. If please, please pass on my gratitude as a Canadian to her for all that she is doing. She is one of the few members of parliament who are actually standing on the right side of history. I would love, love, love for her to get the recognition that she deserves because unfortunately, um, the 
you know, Canadian government right now in power isn't doing everything that it, it can, is not paying due respect to all members of parliament equally and correctly. I, I believe that Ms. Kamani wasn't even included in some of the most important conversations that are had. And she has responded with so much grace, so much patience. And we're so grateful to have um, a compatriot like her as a member of parliament in Canada. So I really, yeah. really hope that, that she, she hears no, this. She, and she, she is not She's here. actually requested <laughs> to join, so I'm going to have to ask you guys. Okay, oh, bye. Oh, thank see you very later. much. Later. We'll, we'll see bye. you guys soon as we help bye. welcome uh, Gordi Kamari. And uh, I'm going to give a little background about her. First of all, she is an experienced international trade lawyer and commercial litigator. But in 2018, she was uh, voted in as Carlton's first member of provincial parliament. She's the first woman of Iranian descent to hold elected office anywhere in Canada. And since her nomination in November 5th, 2016, as the progressive conservative candidate of the writing of Colston, she has uh, had the pleasure of meeting with numerous people in the writing. She's looking forward to the incredible opportunity to be representing them at Queen's Park and ensuring that their voices are heard all the way from Canada. Goldijan, durud ban shoma. Durud ban shoma. Iman jun, salenu mabarak. No, I shouldn't say mabarak. I I came across uh, your page a few months ago. You've been so active, so integral uh, in using your powerful platform uh, to be the voice of Iranians, which I don't know if you heard Paris, who's from Montreal. She's one of our uniters. She's a journalist. I was listening to her. Yeah. Paris, thank you so much for the kind words. I love you. <laughs> And I'm actually in Ottawa. Montreal's not that far away, so we should definitely connect Paris. I'd love to meet you in person. That's right. And she always says how there's not that many Iranians around her. So now the two of you can connect. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, like, you know, Canada, unfortunately, just like the U.S. government, really hasn't uh, done to the Islamic Republic what us Iranians would like to do. But mm -hmm. it's been so um, commendable and appreciated how much you've been using your platform to probably go against the grain and ruffle some feathers, but you're doing it because of your passion for being Iranian. So for those who don't know Goldi Ramari, would you mind just giving a little background about yourself? Sure. So uh, my name is Goldi Gamari. Uh, in Farsi, it's Golsa Ramari. And um, I came to Canada. Well, actually, my parents came to Canada when I was a year old. So um, I've learned Farsi, uh, how to speak, read, and write, um, everything about our history, our culture. Um, all in Canada from what my parents taught me and also from, you know, going to, to Farsi school and, you know, learning about my Persian heritage and culture. And, um, you know, when I decided to run for, for office in, in Canada and in Ontario, that was back in uh, 2015, 2016. And then when I got elected in 2018, I realized that I was actually the first Iranian Canadian woman to be elected to office in Canada, um, which kind of made headlines around the world in that sense but I think it really goes to show the Canadian dream and it goes to show how blessed you know I am to be um, a Canadian but I've never forgotten about my roots I've never forgotten about my culture and my heritage and you know it's it's something that I've always spoken out about you know on social media in the past 10-15 years I've always posted about it but you know for some reason this time around people actually started listening and started paying attention and we have this once in a lifetime opportunity now to share with the world what's happening in Iran you know the terrorist and illegitimate Islamic regime in Iran has held the people of Iran hostage for 44 years and it's only because of social media that we are now able to share that truth with the world um, and and like some of your other uh, earlier guests were saying you know, the terrorist Islamic regime has been trying to erase our history and our culture for 44 years. But our history and our culture has lasted thousands of years. And even when they tried to destroy our language, the reason that we were able to save our language is because of Ferdowsi, who is a very, very famous Iranian author. He's like the equivalent of Shakespeare. Um, I think he's better. Yeah, Shohnameh. And so Shohnameh, preserved our language and Shahnami is what allowed us to um, continue speaking Farsi even though there were like about 200 300 years where we were banned from speaking Farsi 
Um, you know what I actually really appreciate? It was a video that you just made just a couple of days ago where you were speaking to, I think, first graders. And yeah. like, because at first I didn't, I didn't read the caption, but I was like, <laughs> why is she speaking like so like layman term? And then, and then I, read, I saw the whole context and I was like, that is so cute. Can you kind of give a, a, the backstory behind you making yeah. a video? Because it was, you mentioned the, the first Iranian, um, you know, woman in the Canadian parliament. You mentioned the Noru's, you put the Mickey Mouse video. Like, yeah. it was just so beautiful that you're using your, your position to empower a younger generation or educate them and stuff, but speak to that more, please. Thank you. Um, so, so um, you know, the riding that I, I represent, the area, I guess, um, in the States, it would be called like a district. So, so the district that I represent is called Carlton, and it's in the Ottawa area. And there are a lot of Iranians who, who live in the area that I represent as well. And uh, so one of them reached out to me, and she actually invited me to uh, go to a, a local school with her because she every year she goes and she talks about no rules. And I really wanted to go, but you know, I'm, I'm at Queens Park. So I told her that I would film a video instead. And so that's what I did. Um, and I mean, this isn't the first time that I have filmed videos, like I'll, I'll do virtual meetings in classrooms all the time to speak about what it's like to be a politician or talk about different things. But this was really cool, because it was the first time that someone had asked me to speak about my culture and my heritage. Um, so I thought that was really, really nice and really interesting. And uh, I think I think it's really, really t telling that for the first time since I think the creation of Disney, they actually made a, a Noru's video. Oh, yeah. and, and they made it this year, which I think says a lot, right? Like this is the first time that I think they've acknowledged anything Persian heritage. And, and so I think that was an amazing move by Disney and I feel like it validated a lot of us. It validated our culture, our history, our heritage. Uh, it was just great seeing Mickey Mouse explain Noru's. I, I never thought I would see that in my life. The funniest part was when he was telling the fish Nakon. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very and, funny part of it. So, so and, how, and the how, fish was also named Goldie, which I thought was funny. Oh, I didn't so. recognize that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what what was it that had you wanted to get into Canadian politics? Like, what what was the catalyst behind that? So initially, I just wanted to help people. Um, I used to be an international trade lawyer, and I did a lot of sort of pro bono free legal work on the side. And one of the things I found out when I was helping people for free is that a lot of times, you know, the judge would say, well, you know, I feel for your client, but this is a law, my hands are tied. So that's when I thought, you know what, maybe I'll go work for a politician so I could maybe work on policy or legislation or changing the laws. So I started going around and networking and taking some interviews. And then that's when someone, someone who I'd met through my networking had said, well, Goldie, have you ever considered running for office? And it was like a light bulb went off in my head. Like I had never in my life ever dreamed um, of being a politician. You know, like it's just, it seems so, so out there. Right. And, you know, for someone like me, my parents came here with two suitcases, $50 and a one year old me, um, you know, escaped Iran, came here because they wanted to live a better life. And, you know, they didn't have any connections. They didn't have, you know, wealth or anything like that. Like they, they built their lives um, working hard. And so the fact that I I'm a politician today, it's just I still can't believe it. I got elected five years ago. And I wake up every day feeling humbled and blessed that people have put their faith in me to, to represent them in the Ontario legislature. So what's what's the next step for you? Like, what do you have envisioned as far as the political route? Oh, gosh. Um, I, I honestly, I, I kind of take politics one day at a time. My focus really is is to help the people that I represent, you know, and, and I've been posting a lot about Iran recently. Uh, but there's still a lot of work that I do locally, right? I mean, the stuff that I post about Iran is what I do in my spare time. You know, there, there's still so many, like, local projects and, and things like that. Um, but one of the challenges that I face as a politician is that I am, so I'm, I'm provincial, not federal. So, you know, in, in I guess for Americans, it would be I'm at the state level, not not the federal level. And so the way it works in Canada is as a as a provincial politician, we don't have any say or jurisdiction in foreign affairs or, you know, international global affairs. And so that's one of the really frustrating things is because all I can really do. So, so like, you know, 
a lot of people come up to me, a lot of Iranian Canadians come up to me and ask me, um, so why hasn't, why hasn't Canada designated the IRGC as terrorist yet? And my answer to them is, is that's a really good question. I have the same exact question. I have no idea why um, the federal government and Justin Trudeau won't, won't acknowledge that the IRGC is terrorist. I mean, they, they murder children. They, they rape women. They attack people inside and outside of Iran. I mean, um, if, they're not ter if they're not the literal definition of terrorist, I don't know what is. And so that's the really frustrating thing for me, not just as a Canadian politician, but just as a Canadian citizen, as, as an Iranian Canadian woman. Why is my government not acknowledging the fact that the Islamic regime in Iran is terrorist? And I don't have an answer to that. But all I can do as a provincial politician is to just, you know, keep the pressure on, spread the word, share the message. Yeah, I mean, you've definitely done your part. And I hope that, uh, and I believe you do, motivate and inspire others to also do the same so that um, the, the voices become loud enough to drown the inactions of the government of Canada led by Trudeau. So we appreciate all that you're doing on that end. In closing, if you have a, a Noru's wish that you'd like to share with your compatriots, if there's a message of hope that you would like to share with Iran and Iranians, uh, we'd love to have you here. Say it. Thank you so much. So, I mean, my wish is obviously for a free and democratic Iran. I wish that next year we can celebrate Noru's together freely in front of, uh, uh, in Meiduna Azadi. Um, I wish that Iranians will no longer have to live in fear of preserving their heritage and culture. I wish that everyone in Iran can enjoy the same freedoms that we have here in, in Canada and the United States. Mostly Canada, because I'm biased. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, and, and in Farsi, I just want to say, you know, I love it. And, you know, as an Iranian, I'm very proud of you for what you've accomplished as an Iranian woman in Canada. Uh, and I hope that whatever aspirations that you have in the political sphere, that you continue to climb to the top because that's what Shirzans do. And if there's anything that our Uniters family over here can do to support your efforts, know that we're all here for you. And uh, you. hopefully we do get to have uh, a beautiful free Iran so that we could be having this conversation in person next year. I would love that. Thank you so much. And, and thank everyone in the, in the Uniter family. Anytime you have an event or something that's going on, feel free to send me an invite. I'd, I'd love to participate and show my support any way I can. Thank, you. thank you for everything that you are doing to, to raise awareness. Thank you. Thank you. So, <laughs> and well wishes for you and your entire family. Thank you so much. Said. Same okay. to you. Bye -bye. Truth. All right. What a great pleasure to have a parliament member from Canada, Goldie Kamari, uh, to be a part of this program. Uh, especially on such short notice. Uh, you know, I pretty much surprised my Uniters family just a few days ago saying that, hey guys, I'm doing this 12 hour live stream, Hassing and Nisim. Little did I know that I desperately needed them and uh, my incredible Uniter family came to the rescue to help make this happen. But also my sincere thanks to uh, very busy people um, that have agreed to be a part of this program. I mean, um, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing to have so many awesome Iranians around the world um, that when you invite them to be a part of the part of this kind of stuff that they reciprocate with uh, making time for it. So just very appreciated for all of our guests today. And hopefully if you've been joining since 11, 11 a.m., you've been um, enjoying the, the caliber of guests that we've been having throughout the entire program. And there's still many more to come. My next guest actually is another Uniter. You may have seen her in a bunch of our Countdown to Freedom of Iran episodes that we have every single Wednesday night right here on my IG Live at 8 p.m. It's a one-hour live stream dedicated to what's happening in Iran. It starts off with news and updates, courtesy, courtesy of um, um, uh, Paris Mansouri. And then we also have different segments like a mindful moment, a mental health minute, and... Um,
uh, I'm start, my mind is starting to like kind of go crazy. But I can tell you that Shahla Nikpur is here and she's going to be talking about the kind of things that she's been doing at the Omid Project for Iran and also, of course, getting some notice wishes. So uh, please put your hands together for the lovely, the amazing, the always hardworking and helping Shahla Nikpur. Hi, Shahla Jun. <laughs> Hi, happy new ruse. No ruse, P. ruse. <laughs> Same to you. <laughs> How you doing? I'm good. I'm hanging in there. You look awesome. Thank you. You did something, you, something, you. something different. I don't know if it's a background or it's the denim jacket, but you got an 80s vibe going. So it's very cool. <laughs> there, there it is. <laughs> um, so first of all, how did you spend your, uh, I know you don't have family here in Miami, if I'm not mistaken, but how did you spend Noru's? Um, I just did some self-care this weekend. Um, just rested and you know, it's just a time to, you know, for new beginnings, but, you know, being able to take care of yourself and slow down. And so that's what I did. Um, I wasn't feeling well either. So I just listened to my body and I rested this weekend. But um, I was able to talk to my father. I, I sent him a big tray of the gauze candy that he loves and um, <laughs> he was thrilled. He's diabetic, though, so I told him to take it easy. But um, Basically, yeah, I mean... <laughs> yeah, so that was my weekend. Um, I'm sorry I wasn't able to join you guys on Saturday, but I was there in spirit. I feel all the love, we though. Definitely missed you and your father, who you brought <laughs> last time. So, yeah. As they say in Persian, Josh Khali, his place was missing. Yeah. Um, so what, 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 do you have any fun? Because you never, have you ever been to Iran? No, I've never been to Iran. Oh, okay, so, have, but like, growing up, did you, were you able to experience Nowruz in a certain certain way? Like, do you have any memories of Nowruz that you'd like to share with us? I actually don't have a lot of memories of Nowruz because um, when I was growing up, my dad didn't really have a lot of his relatives around. So like my experience with Nowruz is kind of new since I started to really get, you know, connected again to my culture and my heritage. So I haven't really done a lot of the Nowruz growing up. When I was a young adult, I, you know, I had, I think, you know, Iranian families that kind of adopted me in. And so then I started to learn more about it and um, its meaning. So um, it was one of those unfortunate things where I, we didn't have a lot of Persian people around us where I was growing up. And, um, you know, my dad didn't really celebrate it. My mom was American. So it wasn't one of those things that was really talked about, which was unfortunate. No, definitely unfortunate. So since you had, you didn't experience it the way that you deserve to have experienced it. And, and many of us, even, uh, if, even if we are, you know, both sides Iranian, like we were stripped of being able to enjoy Nowruz. Like I never spent Nowruz in Iran. So we've just had this fabricated version of it, which yeah. I'm grateful for, but it's still, we've, none of us have experienced the full version unless you've actually experienced it inside of Iran. So yeah. now that you've become a little bit more acclimated with things that have to do with Nowruz, what are some things that are, you know, that you're like surprised by or that you're interested in of or like, that, that kind of like made you happy, like some new things that you've learned about Nowruz that, um, that stands out for you? Well, I love the symbolism of Nowruz. I really tap into symbolism. I'm a big person that's like very visual and I love the symbolism of Nowruz. I love all of the different elements that represent, you know, prosperity, fertility, growth. Um, I love all of that. It just resonates with me. I, I like that it's also, there's these objects that represent something. And so there's something that you can connect with. And I love seeing how everyone celebrates it and how everyone, you know, presents the table and everything. It just is so beautiful to me. And um, I just love the symbolism of it. It gives me hope too, like, you know, this idea of you know, a new beginning again. And I love the idea of kind of cleaning out the house. And I think internally we have a lot of things that we file away that are, you know, kind of don't need to be there anymore. And we need to get them out of the house, our mental, you know, our brain and so forth. So I just love the symbolism of it. I love that, you know, it brings people together. Um, I do feel like it's a special time for me. I just never really understood, but this time of year always feels like, better things are gonna come my way and they usually do. And I think there's a manifestation with that as well. So um, that's what I really love about it. It's a beautiful symbolism of new beginnings. Yeah, it's like the ultimate turning of a new leaf, winter yeah. to spring, you know, so that, that it's a rebirth. Um, but speaking of bringing people together, the reason why I really wanted you to be here 
is to, as always, share what you've been doing with regards to bringing together uh, so many mental health experts around the world to be able to help our people. Uh, the Omid Project for Iran. So for those who are not familiar with it yet, let's use this opportunity to share as much as you'd like about it. Thank you. Um, so we've been, you know, working on content. Um, we have our IG account, the Omid Project for Iran, and we've gotten so much reception. Um, people are reaching out to us from Iran and just sharing their experiences and their feelings. We have a really great diverse group of healers, mental health providers, social workers, marriage and family therapists, psychologists from all over the world. Um, we're getting so much more. Um, people are asking how they can help now and it's just really great to see. Um, and it's just, again, the community is coming together, rolling up their sleeves and saying, how can we help? Um, I think that this revolution, I know we've talked about social media being such a game changer, but I think what also has been a game changer is that we're like openly talking about mental health this time around. I mean, clearly we've experienced multiple, you know, historical events with Iran for the past 44 years, but I feel like this time people are really talking about mental health. They're like being vulnerable and opening up about it, which I think is a really big intergenerational trauma that we're healing. It's like 44 years of that. And so I think that's a beautiful thing that we're doing. And we have people that are just creating content and sharing their expertise on things. So I really love that there's like a diverse voice that's happening. Um, and hopefully we're going to be able to do some more projects and things to help the Iranian um, diaspora and so forth. What, what's what been like the best, um, like what is, I'm sure it's been very rewarding for you to see this little vision of yours flourishing and really blowing up. I mean, like there, there's so many people that are, um, supporting it from a mental health standpoint, like the experts, and then also the recipients of all this incredible amount of, uh, you know, information and resources that you're providing. So uh, amidst all this sadness and just pain and just uh, tragedy, you know, you're, 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 you guys are helping so many people. So tell me about the good that has been coming out of all this that you can share with us. I think that, you know, we're, I think the Iranian people are feeling like we're, they're not as alone and they're again, encouraged to talk about their feelings. They're reaching out to us. And I mean, some of the stories are very devastating, but the fact that they are reaching out, I think is such a beautiful thing. And so we have people reaching out and people are saying in my, you know, our group chat, let me let, you know, let me reach out to this person. Let me see if I can talk to them or at least get them connected to somebody. And so I think that's a beautiful thing to see. Um, again, you know, it's very taboo to talk about depression and anxiety and even like feeling suicidal. And so I think it's beautiful how the young people of Iran are reaching out and saying, I'm not doing okay and I need help and I can't do this alone. So again, I think this is a beautiful thing to see that people are saying it's okay to reach out for help. It's okay to be vulnerable. This is a huge thing that's affecting all of our, you know, our mental health and our physical health. And so I just love that people are really tapping into this and um, we're giving people tools. And so, you know, I wish I had money and I wish I had more resources that I could be in Iran, but we're doing something I think that's having a ripple effect. And I think that's a beautiful thing. What's, what's the next step for Omid Project now that you've pretty much done phase one Phase one is just building this initial foundation, getting get, getting the word out, getting enough uh, mental health experts that want to join the team. So you have an all-star team of people. Azadeh, I'd say she was here earlier. She's one of the many uh, amazing therapists that are lending their time uh, and experience to your um, organization. What's next for you guys? Well, we want to continue to create content where people can come on and just you know get some tools but hopefully, you know, as we progress and we get more people that can help, I mean, we would like to move this into perhaps a non, non for profit where, again, we can try to, you know, you know, make you know, create resources for the Iranian people. I know Ozzy Day has been doing a lot on her own, but I know, you know, there's a lot, a lot of room for collaboration, but I think that's one of our projects you know, to do more um, education um, in universities abroad, where we have a huge population of young Iranians that are studying abroad and making sure they're getting the support. 
Um, and, you know, connecting, we really want to connect with the inside people that are in Iran that are mental health providers because they are there, but we just don't know, like, where they are, how to connect with them, like, what's the best way? I mean, that's the barrier right now. So we really want to be able to have, like, that bridge of we have people in Iran that can tell us what's going on, where there are areas of, you know, lack, lack of services or what they need. Um, it's, so it's a lot. But, you know, we just are continuing to create content where people can come on. If people do reach out to us, you know, reach out to us. We really want to try to, like, get them connected to somebody. Like, we just want to be able to, you know, have that for them. I love it. Um, right now, where can they find out more information about how can they support if somebody wants to either be the recipient of this information you're spitting out or if there's a mental health expert here that is like, oh, my God, of course, I'd like to help out. How can they get in touch with you? Well, they can, um, you know, send us a message on the Omid Project for Iran on our Instagram. We do have a Gmail account, too, which is the Omid Project for Iran at gmail.com. Um, if they're a mental health provider, they can reach out to us there. We also have a link tree with resources on there. But, you know, just DM us. We will, you know, get back to you within one business day. Um, so if you're interested, and we will be sending out an uh, email to all of the people that are already participating for next steps as well. So... Um, but we do need people in Iran. I know it's hard with the communication and sometimes the internet is not um, as fluent as we would like to, like it to be, but we do need people in Iran if they want to reach out and help us. Um, also medical providers, we need psychiatrists. Um, that's a very big thing that we're looking at too. So they can reach out to us on our Instagram and our email and we look forward to hearing from more people. Before I forget, make sure that you ask ARMY to make a little flyer so I can share it with my network, basically looking for mental health experts to join OMI Project. You need to have a lot of people to kind of just share that type of flyer so that we can funnel some more, more uh, awesome people towards your way. In closing, Shala Jun, what Noru's wishes would you like to share with your compatriots? What wishes or hopes for Iran and Iranians uh, would you like to share? I just want to tell the people in Iran that we are still here. You're in our hearts. You're in our minds every day. And we love you. Every day is a chance to start over in some small way. Keep those small promises to yourself. You are important. You are not a burden. And we continue to fight. And I just hope that you can find some peace you know some some small peace in your day um and you know we are here we are a safety net and it's okay if you need to fall people will catch you here um so i just hope everyone can have as much of a peaceful new as they can and um stay connected to the people that um let you be safe in their lives and make you feel safe so that's my my wish Beautiful. It's a beautiful wish to have. And I hope that next year, this time, your dad and you, you get to go celebrate Noru's. Yeah. And hopefully, we'll be around too. We'll have a bunch of guys and uh, we'll, we'll dance to some Persian music and whatever whatever else we can come up with while we're in our homeland. So, uh, as always, Shalom Jun, thank you so much for everything that thank you, you and your whole team are doing. It's really commendable. And I can't wait to see uh, it, it flourish. Uh, this has been your, your baby, and I'm just very proud of you for everything you've been doing. So, And I've got to give a shout out to Army because she has been amazing, and she's co-creator of this, and she is just an amazing person. So, Army, we love you, too. We know that you're watching, and you've been doing an amazing job, and thank you. And then thank you to the other contributors of the Lomi Project. If you're watching, you've all been instrumental, and um, we are so grateful to have you. So thank you so much to everyone. Yeah, Army, I love you, too, in case you didn't. <laughs> No, you know. All right. So uh, have a wonderful rest of Noru's challenges. Get some rest. Relax. I will. The Omid Thank you, guys. Done. Zendigi. Love, you. Oh, Zendigi. love you. Bye bye. Love you too. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, from one awesome individual, we're going to invite this great artist that I did not know uh, until about a couple months ago when my amazing DJ Kia was down here. And then he was here visiting Miami and then he was looking for places to go. And then he's like, oh, man, Namito is performing. And I was like, who's that? And then, like, I saw on his post that I didn't even care about his DJ part at that point. And then all of a sudden, I saw that he was using his platform to talk about Iran, to bring awareness. 
And then I found out about his musical talents because later that night we went to Do Not Sit Furniture. And in case you've uh, been to South Florida, you definitely know Do Not Sit. It's actually a, a world famous venue. And then he just rocked it. And then he was playing remixes of his Persian songs. So without any further ado, please help me welcome Namito. He's actually joining us from Berlin. I was born and raised in Germany. So we have that connection of Deutschland zusammen. There he is. <laughs> Hey, how are you? Good to see you. How are you? No ruse piruz. No ruse shawam piruz. Thank you so much for feeling that. Thank you so much for joining. I I know that it's late in in Berlin. Although as a world famous uh, entertainer, you're used to late nights. <laughs> yes. This is probably morning for you. <laughs> how how did you spend your no ruse? <laughs> oh, I was. Um, we have a, a very a great uh, party crew here in Berlin called Lashian. Okay. And um, uh, and uh, one of them ha has um, invited me uh, for, for dinner. And it was absolutely mind-blowing. And, like, they have this... Um, it's amazingly, like, loving. And uh, it's, like, very positive vibes always there. And the food was am amazing. And then I had to rush off to come and talk to I'm you. I'm so sorry. Mazra, I know no, you no, tried no. to get... All good. I had all these... This man was already lined up, so, and I wanted to make sure that I have you as part of this because I just I just love any artist that is using their their platform as an artist and entertainer to speak about Iran. And like you know, I was so thrilled when I saw your social media, you know, all about this. What what has been the reason why you've been using your amazing platform to spread awareness about what's happening in your homeland? Well, um. Uh, I have one <laughs> uh, weakness, which is like I cannot stand uh, um, injustice. Uh, you know, like it's it's really like I I cannot sit back and say, oh, what do I care? I live in Germany since almost forty years. Like it's it just like when Mahsa Amini was killed, I called my mom and said, look, I cannot stay silent, right? And uh, thank God she she raised me. She knows <laughs> how stubborn I am, and uh, she just said, "Yeah, do do whatever you think is right." And um, you know, like uh, it's for me, it's uh, essential to support the, especially the Iranian youth, because I th I think they really are really um, uh, a different breed. <laughs> Like they are super conscious and they are really like they know the world. They don't want to have these old uh, rotten ideas anymore and they are, they are ready to fight for it. And if I can support that with my humble little platform that I have, I think it's kind of my duty, right? I don't mean uh, to push them to do things. It's just like I, I, I would like to amplify their voice. Uh, their voices, uh, you know, like uh, because I, it's very difficult from from here to tell them to go to go on the street, do this and that. Yeah. It's I'm not there to go do the same myself. Uh, I guess I would be dead by now <laughs> <laughs> if I was in Iran because it's just like uh, I cannot stand this kind of yeah. um, backward uh, uh, mentality that the government has. Yeah, so I mean, that's why it, I, I it literally took us back 1500 years. And yeah, I mean, the, the amount of courage and bravery that these these individuals our brothers and sisters have is next level. Like, I don't think I would ever have the courage that they do to truly sacrifice their entire life for freedom. I mean, we are we are if we're living outside of Iran, we are living in a very privileged world. You know? Absolutely. And so I'm, I'm grateful that you say humble, uh, you know, network, but you have a very loyal following and they 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 will support what it is that you're fighting for and you're fighting for great things and so as an iranian i'm very grateful for you you doing that because there's unfortunately a lot of iranians with big platforms that don't do the same so thank you for doing that i want to talk a little bit about music as somebody who's in entertainment as well um you have some incredible uh remixes of old school classics you know and and um I want you to just kind of talk about how or why or when you decided that, you know what, I want to be able to sprinkle some of my music or my, my cultural music into my sets, which is usually 80, 90 percent 
uh, non, non-Iranian. So was that from the very beginning or did that evolve into it or how did it go? So uh, it's uh, looking back to when I started, it was there right from the beginning, mm-hmm. but not in the, in the conscious way that I'm doing it now, nowadays. And it, the, the conscious uh, uh, time was like when I made Stoneflower and uh, I realized how much of an impact it had on, on people, right? Like, so we Iranians are used to being um, connected or linked to negative stuff, right? Like war, um, uh, the Islamist government, uh, you know, hanging gay people, you know, like you name it, those idiots do down there right uh, but now uh, like this was like suddenly people felt uh, uh, like they were they were uh, having uh, another platform to sh- uh, showcase the Iranian happiness in a way or the, the, the you know that we, we really love to party <laughs> it's so funny we have this, these idiots ruling over us yeah, you know, like because all Iranians I, I I know, like they just want to have a great time, yeah. and uh, yeah. So then, but with Stoneflower, I realized there is like a need for that, and um, it's uh, I, I kind of started to really go for it, and it's to a point now that people really come and expect uh, kind of. Persian vocal house yeah. when I play, which is very beautiful in a way. Like I'm, I'm, I'm doing this such a long time, like thirty-four years now, having this kind of, um, uh, you know, hype still is uh, really like something amazing, and I'm very grateful for that. You know, um, uh, I was telling before you came on. I don't know if you heard or not, but you know, I'm very new to your music, unfortunately. Uh, and when I saw you perform at Do Not Sit, what I really appreciated and enjoyed was you could tell how much you loved and how proud you were of presenting the Persian music. Because I saw you, like I was just paying attention to you like a creeper throughout the whole set. But then whenever you played the Persian vocals, that's <laughs> when like the maestro was really like, the hand was waving and it was just a beautiful thing. So how does it feel when you are introducing your motherland music to non-Iranians? Because I think that you, you get a little bit more appreciation for the whole experience when you do that, no? It's funny that people uh, really, um, it it's, doesn't have anything to do with the vocals. It's rather they feel the, the, the music. Even like I've seen Germans crying to Stoneflower, right? That, that, and she doesn't understand what's, what's being said. But she felt the energies, she felt the vibe, and uh, yeah, it's, I, I think that the whole concept is, uh, you know, like I'm, as you know, I'm, I'm, I'm half German in a way now after <laughs> all these years, uh, and I, I don't want to miss that part, right? So uh, the, it was a conscious decision at one point to have the music almost entirely Western, and just use a little uh, the, the very essential melody to to combine the two words mm. which like uh, kind of represents also me I'm not Iranian Iranian I'm not German mm-hmm. so I'm somewhere in between and I think a lot of people can relate to that Big time. you know right. so yeah exactly so we all have I was at Max Amini's show the other day and he actually mentioned that we are all somehow between these two cultures and uh, it's, uh, it, I think it's a very clever way, <laughs> not bragging, but it's like, I, I, it took me a long time, but it's, it's a really good way to combine the two and, uh, uh, you know, like, and pick up people, like the Western people, but also like give the Iranians like that little bit of nostalgia yeah. to, to work with. I mean, the, you know, music. Music is definitely the universal language, so you can definitely bridge a lot of gaps between different countries and nationalities, and you've been able to do that successfully and beautifully. I was actually very pleasantly surprised how much of your music was Persian vocals. You know, I was expecting, <laughs> I was expecting like one song, so when it first came on, 
I was like, hell yeah. And then I realized, oh my God, you actually have like multiple, it was a total yeah. educational experience. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, yeah it's, it's almost like, like I could probably start to play like live shows now. Yeah. You know, because I have like maybe 10, 15 bangers. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. That uh, that like and like um, I go now to any uh, place with a lot of Iranians, they really show up yeah. and uh, and it's it's a great feeling I must say I was just in in Toronto and the amount of love I get people bring me gifts of uh, you know like it's really in the next level of love. Beautiful. Well, I mean for sure now that I'm I've become acquainted to your music uh, and considering that I do concerts. Hopefully, I'll have the pleasure and the honor of collaborating with you and doing an event. And hopefully, it's when Iran is free so we can really have people come out and embrace oh, and enjoy the music, <laughs> you know? I, 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 I'm going to, in the last few minutes, I want to make sure you have a chance to give the Noru's wishes. Have you played uh, Shervin's Baro yet? Have you made like a remix of it yet? I made that same night an edit of it when it came out. Wow. <laughs> uh, that like... At the I was so charged that I think I, I don't even know why it showed up in my feed. You know, I was not following him, but it showed up and I listened to that track. Yeah. I kind of started crying and uh, it was so touching that I grabbed it from the internet and made a, an, another, I love it. a very close to the, to the original. Yeah. And I didn't want to put like house beats underneath because in, at that time, it was like really delicate, and I'm a big Massive Attack fan, so kind of went <laughs> down uh, that road. Nice. And uh, yeah, I, I really like it myself. I, I, I actually listen to my own music. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. I, I actually now now I'm very curious to hear your version of it, but yeah, uh, I, I'm sure it gets it gets an incredible response because that that's just an iconic song that was made almost it, overnight as soon as the revolution began. Um, uh, as in, in order to stay within the timeline, I want to make sure you have the next two, three minutes to share any type of Noru's message that you have or any type of hope, a message of hope for our compatriots. Well, um, you know, um, for me, like I, I read something about the, um, how, uh, how are uh, successful or how is success uh, achieved, right? Um, and it's all about being uh, consistent and not giving up. It doesn't have to do anything with uh, n too much knowledge or education. You just stick to the plan. You don't give up and you just go for it. So my uh, wish for the Iranian people is you deserve much better than this, right? You deserve to be free. You deserve to have the best uh, uh, possible future. So don't give up. Don't um, uh, be um, uh, happy with what you've got. Uh, you know, as they say, yeah, at least it's safe. It's not. You know, they can kill you any minute. Look at Masa Amini, Kian. Uh, you know, like Kian Pifa, like you know, like that kind of stuff can happen to anybody. So stick to the plan. Let's get rid of this idiot. And uh, I wish you all the best for this new year. And I think. It's getting closer and closer to that point that we see a free Iran that will flourish and 8 million Iranians are waiting to go back and bring in their knowledge, their connections to the whole world and rebuild that country. That's beautifully stated, my friend. Um, and I think that the Iranians around the world are grateful for your support grateful that you continue to represent us so well and speaking on behalf of the ones that are fighting for freedom. So uh, I hope that we get to have Namito perform to Meiduna Azadi by Next No Rules and we get to jam around. <laughs> and, very cool. <laughs> and I would love to welcome you on stage. That would be a great honor for me. Thank you. Well, Sorry for cutting your dinner short. <laughs> um, all right. So ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little hard reset like I've done a couple of times because I want to make sure that we stop the video. I can upload it and take it over to YouTube. Uh, up next, we're going to have Mona Nagvi. Mona, just stay tuned for a second. I'm going to sign off this IG Live.
but I'll be back in two minutes. I just got to post it on IG Live, and I'll be right back. Please don't go anywhere. We're going to 11, 11 p.m. Eastern time. Monojun, thank you for your patience, and we'll be right back. All right, here we go, here we go. It's another, I think it's part seven at this point. It's 6.46 p.m. Eastern time. We are continuing our 12-hour live stream, the celebration of Noruz. Uh, I want to go ahead and take a moment and say Noruz and Piruz. And um, we're going to jump right into it because we have a guest coming up uh, any minute now. It's going to be our dear uniter, Mona Nagvi. She's been a rock star of a uniter uh, the last few months here in South Florida. Uh, we're going to talk about everything that she was doing to bring awareness by leading the efforts of creating an aerial banner, raising over $20,000 in GoFundMe donations that allowed us to uh, have this incredible ba banner all over Miami during Art Basel. And um, I'm messaging her right now to bring her back on. If you've been enjoying the program so far, oh, by the way, I need to take this off. These poor, uh, this flower has become a little bit pajamore. It's been sitting around for six hours. I don't even know how my sister put it on, but I feel like they're looking droopy and it don't look good. I should have done this during the break. Sorry, guys. I don't even know how to take this off. Is Mona coming? Anyways, if you had a nice Noruz, go ahead and let us know by dropping it in the chat. Okay, there you go. We're going to be flowerless for the rest of the program. All right, there she is. And the amazing accent, the British accent. Here you go. Uh, Mona, do you have to? Ah. Yeah, here we go. Hello, first how are you? you no, too. Rusky, Rus. Yeah, I, Great to I see am you. so impressed as always with your intense energy. Congratulations, this is amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I do have to apologize that you've had to see this face That's for three days in a row now. Cool. So I That's hope that after cool. today you get to have a <laughs> you can he's making four. No, it's okay. Let's just let's just give give you a couple of days to kind of just unwind. Uh I hopefully you've been it. enjoying it, it with your mom so and your wonderful. sis. You know, it's been almost a decade since the three of us ladies from, from our family were together alone together. So it's been awesome to have a girls' trip. <laughs> awesome. I'm glad I'm glad you've been enjoying it. Uh I had the great pleasure of meeting your mom yesterday. Yeah. Love it. Well, two <laughs> nights ago. Well, the whole weekend again. We've been it's been a it's been a long party, but Salaman um, So for those who don't know Mona, I want I want herself to kind of take us back to a few months ago where she was trying to figure out how she can contribute to this movement, and she thought of the idea of doing an aerial banner. And so why don't you just kind of share with people what you did and why you decided to do that, and you know how, why it was important for you. To, Absolutely, to do something Imagine. in Thank this revolution. Thank you so much. So, I mean, first of all, it was so difficult for any of us in the diaspora to just sit back and do nothing. But as you know, the challenges from being able to go around, go down the traditional route of um, advocacy in that Iran is a heavily sanctioned country. You can't send money directly. Um, we couldn't even get hold of our relatives for a period of time when the internet went dark. Heavily, heavily censored. I mean, it, it, the situation was dire. And I felt if we couldn't send financial aid directly, then the very least we could do is send spiritual aid. And that can come in many shapes and forms. You've done so many different wonderful things, uh, including your prior live stream to send that message of solidarity uh, with the people of Iran who continue to fight for their freedom. But we wanted to do something that would First of all, bring a smile to their faces, make sure that they are being seen, they're being heard, and to raise awareness amongst the American community and the global community, in fact. And we had the fantastic opportunity as a South Florida with, the, uh, with Art Basel, which, was, uh, which is an annual event that brings together, I think, over 100,000 global international visitors. And these are some of the world's elite in terms of uh, celebrities, financiers, investors, artists. Uh, influencers, politicians even. And so it was a fantastic opportunity for us to send that spiritual support to the people of Iran while at the same time raising awareness. So it was a real pleasure working with other fellow Uniteds such as yourself to raise over $20,000, um, which is no mean feat, I think. And I, I don't know how many cupcakes I baked and how many... <laughs> 
amazing group effort and we really rallied and we raised a lot of money which is not easy for Moravia sometimes um and we were able to fly and I'm and I'm I'm convinced I'm con I'm convinced that half of it was because of your accent. I don't mind one bit. I will milk that to the end. You know, I do that in my job too. I, I I'm on screen for work, and everyone's like, "Is it just because you speak that way?" I'm like, "I'm fine with that. I'm totally fine with." It. So I will milk. Amer an English woman in, uh, in America it used to be in New York, but in in Miami now. <laughs> Yeah, but no, I mean that that was great, and like I mean, we we reached so many different people. So many people tagged us, messaged us, you know, like so many non-Iranians saw it, you know. So I feel like I feel like we we were able to really um, blanket the town thanks to your um, initiative no, of, of of making it was, this it all happen. It was it was so really it was fun was to work on, you know, got a, got creative juices flowing, and I think it truly proved that the sky's the limit. <laughs> excuse the pun, um, but you know, we, we need to get creative. This is not um, a marathon, it's a sprint. We need to, I mean, wait, excuse me, oh, we're out. <laughs> it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Too much, too much Nori's wine. Um, <laughs> but we, you know, we, we, we need to get creative. We need to find ways to send our messages of solidarity and we can't go down the traditional route. So I think getting creative, using art as a form of communication has always been core to our uh, in Iran and caused so many spots. It connects with people all around the world. Um, that was a unique opportunity we had, but I think, you know, taking it from here, what do we do next? Um, you know, as a South Florida based community, especially, there aren't that many Iranians in one place. You know, you've done a tremendous job with Let's Unite and Conquer, bringing together the uh, thousands or so that reside in New York. But, you know, these big populations exist and they can bring together. Uh, huge demonstrations of people. But what can we do with fewer resources and fewer people? We can get creative. I think we can use the arts. We can find non-traditional forms of communication and just hopeful spiritual messages to send to the people of Iran and the diaspora all around that we are with you, we stand with you, and we're not forgetting the plight that you're going through and we're here till the end. So I want us to keep brainstorming as a community and hopefully find new ways, maybe less expensive ones, but definitely <laughs> new ways to keep that, keep that message of hope in the air. Definitely. Um, so what, what else um, can you share? You just you mentioned a few messages of hope, but I want you to take a moment and share a, a beautiful Noru's message for our compatriots. If you have any messages of hope for our Iranians, both Iran inside of Iran or a message for the diaspora of Iranians, I'd love for you to take a moment you know, and kind I'd of share that. I'd love to take this moment to just quickly acknowledge a fellow Uniter, another Mona, Mona Hagi, who gave the most inspirational, beautiful speech the other night at your event, your Noru's event. And it really touched me. I told her right away, but I've been thinking about it ever since. She rightly pointed out that we've seen a dip in participation. We've seen the numbers drop. We've seen it in, in terms of the diaspora and our ability to bring folks together. And, and that it has at times been a little, been a little bit disheartening um, because in the beginning of this revolution, you know, we had so much excitement and hope and energy. It's natural, I think, to see the ebbs and flows. We were talking about this over lunch the other day. And I think there's strength in acknowledging that this is not gonna be a steady straight path. And, you know, taking the time to refuel the energy reserves, the energy tank when it's low, but remembering to keep the eye, your eyes on the prize and to, just basically never give up. And I think the many speakers throughout the program today have, have mentioned that this is going to take a long time. I hope not, but we're in it until the very end. And so my message of hope and hopefully inspiration to all other members of the diaspora, first of all, is whatever we've got going on in our lives, nothing, nothing needs to get in the way of us seeing a free Iran. And for those Hanbatan in Iran, especially more than anyone, we have no right to say, you know, why aren't you bringing together, why aren't interesting because you're the ones on the front lines but just know that we're with you we support you we love you and we see you and whatever creative underground tactics we may want to pursue in the following months and years uh we just have to get creative and do whatever we can until we see a free iran and we're with you all the way i love it i just remembered you know you, go, you used to go to iran a lot 
Do you have a fond memory during Nowruz that you'd like to share? As a you know, note? sadly, I never have been to Iran during Nowruz. I have always been during the summer <laughs> or the winter. But I will say my absolute favorite movie, if you haven't seen it, is White Balloon. I think it's uh, Panahi. Yes, I'm definitely yeah. going to watch it tonight. And it is this beautiful story of a young girl who is on a quest to find her mahi for the for the Hatin. And actually, I don't want to give it away, um, but there's a beautiful cyclical message in the movie. She goes on a practical <laughs> wild goose chase to try and find the mahi. She loses the money she was supposed to use to buy the fish. And it turns out her neighbor was selling her fish from her own pond, which I think in the end goes to show that a lot of the strength that we already have is within us. And it's a beautiful message. It's a symbolic message that we, the Iranian people, have everything we need on our, on our home turf. To, to, to fight for our freedom and to see a free Iran and to put the monkey on the table. Even though pa I know Paris June would be upset with me for bringing that up because apparently it's not authentic, but it's in the movie. So <laughs> watch the movie, White Balloon. It's on Criterion if you have that. <laughs> well, I, I hope that you get to enjoy White Balloon with your mom and sister. That's gotta be such a special moment for, uh, for the three of you lovely ladies. And um, I appreciate you welcoming my family to your home last night it made the entire Nodos experience for this weekend for my family much more special so thank you for all that and i hope you enjoy the rest of your evening and i hope that this year is filled with health wealth happiness and a free iran and it'll be because of people like you that thank we you. get there so thank you so much so, i'll see your sister in 45 minutes or so take care bye-bye all right, so ladies and gentlemen, that was amazing, the awesome Mona Narvi. Uh, she's been really a, an incredible asset to our Uniters family, and we're definitely grateful for having had her. Okay, so um, we have here, up next, it's gonna be a segment with definitely Sari Kazami. Um, we're gonna have um, Paris Jun coming back, and Sultan Sher, Agaye Kazami. So let's bring them all in. Excuse me, sorry about that. It's gonna be mother and son again. If you've been er joining earlier, there's been some great poetry. And here he is, Ostali Shah. <laughs> سال خوبی باشه برای تو و خانوادت با خیر و برکت و سلامتی کامل ممنون از شما در کنار شما نوروز شما پیروز خیلی ممنون که این همه وقتتون رو گذاشتید امروز که در کنار ما باشین اینجا سایر جون great to see you again I love this father father daughter duo that we've been having all day long um, are we starting uh, with a poem or how are we, we doing this? I think Mona Jun and uh, Paris Jun were. Who am I? Who am I? Yeah, I'm, who, who am I bringing in? Um, bring in. I think it's Paris Jun. And uh, Mona, if you're staying on, Iman, then I'll drop off so Paris and Mona can come on. No, well, I mean. I'm Unfortunately, I, I won't be able to, I can disappear, oh. but oh, I, yeah, yeah. I, I only right. have room Sorry. For so I'm gonna, one more, I'm gonna, one, it's Paris and Mona. one more person. Okay, right. let me, let me message right. that's them. What the, uh, that's what we had, was a segment with Paris, Mona, and uh, it was supposed to be like my dad, so. Yes. I think, gonna, Mon, I think I see Mona's coming, so, I'll drop so off. I think I'm gonna have I'll Mona go in the same on. room as my dad, I'll be there. Okay. Daddy, okay, stay cool. on. Very good. Uh, I call the subject of my hero for the same thing. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I and I'm going to step away for a few moments uh, as Mona and Sada will take over the program. Excuse me, Mona and uh, Parish are going to take over the program. All right, Khanumay Aziz, they don't need any more introduction, but in case you do, Paris Mansur from Montreal, Mona Hayri from up the street, and Ustad Sher, Agai Kazami. I'm going to give you a little bit of time. Yes, 
یه رو بیست سر دیگه دوباره مزاحم شما بشم سپاس I know, What right? a privilege شما برم من با نه جدی میگم like honestly I think poetry reading written word is like such a such an art but to Iran and God and God like and I'll say it in English it seems like yeah. so many people have the poet inside of them that you don't get to hear how brilliant and talented you are because it's just a given that you're Persian and that you know po- that you're Iranian and that you know po- Persian poetry but it is an art to be able to share it the way that you do and honestly I know that in Iran you Like everyone's like an engineer, a doctor, a banker, something professional, but it's so sad because you could have easily been a written uh, word artist, poet <laughs> your whole life. It's such a privilege to hear you share your talent. Thank you. 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 I don't know if I'm not going to be able to do it. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. did you have any questions before we go no I just we're about to also have. add to that I am your biggest fan because me you are amazing I mean you made me so happy when you sent us a few of your poems from the hospital that I was amazed we were all crying it was beautiful and So thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for everything that you do. You make us happy. خواهش میکنم. بازم میگم لط دارید شما من سپاس گذارم. این پاومی که میخوایم علیه بشم از پاوم or about to hear. والا این یه شیری هست به نام خانه دوست مال فریدون مشیریه. از شود که اینو برای مشیری برای یکی دیگه از شاعران میخونه که به عنوان خانه دوسته من حالا اگه حاضر باشید من شیر رو براتون میخونم حاضر دیگه بفهمید من یه قرط آب بخورم که سینم باز بشه من دلم میخواهد خانه ای داشته باشم پر دوست من دلم میخواهد خانه ای داشته باشم پر دوست کنج هر دیوارش دوستایم بنشینن آرام گل بگو گل بشنو شرط وارد شدن به آنجا شستشون توی دل هاست شرط آن یک دل بیرنگ و ریاز شرط وارد گشتن شستشوی دل هاست شرط آن یک دل بیرنگ و ریاز بر روی درش برگ سبزی می کوبم روی آن می نویسم ای یار خانه ما اینجاست تا که سهراب منظور همون سهراب سپهریه تا که سهراب نپرسد دیگر خانه دوست کجاست شعرش کوتاه بود ولی خیلی پرمغز و زیبا بود مال شعر شهرام بره فریدون مشیری برای سهراب سپهری این شعر رو گفته بود این شعر اولی بود والا نمیدونم سه سارم گفت دو تا شعر بخونم یه شعر دیگهش حالت تنز داره یعنی یه خورده باید آدم دقت بیشتر داشته باشه شما به سنتون نمیخوره تو کتاب فارسی قدیما یه داستانی بود میگفت زاغکی قالب پنیری دید به دهان برگرفت و زود پرید داستانش میگفتن زاغ و روباه یه روباهی بود که میدونید که روباه یه پرنیه حیوانیه که دائم در حال گرفتن یا دوزیدن چیزا از پرنده های دیگره حالا این به صورتی که میگه 
اینو آقای آلی پیام آقای حالو نمیدونم شما بشناسید یا نه در ایران تنز میگه تنزای انتقادی میگه خیلی کارش جالبه ولی خب آدم باید بهش آشنا بشه به طرز تنزی که میگه به صورت شعر آشنا باشه که بتونه متوجه حرفاش بشه که خیلی این کارش فعاله و خیلی بر علیه نظام کار میکنه و اشعار تنز میگه این میگه زاغکی پیتزای قارچی خرید اون قالب پنیر رو تبدیل به پیتزا میکنه میگه زاغکی پیتزای قارچی خرید به دهان برگرفت و زود پرید رهی به درختی نشست در راهی که از آن میگذشت روباهی گفت به به روباهی میگه گفت به به چه سری چه دومی عجب پایی گفت به به تو چقدر زیبایی توی حد پش پرید ماده کلا گفت ای روباهی پر اولاق آن زمان که عقل من گم بود یعنی میگه اون موقع که بچه بودم سن سالم کلاس سوم بود لیک آن ماده کلا خورده بسی دود چراغ حالی از اوم بهره ها بردم مدرک فوق دکترا دارم گفت و بر جان روبا آتاش زد پیتزا را به زیر بالش زد گفت روبا به چیت می نازی پیری و زشتی و بدون بالی خواست زاق که پز دهد بر روبا بال بکشود و پیتزا افتاد پیتزا را ربود و خورد روبا آن وقت گفت رو حضرت روبا آن زمان که تو کلاس سه بودی بچه مدرسه بودی من هم طلبه بودم درس میخواندم روزه میخواندم درس خواندم مدام شبان روز مدام گشته هم حال حجت الاسلام منظورش اینه که از یه روزخونی تبدیل شدم به یه حجت اسلام میتونم این کلاوردیاری رو بکنم و میتونم پیزه ها رو از شما بدوزم البته از شبت که گرفتن این شعر خیلی چیز ساده ای نیست حالا باید یه مقداری بیشتر بربارش توضیح بدیم و افرادی که سن سال بالا داشته باشند در, در زمان مثلا پنجا پنجا و پنج سال پیش کتاب های فارسی جنو خونده باشند این داستان زاغ و روبا معروفه براشون اونا میتونن خیلی خوب این شعر رو تشخیص بدن چیه ولی برای اینکه این شعر رو که شما خیلی سخت گرفتیدش گرفتنش براتون مشکل واقعا من میدونم چون از داستانش دور هستید من اجازه میخوام یه شعر کوچیکتر براتون بخونم اینه قبلا هم خوندم یه جا براتون اگه یادتون بیاد که خودتون متوجه بشید میگه قنچه از خواب پرید قنچه گل قنچه از خواب پرید نوگلی تازه به دنیا آمد این خاران که میبینی کنار گلا میرویم خار گنچه از خواب پرید نوگلی تازه به دنیا آمد خار خندید و به گل گفت سلام جوابی نشنید خار رنجید ولی هیچ نگفت ساعتی چند گذشت گل چه زیبا شده بود دست بیرحمی آمد نزدیک گل سراسیمه ز وحشت افسرد لیک آن خار در آن دست خرید و گل از مرگ رهید صبح فردا که رسید 
خار با شب نمی از گل شب نمی از خواب پرید گل سمیمانه به او گو سلام 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 در هر صورت امیدوارم که متوجه بشید و این معنی شعر پر مغزه ولی خب سن سال خیلی شرطه چون داستان ها رو نشید شما گرفتن شعر خود مشکل براتون ولی من خوشحال میشم که برای شما این شعر ها رو میخونم و و شما لطف دارید و دوست دارید اگه سالی باشه در خدمت هستم سپاس گذاریم من الان متوجه میشم چرا ساره اینقدر باهوشه خواهش میکنم ممنونم از لطفتون مرسی یعنی من تمام روز میتونم شعرهای شما رو گوش بدم خسته نمیشم بربوری شما برم دکتری شما ممنونم از لطفتون مر... یه نه... هست که مورد علاقتون باشه از باشیم. بله میتونم بله. شعرهایی که براتون بخونم از شود که الان یک کمی باید فکر کنم حضور ذهن ندارم ولی خب شعرهای زیادی هستش اجازه بده یه چی؟ پریا رو بخون اون پریا خیلی طولانیه یه چیزی در حدود ده دقیقه شعره ولی طولانیه شما ده من نوت درصد شعرامو از حفظم بیشترش از حفظم البته به همجور که به ساره قبلا گفتم این جراحی قلبی که من داشتم یه مقداری تأثیر داشت ولی حالا هی به مرور زمان میاد یه چیزایی از مغز آدم میپره ولی به زور به مرور زمان میاد و دوباره جاگوزین میشه و آدم میتونه ادامه بده به کارش بعد من حفظم اکثرش حفظم و از مثلا از دبستان دبیرستان علاقه پیدا کردیم و از اون وقت مثلا مامانم بعضی وقتا یه چیزایی میگن بابام هم سعی میکنم ولی مامانم کرکتشون میکنم میدونی یعنی شاید یه جمله رو عوضی کنم عوضی بگن جالبه ولی مامانم میگن از دبستان دبیرستانشون خیلی براشون جالب بود و یاد میگرفت شما تا سن پایین وقتی یاد بگیری خیلی کم اتفاق میفته که فراموش کنید ولی خب سن بالا یه مقداری مشکل تله ولی علاقه باید از سنین پایین باشه از سنین پایین که شروع بشه خیلی تو حافظه میمونه و کمک میکنه که حافظه آدم قوی بشه بتونه شعرهای دیگر رو حفظ کنه بله و شما فقط برای خودش یاد میگرفتیم که دوست داشتین یا برای مثلا ایران در زمان قبل از انقلاب در شب شعرا شرکت میکردم اینجا هم که اومدم تو این رستوران پولاک بود تو کانون فرهنگی بود که ما شب شعر داشتیم در سال دو سه بار شب شعر داشتیم که من مجریش بودم من از افراد دعوت میکردم بیان شعر بخونم بین این فاصله که افراد رو دعوت میکردم خودم هم یه شعری میخوندم بله ولی کلش از بچگیه از بچگی و شرکت،, شرکت کردن در محافلی که شعرا بودن و اشعارای مختلف میخوندن این عاملش بود که من بتونم یه مقداری به شعر علاقه من بشم بله. شانس ما هم هست که الانه for free مجانی مجانی اینجا شما دارین برای ما یه شوه واقعا پرده اجرام میکنم خیلی مرشد هست من یه چیز بگم اینترافت کنم بگو از این 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 بگو unreal his memory is that of an elephant i don't get it i've never understood it it's like 
from childhood days, years and years and years. So it's not just poetry. I think he truly has this talent. Of course, he applies it to, to poetry because he likes it, but the memory is unreal. <laughs> Sarah, are you, Sajjan, are you oh, inspired at all? I'm completely inspired, but when I start to think through any of this, I'm like, oh God, I, I, this, is, this takes an act of God to try. I was I just mean... gonna say, we're going to demand you start our yes. later meetings with poetry but, readings. Now. You know, I, mentioned, I mentioned earlier that he has multiple passions. Poetry is one and exercise and fitness is the other. I, I tend to lean towards that one. The poetry side, I can't. I was going to say, sister, maybe. I was going to say, it's the same thing. He's exercising his brain. You're exercising your body. Same That's thing. Right. You're both That's exercising. Right. It's the brain muscle that I'm lacking. In, That's <laughs> <laughs> No. این وصیت یه شاهره که الان در کالیفرنیا زنده است میگه آخرش از عشق وطن همین روزا دق میکنم آخرش از عشق وطن همین روزا دق میکنم وصیت عاشقیم و پیش تو عاشق میکنم خاکم و بردار رو ببر میگه آتیش کم بزنید خاکم و بردار رو ببر تو خاک مرز پرگوهر بگو تصدق سرش بریز هوا صبح سهر بگو بیاید نگاش کنید بگو بیاید نگاش کنید مردش اومده از سفر اینه سزای عاشقی زنده و مردش در به در اینه سزای عاشقی زنده و مردش در به در اینم یه قطعه کوچیکی بود نه دیگه قرار نبود من اگه اینجوری ببینم گریه کنید دیگه این شیرهای کوپی براتون نمیخونم حالا یه بشت که خوشحال بشن نه ولی این آهنگای وطنی هنده دیگه دور it hits different آقای کادری it hits different right now چون الان موقع حساسیه بله الان موقع حساسیه بله بله دقیقا درست میگید دقیقا درست میگید من در هر صورت از اینکه براتون شعر میخونم خودم خوشحالم ولی نمیخوام نمیخوام ناراحتتون کنم نارا حتی نیست یه آهنگ میدونی من آدم های وطن پرست هستیم شاید اونجا مثل شما تجربه هایی که شما داشتی نداشتیم و شاید قم با قم شما فرق داره چون شما وقتی که حرف ایران رو میزنیم و حرف زندگی که داشتیم و میتونستیم همه اون داشته باشیم لمسش کردیم ما هی راجعه به گذشته حرف بر میگیم آخ ای کاش اینطوری بید شما میدونیم چه جوری بود میدونیم چی بود و میدونیم چی از دست دادیم و این خیلی شاید ترشتر و سختتر و سیاحتر باشه برای تو میدونیم ما لمسش نکردیم بیا سو تو یه خود گوشه کارو میتونم این چیزی پیدا کنم بکنم خوشحال بسیم الان که نمیتونم اینجا برشون بخونم چرا؟ حالا یه فرصت دیگه الان We have so, paid his fees. <laughs> Sorry, June, clearly. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to یه سوالی ازتون بکنم که الان شاید هم برای نوروز جالب باشه و هم برای دیگران که دارن گوش میدن شما وقتی از ایران خارج شدین اون سال اول اول یا شاید نه سال اول ولی مثلا تو پنج سال اول که زندگی رو اینجا داشتین تشکیل میدادین و یه شکل دیگه بود میدونین obviously I forget that there are English language speakers here so when you first came to North America obviously you're trying to create a new life but obviously take parts of the old with you what was the most important tradition 
or what were some of the most valuable traditions and lessons that you wanted to impart on your daughters that you believe that they've kept yeah. alive all these years? Dafe buzurgi dashim sefan ham man ham khanum ham shogl khubi dashim dar Iran va sahib zindagi budim. Sefan chun man tu ye banke budam یکی از دوستانم که در مقام بالاتری بود همیشه به من میگفت ستاره و ساره رو اینجا نگردشتی برای چی؟ میخوای مثل دختر من بشم اون دخترش خیلی موفق بود تو درس و بهترین کنکورا رو قبول میشد ولی میرفت برای مصاحبه ردش میکردن از از سآل میکردن که بابای تو کروات میزنه مثلا اونم گفته بچه آره بابای من کروات میزنه بابای تو نماز میخونه مثلا گفته نه بچه بوده حقیقت رو میگفته در صورت اون موقع ردش میکردن نمیذاشتن بره تو دانشگاه نتیجه این به من گفتش که تو اینجا موندی که این دو تا دخترت هم مثل دختر من بشن گفتم خب چیکار کنم آقای سنجری کاملی سنجری بود گفت ورشون دار برو خلاص ما افتادیم تو این فکر رو رفتیم ترکیه و ویزا گرفتیم به همه ما ویزا دادن و اومدیم میامه همین میامه پیاده شدیم من اون موقعی چیز در رو دهیده ایجده هزار دلار پول داشتم و این پولم در عرض چار پنی ماه رفت دیگه خودم شروع کردم کار کردن خانومم هم یه مقدار خیاطی وارد بود و شروع کرد به خیاطی کردن و سعی کردیم هدفمون همون بود که دخترها رو بفرستیم یه جایی که برای خودشون یه شغل محترم و از شبه که در جامعه پذیرا باشم داشته باشم که الان به اینجا رسیدم ما هم سخت کار کردیم هدفم بود کار کردن روزی 15-16 ساعت هم خودم هم خانوم هم کار میکردم که به این نقطه که الان هستیم برسیم و خدا رو شد که رسیدیم و از این جهت بسیار خوشحال هستم هدف ما در اون زمان این بود این بود که بچه هامونو از اون جهنم نجات بدیم که الان هر دوتاشون از این جهت خوشحال هستن و از من و مادرشون تشکر میکنم این هدف بود حالا چه چیزایی از ایران مثلا چه کارهایی که تو ایران میخواد از این... اینجا ادامه بدیم که از دست نزدیم از دست ندیم از ایرانی بودن بله از ایران که اومدم اینجا صرفا از اون اول هدفم این بود که به بچه هم فارسی یادشون نده بتونن فارسی صحبت کنن و تا اونجایی که در قدرت من بود سعی کردیم بچه همون رو بفرسیم که هم کلاس فارسی برن هم خودمون تو خونه باشون فارسی صحبت کنیم که بتونن این چیزی که دارن حفظش کنن و از این جهت هم خوشبختانه موفق بودیم چون الان نه تنها بچه ها مساره و ستاره خیلی به فارسی مسلط هستن نوم و سبام به فارسی مسلطه از این جهت خیلی خوشحالم و نمیخواستم اون فرهنگ ایرانی رو اینا از یادشون بره که خوشبختانه به یادشون مونده بود و یه چیزایی یه موقع از من سوال میکردن هم من هم مادرشون جواب بو بودیم و خوشبختانه تونستیم اون چی که میخواستیم اینا قبول کنن و دنبالش بگیرن و موفق باشن و این فکر, فکر میکنین از کجا میاد؟ In in uh, oh, the, in English, where do you think it comes from? This desire mm-hmm. to to indoctrinate our language and our culture. Because I had the same. My parents, when we came here, I went to Persian school. They spoke only Persian in the house, and it was really important. And it was never said that one day we're going to go home. Right. It wasn't like that. But I think in the back of their heart, in the back of all Iranian parents' heart, one day we will get to go home. Is that something well, that was real for you? Well, this issue for me and my mother was very important. Because we saw that people came out of the country, now it was not only America, it was Europe, it was other places. They came out of Iran, 
اصالت رو حفظ نمی کردم. من خیلی به این مسئله اهمیت می دادم که اصالت فرهنگ ایرانی در ایرانی در خارج از کشور باشه از این جهت همونجا که گفتید سعیم بر این بود همیشه سعی می کردم که اون خصوصیاتی که یک ایرانی اصیل میتونه داشته باشه بچه های من از اون برخوردار باشن از این جهت من از کارم خیلی راضیم I have a better in person that you can tell that she is just absolutely brilliant and it the apple didn't fall yeah. far, far, far from the tree except she doesn't we're going to we're going to start, we're gonna start gonna that to every about. Wednesday she's going to sit she's going to yes sorry june but har charshanbe baramo share begi az in beba we're going to just you need to continue in yeah. the tradition of your Man, father setara ro vaqti om when i bring my sister setara to introduce you guys this could be what she picks up but i have other strengths she can pick up on the poetry <laughs> side and keep that going don't set me up for failure she can do it i'll okay. struggle <laughs> <laughs> all right guys no i think it's better she's with gus did you guys have another session to talk about i know ivan said he's coming back around 7:30 to pick up and keep going yes so there's 3 minutes left i think we could talk about facts we could talk about history we could talk about tradition uh sarajun based on everything that your father said obviously he's somebody who is very much connected to his traditions to his roots like so many of us are but unlike him who we haven't had that we didn't grow up in it Um so I would love to know as the daughter of somebody who has who holds their cultural tradition so strongly and that you did grow up so close to them what are your greatest takeaways that you're passing down to your daughter even though sometimes and I'm not saying she gives you pushback but sometimes kids get pushback like oh mom come on you know what's yeah, important no, for I you think, to pass you on know, there's certain characteristics about uh, the Iranian culture that go unsaid of course there's our history which quite frankly Sabo and I are learning together i feel like with you paris june just just thinking about how much you alone have taught me in the last several months there's so much of i'm serious like you need you're so humble but you need to take credit for that i learn from you every time you open your mouth and i look forward to learning more so actually sabo and i learning that together and you know we we enroll in a virtual uh persian class and there's history being taught there so i look forward to learning that with her but the other parts of our culture that go somewhat uns- unsaid kind of the kindness of our hearts the compassion the giving nature of being iranian these are things that saba sees innately from first my my parents you know as her grandparents she's seen it since she was you know since she was born and so she as shy as she is when it comes to giving and empathy and kindness she embodies it like i can see it in her and those are the things that i look forward to making sure she sees the good parts of our character and you know parishun as you have as you as you have taught me kind of the 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 basic unity that everyone in iran is iranian and there is no you know minorities if you will and 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 kind of like separations and by nature and in our it, like iranian asliz like there is no separations in who we are we are all iranian and i love that and it's so unique to who we are as a, as an iranian people and i really want to share that with her i really am most excited to make sure she knows that because some of you know that i've been so like i really feel passionate about systemic racism and you know the minority groups and underrepresentation here in the united states that i definitely find it interesting that doesn't exist in iran so i can share that with her iman is giving gave a cut off like pull her off <laughs> <laughs> so sorry I was trying to oh, yeah, I was trying to like a dancing move you know but um no, no, no. I, I apologize for cutting you off I just I want to make sure that I get Aram as much uh, opportunity uh Parishun Monajun Sarajun I cause me thank you so much you gave me 30 minutes with my family I really appreciate it and hasra boshin I cause me umidvaram ke baad mai bashan ke shoma huzuran biyan shera ro va shoma begin inja khali mamnun mishun agar ittefaq bedin Or... 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 
All right, ladies, thank you so much. Much love. We'll be in touch via chat. It's time to welcome another Nagvi sister. Well, not another, but a Nagvi sister. Um, I love how we have so many sister combinations here. You know, this is becoming a family affair. Uh, earlier, we had Mona Jun, Mona Nagvi, and now it's Aram Nagvi. And she's, um, she's going to be able to talk about something that we don't really talk about uh, much, but is an extremely important element of our growth as a community. So she's going to be able to explain that. Hi, detail. how are you? Happy how are you, you Arjun? Good no, to see you. Happy New Year to you too. No, Ruzum Piruz. Uh, how many Persian oh. New Year wine glasses are you in right now? <laughs> we don't need to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> One or two. Thank you so much for making time on this special day. You all have been enjoying uh, an awesome mother daughter time. Absolute so pleasure. thanks for making time to be a part of this program. So the reason why I wanted to make sure that I have you on here, not just because you're the newest member to the Uniters family, um, but you know, you just recently got this new job that uh, about six months ago, and it seems to be giving opportunities to impactful or, or, or social impactful organizations, such as United Conquer, for example. Um, and so I wanted you to kind of just talk about it, first of all, just so I can get educated and just to kind of let other people know that there's so much opportunities out there if you look for it. So uh, give people a little background about sure. that, if you don't mind. Yeah, I mean, I've become there. involved in um, the nonprofit space recently, but working in particularly to support entrepreneurs who are pushing for social change. So that includes activism and organizing, just like the work that's happening at Unite and Conquer, but it also includes entrepreneurship that's oriented towards um, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which are any goals supporting a free and equal society around the world. So, um, all the work that you're doing, for example, with Bakhcha, bringing the United, um, Iranian community together, building a sense of community, bringing support and solidarity and, and anything to a society that's, or a culture that's been fractured or oppressed in any way supports that initiative. And there is so much funding out there for organizations like United and Conquer and other organizations that are supporting um, the work that people like us are doing. And um, I think it's really important in this moment when... Um, Oftentimes in activism, there can be a lull, there's ebbs and flows between moments of really high activity and moments where people take a break to kind of recuperate and to, and to it seems like the momentum's kind of going down, but it goes back up again. And in these times, I think it's really crucial for us in the diaspora to use whatever resources we have to build the kind of infrastructures that we need to become stronger as a community outside Iran so that we can support our brothers and sisters back home in Iran. Um, and I'm sure that there, we are so many people in the diaspora and we have so many resources available to us, whatever we can do to pull those resources together, the stronger we can become as a community and the more we can help. Um. So out of curiosity, what, what are some of the factors that you see at Unite and Conquer that you're like, you know what, this is exactly what I'm doing for other organizations that have different type of impact that they're making. They're like, wow, I want to make sure that the organization that's helping our people in Iran that they get it. What 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 are certain elements of United and Conquer that you believe sure. falls onto this so, category? So, this category? Um, just being at this wonderful event um, that you threw for Noruz the other day, seeing the sense of community and solidarity and sort of rallying together around a common cause that's particularly oriented towards not only um, helping people in Iran, but also supporting each other and building a sense of community. That's exactly the kind of space that um, many organizations want to fund and want to support because ultimately, um, community is really what drives everybody forward and community is what brings people together and supporting each other's businesses supporting each other's initiatives having each other's back these are the kind of infrastructures that we can build that will help us to have a space that we can hold together to invite other people from outside the diaspora in and also to be sort of a, a pivot point for people outside the diaspora to connect with people back home in Iran so I think that's just really important so I really commend the work you know that you're doing Thank you so much. You know what I think? I think yes. you should call it diaspora rallying, as Mona just reminded me. Rallying for common cause. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a word that we we heard this word for the first time uh, yesterday. So thank you for bringing that to attention. Um, you know, speaking of sense of belonging and community, yesterday when we were on the balcony with the beautiful view from Mona's apartment, um, you know, And 
to the point where you're about to leave one of the greatest cities on earth to come to another place because of this. So tell us more about what's going on in your mind and heart. Sure. I mean, I've, I've grown up sort of here and there outside Iran. I was born right after the revolution. I've been bouncing around my whole life and I've never really had a sense of community. I mean, I had my family in Iran who were very strong and connected and I'm very connected to them, but they're all very far away from me. And coming to this community in Miami and seeing um, this sort of blossoming friendships and people who are looking after each other and caring about the same things and cherishing our culture and our heritage. Um, it's something that I've never experienced in my life outside Iran and I think it's really special and it's what we've all been missing those of us in diaspora where we have such a sense of longing for our communities and a place where we can feel safe um, among people who who think like us and feel like us and care about the same things and and that has just been so heartwarming to be to be welcomed into this community so and for that I also thank you and and the wider community at large I love it I mean this is like truly like it's always been one of the main reasons of why I wanted to start Unite and Conquer and selfishly because the same thing that you're yearning for and many of us are yearning for outside of Iran, I was yearning for it and I decided to kind of like, you know, be more involved in this thing because I was like, I need to find, I need to create the community that I'm yearning for, you know? And so uh, slowly but surely seeing so many other people that are finding a place at Unite and Conquer, like it just warms my heart. It like, it fills my soul up because I'm like, man, so I feel like um, it's like a piece yeah. of the puzzle coming together. You know, it's like, I, I, it's like I'm, I'm a lost piece of puzzle and th these other uniters are lost pieces of puzzle and together exactly. we kind of become whole, you know? And so we have the uniters that are in South Florida, uh, but then really it's a whole Iranian community as a whole. So you don't have to be an active member of United and Conquer to feel this way. We have this connect connectivity with many people that have been joining throughout the program today and just our online community. And it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing to, to see. Absolutely. Like, to yeah, I mean, we're all fractured and we're all kind of floating around. And like what we really need is a thread to tie us all together. And that's exactly the kind of work that United Conquer is doing. So more, please, and keep it coming. Love it. Yeah, so we, we try, we're, we're, thank you. We're trying to be the glue. And then we just need somebody to kind of help with the finances to really put that extra layer of, of protection mm -hmm. around it to yeah. kind of bring it all together. Um, I, I, I want you to kind of, um, I mean, I asked Mona June and she said that there was no, do you have any um, memories I, of Nowruz? Have you experienced Nowruz in, in, in Iran? Because uh, we didn't have school holidays during that time, but I remember that I got to take the day off school and that was amazing. And then my grandparents would call and then we would get to talk to them long distance, which was, you know, it was really expensive back then. So it didn't happen very often. And now it was always like a really special moment, like being able to hear my grandparents' voice on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> the, the 10 minutes of, hello, 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 hello. What what um, Noru's wishes do you have for your compatriots? What message of hope do you have for Iranians or um, any Iranian around the world? I'm going to say that 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 I'm going And until that happens, we're going to keep fighting. Oh, okay. I love it. That was I, I'm, that was so beautiful how you said it in Persian, and that is true. Like we're not stopping the fight. I feel like the ones that started this fight and their intentions were pure. There's no we reason to stop because going our until mission we get is not it done. You know? and so. always. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Now, if you do go back to, um, let's say, next time you go back to Iran and Iran is free. What is the first thing you're going to do when you get to Iran? What city are you going to go to? Sure. Is there a particular place? Is so there a particular I'm going to person gonna... um, get together with all my cousins and we're going to go gather in my in my cousin's house in Ahar. It's in a little village outside Tehran in the mountains. And we always get together and we eat food and we dance and we sing and we just have a ball. So I can't wait till the next time I can do that. Love it. Love it. Well, hopefully it'll be for Nuru's next time. So. Like that's, that's really what we're... Uh... We're, we're hoping for is that we don't we don't want to be doing this anymore uh it's great to do it this time around to do some diaspora rallying which really what this is it this is what it's all about but um hopefully by next year we're, we're definitely 100%. celebrating and just <laughs> popping some bottles and celebrate thank you so much Aram Jo for for wanting to be more involved with our united conquer you really are going to be filling a void that we desperately need because um you know when it comes to content creation and social media, 
which is really right now the major focus of Unite and Conquer. Of course, we're trying to do in-person events, whether it's in Miami or DC or New York or wherever it may be. Uh, the place that we really can reach millions of people instead of gathering 50, 80, a couple hundred, it's going to be through online creation of content. And that's really where um, funding and grants and stuff would be a huge, huge injection. So thank you in advance for, for doing all that, that hard work to hopefully uh, get us the right connection. I'm hoping that we can make some great things happen together. Wonderful. Well, I'm proud of you. And I hope that very soon you become <laughs> a, a Floridian as well. We, we would want nothing better than to have a second Natalie. And then hopefully your mom will join as well. And then we got the whole squad over here, you know. So, um, yeah. Thank you. En enjoy watching White Balloon. You know, have the popcorn. Send my best to Penny, please. I want to tickle her stomach as well. It sounds so weird dog. if somebody doesn't know it's a dog. But, yes, it is, it is a cute dog. But uh, no, no boys, boys, no boys, no boys, no boys, no Take care. All right. So that was uh, another lovely lady where we're surrounded with uh, some incredible women that are doing some awesome stuff. They're fighting for their fellow uh, Iranian sisters. You know, this entire movement was begun, uh, you know, by, by women, the first woman led rev uh, revolution. And um, we're just doing our part to to make sure we make a difference. Um, at about uh, 7.45 in three minutes, we're gonna have an incredible artist. Her name is Sharare Shakamian, who's gonna be joining us. But what I'm gonna do is another one of the resets. If you've been around uh, all day long, you know that every hour or so, I've been doing a quick pause, uploading on Instagram, so that we can have the full video to put on YouTube. So do me a favor. When I click end, the show is not done. We're going to 11, 11 p.m. Eastern. We have some awesome guests still coming up. I want you to be a part of it. So please, I'm going to log off, but join me back in about two minutes. And our next guest is going to be Sharare, an incredible artist that I want to make sure you meet. All right. Welcome, everybody. This is part eight of our 12-hour live stream, the celebration of Nowruz. It's been a long but uh, beautiful program so far, at least from my perspective. I hope that um, you've been enjoying it. I hope you've been getting inspired and motivated by some of the great guests that we've been having throughout the entire program. And in just a few seconds, as soon as, as, soon as she joins us, we're going to be having an artist. Her name is Shararea Shakamian. I hope I pronounced it correctly. I've actually never had the opportunity to meet her uh, or speak to her as far as on video, but we've been chatting on social media and what drew, drew me to her page was the fact that she was using her art, passion, and skills, and talent to essentially draw um, our compatriots that have um, lost their lives in this revolution. Uh, Sherijun, please click the plus sign uh, inside of the camera at the bottom. Click on that button so that you can request to join so I can bring you into um, the IG Live. So it's right at the bottom. Click the plus button and then request to join. But yeah, so if you go on her page, and she'll come in a, in a second, and I encourage you to follow her page, um, you're going to be pretty impressed by what she's been doing. And in their level of skill or experience or talent or passion to bring awareness. And Shadar is one of those individuals. So I'm so grateful to have her here today. Hi. 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 Mr. Paolo, fun do Britain. Yes, I'll be in point. Oh, perfect. Okay, yes, yes. Hey, you can Let's tell I've never done this before, so. No, no problem. You look lovely, and your pieces of, uh, ma your masterpieces uh, are, are a beautiful you. backdrop. Uh, uh, I hope you can join us in the next few minutes. I hope you can join us in the next few minutes. And I hope you can or at least wishing them a new year. Thank you so much for being a part of our program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I want to thank you for this long day for you i know i've been hopping on and off all day to kind of uh watch you uh, very impressive i really appreciate all the work you're doing for our community thank you so much it's our pleasure we have a lot of awesome uniters that have been helping throughout the whole program it's not been a one person thing but uh but thank you so much so shout out for for those who are not familiar uh with you and your background uh take a couple of minutes and just say a little bit more about uh yourself and then 
what led you to make these incredible pieces of art that's behind you? Of course. Um, I came here before the 1978 revolution. Uh, so I've been here for very long. So when the whole revolution started, my plan was come here, study and go back like so many other Iranians, right? Uh, but unfortunately, didn't happen. Um, I'm an artist by profession. So that's all I do. I don't do anything else. And um, I've been teaching for 27 years, teaching art for 27 years. Um, if you look at my previous artwork, my artwork has always been about women. Um, a lot of women to empower women, to give them a freedom of doing whatever they want, wear whatever they want, dance if they want, sing if they want. So I've been trying always to empower women. But now more than ever, my work is relevant. Um, at the time that the hijab was mandatory in Iran and everybody had to cover themselves and only you know, show their faces, my work was completely the opposite. My women had no faces. And that's why, because I didn't want to talk to about the particular woman, it was for all the women to show their movement and freedom. Um, about five months ago, my whole work changed as a lot of our lives changed. Um, and I am not a portrait artist and I never did this before, but I did Mahsa Amini's portrait and I got such a wonderful response that um, I decided to continue. I decided to continue and draw more and unfortunately every day we had more. We had the Nika, we had uh, Serena, we had you know, Hami Dressa, so we have so many of them. And um, I decided to draw them and try to contact the families in Iran and send them the digital artwork that I have done and let them know that they're not alone. We feel their pain um, and we, you know, share their sorrow. Um, and that's what I have been doing, actually. I have done over almost 20 pieces so far all my artwork started very small. It was eight and a half by 11. And uh, now it's 18 by 24. It's almost a you know, life size. Um, it's very draining. It's very emotional. Uh, it's very hard to look at these eyes that you know they would never open. Um, but I have been continuing. And I get such an overwhelming response from Iranian. I get messages all the time from Iran. Um, they send me picture of their loved ones that they lost. There's so many of them we don't even know. I've never seen these pictures. I don't know who they are. They haven't been on the media. Um, it is really heartbreaking. It's really heartbreaking. Um, but at the same time, these parents thank me for what I'm doing. It's just unbelievable. You know, I decided to do a portrait um, in pencil and black and white, because I think that created the mood instead of doing something in color. Um, and I think it's a nice way of honoring the people that we have lost and maybe put a smile on that parent or a mother or a sister for even one second. I have um, older children of my own. I can't even imagine living one day without them. I don't know what these families are going through. And it's really heartbreaking for me. Yeah, you know, I get... So many people here told me, oh, stop doing these drawings. They're so, uh, you know, sad and it's going to make you depressed. But it's the reality that all the Iranians are living right now. You know, it is true. A few minutes ago, I was joining live with all these parents. Everybody's at the cemetery. You know, we can't ignore that. We can't ignore that. So my hope is to do as many as I can. Hopefully, I don't have to do too many. Uh, you know, they take a long time to finish, but uh, hopefully I have an exhibit to show all my work because I would love for people to see them. Well, I mean, first of all, I, I really commend you for um, taking this initiative to do this and taking on this emotional turmoil that goes with it. It's not just a time that it takes artistically, but it's, it's, it's a draining experience, you know, to, to have to look at the pictures and into the eyes of these innocent souls that we've lost, you know? So really, um, as, as, a, as a fellow Iranian, I just want to extend my gratitude yeah. and my love Thank and appreciation you. For, for, you, for, for you doing this, you know? And um, I think, I think it's, a, it's a tremendous way to honor them. And I, I'm, 
I'm not surprised that their family members are so grateful for you to doing this and, and other Iranians are showering you with much deserved love for what you're doing. So thank, thank you, you for that. Um, I, I want to kind of uh, take a step back because you mentioned that, you know, you, you've been always doing artwork that empowers women. What, what was the catalyst behind that? Why, why have you been doing this for such a long time? You know, because when I came here, 1978 revolution started and women had to cover themselves, you know, the, a lot of freedom was taken away from them. And I was here and I had all this freedom, you know, like every other woman around the world, except in Iran. And it wasn't only that you're covering your hair. A lot of other freedom was taken away from women. And uh, that's all I wanted to express. And this, you know, throughout the years, we kind of got used to the situation and uh, we didn't think about all that stuff. So every time you're dancing, you know, somebody cannot dance in Iran, right? You have to be in the four walls of your own home. You, you have to sit separate in the bus. You know, you can be on the beach at the same time. So it's a lot of that stuff um, was affecting me. You know, even though I've been here 44 years, I never thought this will affect me as much, but I know you've been here for so long. It's, uh, it's hard, it's hard for all of us. So, you know, and for, as an artist, I think our emotion are in a little bit, maybe deeper level. <laughs> Things affect us a little bit differently. Um, so I, that, that was- I feel like, sorry to cut you off, but I feel like you are um, a soldier that has been fighting this for 43, 44 years. And like, it's all coming full circle right now because right now you're, you're seeing that the entire world is also supporting exactly what you've been, you know, yeah. being an artist about and, yeah. and you trying know, to convey. You know, of my artwork is something I've done in 1978, actually. Amazing. Uh, and then it's coming back right now. So back then was a black and white lithograph print and now I put it on canvas. And everybody relate to that, even though this is, you know, something I've been, I've been doing. And this is the only voice I had. As an artist, we all, you know, have a certain voice. You know, I'm not a poet, I'm not a writer. I don't have any other, uh, any other way that I could help. And this was my only voice. Where are you located, Shadra John? I live in Northern California. Northern California. Yeah. Well, first of all, I hope that in the near future that you do have this exhibit so that uh you know iranians and non-iranians can come and see these pieces thank you uh, hopefully it's when iran is free but i feel like you should do this sooner than later <laughs> you know because i think i think having an exhibition will bring even more attention to what it is that you're doing and uh, i can tell you right now that if you do the exhibition you have me and our uniters full support to be able to spread thank the you. news so that you have an opportunity and maybe we can even work together on on making it happen. I mean, event oh, production, what we do. Anybody's and, listening. You know, I was invited for some of the different organizations, but I don't want to display this, just be part of something else. I think just to honor them, it needs to be just yeah, about sure. them and not sure. about sure. anything else. Well, um, yeah, I, I hope that the right opportunity comes and I feel like you, 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 your, your moral compass is in the right place and your gut will tell you where and when to present it. But just know that we're here to support it in any capacity because your, your pieces of art need to be seen by millions of people around the world um, because it's, a, it's the greatest way that you can honor them and you've done it in a spectacular fashion. In the, in the remaining couple of minutes, um, I'd love for you to share a Noru's message with your compatriots. If you have a message of hope for Iran or Iranians, uh, please feel free to share it. Well you know, my only hope and my wish for this new year is just a free Iran, like every other Iranian right now. Um, and I wish that everyone have a he healthy and happy new year. And maybe if we all unite and we're all together, we can help our country. From, yeah. your, from your mouth to God's ears. Well, I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what the next phase for you is as an artist uh, that is uh, spending her entire life to basically being the voice of women and now especially Iranian women and just Iranians in general. So okay. on behalf of all Iranians, thank you so much for what you've been doing and what you continue to do. I hope that you will not have to do too many of these paintings. Exactly. Uh, That's so that, the same wish I have. So if, if, yeah. Thank you, Imanja. I, I, thank you so much. No, I, I'm very curious on a closing note. Let's hope that Iran is free 
when you go to Iran, what is the first thing that you're going to do? I am going to go visit some of the places that these people are in. Oh. That is part of my plan. And uh, uh, Dr. Khuda behind me, her family got my permission and her drawing that I've done is etched on her stone. Um, what an honor for me. And that is honestly my plan to go and visit. That's in incredible. Well, yeah. for anybody here that has not had the pleasure of getting to know Shadow, I hope that you do follow her page. And uh, as an artist, I'm sure she would appreciate a wide range of support to make sure that her art is displayed and shown uh, to as many people as possible. And as you can tell by the quality of work, it really deserves to be seen by all. So Shadow, thank you again. And thank you for spending a few moments of yeah. your uh, important notice to be with us. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. The boss for the office. See, that, that was incredible. And I, I hope that um, I hope that some of you get a chance to go check out her page and and see her pictures. And what a sweet, sweet, sweet woman. And I'm, I'm glad that I finally got to connect with her after a couple of months of back and forth on Instagram. Um, up next, ladies and gentlemen, we have another one of our uniters. Her name is Katya Yunifadahani. Uh, she joined our efforts here in South Florida uh, from the very beginning. She was very active and helping in, um, in organizing uh, all, the, all the protests that we were organizing in South Florida. Um, she's an incredible mother of two beautiful twin girls. And um, I wanted to make sure that I have as many uniters coming on to the stream so that I can spotlight them, highlight them, uh, and, and give them the, the, the flowers that they deserve. You know, it's, it's everything that we're doing at United Conquer has been solely possible because of so many different people um, that have invested a tremendous amount of time and heart and devotion into uh, building a community and, and raising awareness to what's happening in Iran. So Katarin is one of those people. So Katarin Jun, if you're on, Hit that request to join button and we'll get you on. Uh, and then at 8.30, we have Mandane Khazrai, the incredible vocalist and artist. Uh, and then we're going to have another segment by Mona Hayri, Paris, and Shiva. And then at 9.15 Eastern time, we're going to have Nima Adrakhani. He is the founder of Lavoshak Lovers, Lavoshak.com. I, I think Lavoshak.com is probably the greatest Iranian website URL name that you could possibly think of. And he's turned that great URL into an amazing business. He was an awesome supporter of our Bakhcha event this past weekend, uh, donating so many of his delicious lava shacks. So I can't wait to talk to him. And then DJ Kia at 9.30, Dr. Sam at 10 o'clock. We got Matthew Nuriel at 10.30. And the party continues. But here comes Katayun. So please help me welcome Katayun. In three, two, one. Hi, Katayun. Hello, hello. New Year. Thank you, Aziz. Appreciate it. Piruz, Haruzatun, Noruz, Hobasi. Thank you, Aziz. How was your day? Amazing. Good. It was a great day. You spent it with the family? Yes. My family, my daughters. My family, unfortunately, you know, they're all in Germany. That's right. A lot, but yeah. I spend a lot of time with my daughters that are right here. <laughs> Say hi to the lovely ladies. You know, you spend quality time with the family in, in Christmas, and yeah. hopefully you get to go back to Germany and spend some quality time with them. Exactly. Um, so, so first and foremost, Catherine, what, what is, when was the last time that you were in Iran? Uh, the last time I actually went to see my grandma because I loved her so much. And, uh, like, I started... Be getting emotional when I even talk about her. Um, I have so many memories with her, so I went to Iran to see her for the last time because I knew she's sick. Wow. That was in 2011. That was wow, so 12, 12, 12, 13 years ago. Do you, right. do you have any memories of Nowruz in Iran? Oh, a lot. I grew up in Iran. What? I was 13 when I was what, what is what is what is t Share one of your fondest memories of Nowruz. For those of us who've never spent Nowruz, in Iran, share a beautiful story. Um, I don't have a uh, particular story, but I have a lot of memories of going to my grandma's house 
and getting to people's homes and scratching their doors. <laughs> I don't Scratch know if you, their doors. you don't know that. No. So back then you would go to places for Aide Dani. So you would say hi, even if you would stay five minutes, 10 minutes. So my whole family, let's say 50 families, they lived close by. So we would go to each houses Dani, and we would get the money the kids would get the money so if they were not home we would ride on their doors with something we can I, i'm not lying to you we would lie we would ride on their doors we came you were not oh, home oh my god I, like, I actually was thinking about it that how crazy was that's, that they lived that's destruction of property <laughs> you can get sued for that in this country yes <laughs> i mean not me my parents and i remember I would see all of the doors having the messages on them. That was funny. And also my grandma used to make this um, mixture of sweets. It was a, a powder that I loved so much. It called Caflame. I don't know if you guys know about it, but oh my God, that one was so yummy. I, I used to love it. That's, that's the biggest memory I have. You know, I, I never thought about how... Um... No rules for children. It's it seems to be like Halloween here, exactly. but instead of going around to exactly. getting candy, you're getting cash, and then basically if you're not behind the door, you're paying the ultimate price. You have to replace <laughs> the door. Yes, the door. Yeah. And yeah, I like, would love. I love. I used to love. Um, I would always practice. You know the Iranian money. We have a bunch of money when you get a lot of money, and I used to pretend to be my mom and my dad and counting them. I used to love that. Used to and we knew friends. exactly who is the greedy one in the family who gives you a lot of <laughs> a lot of AD. And there I was, was like, a lot. There was no, a lot of people getting go. exposed. Yeah. <laughs> And I would say, no, let's not go to that Amu. He's, he's too greedy. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, it was very funny. That's a great memory. I learned something new. about. Oh, yeah. what I, see, this, this is the thing. Like, so many of us um, have never experienced it. And, like, these are the little things that we, we have no clue about. And for you, yeah. it's probably shocking that somebody doesn't know about it. But, like, yeah. you just, you know, you know, there's so many. That's why I keep on asking everybody who has spent no rules in Iran oh, to kind of God. share some stories, you know? And then the, besides the fact that everything we would wear the first day of the new year, the first moment before it would be so tahvir, everything has to be new. Everything had to be new. Of course, yeah. Even the socks, the socks, the, the shoes, everything. So everybody was with brand new clothes. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it was an expensive time for the parents, basically. Yes. Yeah. Um, so so let, let's kind of let's talk about your your involvement at Unite and Conquer. Um, yeah. Tell us tell us about just just be, being a part of this Uniters family and why why you decided to get involved and how it has impacted you in any shape or form. Um, talk talk to me about that. So um, the way I started was that I had the pleasure to meet your your mom. <laughs> And you, bef right before, right before the revolution started, and, um, and the purpose was working together because your mom is a facialist, and I'm in real estate and yoga and Pilates. We wanted to combine all of these businesses and create something big. And um, all of a sudden, um, Mahsa Amini was um, killed, and uh, we were contacted by you, and or I, I contacted you. I don't remember. Uh, someone organized something and we decided to put it together and I remember I wanted to be in there and help uh, no matter what and I remember the first time I walked into your event and the, or, or first rally I saw um, people being so emotional I remember Sara being having the microphone in her hand and, and even though we didn't have we didn't even know each other yeah. we were so supportive and oh my god I get goosebumps thinking about it mm -hmm. so I was from the beginning, I was with, from the bottom of my heart um, um, involved. I wanted to be involved, even though, as a matter of fact, um, I couldn't be as involved as, as you guys were. You guys are um, amazing, amazing. But um, it's, it's just uh, um, sacrificing your, your time, your money, and all of energy you put in there. It's unbelievable. I love that. And... I appreciate and I'm, I'm feeling honored to be part of it. So why, why do you think that you wanted to be so involved? Because, I mean, 
you were yes you, you know you were, you were busy with a lot of stuff but you've been definitely one of the most active people in the last six months as well why did you have such a need to do something and be involved <laughs> Um, okay, so I get very emotional because I grew up in Iran. I, I lived in Iran. I know what's going on in Iran, like a lot of other people. And I, it's, for me, it's the most amazing, par amazing part is that seeing people that have never lived in Iran being so involved in this. For me, I was arrested. I, I actually didn't want to mention it, but the last, last time I went to see my grandma, um, at the airport, I was almost arrested because they didn't agree with my appearance. Um, even as a child, I would be always stop on the street, put your hair in, and um, even in the school, being um, not having the freedom if you want to, you would like to learn the the, the religious stuff or not. I think it, the, this stuff should be by choice. You should not be forced. Um, my parents were um, my parents were arrested. And I remember my mom, my mom and my dad, they were not religious ever. So they had like, they were adults. And then because they were said, out of fear, they started learning namaz, you know, how to pray. And they were at home adults. And I was, I was maybe seven years old, eight years old. And I was wondering what my parents are doing. Why are you learning Corona all of a sudden learning how to, how to pray? But they were scared of sepah. They, they arrested them, they um, emotionally um, tortured them, they separated them, um, crazy. So I lived it, I know how it is to be, um, to be there. So I would, that my goal was, even if I have the smallest impact, even if I can help a little bit and have an impact to help my people, my women in Iran, and not only in Iran, in Afghanistan, anywhere, I'm all for women, for freedom, also for men, of course. Um, I would fight even was in the game from even with my life. I would do it. I always say if, if I was in Iran, I would be already dead. <laughs> um, how much of a influence in you being active is brought upon the fact that you have two young daughters as well? Like, how much does that make an impact? Um, so they see me. Right, that's what uh, that's the, so monkey see, monkey do. Right, my daughters are. Uh, last time I was at the rally because I actually thought they're not very interested. I I um, was concerned to um, I didn't want them to feel obligated to go with me. They would always come and support me because they love me. But then the last time I saw the anger in their eyes and and they're talking about it. They're um. She was singing the songs, even though they prefer not to speak Farsi that much, that she was singing the songs so beautifully. I, I was so proud. So it has a big impact on my kids. Yes, it does. Um, um, t tell me, let's transition a little bit about uh, the passion that you have with regards to health and real estate and how you know, you're, you're, you're trying to build a community with the things that you're passionate about. Um, tell me about that. Um, well, I, first of all, I created this, uh, also women's group. I don't know. If, oh, um, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I didn't mention that. So I created this, uh, Iranian women's club back in 2018 to support women that are, have businesses that are successful or not successful. There's just to meet each other, especially in Florida, there is not many Iranians uh, or we are spread it because Florida is big. I actually wanted to bring us together and um, and support each other. Um, and that was when I just had got, I had gotten my license in real estate and um, uh, I had been uh, teaching Pilates for a few years back then. So I tried to combine all of them. So have that my small club for women and I try to encourage women to come to my classes. As you can see, I keep telling people, come to my class, come to class. <laughs> I even teach uniters for free. I want them to, to be stronger in their mind, in their body, physical. Um, and yeah, so I'm, I'm very active. I'm hyperactive. Well, I mean, you know, um, what I'm really proud of about what you do is that even though you were going through so much, you know, the Iran revolution, personal, professional, the one thing that I've noticed that you like would not sacrifice is your workout regimen is like your health. Like 
that just seemed to have been the one thing that you're like, if I don't have, if I, if I don't do this, I'm going to lose all my shit. So how, how important is health for you and how important should, should it be for everybody else watching, inspire people to, to work out, including uh, myself. That's not number one for me, even not only the physical, um, aspect of it also the mental aspect you know when you exercise when you bring your heart rate up you your body releases happiness hormones so that's the biggest thing for me and i feel it i feel even when i'm tired even if i had a short night i didn't sleep that long i wake up in the morning i'm like okay i have to see what i can do today do i go jogging do i do pilates yoga i'm very hyper so i cannot start my day unless i do something physically and I think, um, and I try to encourage people to do the same thing because it, the feeling is completely different. And I don't really understand people that say, oh, I haven't been exercising for two, three months. It doesn't go in my mind. <laughs> I don't understand it. <laughs> I know. Because I, I, I need the pain and I think I need the, the, the sweating so healthy for you. When did, when did you start this regimen of working out? How long has it been in your oh. lifestyle? since I was a child. Oh. So I was um, so, you've always, so you've always been active. Yeah, um in uh, I was in a, a, a light athletic team in Iran. I was the second fastest in my city running. Um, I was in basketball team even though I'm very short, I'm 5'3". <laughs> <laughs> but You're I'm a point guard. They, they used to call me fell fell, you know, because I was very quick, very quick. And so I've been exercising my whole life. That's Valley, right. unfortunately, I didn't become <laughs> a professional athlete. It's okay. okay. Next slide. <laughs> Next slide. Um, in, in closing, I, I want you to take a moment and share any type of notice message that you have for your compatriots. If there's a special uh, few words of encouragement or motivation or message of hope for Iran, uh, please share it with us. Encouragement? Just Okay, I, first of all, happy notice to everybody. And um, the only encouragement I have is just not giving up hope because I, I actually struggle with that too. And I see all the videos, all this, the whole situation in Iran that um, it hasn't been going the way we actually wanted, um, but I still don't give up hope. And I. I, that's 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 what I wish for everyone in Iran or not in Iran, all Iranians, not giving up hope and staying strong. That's I um, Well, I, I appreciate you. Um, first of the words of encouragement, and you got me motivated to do more health stuff. And we got to get you and Sada to please come to the, my class. The, I'm always the, 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 the fitness stuff, please. That would be great. And I, I want to ask you for a favor. Yeah. Can you sit tight for a little bit? I'm going to have Sada come okay. on because okay. I, I needed to go have dinner with the family for 10, 15 minutes. And I didn't get the substitution that I needed because I, I dropped the ball. But she's coming on and I want the two of you to talk about the Fit Fam. Okay. And I want you guys to proclaim to the community how you guys are going to work together to really take the bull by the horn and do whatever it takes to get the ball rolling. Does that Definitely. sound good? Yes. Amazing. Okay, so you guys are gonna carry the conversation while I step away for 15 minutes for me to have Sabzi Polamahi with the family. And, <laughs> and then I'm gonna come back. <laughs> and, then, and then at 8.30, we're gonna have Mandane Khazrae, the incredible artist. She's gonna be joining us. And here she is, Sade, right here. Sade is coming to the rescue right here too. So I appreciate both Sade and Katoyun. They're both being caught off guard right now, just so I have 10, 15 minutes with the fam. Hi, Sarah Hi, June. How are you? Hi, Hi Catherine June. Hi. Thank Thank you. Sorry, June. Thank you so much. I, this was completely like out of nowhere, but I, I didn't plan for this right. So I'm gone for 14 minutes, but it's perfect transition because she was talking about health and fitness, and you guys are trying to do the, the fit fam. So for 10, 15 minutes, let's talk about why it's important to have, um, you know, fitness regimens, to have a group of people to get, get together, and to add this part of... Um, this element to unite and conquer. Can we do that for 10, 15 minutes while I'm gone? Awesome. Yes. Thank you sure. so much. Love you guys. Sure, sure. that sounds good. Thank you. No Enjoy your food. Eat it, Mubarak. I can't get it done. No, is it? 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 No, is
برای شما and your family your two beautiful daughters i hope yeah. that you're able to celebrate with them and i uh, wish you and all of you and your yeah. family all Me the too. best this year thank you well. you your amazing mm-hmm. dad your very cute and beautiful mom your beautiful dog amazing husband literally <laughs> thank you so much Merci. You're so sweet. Um, Catherine Jean, this is perfect to be able to talk to you. I'd love for you, I don't know if, um, I didn't get to hear your section, but were you able to talk a bit about how fitness is such a big part of your life and, and how it's a part of your professional yes, I, and I, personal I, I life? Were you able to talk about that already? I've been my whole life. And um, for, you know, when I moved to Germany, I was a teenager and I was kind of lost. I didn't mention that actually. And um, I was trying to find and, um, Um, a way to exercise it just for me was more the fun fact because I didn't even think about it as an exercise as uh, and health yeah. it was just fun I would ask my cousin she would want to go to the mall I said no 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 let's go to the mall let's buy a basketball or water let's go play ball, basketball so I got her involved we would go and I'm um mm-hmm. as a teenager I played basketball with her a little bit of volleyball and rollerblading always I was I was always very active and later on I started boxing um I boxed for fitness boxing only not fighting or anything but um for five years and when I came here a friend of mine introduced me to Pilates uh, which I really appreciate she mm-hmm. actually introduced me to Pilates and yoga she was telling me for years wow. For two years, I think she was telling me, you should do yoga, you should do yoga. And I said, no, I'm a boxer. I box in the, I'm hyper, I don't need yoga. <laughs> and then I tried it one time and I was hooked. I loved it. And then I became a yoga teacher. And then she was saying, let's go to Pilates. Let's, yeah. The same girl, let's go to Pilates. So she took me to Pilates and I was hooked with Pilates. <laughs> reformer so I became a nice. teacher there too because it was easy for me as a mother it's it's f- flexible and you can manage the time better and yeah so that's yeah right. and that's so important right I, I'm sure you would agree that being able to incorporate fitness into your lifestyle like the easier you're able to build it into your lifestyle the more successful you'll be in the long term right. at maintaining it right it's like Everybody thinks about picking up something new and they may love it, but if they can't fit it conveniently yes. into their lifestyle, it's they're less likely, yes, li- less likely to definitely. continue it, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's amazing that you've done all of those things. And right now, you're, I, I see you're also into Zumba. I, I am. Are you planning to become a Zumba actually, instructor I too? I've, oh my goodness. I've been doing Zumba Since for I didn't know that. six years now. Um, Yeah, I knew you had been into it. I didn't I realize you were I, an instructor now. Getting the, the, the license, uh, the purpose was because I wanted to the convention. And the only way you can go to the convention, a Zumba convention or the Zumba um, cruise, you have to be an instructor. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I love it. It's amazing. For me, I call it the peak nice. of my the day. And it's for, like, it's, I, I'm talking about myself. It's uh, for older people who cannot go clubbing because they're too old. You can go clubbing during the day and have the best time without alcohol or anything. And you lose weight, too. I don't know what you're talking about, Tessa and June. I'm going clubbing till I'm, I don't know how old. Where's Mona? Mona, I know you're watching. Mona and I are going to go clubbing for oh, until yeah. I'm 12, awesome. until I'm 75. Awesome. <laughs> nice. Now, Vali, congratulations, Tessa um, and June. It's really a, a, a huge achievement to be able to, you know, uh, maintain your professional career, but also bring on all of these multiple layers of certifications and instruct and become instructors. It takes a lot of time and commitment. You certainly are someone that comes to mind when I think of, you know, um, the commitment to fitness and exercise yeah. and health in that way. And that's why, you know, I, when Iman, as you know, we do these weekly countdown series. And um, when we decided to step a bit away, at least for now, yeah. from the activating and protests, Um, he really challenged each of us to think about what can you do to continue to contribute 
um, to count down to the movement in Iran. And what I started to think about was the fact that, you know, this is not going to be a short sprint, yeah. right? We're going to be in this for the long run. What do we need mentally? What do we need physically yeah. to be able to endure? And the first thing that came to mind for me is that, you know, not no, to your level, ball. but I exercise yeah. as well. It's yeah. like, is fitness. We need to be able to, like, yeah, physical fitness fitness right like because phys we all know and i'm sure you would agree that physical fitness leads to exactly. mental endurance okay. right right on the days if you exercise you're able to endure more stress on the days exactly. i don't go to the gym i'm a nightmare to live with because i just can't do it <laughs> yeah so i what i was envisioning when 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 i came up with fit fam was you know there's so many of us that are in this group that exercise or are involved in wellness or stress reduction like yourself and dr sam who's an expert and has so many resources hedia sepedi who is like my superwoman I, as i call her she runs marathons and is aware of all of these different activities that take place that might be you know wellness or fitness related and so i brought yourself sam and hedia jun together in a group and and mona jun is in there now she runs and and trains also um and what my we haven't gotten there yet but what my vision would be at at the minimum would be to create a calendar that is available to the uniters yeah. but also to the iranian community that shows all the different types of activities right. in each month that are physically related like phys physic exercise oriented right like there is a walk I that know. happens at the end of yeah. every month there is a bike athon that's free and available to everybody katon yunjun teaches Pilates every Thursday at so and so and classes are x amount yeah. of dollars so that people can plan but so yeah. that they're aware you know so that we can make this and every week we can talk about hey heads up there's such and such class coming a group of us are going to go to this um oh i always forget the name of this darn thing anyway there's a like a bike uh, thing critical mass katayan everyone would be so proud hedi and mona would be so proud of me i always forget it but at the end of every month Yeah there's a critical mass and it's free you could go you can you don't have to you know, register or anything and so we can go and wear what's that Uh I it, it, the one I'm aware of is a bike event so it's an organized bike event and you can go and wear your flags wear your shirts you could whether it's one person like Hedia has done or five of us or 50 of us that get together it's a way to bring awareness it's a way to stay healthy it builds community by us spending the time together so this was the vision for fit fam and hopefully with you know your partnership dr sam hedi and anyone else who has ideas about you know bringing together a calendar of sorts just for awareness so that we can provide it as a resource to the iranian community so that they can maintain themselves physically so that they can endure mentally we certainly have a lot of ups and downs no oh wow can you imagine yo ali oh my god Oh that would be amazing. It would help me with my yeah, dance I've skills. Been, I'm I've a little working off. on it. I've been working, uh, talking to Najma. She's a Zumba instructor. I've been talking to my Zumba instructor. Nice. So we're going to do something Persian for sure. Oh, that sounds awesome. I see Kaveh in the chat loves it. He's he's giving yeah. you claps because oh, yeah. Kaveh is an awesome dancer himself so i'm sure <laughs> we'll see you at that class yeah, i'm sure of it let's start with the lots of yoga and yeah, i don't so, know what what are you actually are you going to um do some classes as well yeah yeah so i've been thinking about, i don't i don't do i don't teach anything i selfishly just train myself but um i've been doing weight training since 2017 now like officially i've i've played sports all my wow. life i played division 1 volleyball in college and continued you know some kind of activities all along but never thought like to be an instructor us although i think it, it's amazing to be able to and so i've been doing strength training for many years now and um during the pandemic i started to do my own like on my instagram page some of you may have seen i created like my own little videos yeah. of little workout circuit trainings that i did for myself at home like push ups squats lunges these kinds of things back to back so i was thinking if i'm able to put together a like a fit fam calendar that maybe one day i could say hey guys whoever wants come meet me at central park in plantation we're going to have a 1 hour you know that. circuit training um boot camp if you will you know i'm no expert so it comes with you know like <laughs> enter at your own risk you know kind of thing but 
you know, there's nothing wrong with getting together, moving our bodies a little bit. It won't be, it would be something that anyone at any level yeah. could participate in, but that's what I'm envisioning. Part, you know, those different companies, they meet each other, yeah. the dancers, the, the acro yoga people. So they're all doing their thing. So we can do the same thing. Maybe we can do the corner uh, Persian community. Absolutely. <laughs> in the part. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. No, that would be amazing. And, if, you know, I think it, like I said earlier, it kills like multiple birds with one stone, right? I mean, all when you think about creating a culture of belonging or a culture of unity, it's not really about what you say or what you're doing or what the purpose of uniting is. It's more so creating, it's like, it's more creating these uh, opportunities yeah. for social interactions. I mean, like, it's one thing that we're all focused on Iran. We absolutely have to be, and it has to be actions taken, but it's also okay for the sake of unity to yeah. step back a little bit and just be able to socialize, you know, especially in the name of creating uh, endurance to be able to, like, persevere through what we yeah. know is not going to be a short-term thing. I love that idea. That's what created also the Iranian Women's Club uh, that you were part of. Yeah, socializing, right. being in contact. But I'm, what time is it? Is Iman right. coming back in two minutes? He has to. You should be coming back. So in the two minutes that we have, Catherine June, what has been the impact of your, you know, um, like fitness regimen and routine yeah. on your children, and it's how are they? Crazy. How are they watching you? Because I exercise in the morning and then I go to work. Not ever since um, I took them to the gym downstairs in our building. They want to go to the gym all the time. So to tell them, go exercise Ooh. by yourself. They go on the bike, they bike, and then they do push-ups. And then they go to the yoga room. They work with the medicine ball. And it's crazy. They, it, it, everything you do, your kids are watching you. And when they're reading, they're watching you. They're going to mm -hmm. do the same thing. And it has a big impact, impact on them. Yeah. 100%. Absolutely. It it's, it must be really exactly. rewarding to know that you're into Before, doing these things and um, to see so that. funny because people would make fun of me. I don't like kids watching TV and having the, the social media or electronics. So they would want to watch TV, I would say. They're actually in the other room. I would say, okay, give me 50 push-ups. For each 50 push-ups, you can watch half an hour or something like that. <laughs> and I would put I love it. By the time your daughters were no, five years old, they had like guns of steel, six cut and now, <laughs> and now I don't even say it. She turns on, she turns on TV. She turns on the eight minutes uh, workout exercise. She does it by herself. I don't even say it. I don't even. And now for watching, wow. TV, they, they can watch TV whenever they want now because they don't exaggerate it anyway. But back before, it was, I would ask them yeah. to do it, and I actually have a video of them doing it. Oh, that is too funny. Yeah. I love that. I love that. That's great. Well, I know I see there's, you know, I see that in your stories, they're very active and many activities. And I know that a lot of that is inspired by watching you. So congratulations on, on doing that. But, uh, nah, it's really, really, really an important thing. And, you know, to create the future. You have the same Jonna? amount of effect on your daughter, too. I'm sure Sabu Junam is going to be as amazing as your profession. Jazzy's mercy. I see her. She, she comes oh, and she I starts doing push-ups too. She's like, "Mommy, she's like, Mommy, can I have your yoga mat? Where is the two-pound yeah. weights?" I'm like, "What?" Are, and I, so I'm working, right? I'm like, "What exactly are you doing over there?" And I go there. She has the weights and she's doing squats. Well, when I became a yoga super teacher, I, I it's bought super cute. my four back then when I was still with my my but their father. Uh, I bought four mats and I would in the morning right before going to school we i would force them to do the sun sun salutation which we like also the whole family would be sitting there nice. doing the sun salutation <laughs> that was fun did you have i love class? it thank you so much it. so Welcome when's our next Amanda. class tomorrow oh. okay great <laughs> we're working uh, on it <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Right. I'm sure Kathleen right. can, can have Next a class Sunday. for you, like right now. She After has like five I'm fully off dedicated the top to health and wellness, so let's do this. Hey, Mandana June is here. Full, full, shara, full shara, full shara. I scarfed out a sabdi full of mahi. I gotta <laughs> welcome. Oh my God, I can tell you are so active right now. <laughs> I mean, sorry. All right, ladies, you thank you so, me. thank you so much for covering for me. Mandana's coming on. Hello, hello, ma'am noon. Kathleen June, masla. Khodafiz, Khodafiz, Shabakhe.
ماندانا جان عزیز دیمان جان شب بخیر خوب هستی درود بر شما نوروزتون پیروز نوروز به شما هم شاد باش نوروز بر شما همه عزیزانی که الان دارن ما رو میبینن در اینستاگرام بر همه عزیزان نوروز شاد باش سال بسیار سختی رو همه ما ایرانی ها تی کردیم امیدوارم که در سال پیش رو سال بهتری در پیش رو داشته باشیم و روزهای بهتری رو برای ایران و ایرانی ببینیم خیلی هم ممنون and I, and I want to thank you. خیلی ممنون که you're traveling and you're probably at a gathering with family و اومدی یه گوشه خونه که بتونی یه چند لحظه با ما باشی so, مقداری یه یک هفته که یه مقدار مریض احوال بودم و خیلی دوست داشتم همونجوری صحبتتون گفتم خیلی دوست داشتم که یه برنامه باشه که امشب حتما براتون آواز بخونم برنامه نوروزی تری باشه اما من متاسفانه یک یک هفته است که به شدت مریض شدم و سرماخوردگی خیلی بدی گرفتم که متاسفانه صدام هم به شدت چند روزی خیلی گرفته بود حالا امروز باز یه ذره بهتر شد ام هاپینگ که دیگه مریضی رو بذاری تو سال قبل دیگه از امروز به بعد بهتر و بهتر سلامت و بتونه این هنر زیباتون رو از هر چقدر بیشتر به تعداد بیشتر اجرا بکنه ماندانا جون یه ذره فقط تعریف بکن راجب اینه که آخرین باری که ایران رفتی کی بوده و اگر یه خاطره قشنگ از نوروز داری تو ایران دوست دارم که اینو با دوستان رو شیر بکنیم من آخرین باری که ایران رفتم برای دلیل خیلی خوبی نرفتم راست شو بخوای من پدرم رو شهن سال پیش از دست دادم و آخرین باری که رفتم در واقع اولین سالگرد فوت پدرم بود که حدود هفت سال پیشه و دیگه از اون به بعد ایران نرفتم و خاطرها خاطرهای خیلی خوبی از ایران دارم ایران برای من که کودکی ایران بزرگ شدم ایرانیم و مخصوصا نوروز برای ما مخصوصا زمانی که بچه بودیم خب خیلی شور و هیجان خاص خودش رو داشت مدرسه ها تعطیل می شد فامیل همه دوره هم جمع می شدن عیدی می گرفتیم و خب سال نو می شد همین روسی ها همین دیدار های فامیلی مسافرت ها جمع بودن همه خانواده دور هم اینا همه خب خاطره های تک تکش و خاطره های بسیار خوشی هن که من از بهترین لحظه هایی هن که در ایران داشتم و به همراه خودم آوردم و با اینا زمستون رو سر میکنم و با این خاطره هاست که همه ما اینجا سختی ها رو میگذاریم و تعمال میکنم حالا امیدوارم که واسه نوروز سال دیگه اشالا ایران آزاد باشه که اونجا باشی ولی اگه همه الان امروز ایران آزاد بود الان نوروز چجوری جشن میگرفتی تو ایران؟ اگه همین الان ایران نوروز بود شاید یه ذره تلخه کنو بگم من اگه ایران بودم الان سر مزار کیان پیرفلک بودم پیش مادرش wow. پیش مادر کیان پیرفلک بودم و این نوروز رو با اون جشن میگرفتم به یاد کیان بر سر مزار کیان That's beautiful. Um, دوست دارم که اگر لطکاری بگی که بگی um, میدونم که تو این دوران شیش ماه خیلی فعال بودی خیلی این پلتفرم که داری کمیونیتی که داری سعی کردی تا اون حدی که میتونی um, صدای مردم ما باشی uh, چرا فکر میکردی که انقدر مهمه که بتونی این پلتفرم که داری استفاده بکنی برای صدا بودن مردم ایران ببین هر ایرونی این وظیفه رو داره نه فقط من هر ایرونی که پلتفرم در هر سطحی که داره باید نهایت سعیش رو بکنه برای آزادی ایران برای آبادی ایران برای ایران و ایرانی این, این کاری نیست که فقط من بخوام انجام بدم این یک وظیفه جمعی و یک وظیفه ملیه حالا هر کی به سهم خودش هر کی به نوبه خودش هر کی با توانایی خودش خب من سعی کردم از حالا هنرم استفاده کنم سعی کردم به حال با مخاطبانم مخصوصا اونایی که در ایران هستن هم دردی کنم همراهی کنم درسته که اینجا ایم شاید یه مقدار شعارگونه به نظر برسه وقتی که میگیم پشت شما ایم هم وطن شعارگونه است میدونم ما واقعا اونجا نیستیم اونان که در خیابونا هستن کشته میشن خطر میکنن زندگیشون کف دستشون گذاشتن اما واقعیت اینه که من واقعا قلبم پیش مردم ایرانه واقعا قلبم در خیابان های ایرانه قلبم پیش نسیون شاکرمیه قلبم پیش برادر مهسا امینیه 
و واقعا همه اینها در سال گذشته در چه ماه گذشته خانواده من و خانواده خیلی ها در ایران شدن یعنی الان دیگه محسن شکاری مجید رضا رهنورد فقط خانواده خودشون رو ندارم در قلب میلیون ها ایرانی هستن بر سر سفره میلیون ها ایرانی در قلبشون جای دارن و همه ما تا روزی که زنده ایم این روزهای تخت رو فراموش نخواهیم کرد و یاد این عزیزان رو همیشه گرامی خواهیم داشت دوست هم که اگر یه پیامی داشته باشیم پیام نوروزی یا یه پیام که امید بده به هموطنه عزیز اگر لط کنی و شیر بکنی خیلی ممنون میشه ببین پیام که به نظر من این اتفاقی که در چند ماه گذشته افتاد خب بسیار تخت بود اما خود این اتفاق به نظر من یک پیام بسیار امید بخش داشت که ما ایرانی ها بالاخره هم صدا شدیم ما ایرانی ها بالاخره به یک نقطه رسیدیم که با عقاید مذهبی و سیاسی مختلف به یه جایی رسیدیم که داریم تم... اولا داریم تمرین میکنیم که چجوری با هم همراهی کنیم داریم این رو با هم دیگه همگی داریم تمرین میکنیم و همین که این اتفاق افتادیم اتفاق خودش به نظر من خیلی امید بخشه که بالاخره یه جایی ماها یاد گرفتیم که همصدا باشیم و ماها یاد گرفتیم که این منم منم رو اگه باید بگذاریم کنار اگه میخوایم به یک نقطه برسیم اگه میخوایم ایران رو آزاد کنیم اگر میخوایم در راه ایران قدمی برداریم هر کی تنهایی نمیتونه این مسیر رو بره و این مسیری که باید همگی با هم دست جمعی در دست در دست هم این کار رو انجام بدیم خوش به نظر من مهمترین پیامی بود که میگم در کنار روزهای بسیار تلخ شش ماه گذشته برای من خود این اتفاق خیلی امید بخش بود در کنار اینکه به هر حال بزرگترین و مهمترین پیام این انقلاب زن زندگی آزادی بود زنانی که چهل و چند سال از آزادی محروم هستند چهل و چند ساله که زنان شهروندان درجه دو هستند در ایران و خب اینکه الان به یه جایی رسیدیم که خود مردها هم دارن از این جنبش و از این انقلاب حمایت میکنن دارن از خانما حمایت میکنن و خود مردها هم بخشی از این جنبش شدن اینها همه برای من امید بود در چه ماه گذشته یه،, یه لغت خیلی قشنگ استفاده کرده که هنوز نشوی کسی بگه اینه که یه تمرینی بوده واسه ما بله. تمرینی هستش و وقتی آدم تمرین میکنه خب خر... خرابکاری میشه اشتباه میشه بله. و ما داریم یاد داریم میگیریم و واقعا این این یه, یه موقع وقتی ما میافتیم خرابکاری میکنیم داریم با همدیگه داریم بلند داریم میشیم و بله. مسیر درست داریم میریم پس پس امیدوار هستی یعنی اگر از این دفعه بپرسه که امیدوار هستی که این رژیم از بین میره هستی اصلا ببین مگه میشه امید نداشت مگه میشه مگه میشه دیگه آزادی رو از ایران و ایرانی گرفت اصلا همچه چیز غیر ممکنه ایرانی ها چرا چند سال داشتن می جنگیدن الان صداش خیلی بلندتر از قبل داره به گوش میرسه در انقلاب زن زندگی آزادی اما این انقلاب امروز و دیروز شروع نشده به هر حال جرقش سال هاست که خورده در آبان 88 در ببخشید در اون داستان انتخابات 88 در آبان 96 و هر دفعه فاصله این اعتراضات فاصله این اتفاقات کمتر و کمتر و کمتر شده و من و من ایمان دارم حالا من میگم نمیشه آدم بگه کی این خیلی سخته که بخوای همش پیش بینی بکنی منم متاسفانه تحلیلگر سیاسی نیستم اما من به مردم ایران و به آینده ایران خیلی امید دارم ام... آمین سوال سوالم رو فرموش کردم که میخواستم بپرسم ولی اگر یه کاری ایرانی ها مخصوصا خارج از ایران یه کاری میتونستن بیشتر بکنن چه, چه،, چه پیشنهادی میتونیم ما چی کار میتونیم بکنیم که قوی تر بشیم همبستگی بیشتر باشه که یه کمک بزرگتری باشیم واسه هموطنه که توی مملکت اون هستن آیا نظر دارید من فکر می کنم که ماها بیشتر حالا میگم اینکه میگم ماها منظورم خودم نیست منظورم بیشتر گروه های برجسته اپوزیسیونه من فکر می کنم گروه های برجسته اپوزیسیون بیشتر از این باید با هم حرف بزنن با هم دیگه تبادل اطلاعات کنن تبادل نظر کنن حتی دعوا کنن و از هم از داخل همین حرف ها از داخل همین چالش ها من فهم کنم اتفاقات خوبی بیرون میاد و من فهم کنم این این خیلی به مردم ایران که به هر حال تو ایران الان شکل گیری یک اپوزیسیون که به هر حال بتونه کار واقعی رو انجام بده خیلی سخته به خاطر فشارها و سانسور هایی در این هست خب این اتفاق در اینجا درسته که به هر حال ایران زندانیان سیاسی آدم هایی دارن میجنگن همه در ایران هستن اما به هر حال این هم 
سیاست مداران بسیار برجسته ای داریم که بسیار هوشمند هستن اگر که من فکر میکنم اپوزیسیون های مختلف بتونن بیشتر با هم همکاری کنن و این همکاری یک مقداری شکل جدی تری داشته باشه و فقط از پخش حالا این اسمش رو فراموش کردم چیزی که با هم نوشته بودن بله اگر یه مقداری از اون باید فراتر رفت به نظر من الان باید میتینگ های بیشتری برگزار بشه بیشتر با هم حرف بزنن نظرات هم بفهمن و بیشتر ببینن که چطور میتونن رهبری یک یعنی یک جنبشی که رهبری داشته باشه رو در ایران هدایت کنن با شکل های سیاسی مختلف با تفکرات مذهبی و سیاسی کاملا بسیار علی ما دارجا خیلی خیلی ممنون که یه ذره وقت گذاشتی که در کنار ما باشیم واسه این برنامه حیف شد که نتونستم صدای زیبای شما رو انفه بشم آماده از خیلی قریزم نو نو خیلی هنوز شاید نشناسنت و صداتون میخواستم من همیشه دوست دارم که این صدای قشنگ به همه برسه ولی در هر صورت امیدوارم که زود سلامت بشی که بتونی همینطوری تو صحنه‌های بزرگ دنیا و مخصوصا ایران بتونی اجرا بکنه خیلی خیلی ممنون حال خودش بشه قربون زن زندگی آزادی و به امید آزادی خدا حافظ نوروز پیروز آرایت It was wonderful to have a dear friend, Mandana John. If you are not familiar, if you haven't been following her, be sure to give her a follow. She's an incredible talent. She's from the D.C. area, um, an, an amazing mom, and uh, has been a dear friend of ours for the past few years. So I'm glad we were able to connect on short notice. And uh, up next is going to be a, a lovely young lady. She is a firecracker of an individual. She is a daughter of uh, Shirzan, who's been a part of our program from the very beginning uh, this morning at 11, 11 a.m. It is a daughter of Mona Hayri. Let's make some noise for Isabella. It's just you? Oh, hell yeah. How you doing? <laughs> Good. Hi. I'm so sorry. I wasn't expecting it to just be you alone. This is even better. I like this. How oh, there she is. No, no, no that's fine. <laughs> Get out of the screen. I like this. This is perfect. It's, act it's actually one on one. Just block out your mom right now. Thank you. <laughs> so, so first of all, uh, Happy New Year, uh, Isabella. How did you spell? How did you? Uh, how did you um, uh, celebrate this New Year? Uh, well, um, today he means like how did we celebrate? We didn't do much. Yeah. Tell, tell me what I did. We didn't really do anything. Yeah. You know, this I, year we did. I take responsibility for that. I think I put I was the wrench in y'all's Noru's wheel today by yeah. keeping your mom and your aunt away from all the action. So I do owe you an apology. But um, <laughs> but listen, one of one of the re one of the reasons why I wanted uh, you to come on is because I really wanted to get perspectives of the last six months from from all different age ranges. You know, and you were uh, a part of this revolution literally from day one. And as a, you're 12 years old, right? 12 going on 22? Okay. So, so you know, you're, you're 12 years old and uh, obviously your mom has been super involved in this revolution. When you look back at the last six months, like how do you like process uh, what's been happening? How did you like digest all of this? How has it uh, impacted you? Like what's your outlook on Iran, Iranians? Just share whatever's on your mind about what you've been experiencing in the last six months. Well, um, it's been pretty sad, but I'm also happy that we're at least getting somewhere with like the protests and everything. And I think that it, we're getting somewhere and it's getting a little bit better, very little, but we're getting somewhere. And yeah. And how, how, how are your conversations with classmates at school? Like, do you ever like randomly like educate people on like, oh, well, this is what's happening in Iran. Did you know about that? Like, do you, like what kind of conversations do you guys have about Iran, if anything? In, in history, my history teacher, he's been actually to a lot of the protests. Oh, wow. He, yeah, he, uh, he always wears the bracelet and he also, yeah, he supports about it sometimes and 
like on the CNN tens, you know, or on different types of news. We see like videos on that and he like tries to teach him as much as possible. And then I, if they have any questions, they ask me and yeah. What, what's, what's his nationality, your teacher? He's Cuban. <laughs> Oh, so a Cuban, a Cuban can relate to the stuff that Iranians have gone through. That's, that's amazing that he's using his classroom as a platform to talk about it. And he's supporting it like he is. But what about like your classmates? Like just, you know, just other guys, girls in your grade that might not be like Iranian. Um, do you ever talk about it? Do you ever tell them, oh, like, do you know what happens to Iranian girls and guys? Does that ever come up? It's okay if it doesn't. I'm just very curious. Um sometimes to like my very close friends because like when they come over to my house and they see things of Iran they ask questions and things like what do they ask like, they ask like they ask me like what's going on and I explain to them like what is happening around and like what we're doing to help that situation to so I'm very it. curious what do you tell them give me an example of like how you would explain to another um <laughs> One of my friends, one time they asked me, um, how do you guys, like, how are the protests and how are the live streams, like, how does it help them? And, like, how is it, like, making Iran better? And I, I answered, them, like, I told them that, that, that it helps because we're showing their support and, like, maybe the government will, like, you know, maybe figure something out i don't think so but you know maybe we'll find a way to like fix it and help the rev like but like when somebody asks like hey what you know what's woman life freedom like what's happening in your in your homeland of iran like what how do you explain what's happening to your friends i tell them that a lot of people are dying and it's basically that the government is killing basically everyone that are protesting or standing up for their rights or someone who's not wearing a job or something like that you know and like what what's their reaction like because i'm sure it's pretty shocking right like yeah how do they react to that like are they do they think you're joking or oh. like do they feel sad do they get angry like what is what's the reaction no oh, they they like ask more questions and they just like yeah, they act pretty sad about it. They feel bad. Yeah. Do you, um, you, you, you've never, I remember you told me one time that you've been to like 20 countries and I thought you were wrong, but you were actually right. Um, have, but have you visited Iran yet too? No, I want to, but I haven't. What, like what, like what, what are you looking forward to the most about seeing Iran? Like when you think of Iran, like what, where do you want to go? Who do you want to go see? What do you want to go do? I want to see my family, definitely, because a lot of them haven't been able to, like, I haven't met a lot of them. And, but, like, I want to, like, I've heard and seen pictures of it. And so, like, I want to see the views, honestly, really pretty of what I've seen so far of pictures and things. But I really want to visit, like, see my family and things like that. Do, do you know any names of areas or cities or can you describe certain things that you saw that you're like, oh my God, I had no idea that's Iran. How cool. I want to go see that part of Iran. I haven't seen like, I don't remember the names like specifically, but I've seen like different towers and different like types of things and especially in Tehran because that's where my family lives. Mm. So yeah, but I, I, don't, I don't remember specifically what like the names. Yeah, no, it's okay. That's fine. But what what about uh, food wise? Do you have any any favorite foods that you'd like to go experience in its actual um, homeland way? Well, I basically only eat lavoshak. That's what I live <laughs> off of. So I got some lavoshak right here. You don't have to go all the way to Iran for that. But you know, <laughs> just just for being an awesome guest tonight, you're entitled to this one lavoshak as a Little AD from me to you. <laughs> um, well, that's great. Um, well, I, I hope that you get to go see Iran and uh, maybe we can go together so I can bother you inside of Iran too. So I can say that I bother Isabella in two countries and not just one country, you know? Mm -hmm. That's what I would imagine. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> maybe I'll bring army too. So then we have two people that can, you know, bother you or she can protect you and all that good stuff too, you know? Bring army and your chocolates. <laughs> I'm just bring. Yeah, you got you got to take more of my Ferrero Rocher's, huh? <laughs> yeah, I, I looked at the camera footage and I saw that you put like 12 of them in your bag and stuff. So don't think I didn't see that, you know? Why? Why are you? That was my mom. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, all right. So on a closing note, because um, you've been such an awesome guest, I want you to, because I remember for the 11.11 live stream, you also gave a nice message to the youth of Iran. I want you to speak to all the 12 year old and the younger generation of Iranians inside of Iran. If you were to give them a Nooruz message or a message of hope, what would you say to them right now? Um, I would tell them that we'll never stop fighting for them. And that I really hope that one purge in a year, at least one day that we'll celebrate it with them. Yeah. Like next year, for sure, 100%. Hopefully. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, Isabella, I want you to go enjoy the rest of the evening. You're an all-star. You're a rock star. Appreciate you. And thank you for that one day. That Actually, twice you came to a protest and you performed and danced to Baroya. Um, I'll, I'll always uh, look back at that being some of the most memorable moments of uh, all of our in-person protests in South Florida. So good for you for caring so much and for wanting to make an impact and and helping Iran become a free country. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Bye. Bye. Take care. Now let's look at your mom. Let's see if we have some closing voice. Aren't, aren't you proud of your daughter? I'm proud of your daughter. I'm super proud of her. She's amazing in a lot of ways. Um, especially when she's sleeping. No, I'm just kidding. She's... she's <laughs> I'm sorry. If she sees me laughing, oh, I know. Oh, she... <laughs> I know. I know. All of a sudden, I'm like, I'm sorry, Isabella. And then she already turned the camera on. <laughs> uh, no, she's amazing. I'm very proud of her. And I can't wait to take her to Iran. That's my, my, my dream. Yeah. Uh, just to show her our beautiful country and our beautiful people, honestly. Like, just the kindness of our people. That's what I want her to see. Because yeah. she doesn't know it the way that you see it in Iran. I, I asked this question earlier from Katayun as well, with her having two daughters, I think the same age, right? About 11, 12, 13 years old. Yeah. Um, how, how, much, uh, how much of your fight is because you resonate so much with the mothers of Iran that are having their daughters going through all the atrocities that they've been going through? How much, how, when you see Isabella, like how much is that part of the fuel? I think I think, uh, I mean, pretty much most of it, uh, because I, the first thing I thought when this whole revolution started, this, my first immediate thought was, oh my God, I might actually be able to show my daughter my country before I die. And that was such an amazing feeling. And so, yeah, I absolutely fight for that and i i can't imagine what the mothers are going through like right now with the schools um the school girls being poisoned i just i mean i can't i, I just can't imagine because i would be furious i wouldn't be outside saying uh chants outside of the schools i will be ripping people apart for trying to hurt my baby yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's like, it's the whole motherly instinct. Like you are, you're a mother of the country and you're here protecting uh, all of his cubs, you know? And, and that's, um, it's been pretty amazing seeing um, people like yourself sacrificing so, so much in order to um, do as, as much as you can, you know what I mean? And so um, just very, very happy and grateful to have you a part of what we're doing. You've been, uh, an amazing role model to Isabella. Um, and by by the way that she cares so much about what we're doing, it just goes to show how much of an influence that you have and how much of a um, influence mothers have over their children in this revolution. And so kudos to you for being able to juggle 
so many personal challenges, professional challenges, and also leading uh, a revolution. So, so grateful to have you be a part of the circle here. Thank you. I'm grateful to be part of it all and be part of history. And um, I can't wait for us to to win this and like just go and help, you know, help them rebuild the country. Yeah. That's what I'm looking forward to. Honestly. I can I can only imagine how delicious victory will taste as soon as it happens. You know, I mean, it's like, I feel like it's just right there. It's within reach, and we're getting there. Um, so at 9 p.m., you're you are leading the segment. I feel like you guys have been uh, a part of every hour of this program. So super super thanks to thanks to you. I don't know what the hell I was thinking when I decided to do this 12 hour on my own. <laughs> and so thank you again for being uh, the rescuers of this program. Um, what are you and Paris and Shiva going to talk about in a couple of minutes? Uh, honestly, I think we've talked about everything, but we always have stuff to talk about. So don't worry. when they come on, we're going to see what, what comes up. By the way, because we've talked all day, honestly. I know. <laughs> I mean, and I, I want to give a shout out to Art by Noli Bug. And I, tell me your name, by the way, because it's just weird to just keep on saying art by Noli Bug. And I definitely have to uh, figure, go check out your artwork. But I want to thank you because you've definitely been one of the individuals that have been with us since 11, 11 a.m. So appreciate you uh, joining us for so long. And everybody else that has spent the majority of their day or night, depending on where you are in the world, uh, we're so appreciative, you know, like we did it so that we can connect with all you all. So. Uh, one by one, I that's that's the issue. Uh, and hope that we get to uh, grow even a, a closer connection uh, as we continue to build a community. Uh, her name is Nahole, but she goes by Noli. Okay, very cool. Noli Jun, it's a it's a pleasure. And I see Hedi Jun is joining us. Another Shirzan. So um, maybe you guys should get Hedi to come on for a little bit, you know, and yeah. have her turtle have her turtle come say a few words. <laughs> And her dog or, or, and all the or dogs or her cats you know whatever it is i no longer want to go to the miami zoo <laughs> i just want to get an invitation to head his home so, oh so i can i can meet all those beautiful animals that have an insane amount of personality yeah. too much yeah. personality for certain animals i don't get it um but yeah so okay well i'm looking forward to seeing that uh conversation at nine o'clock at 9 15 p.m eastern time we have nima adil khani who is the person that provided all the lava shacks for a Bakhche event. And Mona, you won one of the boxes. So that was a great raffle. Oh, I won the big one. Oh, yeah. No, I know. But, but you won. What do you mean the big one? A big box, you mean? No, six months of lava shacks. Oh, shoot. That's right. <laughs> right. Okay, so I got to connect you to Nima. Per perfect timing. That's a humdinger right there. I can't um, wait. I, I, you heard my daughter. She lives off of lava shacks. <laughs> That's great. Um, uh, I, I see Yegana here. Yegana, maybe you should join the virtual party here. Um, yeah. Oh my God. Oh, Hedi is like my tortoise is fluent in Farsi. It's not Farsi, Aizaman. It's Persian. Do you ever watch Countdown, Hedi Ejun? You're too busy feed, You're too busy feeding the homeless and doing so many other things. You're missing Paris's end of the program message. <laughs> oh, Paris just joined. She heard her say oh. Farsi and she just. Paris, do it online to get on this program. I'm, I'm, awaiting, <laughs> I'm awaiting her request to join. <laughs> oh, a nice cover there, Hedy. Uh, uh, I said, I'm going to share your scrubs. Yeah, yeah, we want to don't worry. If you think that there's a dress code for a video call, uh, uh, there's no dress code. You can be in your scrub. As a matter of fact, we should get Nikki on here, too. Yes. In your scrub. Oh. All right, so let's see if uh, if if Mona, excuse me, if Sare and no, 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 I'm sorry, Paris and Shiva. I'm sorry to lose my mind, by the way. Um, we got two hours to go. Oh. Well, oh, there she is. She's requesting to join. Oh, before uh, until they come. Yeah. Uh, Noli, Noli, Art by Noli. Uh, she has not only been here all day today, but she's watched all of the countdown shows. She's been not, like every single one. She's amazing. Love it. Great I absolutely love it. Oh, we got Yossi here. I feel like all the Uniteds are just waking up or something. Like, 
Where were you guys the last 10 hours? The dinner. We, it was, it was for this segment. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Don't wait for you to take a break. <laughs> uh, by, the, by the way, um, Shiva Jan, I love the new hairstyle and everything. You know, looking like a movie star. Oh. Good for you. Yeah, I just called her a couple of weeks ago, you know. All right. the great starting to show. <laughs> Very nice. And we got Negin, awesome Negin from Sarasota. So happy to have her. Yasi Jun, خیلی ممنون که دعوت کردی ما رو به مهمونی. Thank you. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, I'll, I'll let you ladies do your thing. I'll come back in about at 9.15 where we have Nemo from Laboshack.com, followed by DJ Kia, followed by Dr. Sam, followed by Matthew Nuriel, and then we will reach the end of uh, this incredible live stream. Ladies, thank you so much in advance for giving me another opportunity to spend time with the family. Much love. No problem. Any opportunities? You need to talk behind your back is good with us. I haven't left yet. <laughs> I keep doing that. <laughs> I think he's just in the background. Like he's not going, not leaving the room. He's staying. Shiva, I love you for trying to warn me, but it's okay. I talk behind you in front of him. <laughs> you know? So, ladies, um, so we were talking earlier about what he was asking Isabella actually what she would like to do or see in Iran. I want to know what, you know, when we're free and we can go back, like what is, what are the first things you would like to do? What are the first things you want to eat? Where do you want to go? Tell me. Um. I'm gonna let you go first because you probably have more recent memories. You probably have reason. It's kind of like if we lived in a city, uh, you know, like if somebody was like, oh, you haven't been to Montreal in a while, where would you want to go to first? I have a million things that come to mind, you know? So I would love to hear from someone who lived there, obviously not recently, but more than Mona and I, what are your go-to spots? I think the first thing I would do is Obviously, I will travel to Shiraz, and I hope that I have the opportunity to see my grandmother again. Um, so she's 94 years old. So I'm, you know, I'm, she's in good health, but I would love to see her um, because just, you know, being over the phone or just hearing her voice, and it's, it, it's not enough. So I would love to have that opportunity to be able to see her. Um, I have a lot of family and friends. I just want to have the opportunity to visit them all. Some live in Esfahan, some live in Tehran or other parts of the country. I would love to be able to go and see them and just have the opportunity to spend the time with them. I went back in 2011 and you know I got that opportunity to see my cousins and see my family. So I want to be able to do the same thing as well as my friends. I have a few friends. Um, we talk constantly. I was actually talking to one of them on WhatsApp earlier. Um, she was sending me like new, no ruse wishes. So we were talking for a little bit. So I would love to just catch up with friends and family. But, you know, I, I don't know if it's as a part of the revolution or in general, like I see a lot of feed on my Instagram or my social media of like scenery in Iran that I'm like, oh my God, my country is so beautiful. Like I didn't, I haven't had the opportunity to see anything other than, you know, Esfahan and Shiraz, like, there are a lot more that I would love to go and just, you know, take a few months and see my entire country um, and, you know, meet the people that have been involved in the revolution and, you know, see the world or see, like, you know, what is their wishes, as, uh, their wishes, like, with the, the freedom as well. Um, as far as food, honestly, there is a lot of things. You know, everything is in, in Iran is delicious. You know, it's like Iranian dishes, like, obviously. But I think the first thing, if I have the opportunity to see my grandmother, um, you know, if she's still able to cook, I would love to have one of her dishes. Um, but if not, you know, I love Lava Shack. I actually saw a recipe, I think it was this morning. They, I don't know, like, I don't remember the account, but they took a piece of Lava Shack and they put a green almond with salt, lemon, and like a slice of kiwi and they just fold it and ate it and i could just like taste that sour in my mouth i'm like i really want to try this so i actually have like you know a roll of lava shack that my mom brought from iran um so i'm actually gonna like you know try that recipe so <laughs> yeah gonna... but... Shishlik, what's that yeah what is that Shishlik? Shishlik. yeah gonna says she 
بود ایت شیشلیک دو یو نو وات دات از نو ایم نات شور وات دات از یه گان جون اکسپلین وات شیشلیک یس وات از شیشلیک پارس جون یو یس سو آی هاف نات بین تو ایران آی هاف نات سین مای ریلیتیوز دیستنس اور نیر like pretty much my whole entire life so unlike shiva jun who's had that opportunity it would be like i would want to spend 24/7 with all of them um just to like i guess get that you can't make up for lost family time but i guess want to build new memories and just make memories in my home country why am i emotional today good lord get a grip girl um there's that for food There is something so there is I did go to Iran one time when I was 12 years old it was for the death of my uncle of all reasons um and we were there for like 10 days not even but I remember there's these they sell stuff off the side of the road it's like nuts in a huge jar Do you guys know what I'm talking about this is in Tehran there's like the sellers that sell like corn like the the roasted corn Shiva was looking at me blank like she had no idea what I'm talking about. They do like yes. they do um what is it? Corn. How do you say corn in Persian? Balal, balal dudi. Uh-huh. Like that. It's like crazy. It's like it doesn't taste like that anywhere else. And then they also do this thing I'm not crazy where there's these guys who sell nuts on the side of the road and these nuts are in these huge like large like glass containers with water in them. and it's like the tastiest nuts why do i is there anybody not in this chat who knows what i'm talking about i'm on corn in a cup but you're talking about nuts not uh, <laughs> no so the balal is the actual like the corn long corn and they're they're roasting it like on charcoal i guess it's not roasting they're like it's on charcoal and it's like it it's dudi does anybody in this chat know what i'm talking <laughs> about because i'm not crazy there's that and then there's the, so the nuts are separate the nut sellers are separate and it's literally in these like glass containers with water and they're super delicious and then other than that i think going to guys i learned something new so persepolis is actually the name of so persepolis as we know is the capital of ancient iran but it's the name that the greeks gave us it is not the name so it's actually parsa the name of our capital is parsa that's what it is and it's it's called persepolis because that's what the greeks called and as we know it's the greeks who wrote the books and it's the history that got picked up but our capital is actually called parsa which i learned but my, i would love to go there and obviously to the to the tomb of of cyrus the great i a while ago not a while ago a couple of years ago somebody was like cuz i said something and we're talking yeah. about history and i was just talking about being of mixed identity being like iranian but spending my whole life being canadian and he's like why would you reduce yourself to a dual identity when you are the child of one of the greatest leaders the his- history has ever known and i'm like and i just stood there and i'm like okay come on like this is like iranians like gloating and glorifying ourselves and he's like no understand that the leader that we had unified nations unlike any other unifier the history has ever known he did not force conversions he did not you know rape and pillage as others did that's why our empire grew so fast and the descriptions that he was given that he was giving was like no you are you are the child of that like don't reduce your, yourself don't don't blur your identity and it was a time i used to say farsi when i was speaking in english and i would you know not that i would didn't take pride in my history as much but i didn't have the knowledge that i have now and it, he was he was a uh, actually not iranian so he was the one he was a historical linguist essentially and he was the one teaching me about my own stuff and since then it kind of like hit me like he he made he gave me a sense of belonging that i didn't have and since then it's kind of stayed with me that it's kind of like well if i do see myself as iranian and i do see myself as you know a descendant of then that is definitely a place that i have to go as an iranian uh, we spent a lot of you know like during my childhood we spent a lot of our sizza bedar um at persepolis um they have like a garden area or in general like we would just go visit and some of us with the cousins would walk up or actually go walk you know i call them the ruins because 
literally, I don't think a lot of it is left because, you know, the regime has not taken care of it. Um, and, you know, over the years, I've seen that it's just been washed away slowly. But I spent a lot of my Sizabadars there. Um, so it's like, and I was born, you know, about 30 minutes or so away from it. So it's like, it's near and dear to me. But it breaks my heart that every time I see that, and it's like a great historical place, like for our entire, you know, culture and the Iranian, but it's just slowly, it's like diminishing and not much of it is left. Like our part, part of our history is being washed away. Just another cruel thing by the Islamic regime. Yeah, 100%. I had the privilege of going to Shiraz when I was 17. And we went to the tomb of Hafiz and to Parsa and it was just the most beautiful trip and um, I uh, had my favorite dessert Falude which is from there the, I remember every little thing because I really that trip I really took in everything that I did every flavor, every smell every experience um, <laughs> hanging out it was incredible and i'm it's actually more sad for me that i can't do that anymore like you said before uh paris june that sara's dad has been able to experience what they don't have anymore and so for me that i i went back and and i experienced everything that we could have had like going just we don't have to move there just going back every summer visiting family and visiting our beautiful country there's so much i haven't seen and that would uh, th that made it even more bitter for me uh that i can't go back and um yeah and and show my daughter we will we will and shiva um shiva John, what you just explained literally the fact that you did so the the site at Persepolis is actually a place where they did celebrate like the most intense New Year celebration were taken there. So you literally have stood in the places of our ancestors and and celebrated where they did. That is like it's priceless. How many people can get? I mean, I know how many people. Obviously, the people who live in Shiraz or Esfahan who who trek that way. So hundreds of thousands, probably, probably. But those of us in the diaspora, it's like wishful thinking. It sounds like magic. I mean, I would. I mean, for for me, it was. And every time like it comes up, where I see like you know people posting pictures, I'm like, I've been there thousands of times, and I still would go back. And I remember. I'd, one point i think i was much much younger they used to have um these tents um um i believe they were from uh during shaws um so like when you would walk in obviously they had removed all the um like the valuable items and everything so the tents were still in place and eventually over the years they removed them um, but you know, you walk in these tents, like on the inside, they were like, when I'm saying tents, I don't mean like the tents that we see or we go camping on. These were like beautiful, massive tents, like, you know, with, um, the wall inside, the lining inside, like blue, red. Um, and we actually would go and walk inside of those. And it was, even though it was an empty tent, but it like, it had a lot of historical representation. So it, it was definitely something that, I mean, I would love to be able to do a scissor that again at Tahlet Damshi. Yeah. So. I have a question for you, Shiva Jun, you're referring to what was left over from the 2500 year anniversary, right? I believe so. Okay. Yes. So just a quick touch on that for anyone watching or anyone criticizing, because I'm sorry, Iman Jun, are we tight on time? Do we have to go? No, we're, we're good because actually Nemo from Labushak, he's been stuck on uh, LA traffic. And so we're going to just, let, let's just, you have time, don't worry. I just wanted to explain what you just said is so insanely valuable because the 2500 year anniversary that took place in 1972 um, is something that the monarchy and the Shah took a lot 
of heat for. Um, obviously, Iran has always, I mean, just like any nation, has had an issue with poverty, you know, and we struggle. We know that there are individuals who are not so well off. And even to this day, when we see government spending on X, Y, Z, when there's the issues of poverty and inequality, you wonder why the government spends so much money on certain things, especially when it comes to alt and art and culture promotion. And Shiva Jun, the fact that you just shared that something from 1972 is something that you went and you enjoyed like 50 years later, and that you actually felt a sense of belonging, connectedness, and felt like your history was being represented is like huge. Yeah, I mean, I didn't think of it back then. But now that I think about it, I'm like, I mean, it's crazy that I've got to experience that. And you know, like when you're younger, you don't think about thing, things like that. And, you know, but now that I think about it, it's like, hey, you know, I've, I've been there. I've experienced some of that. And I would want to go back 100%. And I would want to have the same experience. Obviously, the tents are not there that have yeah. been removed. Yeah. Whatever it's left, I would love to still be there. It it's crazy that you mentioned that. I actually saw somebody share a video about it today. What was left is like literally the, the metal bars that, are, that were holding it up. So it's actually even more destitute than what you described. But I just want to pause for a second. Those, that anniversary, imagine like what really happened was the entire world all the world leaders were invited to Iran and they attended. So imagine if today all the kings and queens of all the nations and all the presidents, prime ministers and leaders of every G20, G7 nation, like the United Nations showed up in Iran for a ceremony at the tomb of Cyrus. Like that's literally what happened in 1972. The, the biggest world leaders showed up to our country, stood behind our king, and heard a sermon addressing King Cyrus and pledging to do right by humanity. Like, if you go and listen to the Shah's speech of that, at that day, on that specific day, you'll hear him say that, is that you can sleep because we're awake. And I feel like we're carrying that like somebody like Iman is carrying that so they can rest because there are individuals that are still doing what needs to be done to help move our people forward well, for me, God. I'm gonna stop talking I feel like I need to go watch the speech now. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't listened to the whole speech, so now I'm very curious about that speech. No, I'm serious. We always talk about how there's leaders of this revolution, and we forget that if it weren't for people like you, we would to put up eleven hours to help bring us together, to help bring these conversations together. If it weren't for like the Shivas who are sharing their stories and who are willing to put themselves out there, there are people like Modas who are who have children, who are half Iranian, but who are passing on our tradition and our history. It's, it's, what, it's what those great leaders were trying to do. And we need more of them. True that. And we're getting them. I mean, look at you, all three of you are now uh, leaders, you know, like so many of our uniters are becoming leaders. Like we're, there's just so much to be done and every element of what we're trying to accomplish needs a leader, you know? And so you're, you're seeing leaders, you know, standing out left and right. Like if you've been a part of the United families for the last few months, think back of the people that were just coming and they were like, how can I help? How can I help? And now they're, they're leading a certain element of it. You know, the, the newest one is Aram. She just joined the Uniters and she literally wants to take ownership of being able to find grants that will support all of our efforts. You know, like that in it by itself is like a specialty. So automatically she's going from just somebody that was kind of helping out in the background to now leading a very important effort <laughs> that we're trying to do, you know? Sada and Mona decided to lead the efforts of doing South Florida protests. What I was doing in the beginning, I was like, here you go. And they led, they did the best that they could given the circumstances. To, to lead the in-person, uh, you know, um, the things, you know, like Shiva, you were the person that 
helped out at the 1111 live stream. And now in the last couple of months, you were like, I want to be more involved. And you can feel how involved you are with the countdown producer. And then you offered to do this whole thing, spending your entire Noru's with us. And Paris, I can't even uh, properly express all that you've been doing in educating, enlightening um, the insane amount of time of research, due diligence, to be able to provide the critical 10, 15 minutes of the opening of our countdown episodes every single Wednesday, you know? This is leadership. This is all, you're, you're, looking, you're looking at all the great leaders and we're continuing to cultivate more and more leaders. And that's really, um, what we have to realize is that there's a leader inside all of us, but for whatever reason, uh, those individuals, they don't believe that they're leaders or they feel like they have something that's like, not, not like, it's like inadequate, when the reality is that we are all great at something. We just have to find what that great thing is and then surround them and supply them with the resources, the love, the support, the understanding, and then boom, everyone's capable of doing some epic shit. And we're going to continue doing some epic shit. You know, these are just uh, the, the little things that we've been doing. Like whether the revolution comes to a close tomorrow or six months or a year, we are doing some major fat hang sazi, you know, and like, so, so we, we control whatever it is that we're doing anyways, but hopefully it is with a free Iran shortly. And, you know, we can extend all of this great stuff to inside of Iran, but the damage, unfortunately, that this, uh, this uh, regime has done, it, it's, it's forever impacting us. So meaning that our efforts are lifelong effort anyways, it's not like when Iran is free, boom, our job is done. No, like, I just feel like we've been building the foundation and we're just going to have to continue to build on it. This is a lifelong mission for us that I'm happy to share with you all. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we missed on, we missed on uh, Nima John coming at uh, 9.15, but we're, we're having this wonderful conversation right now. At 9.30, I'm supposed to have Kia. My, my family is like literally whooping my ass. We haven't had a half scene picture yet. So I'm hoping that I told them, come before 9.30 because then the opportunity might not no longer be here so if in the next seven minutes when they come here i might step away for two three minutes to take these pictures and then we have dj kia coming at 9 30. so Imanjun, you missed conversations about food and there are certain comments that came up that i do want to acknowledge somebody said it's called balal you're absolutely right it is called balal if you've ever had it you know what i'm talking about because shiva and mona are looking at me like i'm crazy and i think it was negin jun who was saying that it's uh it's the salted nuts in the water. Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And if you know where to find it, you know what I'm talking about, oh, Iman? I, I mean, I've tried it. I'm not, not in Iran, but when oh. we used to have like uh, uh, Sizabedar stuff, you know, there was always somebody that was doing the dipping into the water and salt and that balal was just next level. That's interesting. I've never had that. We did uh, what was like, um, lettuce we dip that in like sirke or like if you had yeah we did that right. I, I should i and i actually haven't done that in years i should probably the street try. food man the 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 beets the the balal the nuts the the kahu balimu oh my god i have Oh my God, the street. That's shoots. why Andy and Kuros came up with that song, Balal, a eh, Balal, do that. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were serious. You're so <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, really? <laughs> Is he ever? <laughs> you know, if, if, I, if I could trick anybody, it would be Paris, who doesn't know like all these major Iranian artists. Yeah. She's like, Gugush? Who's Gugush? No, I don't know. No, no, no. She's like, I know Talk to me about Gugush. history of Iran, but Gugush? I don't know Gugush. I know Gugush. Yeah. I know Andy and Kudos. Well, we're not going like... to call you out on who you didn't know. Yeah, we're not going to call you out. Me? <laughs> who did I not know? Oh. Uh. I know his song. I just didn't know it was his. Yeah. But listen, then I found yeah, yeah. his picture from like a long time ago. And thank I... you for that treat. By You're, welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. You're <laughs> welcome. All right, so let, let, I'm going to step away for two minutes. I'm going to take these pictures, do your thing, and then Kia is going to join in about five minutes. Okay. No problem. Um, oh my gosh. Gonna you guys can talk about that how good looking Fatima Aslan is. Yes. <laughs> no, you're we're welcome. talking about food. More important. <laughs> Farah's Mind Fitness Club said, said Ken Kahu 100%. Yes. Oh my God. What kind of 
Yeah, I've never had sirke kahu. I think it can be any, right? Yeah. It could be of your choosing. I'm definitely going to try it out this year or maybe tomorrow. I'm, the first thing I'm going to do tomorrow is the lava shack recipe. I just have to go get it. Sandwiches from Ferry Cassif. I've heard of it, but I wasn't there when it was open. Hedia Sepehi is saying the walnut is available during New Year and summer. Interesting. And sandwiches from Ferry Cassif. Who is Mehrandra Nama? Is that your mom? It's my mom. Hi, mom. You have raised oh. an amazing daughter. So kudos to you. We love her. Yeah. Happy notice to you. You guys are so sweet. Um, Pharaoh's Mind Fitness Club. Sekhan Jebino Kahu, a hundred percent. But I think I don't. I. I don't know about you guys, but we, my mom used to make that, but a long time ago, it was like a treat. You didn't have it the whole, t like, it's not a daily treat, but you guys, that's like diabetes. It is so sweet. <laughs> I have had it in some times. How did we get away with it? It's I like not healthy. They gave it to children. Yesterday I got <laughs> a jar of semenu and I finished it like in one sitting. Um, and I immediately regretted it because like I started breaking out because I have allergy like I have I'm sensitive to gluten I don't have full on allergies so like if I eat certain amount of it so I was like okay this was a mistake but it was so worth it because it's only once a year <laughs> totally what was what's that uh, Negin was asking what that um, what, oh my god I, I know the name but my mom is going to kill me for not remembering the big be green bean it's they're big and like flat. She said lubia or nah, the green steam thing. No, no, lubia and you steam it and oh, it's, it's like something. this big and you squeeze it out. Yes, you squeeze it out. It's so good. I don't remember. I don't remember the name, but I know what you. I think I know what you're talking about. Is Sara serious about Samanu? She doesn't know what Samanu is. Sorry, you're serious right now. Nah, bagalini is bagali, eh? Yeah, it feels like it, it, it is Bagali. It, it is, is Bagali. It is Bagali. Okay. Masa Adrian, your, your thank you. Your mom says Bagali, it is. <laughs> Even my mom's like Bagali. I can't see the comments. It's Bagali. Yeah, a lot of people are co confirming it's Bagali. Okay. That Not is... in Persian and English. Mm. It's so good. So good. So good. By the way, I don't, I don't know how. How do you explain what Samanu is to Sade? I mean, oh my God! Yes, yeah, Sade Jun. I also didn't know you could eat it. I found out this year you can eat it. Are you serious? We, yes. Hey, we would buy. I mean, I think that's like <laughs> one of the biggest things we looked forward to. It's like we would go out, and my dad even loves Samanu. Do you, like. Can, Wait, do you know what I remember from going to Iran in the summers when I was a kid? I remember one of my cousins had a bag, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, like a, yeah, like a bag outside of their house. And they used to make samanu in those huge pots for the whole neighborhood. And that you, uh, people st stirred it, like took turns. Have you seen that in real life? It's the yeah. most amazing thing. One, like, one year, magic. my uncle's wife and my mom, they, they actually made it basically for the entire family. A lot of people do make it at home, but, you know, it's not an easy process. It takes a lot of time and you have to do, yeah. you have to stir it. So a lot of for hours and hours and hours. Overnight and they would like keep stirring that because that, that's how it gets its color and, you know, the texture and all of that. But it's yeah. delicious. Yeah. I mean, we would gallons and would sit and eat it. So, oh my god, it's so good. We got the whole, whole my mom, of the half scene, huh? Oh my god, we're still talking about food. It is so much. I mean, did you know you can eat samanu? <laughs> did you know you can eat samanu? Did I? I know that. I'm so sorry. You're asking me if I, uh, 
I actually don't know, but I, I don't like the smell of it, so I wouldn't have tried it. I don't know. It's interesting. Uh, oh, yeah, so my sister says she loves it, so I guess she. But then again, she eats limu amoni like for breakfast, so I'm not oh, surprised okay. at all. I can't do that. What's but the, yeah, real uh, Sophie's world. By the way, Kia, yeah, please, Kia, you need to request to join, brother. Uh, it's great that you're laughing inside the chat, but we need you to actually <laughs> request to join. And and okay, then please. we're gonna have to go so he can join, right? Yeah. So so yeah. But first of all, thank you so much for covering ground again, and hopefully. We'll see you guys in a little bit more if you guys have the energy. But if you don't, I totally understand. But 10.15 and 10.45. Hopefully, Nima can take 10.15. But it will be great to have you ladies back at 10.45 for some closing words. How's that? Sure. I'll go charge my phone because it's about to die. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Appreciate it. Bye. All right, Mr. Kiyo. My guy, what's going on? No, who's the Piruz? I'm on. Oh, Rude Shoma Piruz, brother. How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm I'm just glad this is an IG live because nobody can smell the PRs coming off my breath. Um, I just had dinner with the family. I'm tucked away in some random room right now. You know, everybody's got a, uh, like a, uh, we just toss everything into one room. So random pictures and bed and clothes and everything goes in one room. Uh, and that's where I'm kind of hiding out now because everybody's, uh, you know, kind of around each other um, celebrating notos, which is nice. Yeah, I love it. Nothing better than be around with the family. And uh, of glad, glad you had that opportunity to do so. We've been traveling left and right. You've been traveling we, left and right. So yeah. glad, glad you were home for the holidays. Thank you. I mean, uh, you're, the, you're the one who's uh, kind of put my schedule together. So thank you for giving me a little break. Um, <laughs> You know, we're heading back on the road soon, and you know, wedding season is starting to heat up, uh, and I'm really looking forward to it this spring of and summer. So we actually have the lovely bride from last week. We got Ellie right here in the chat. Happy Noruz to you, and you man. We had a great time in the city of Angels celebrating uh, the love and the wedding of an awesome, awesome couple and a longtime friend of mine in Huma. Uh, Kia, man, I, I just wanted to have an opportunity or give you an opportunity to share some. Noru's wishes with your compatriots, any kind of uh, hope for Iranians and Iran. The virtual mic is all yours, brother. Look, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. At the end of the day, all we have is each other. Um, we are a community that the silver lining with what's happening overseas uh, in Iran ever since September, the silver lining is that this is the opportunity that we have to all come together. Iman, you more than anybody um, have taken so much on your shoulders um, to do live streams like this, uh, community events, the protests, the rallies, the conversations, um, which we weren't having before, whether it wasn't the right time, the right place, whether we didn't even have a, a minimal platform. Unfortunately, the circumstances that gave us the platform were terrible, but we can't let that kind of go to waste and, and just kind of disappear. Um, and so thank you for doing what you're doing on your end and to everybody else. Um, the one thing I'm going to lean towards right now is towards our musical community, um, just because that's where uh, I, I find a lot of um, kind of what you want to call home uh, in music. And obviously with Cher Vin Song, um, which really was fantastic with the awards and accolades, and it kind of put us on the map. Um, in terms of the international and world community, which is fantastic. Um, but I would tell you that um, we need to continue to support our artists, um, support uh, music from a producer level, from the DJ level, from the singer level. Everybody kind of forgets that it was kind of out of commission with a year and a half to two years with COVID, and then obviously followed by the tragic events starting in September. And so one of the things that, you know, while it's always a delicate situation to have a concert or have an event and do that, um, at the end of the day, the more we talk about Iranians, the more we support Iranian events, the more we support Iranian businesses, it's just going to help us as a community grow, whether it's here in the United States, anywhere else overseas. Um, but we just have to stick together. And that's something that I hope we will continue to do. Well, first of all, I appreciate all the kind words and for those who don't know, Kia is not just one of our talented DJs. He's also our, my entire legal team is all because of Kia, an incredible attorney. And, uh, you know, a lot of what I've been doing 
is really because of the help of uh, great friends like yourself, Kia. So I really appreciate everything you've been doing. And I just love to see you on stage doing your thing. Uh, when you're on stage, you're in your happy place. And so I just want to do whatever I can to provide you with as many of those happy moments as possible because you have a great gift and I want to make sure that the whole world continues to see your gift in action. And then legally, you're also a rock star. So we just have to continue to work together, man. <laughs> I appreciate that so much. Um, for everybody who's watching, this definitely wasn't scripted. Um, we didn't do <laughs> any of these questions beforehand. This is totally on the fly. Um, I will tell you, I, I, wanted, I wanted to start doing this. You know, you still have these ideas and People always ask me for songs, so I'm going to go out on the limb here. I'm going to give you three random songs, um, all different kinds of artists, but three songs from Iranian artists that you may or may not have heard of that I'm really enjoying right now. Um, the first one is Talk Down. Uh, it's called Candy. And uh, the second one is my boy Puban. Um, it's called Dokhtar. And the third one, uh, let's go with Hamid Askari, and it's called Tala. So there's a... a whole different range of artists and what music and vibe first one talk down yeah talk down is a group uh, it's Persian? Typically they do a little bit more on the raps yes they do a little bit more on the rap side but the song is going to be called talk down and the song is called candy literally like uh, the candy that you okay. eat um so check those out continue to support our artists they are fantastic and super super talented um but i'll leave you with that and i hope everybody enjoyed this few minutes segment iman i love the backdrop mine is just like a you know, eggshell painted white, um, and you've got all the beautiful things that that they put on, put on behind you back there, uh, and you're um, kind of just chilling down in in the sunny Miami area. So I'm super yeah, jealous right we now. Got, we got we got to bring you down soon for another event, Just Hollywood, another backboxer event. DJ Pierre did a great job, but you know, ha having you would have been a, a whole different ball game. So uh, we'll see you down here next month for the wedding of Arash and Liz. And uh, hopefully it's a year full of uh, happy dance floors and a free Iran. Absolutely. Uh, to everybody watching, to everybody around the world, Noruzutun Piruz. I hope everybody has a very healthy, wealthy, and successful new year, except for everybody um, that's associated with the regime. But I'm going <laughs> to leave it at that. And uh, Iman, I know you're going to 11.11. Um, you've been doing fantastic. And uh, uh, just so much respect. Thank you, my friend. Zan Zendigi Azadi, Woman Life Freedom. No, Ruth Piru. Salam back to Habit Khalam de Bersa. I will. Tell your family I say I will, man. Fine, I will. All right, so there you go. You got yourself DJ Kia making a cameo in today's live stream as well. At 9 45, we have Dr. Sam. He's also one of our uniters. He's, I'm sorry, I'm just looking at my schedule, making sure that I'm not misspeaking. Okay, yeah. Oh, wait. Not 945. Oh, shoot. I missed a spot over here, guys. I'm such a dummy. Okay, you know what? It's fine. So it's at 10 o'clock is actually when I have a, a little chat coming up with Dr. Sam. And I actually thought that at 945 he's coming on, but I must have uh, skipped the entire 15-minute segment. So if there's anybody over here that has any questions, if anybody wants to hop on on, on this uh, lovely live this evening, um, feel free to come on. Would love to get to know some people. Negin, would you like to come on by any chance? I see Negin over here. I want to see if I see any familiar faces. Oh, Holly Jun. Or Holly can hop on for a second. She's a uniter. I'm trying to put a couple people on the spot that they had no idea that I might be doing this. But I have about 17 minutes to go until Dr. Sam comes. And I would love to have a conversation with anybody that would like to kind of come on and either give Noru's wishes, give some wishes of hope, uh, any words that are inspirational, motivational. Um, and if not, then I'll have certain things to say anyways. But I wanted to at least give this opportunity now that I realize that I completely uh, skipped on a 15 minute segment here. Oh, actually, you know what? Maybe Parmida is available. Parmida, um, Baez, Baez, hold on for a second. Um, Okay, I'm just I'm going for a far shot here with Parmida. Um, I'm seeing if she's available. Try to see if any of the Uniteds are available. Okay, well, let me tell you guys. Um, in case you don't know, Wednesday nights, we have Countdown to Freedom in Iran. 
every night, every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. It's one hour dedicated to what's happening in Iran, from news and updates to a mindful moment to a wellness uh, minute to um, to uh, having having a um, a special guest. Oh, there she is, Parmida's coming. Perfect. Look at this, Kismat. You probably know Parmida uh, Boris from uh, a lot of great things she's been doing, but. There was a poem that she did in the beginning of the revolution that went viral. Uh, she's so eloquent. She's been on every news channel that you could think of in Canada, uh, making sure that the voice of Iranians is amplified. And she's making a last minute appearance right now. We were trying to connect and make a good time happen. Let me press the button again. Maybe then go through. So I appreciate her making time on such short notice. I'm getting to the part of the 12 hours that I'm losing my mind here. So I'm sorry if my words are slurred. Hi, Barbara. Salam, salam. Sorry, like, I, wow, what fate, right, that we had a chance to talk tonight because I just texted you. I, I found a couple minutes and it's just been interview after interview today. And I'm like, what are the chances? Amazing. And then I heard you say this and I'm like, this must be divine timing. Sorry, I'm like, creeped up in, oh, a, in a room right now. I, I was like, let me randomly message because I, I I missed a 15 minute quadrant, like a very essential part. I told him, so it was empty. I was like, let me just try Parmi that. First of all, no, no Rus Pirus. And yes, this is kind of fun. Merci. Shohan Hamid, you're very, 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 I love seeing your face. Thank you so much for, for doing this. Um, I know it's, uh, it's um, a difficult time for everyone, you know, and it's hard to kind of call it a celebration at times, but it really is because I think that we all, we need it, right? In Saudi, it goes out, Saudi, it's very sad, it's very sad, it's very sad. Vali, to Nesim, Pochivan, Ham, Bemunim, and Aslan, we didn't stop. That's for that's the Ham, Dodim, and we've been going hard for six months, and we're allowed to take time and to appreciate that and to take a minute and just pat ourselves in the back because it's been nonstop. And I take such a pride just like you do in being able to do the work that we've done in the last six months alone. And um the this is going to be the year I, I know it um, and I just feel it in my bones and man uh, opportunity organization member of parliament I've been taking every opportunity I can and and so have you I, I know. Um, but I believe we have to do it for them and we have to do it for all the amazing women and, and young people and students and, and out there fighting, especially now recently with this, the attacks, the poisonings on the school girls and like I just think the torch has been passed on to these brave brave innocent you know beautiful souls that we have in iran who are really fighting tooth and nail for for freedom and self-determination but in sol joy and i'm so proud to call myself iranian sorry i'm like going on and on but it's just like i i feel such Pride to be able to call myself an Iranian, um, and واقعاً داریم به کل دنیا چشاشون رو ما هستن. و چند هفته پیش رفته بودم کوئینز یونیورسیتی دعوت شدم که صحبت کنم و شرم و برای اونا همین ویمن لایف فریدم شرم و همه اونایی که اونجا بودن واقعا چشمشون پر از گریه شده بود یعنی همشون گفت چی کار میتونیم بکنیم چی جوری میتونیم بیشتر کمک کنیم و and really these platforms are showing up for us to be able to do um, they they want to hear our voices they they feel our pain they understand what we're, what we're going through and we will not stop yani right now we're working on more legislation we're working on how we can find here in Canada the ins and outs of what more we can do to find little wins, you know, as the year goes by. That's what we need, a bunch of little wins to be able to, it's a journey, right? Rome wasn't built in a day. It's really brick by brick. And we should be proud of even the smallest things 
right? Because we know this is truly a marathon. Um, that, that we have to take the time uh, we've learned, you know, for rest and, and recoup and and mm-hmm. along the way because burnout is a real thing. I know you've learned that. I've learned that. But in Ruzai Mezem, we can tell you that 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 we All right. Awesome people. This is part nine of our 12 hour live stream. The celebration of no ruse we've been going live for almost 10 hours 11 hours we start at 11 11 a.m going to 11 11 p.m eastern time we've been gathering some of my favorite friends influencers social media activists uniters awesome people and this is the home stretch you are now a part of the home stretch and because it is the home stretch i'm starting to uh present to you my little prosecco I had the dinner with the family. We had the pictures with the half scene with the family. We have done uh, 95% of our guests. And in just a minute or two, we're going to have uh, Dr. Sam Rasul, one of our amazing uniters, my dear friend, my chiropractor. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Noli Pre- Pre- oh, Salamati. Wow, I'm telling you, if I'm slurring, it's not because of drinks. It's just literally my mind is starting to shut down. But Dr. Sam is going to be able to magically put me back into check. Uh, Ramin John Durud, what did I have for lunch? I had, um, well, for dinner, basically, we had sabzi polo mahi, like a boss. And I don't think I had lunch, to be honest. Nope, no lunch. I just realized. Uh, and here comes Dr. Sam. Please help me welcome. Dan. Oh man, they so good. <laughs> Dr. Sam! <laughs> How are you, my friend? You're still in scrubs, man? Still in scrubs, baby. You know how I do. <laughs> nah, nah, I don't get y'all's that side going on 12, 11 going on 12 hours, my friend. You I know. are a beast. Or whatever. No, I don't know. I hope it's an incredible year for you and your loved ones. Uh, it's been a rough year for all of us, but we're turning a page, man. And this is going to be the year, personally, professionally, and patriotically. Absolutely. Sad that I said. And Iman John, I have to give you a lot of thanks to yourself, your sister, your mother, and your entire family. Um, when you put together the event on Saturday, which we were able to attend, myself, my mother, and my aunt, you were so kind as to help me organize. My mom's birthday is, is uh, actually tomorrow, but we celebrate this weekend. And awesome. she was still so touched. And I thank you. That's one thing that this, uh, un- unfortunately, it took a drastic event like the revolution to bring together such an amazing community of people. And I've been able to meet you and people like Sade and Paris and Katayun and Nikki and Mona and Mona. I mean, the list goes on and on. It's amazing yeah. individuals. And we're going to be celebrating on the streets of Iran soon in Azadi. So, for sure, <laughs> yeah. for sure, man. Yes. Sir. Let me ask you: when, when was the last time that you were in Iran? For me, man, I was two years old. So I, had, I was two or I was going on three um, when I went there. So it was like right around, like you know, I'm going to age myself here, but like 1984, 85. <laughs> Um, but it was right in the, uh, in the time of uh, Jang, where, you know, the war time with Iraq. So I was there for a couple of months. And then I've been trying to go back ever since. I tried to get a student visa to go back during my time in college. I even went as far as to, like, get my paperwork together. And every year something came up. It was one thing or another with my family. We couldn't go back and so on and so forth. Um, and then, of course, like, the pandemic happened. And then we had to put that on the back burner. And then, of course, you know, now with this, you know, with the death of Asa, uh, of with Masa Amini, and then of course leading to the revolution. It's just, it's just, it's unfortunate, but I put my own personal stuff aside. You know, I, I, my heart goes out to all of our uniters and any one of our viewers who still have family in Iran. My father's family is in Sandar, Iran, in Ahvaz, and it's just been difficult. It's been a difficult time for us, you know, just trying to communicate with them to know that they're safe, number one, and what they're going through on a daily basis. If you were in uh, Iran right now, and if Iran was free, how would you be celebrating Nowruz? 
I, if Iran was free and I was there, I mean, I don't think the party would stop for a week. I think I'd be going, <laughs> I would, I would have you by my side, my brother. And as I it would be, it would be a, a celebration 44 years in the making. Yeah. I think that's what it, people don't understand is that, and that's something that uh, I love what you're putting together here. And I love that we are still keeping the, those, you know, people in Iran our brothers and sisters who have lost loved ones, obviously of all ages from children to the elderly and people who have risked their lives daily. Um, but what makes us special as Iranians, as Persians, is we, we hold our culture and our pride so high. I mean, you see the organization of the, of the Tazarat, of the protests. I mean, you see them in different cities, whether you're in Toronto, Miami, LA, Washington, DC, uh, Berlin, all over the world. I mean, Persians have this internal desire of fire burning within them. And I think that like, if it was, you know, we're waiting for that day when we have a free Iran to celebrate. And I think it's going to be something that I think the airlines are going to get really, really, you know, <laughs> crowded with a lot of Iranians flying back to celebrate. I, I would invest in some stocks in Iran Air right now because I feel like it's <laughs> going to make a comeback and it's going to be a it's going to be a great airline for sure. I mean, I can't Im I can't even imagine. Uh, how Iran will be flooded with not even just Iranians, but mm -hmm. there are so many non-Iranians that, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's going to become like the premier tourist destination as soon as it gets its bearing straight, you know? Like, there's just so much that Iran has to, like, offer that, like, it'll be flooded. It's going to be incredible. Absolutely. And like you said, it's not just for Iranians. It's not just for Iranians. I've had patients of mine. And they come from all walks of life, from American to Cuban to Argentinian to Brazilian to French, Italian, who have gone to Iran during this, I mean, before the revolution was occurring. And they come back to me and they tell me, in all my travels, the most beautiful country I've been to, the nicest people in the world, you ask for directions and they not only tell you where to go, they, they will give you their phone number, give me a call when you get there. It, it, the, I said, they were saying, I said, they're warm people they want to help and that's just who we are to our core and i think that that's what speaks volumes to us and i think that once those doors open for a free iran where our fellow brothers and sisters are able to live freely under not under a tyrannical regime and then it's going to open the door for others to to experience what we already know that we have a beautiful country we have a, a vast and and rich history and our culture is so, it's just the diversity, like you said, we see the images when you've done Countdown and they, you know, the, the scenery of the country, people are like, you guys have mountains and greenery and this and that. And it's just, you know, people are floored by how beautiful the country really is. And it pales in comparison to how beautiful the people are. And it's crazy how like, even right now, when you go to Iran, they are so hospitable, so kind. And these are the same people that for 44 years, many people their entire lifetime have been growing up and raised in a totalitarian government, you know, like, or regime. Mm -hmm. Like, imagine how, how, how much happier, how much more welcoming they would be if they actually lived in a free democratic country where they can do as they please, dance where they want, you know, sing where they want. It's just, that's, that's where you know that at the core, Iranians are truly some of the most uh, genuine and incredible and warmest uh, types of humans around the world that even through all of this, they're able to still, you know, be so kind and, and welcoming. Like you said it, sad, that sad, or 100% in, in English. And it's like, that's why it's so important. That's what I appreciate. Iman John, the moment that we met, I, it was just like an instantaneous thing. Like I knew I'd met my brother. You know, we come from like, even though we haven't, you know, we never were born in Iran, both of us. And of course, your Farsi is much better than mine. <laughs> but, you know, we have no. this richness in our culture, this, this fire that burns inside of us. And I see you and you inspire me. You inspire all the Uniters. You inspire everyone each and every day to dig down deep and be the best version of themselves, not only for Iran, but for themselves, be the best version of yourself. So what you're doing with United Conquer, bringing to attention the struggles of our brothers and sisters, because in an English format, because a lot of us will be like, wait, it's, I don't understand Persian. Um, what are they saying? Or I don't understand what's written there. So what you've done with United Conquer, it's been amazing to be able to bring that to not only people like myself, 
But I, I've been able to help spread the word to friends of mine who are like, oh, I didn't know what's going on in Iran. Or did someone, did someone die? Did a woman die because this happened? I'm like, this is so much more than, I mean, and may her, may she rest in peace, uh, Masa Amini, whose life was taken far too soon. This is about 44 years, like you said, of oppression, 44 years of tyranny, 44 years of people living in fear of simply basically wanting to better their lives. They've had this glass ceiling that they cannot break through. And we're hoping that this is the catalyst that will help accelerate us and, you know, take us into freedom for our beloved country of Iran. Um, I'm very curious. Why, why do you care so much? I mean, like the last six months, because I knew from before the revolution, you know, mm. you came to the Bakhtia events. That's how we originally connected. So, mm. um, you know, and, and you, you've used your platform by creating so much content about Iran, um, educational content, uh, patriotic content, you know, like, you, you know, you've been so integral in what we're doing in the South uh, Florida protests and initiatives. Why? For me, it's something that same thing that I would ask the same thing that would, they would ask you and you probably give a similar answer It's because to it, to it, Moon, we are in the deep down in our core. It is we're proud of our culture. We're proud of our heritage. I mean, in no disrespect to anyone else that comes from any diaspora, whether it be of any type of culture or religious background. But we Iranians have this like pride in our heritage and our culture. And I've always been tied to that. You know, even though I was a first generation American and my parents came here in, in 79 during the revolution for educational purposes and, of course, stayed post-revolution, it was something that even growing up, my parents instilled in me a richness of culture, a pride in being who I am, being the best representation. And I still carry that to this day, something that my parents have taught me. Every time I have an interaction with someone at a networking event or with a patient or if I'm, you know, if I'm grace, you know, if I'm if I'm uh, privileged enough to be on a program like this or on television, I always think about I'm representing myself, I'm representing my family and the family name, but I'm also representing my culture because a lot of people will say, okay, that is the representation of what an Iranian man should be. That is a representation of what a per a Persian is. You know, a person who is proud of who they come from and they are caring and they do want to give more than they receive. That is everything that you are. That's everything that I've seen our uniters have been. And I'm no better. I think that I pale in comparison to what you've done, to what Sada has done, to what Mona's done. The list goes on and on. And it's unbelievable. And I want to give all you guys the credit because you make me want to do better. And it's something that I think that all of us have deep down in us. It doesn't matter where you were born or where you were raised. Deep down at the core, we are Iranian. We are proud of who we are. <laughs> Are you about to get into invitations, man? Because we got a couple of minutes for some invitations. We'll, we'll leave that for the bonus. Uh, the bonus section is going to be you doing like an Arnold and stuff. We'll get to it in a second. Um, there you go. What, what message do you have for our compatriots? What message of hope? What type of Noru's wishes do you have that you'd like to share? Well, Noru's to me has always been so special because, of course, my family you know, as, you're, as yourself, Iman John, we, we take pride in it because it's a very special holiday. It's a new beginning for all of us. Regardless of what the past year has, you know, we've entailed or contoured in our, you know, the obstacles we've had to overcome, it's that fresh start, just like people would look for the new year. But for us Iranians, it's something that we kind of like look at this and say, okay, we are going to like have a fresh start and kind of look forward to giving more to ourselves giving more to our family, giving more to our friends, and of course, our community. But I think this year is truly special because the message I would give, not only to our brothers and sisters in Iran, that message is that we still stand with you and we are apps. I have never been more proud. I used to always say, I'm Persian, I'm Persian, I'm Persian. I have never like been more proud to declare myself in every single moment and every single time I can have uh, the opportunity to explain to people that I, I am a proud Iranian and we stand with our brothers and sisters in the face of tyranny and we stand with the people. And to everybody out there, regardless of what country you live in, um, I think Mona June said it best and Sara and everybody else and Shiva has shared it. It's dig down in your deep down in yourself. Take care of yourself first because your cup has to be filled. If you're running on empty, take a step back. Other people will step in. But 
dig down deep in yourself and, and, and go back to your why. Why did you start caring so much about the struggles in Iran? Why do you want to see a free Iran? And then when you can answer that simple question, because I think everyone's going to have their own reason, I think the main thing is that your fire will be ignited again. And I think that to each and every person out there, if your fire is going a little dim, it's starting to burn a little softer, figure out your why. Go back to that original, and you will then, that fire, you'll see it ignited again, just like gasoline on a flame. I love that. Um, Sam, because, um, you know, you, I know how much you care about the wellness, the health of all those around you, and you've devoted your entire professional life to be able to have people live a healthier life. And you've been truly like um, an incredibly impactful person with regards to the pain and the struggles I've had with my back and my neck. So I can truly speak this from actual experience. Um, can you share a couple of tips that people can kind of take home tonight? And you know, whether it's about posture, whether it's about diet, whether it's about sleep, whether it's about stress. I mean, you are the stress doctor. So just a couple of, couple of your like most important pointers where you're like, guys, these are a couple of things that you should really be doing. It's not that hard, but it makes a big impact. What's the most bang for the buck uh, health tips that you can give right now? Well, I didn't know any about it, no, Matt. Your program just turned into a 24 hour program. I can keep going for 12 more hours. <laughs> but I, think I, I, do have, I do have a few five extra minutes. So go ahead, please. <laughs> Monday no, no. Awesome. I think the biggest thing, Iman John, and to keep the correlation to our, you know, to our wonderful people, I think it's hard in, in the midst of this celebration of Nowruz, which is to every Iranian out there, this is the most joyous time of year. Every, every little boy and girl looks forward to this with their family. As we get older, we look forward to these moments that we get to share with our family and friends and those loved ones around us because, you know, it's, because, it's become a thing where fa friends become family. And that's what Nowruz means to me. And it's always meant to me. And the biggest thing is it's hard to disconnect from that with everything going on in Iran. So what is everyone doing right now? They're glued to their smartphones and rightfully so. So if you're in the supermarket, you're in the mall, you're in a waiting room at a doctor or, you know, just, you know, wherever you may be going, what are people doing? This. They're on their phones constantly. So one tip I can give people is that with text neck is getting really, you know, getting out of control and people have their shoulders rolled forward like this and they're just like this the whole time. One easy stretch you can implore is a simple thing where you just want to kind of put the phone down. Now, number one, if you're using the phone, elevate your phone so that's not down here. Bring it at least to above, like basically looking down at it about 45 degrees. If you don't want to look like you're taking a picture of everybody while you're texting, you can at least put it here so you're not flexing your neck. And the other thing you want to do is a simple stretch exercise. You can employ this on a daily basis. You can do it one or two times a day. You can do it 10 to 20 times a day where you simply put your hands in front of your belt line and you just basically open up like this and you're pulling your shoulder blades back into your spine. That opens up your chest. It allows you to descend your diaphragm down, getting more air into your lungs, more oxygen to your blood, which is going to deliver to your whole body, your organ function. And you're just going to sit like this. If I turn around and show everybody, it's just something like this. Your head is up, you're pulling those shoulder blades back, and then you release. And you do a couple of repetitions of that in midst of on your computer, you're on your phone, you're at work, you're at home. Doing that a couple of times a day, it makes a world of difference. And there's been study after study showing how improved posture can actually not only give you better oxygen, but actually help your hormone balance. You know, it's like more testosterone for men, e equaling out the estrogen progesterone levels for women. So this is an unbelievable thing. Just thinking how you stand and how you basically have a good posture can affect your overall health today and tomorrow. What's one thing that you would add to your diet and one thing you would remove from your diet? Woo! One thing? One thing? <laughs> one thing that one thing that I would absolutely and, 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 and us Iranians we know this is we are big sabzi whores. We love our vegetables and we eat whether it's cooked in stews or we love our salads and raw vegetables. But you cannot go wrong, ladies and gentlemen, regardless of what they say with when there was the spinach outbreak with all that stuff going on with it. <laughs> when you incorporate more leafy greens, you cannot go wrong and I preferably go organic with it. So whether you decide to get a supplement and get like your, you know, they have like 20 different greens and then you take, put in your shake, 
or you just start to implore more greens into your diet. And I take it a step further, make your plate as colorful as possible. So your greens, your purples, your reds, your yellows with fruits and vegetables, you're going to be able to hit all your vitamins and minerals and everything else. The one thing I would absolutely, absolutely implore most of our viewers to take out of your diet. Now I've been plant-based for seven years so regardless i'm gonna tell people of, you know a lot of people look at me and they're like you're not persian if you don't eat kebab what's wrong with you so, <laughs> so i'm not going to take away your kebab but i would strongly urge our viewers to take dairy out of your diet there is so many case studies coming out over and over and over again of the detrimental effects of dairy on overall health on the gut on the intestinal lining on inflammation and so on and so forth so if there's one thing I can tell you is really try to either massively limit or eliminate your dairy. And there are alternatives now with almond milk and, and cashew milk and rice milk and coconut milk, and they're made into yogurts and cheeses, and they're absolutely delicious. Really, really try to eliminate dairy from your diet. That's a lot of great advice, my friend. I'm going to definitely get on more greens. And our friend Fatty from Iranian Nose has displayed all the emojis for all the different types of vegetables that you can integrate. And that's uh, beautiful. Yeah. And we and have I, Dr. Well, Nusha. Yes. You know, Dr. Nusha. Did you just say it skin? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then, but Kia is very upset. He's like chips with no musk. First of all, I'm offended by the way you spelled must, Kia. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen M-A-U-S-T. But I understand because M-A-S-T could be mask. So I, I, I'm going to let you slide with that one. And I love uh, that, but, but, that Dr. Nusha share that with skin because your skin health is not only what you put on your skin, but what you eat. So dairy causes inflammation. A lot of people that have breakouts where they have different things with their skin. So I love that she included that. Yeah. Oh, this is perfect. I love, I love this teamwork. <laughs> we have, we have, um, we have Noli who's saying alternative milks are full of oil. So we got to be careful also what those alternatives are, you know, so we got to basically read the back of the cartons, you know, that's very important. Um, exactly. Well, this was great stuff. I think, uh, Sam, the, the best way to end this segment is for you to choose one or more of your favorite impressions and, you know, say your parting words in whichever uh, person that you want. Well, of course, being no ruse, I'll try to throw them in as, one, as much as I can. So I do, as you know, Iman Dunn, I do a lot of impersonations to make it fun when I'm around my friends. So, of course, the one I'm known for is talking like this, listen to me now. This is no ruse, okay? This is a celebration of life, okay? This is the Iranian people are fighting women like freedom, okay? I used to fight in Austria, not him over here. I pumped it up, you know, and then my friend Borat, he came from Kazakhstan. Be excited, US and I am now for Iran. <laughs> <laughs> That and then, you know, if no, one, if no one, if no one likes it, you know, I go back to like South Park and I just go, see you guys, I'm going home. And I'll just part up. <laughs> I would, I would give you a standing ovation, but then everyone will see my crotch. So I just have to do it sitting down. But I want you to know that uh, that was appreciated. That was needed. The, the laughing emojis, I think, uh, speak for themselves. So uh, appreciate you, man. You gave us uh, knowledge. You guys gave, you gave us uh laughter and uh just good vibes man and that's dr salman in a nutshell thank you so much for everything you do thanks for being an awesome uniter thank you for being a great chiropractor and most importantly thank you for being a great friend that uh even like this morning you sent a monday motivation but i'm sorry i was panicking getting ready for the program i didn't get a chance to watch it but i'll look at the monday morning um motivation on, on tuesday morning you know there you and go you got the motivation i want to thank you iman john not only for this program for everything you do each day you help me and help everybody really make sure that we're the best version of ourselves not just for iran but everything you do you put your passion you put your heart you put your soul in it and we greatly appreciate it i think i speak for everyone who's been on the program everyone who's watching you really truly are an inspiration i'm fortunate and lucky enough to call you my brother thank you Man, I mean, it goes both ways always. You know, this is it. This is true. Um, I mean, what, what Unite and Conquer is, is my version of a utopia mm -hmm. where we all look out for each other. We understand that everybody goes through some hard times and that's why you have to be kind to each other. You have to give people the benefit of the doubt. You have to check in on each other and you have to constantly, um, you know, just be there for each other because, you know, life, unfortunately, will smack you around left and right um and you know if you don't have trustworthy people to lean on to then it can become a really really um 
even more difficult of a life. So all I try to right. do is create an environment around me with people that I admire, that I love, that I respect, that I trust, that are full of integrity and character, that they don't go and talking behind people, and that instead, if they have an issue, that they come and confront you uh, face to face, you know? And so that's one thing that um, I've just tried to do, and now that's what we have around us, you know? Like right now, if you look at the Uniters, you can look left, you can look right, you can look up and you can look down, and you see 100% trust in these individuals. And so we're, we're, we're really in the trenches, where we know that we have each other's back, man. So it's, I'm telling you, it's all reciprocated. It really is, but no taro. In the words of our late president, not George W., but his father, George Sr., George Bush Sr. would say, read my lips. Iman Hushman is a great guy. <laughs> I know it. He's a great guy. Fantastic. Read my lips. I'm telling you the truth. Dude, we need to have a stand-up show just for you. I'm going to have box <laughs> Baksha stand up featuring Dr. Sam, Tamshara, and I'll have Tehran come to make Nikki really happy. Uh, you know, it'll be, a, it'll be a great hoot of an evening, you know? Then, listen, if I get to open up, I'll, I'll, I'll try to do my best to open up for a guy like Tehran. Not Baba, I'll make sure Tehran opens up for you. Don't, 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 give, don't give Tehran so much credit. <laughs> <laughs> Tehran opens for Dr. Sam. Tell me sure that I... He's a dictator, isn't he? Dictator. Anyways, thank you so much. And listen, Uniters, at 1045, we're going to get some of the co-producers of today's program back on to have some chat. I hope we get to have all the Uniters in the chat. It's going to be the closing ceremony. Uh, and we'd love to have as much of the Uniters, the South Border community, and just... Really, all the individuals that may not be a uniter technically by being involved in what we're doing day to day, but a supporter, a community member, uh, everybody that follows what we're doing and supporting what we're doing, you are a uniter, you know. And so uh, hopefully we'll see you guys at 1045. At 1030, mm -hmm. it's going to be Matthew Nouriel, uh, an incredible representative of the LGBTQ uh, community that has been spending so much of their time being the voice of Iranians. And I cannot wait to introduce uh, them at 10.30. Dr. Yeah. Sam, much love. Zan, much zendigi, love. azadi, ba umide, azadi. Azadi. No, <laughs> okay, Peruz, Peruz. Be gole kave, azadi, azadi, azadi. Begu! I can tell that my, uh, my champagne is finally kicking in, so I have to apologize in advance to Matthew Nouriel, but it's been a uh, uh, long, but, but good day. So it's 10.24 p.m. Eastern time. Um, let me just make sure that uh, we're good on schedule. Like I said, we have Matthew Nouriel. If you know Matthew, uh, drop a line. Tell me if you've been following Matthew. Um, I mean, this is one of those individuals. When I, when I think of who has been posting quality content, uh, impactful content, literally on a day-to-day -day basis for God knows how many months, I, it's, it's, been, it's been Matthew. And um, it, it's really... It's really going to be a pleasure for me to get to know him a little bit better. It'll be my first time uh, getting to know him and getting to know them. And so hopefully they'll be joining very soon and we get to uh, talk about what has been um, their motivation to doing everything they've been doing and how they spent uh, Noru's and their Noru's wishes. So uh, in just a few moments, expect to have him on. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I do want to thank... Sarah Kazumi, Mona Hayri, Paris Mansuri, Shiva Saber, Miriam Aronson. Uh, these, these individuals have been uh, an integral part of the entire day. And, you know, I, I literally decided to do this like, I don't know, five, six days ago. And my dumbass really thought that I could do this uh, all alone. And I do owe them an apology for dragging him into to this, you know, like it, it became a lot more than what I expected. And if I didn't have them uh, subbing in throughout the entire program, um, I wouldn't have been able to make it this far. So even right now, I'm kind of like, just barely getting to the finish line. So um, I'm going to do my best to finish strong and not slur my words. Uh, but yeah, it's been a really great uh, team collective effort. And they, they, they really sacrifice a lot of quality time with their families uh, to be here. So please show them a lot of love. 
um, follow them, uh, become friends with them. Because uh, if you have people like that in your life, uh, I assure you that your life is going to be much more enjoyable. It's going to have a lot more laughter. And it's just going to have a lot more um, motivation to be a better person because they're truly um, uh, high caliber quality characters. Uh, and you, you need to have people like that because they will hold you accountable. They will um, call you out on your bullshit. They will um, lift you up when you're down. And um, I'm just a lucky, I'm a, I'm a lucky dude. I'm telling you, uh, you are who you hang out with. And I realize in this, this revolution, I don't know if you all experience the same, but I, I, I have a whole new um, standard, <laughs> if you may, for, for friendship. Um, and um, somebody said it earlier, it's a pretty well-known saying, but they say that, you know, friends are the family that you choose. And the revolution uh, introduced to these individuals, I didn't necessarily choose them, but I am choosing to still have them around because they're just incredible people. And uh, if I can ever make any kind of humble recommendation on how to improve your quality of life, it's to improve the quality of people uh, that you have around you and constantly have people around you that um, are doing better, uh, that are doing some amazing things, that are doing some uh, revolutionary stuff that are making ultimate sacrifices that are juggling a lot of things uh, and just doing their best that they're genuine people authentic people that they're vulnerable people you know like you don't want anybody that just acts like they got everything figured out you really want to be around people that uh, they acknowledge that they're not perfect and they acknowledge that they have room for improvement if you're meeting somebody that they have everything figured out you don't you don't want to be around that person because that person has not evolved. And when you're around people that they act like they have everything figured out, that they think that they're better than other people, or they think that um, they should talk down to other people, that they're constantly talking behind somebody else in front of you. Um, you know, they're, they're doing it behind you as well. So what you want is people that they don't uh, participate in that type of juvenile, immature, uh, and, and um, inappropriate behavior so i'm just grateful that i'm i have these uh, incredible people around me that they 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 really make me want to be uh, a high caliber individual somebody that can be of um of value to the community of value to the world we only have one chance to make a lasting impact in this world and i just don't want it to go to waste and i'm surrounded with individuals that refuse to have a life go to waste um and and yeah so on that note we have matthew that is uh joining the chat and i'm sure i'm sure they're going to be clicking the request to join uh in a moment so i'm very thrilled to have that be our last special guest of this special program and i appreciate everybody that's been joining so far uh you could have been spending your your notus with anybody and everywhere else but you chose it here and it means the world to me. It means the world to our fellow Uniters that were producing it. So let's welcome Matthew Noriel, who now I have the pleasure of meeting for the very first time. And make sure you show him some love. Duru Matthew, Duru how are you? No. 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 Man, I mean, you have no idea how excited I am to virtually meet you. Uh, I've been so incredibly impressed with just the, the amount of time and heart and soul you've been putting into all this content to bring awareness to what's happening in Iran. And I'm just honored to have met you finally. And hopefully I get to do it in person, dude. But you're, you're a brave, Thank badass. You. I appreciate that Thank so you. much. And, and, uh, you know, I have to say, with, with this whole revolution that's been taking place for the past six months, I, I'm so, uh, I, I, I received the, the compliment and I'm thankful for it, but I, I, I can't, uh, it's almost like I don't feel like I can accept it because I'm simply e echoing what the people in Iran are asking us to echo. And it's, it's just not about me at all. But uh, I would be lying if I said I didn't appreciate the, the compliment. So thank you. And thank you for everything. <laughs> 
where, where before we get into the nitty gritty of all the incredible activism that you've been spearheading, uh, how did you spend your Noru's? And thank you for spending the today. Part of your Noru's I, with I us. had to work all day, unfortunately, which is why I look a bit of a mess. It's just been, a, you know, Mondays at work. It's always a bit of a, a rough one, but That's I'm, what I'm it's manic Monday. It's just it's another, another manic, manic Monday, Monday, as the song goes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, on Saturday night, I'm going to be going to a, f a party of a dear friends with some dear friends. And I look forward to that very much. How about yourself? You've Excellent. been doing this all day, right? I've been, yeah. So I'm, I'm blessed to be like living in a compound where I have my podcast studio. And then literally my mom is like next door. My sister is next door. So they've been around. Unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to really spend quality time. But I've had 10 <laughs> minutes Sabzi Polomahi. Five minutes pictures with the half scene, but other than that, have been spending it with amazing people like yourself and the rest of the community has been tuning in. So thank you for asking. I will definitely go and uh, spend quality time with them at 11, 12 p.m. Eastern time. Um, so, so Matthew, for those who haven't had the pleasure of knowing who you are, um, can you give a little, uh, yeah. a little bio about uh, okay, yourself? Sure. A, a little quick bio. So um, <laughs> my name is Matthew Nuriel. I'm um, Iranian, Jewish, and queer. And uh, I've sort of made it my life mission to, um, I, 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 I spent a lot of my life running from one part of my identity or the other to appease another part of my identity or the other, um, including trying to run away from my Iranianness. Uh, none of that worked. Um, so I guess you could say that a, a, a big mission of mine in life is to, um, live unabashedly and, and visibly in all facets of my identity and, and empower not only myself, but anybody else who might be able to relate to that, uh, any part of that identity or not even that identity, just relate to the, the idea of living in um, authenticity. So it's not really a bio, but it's a, it's a yeah. sum up. Uh, no, but I mean, you, you painted a very clear picture and you know, like I can I can relate to one component to it heavily and you have multiple components. So I can imagine how much more challenging yeah. it was for you. Um, tell me tell me what what was it about um, this revolution that was a catalyst for you to basically um, really make it almost like your full time job to be the voice of Iranians? Like what was it that hit home for you? What was it that had you like? completely going uh, full force and being the maximum and voice for Iranians. A, it, there's a lot to answer when it comes to that question. Um, I, first of all, I am Iranian, but I was not born in Iran. I was born in the UK, raised in, in the UK and in Los Angeles. Um, but, you know, I mentioned I, I tried to run away from my Iranianness or whatever parts of my identity that I tried to run away from. And part of that was being Iranian, but you can never run away from who you are. And, and not only that, culturally uh, us iranians regardless of our ethnicity or our faith or, or whatever um the culture farhang it's in it's within all of us because we're raised with it and it's so strongly a part of us so um i've always you know over the years always spoke out here and there about iran but what happened six months ago um i feel like a match was you, you know a match was was struck like uh, it sort of I feel like Iran was this pressure cooker and the lid just completely blew off and I felt a sense of responsibility as somebody who uses social media and speaking engagements and whatever I can to speak out about whatever issues are important to me um, this was an opportunity to really push for push forward full force not only just for Iranians as a whole and for the Iranian people as a whole and for our our homeland as a whole. Also as a queer Iranian, um, LGBTQ plus Iranians, I think are pretty much, I think it's safe to say at the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to rights in Iran. They, they have none. Um, queer Iranians within Iran have been persecuted, raped, tortured, murdered, um, honor killings are acceptable. Um, up to 7,000 LGBTQ plus Iranians have been murdered at the hands of this regime. And that's just uh, an estimated uh, number of the official uh, um, 
deaths that have taken place. There's been so much more beyond that. So I feel a great sense of responsibility to speak up and to be visible about that. Not for myself, I'm here, I'm fine. For the sake of the queer people that are living in Iran and that, that um, have to hide who they are for literally for fear of, of literal persecution and, and murder. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, no, absolutely. Now, so a couple of times you mentioned how you ran away from, or you tried to run away from your Iranian identity. What brought you back in and what made you now be a proud Iranian Jewish queer? That, like, you, what was a turning point no, in I your think life? A few, uh, I just got tired. I got tired of trying to appease other people. I got tired of trying to be anything other than what I'm not. I'm not good at being anything other than what I am, um, which made it all the more exhausting. And um, <clears throat> I just thought, well, why don't you just, instead of, because I found myself, I, you know, I had a very hard time growing up as queer and I found myself blaming um, the Jewish culture that I come from, the Iranian culture that I come from, both very, um, Iranian Jewish culture is very conservative. Um, and so I tried, to, in, I tried to separate myself from it. And what I realized was that I was not only doing myself a disservice, but I was doing a disservice to other LGBTQ plus Iranians and Jews and Iranian Jews, um, especially younger ones, because I, what, what, am, what example am I setting? Am I setting the example of, oh, if you don't like it, you run away from it? It doesn't work that way. So instead, I leaned into it and 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 searched for a sense of empowerment um and empowered myself with it so yeah and wh and wh when when was that do you mind if i ask how old we were when you like you basically you said enough is enough i'm going to be me it wasn't Screw until everybody i was else. already into my 30s yeah oh wow so pretty yeah. recent because i didn't even know you were I'm older okay. than i look um, so so <laughs> thank you <laughs> You look great. Um, so, so now I, I'm, it's actually interesting now that you that you're saying that this happened at a later age. Um, I've been asking everybody like what type of Noru's wishes that you have for Iranian people. Um, I, I would love for you to speak to the 15 year old version of you that is in Iran right now, and what what you would say to them so that they don't have to go through an additional 15 or so years which you went through, which I can, everybody can understand that that's, those are incredible years that uh, you lost out on, unfortunately, but you're now making up for yeah. it by empowering other people. You're making your story be something that can really bring other people out of the trenches. So if you could speak to the 15 year old Iranian Jewish or Iranian Baha'i queer or just Iranian queer, speak to them right now, especially on this um, important I day just, right now. Well, first of all, I want to, um, highlight that I, I didn't lose those years because I firmly believe that every everything you experience in your life makes you brings you to the place that you're at and if I didn't have those years I don't think I would be as cool as I am now so um absolutely and I also want to name absolutely. that you know P LGBTQ young people from Iran do reach out to me online and it's a very very hard I have have a very hard time with trying to give them advice because on the one hand I want to be like get out find a way to get out you've got to get out you've got to save your life but on the other hand it's like what a horrible thing to have to tell somebody you have to leave your home your country your culture your language everything so I, I, I guess all I would say right now is that in the name of positivity and in the name of um, no rules and, and new beginnings and new life I would say hang on to hope and i know for a fact that the majority of people especially in tehran in iran are not homophobic are not transphobic the majority of them are are everybody young people that i speak to all across iran are so down and so understanding so find those people that are your that are your extended family and and your tribe and stick to them and empower yourself and and be careful while you're doing it but know that there's a whole, whole army of us who are outside of Iran who have, who are not going to let go, and we're going to keep going until you all have your freedom. Um, I think that's that's the best thing that I can say right now, and to keep fighting. 
Absolutely. And um, what what about for maybe there's some similar messages, but what about for all the Iranians as a whole, young and old that are right now in Iran that they keep on fighting? Is I there any additional message? It's pretty much the same thing that we're here. I don't I don't want them to lose sight of the fact that there's so many of us that are here, Iranian and non-Iranian alike, who who are who are really fighting to make sure that this regime, this, this horrible satanic regime is overturned um, and that they will have freedom. And it, it will happen. I always say, I don't know when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. It's not sustainable. I don't know if it's going to happen in a week, in a month, in, in a year or 10 years, but it will happen. And I think that those of us like myself and yourself are not going to stop until it happens. And I want them to rest assured that as long as they keep fighting, we're going to keep fighting. And when they need to take a break, we will pick up the slack. And we're, we're there. Like, we're, we're here, and it's, it's not going to stop. So, exactly. Hashtag free Iran. I love that. I, <laughs> I, I'm very curious. Um, would you say that Iranians and Iranian Jews, have they... Have, would you say that they've evolved in the past few years? Like, are you are you receiving the love that you deserve, the support that you deserve? You know, like, are you are you? What, what it's do you a mixed bag. I mean, I, you you also have to take geography into account. I live in Los Angeles, and um, certain organizations and individuals have been working very hard in Los Angeles to ensure that LGBTQ acceptance is a thing amongst um, Iranians and also amongst the Iranian Jewish community here. And we've made huge strides. And um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's different with everyone. I still, get, you know, I, I do drag. I'll still go. I remember just a couple months ago, I went to like a friend's party and I was in drag and I heard these other, you know, Iranian people. They never know I'm Iranian. They just don't know. And they just, you know, baby, and boy, 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 you know, baby. And I was like, yeah, man, oh, baby, what? And they just like, their mouth dropped. Oh, nice. <laughs> That that reminds that reminds me for years. Yeah, like, you know you know Tehran, right? Half black, half Iranian. So I've known him for like a long time, and before he was really well known, in in DC, I would be with him all the time. And then some Iranian would just say some chair to pet, and then like Tehran would respond exactly. in Persian, exactly. and like up me then, you know. And so like I'm glad that you're confronting them. Like, listen, some things it it just takes one person at a time. It requires somebody to just put him, not to put him in place, but make him realize that. You need to be mindful of what you say, where you say, what you think, you know. And so, I'm I'm glad that you're you you respond with some snap to it, you know. <laughs> um, by the way, if you ever want to do drag in Miami, there's a place called the Palace, and you need to come over here, and we'd love to see. I would love it. Is that here. where you're based um, out of? I thought you were in Orange County. Right. I'm I'm primarily in Miami. I was in D.C. for 30 years, but the pandemic brought me down to Miami, so I'm in South Beach. And there's a place called the Palace on Ocean Drive and like eight. And I wouldn't come during spring break, a lot of crazy shit happening. But other than that, uh, they like every night they have a program and I just love to go over there. And like, there's just so much energy and it's just, li they're just living up life, you know? And so like, if that's what you do, right. we got to kind of connect you over here and get some Iranian Absolutely. representation down here too, you know? <laughs> Next time I'm in Miami, I'm definitely going to hit you up. And we'll, we'll hit the town. No, please, please, please do. But, but Matthew, I'm so glad that I got to end this 12-hour uh, live stream with Thank a powerhouse you. human being like yourself. Uh, you know, you are as, as brave as the ones that are fighting on the streets inside of Iran and appreciate everything you're doing to giving them the love, the support, the energy, the encouragement, and uh, whatever else that you're doing behind the scenes uh, is amazing. Uh, what you're doing on your social media is amazing, and I just give yeah. you uh, utmost respect. For, for everything you're doing. I'm, I'm rooting for you. Keep on kicking ass. Thank you, Iman. being the voice of our so people. so touched. That, that's really kind of you. And thank you for everything that you're doing. And thank you for having me on today. Of course. I hope you enjoy celebrating Nodus a little belated on Saturday. Have fun. Enjoy <laughs> some Sabji Polamahi, a belated one. And uh, let's stay in touch, man. Let's continue one, to support whatever we're doing to be the voice of our people. I would people. love to stay in touch. Thank you. Nodus at Pews. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the last amazing guest of this amazing program, uh, all the way from California after a long day of work. Matthew joined us, um, uh, and it was, a, it was a pleasure getting to know him a little better. I'm, I'm glad that he's being, uh, showered, he's being showered with all the love that you guys have all extended to them. So 
It's 10.45 p.m., which means that we are truly at the home stretch of this program. A couple hours ago, I was like, oh, my God, when is this going to end, with all due respect? Um, but now I'm like, damn, this is coming to an end. And the only reason why I'm happy this ending is because I get to spend some quality time with the family. But before we get to there, I want to start bringing on some of our Uniters family. Hi, Orly June. I feel like it's been ages since I saw you this morning. <laughs> so thank you so much for checking in. Uh, we're about to bring... Uh, Sare, I would say bring your wine, bring your um, bubbly, you know, it's the end of the night, so we're going to be popping something, you know. Sare Joe and I'm sorry, all the uniters that are producing are forcing me out at this point. Uh, hey, man, don't say I never did anything for you, man. You know, I'd be, I'd be 10 hours into REM sleep by now. I owe you Vaughn. You probably skipped three naps today I'm because of this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm well, sorry. I'm making up for it in the next week. Oh, I don't want to hear anything from I you. I know. I, th I think you need to skip Wednesday's countdown episode <laughs> and just sleep all Wednesday <laughs> evening. <laughs> I know. We're, we're almost done. We're almost there. Mona oh. is holding herself up with a hand. If she move, if um, she removes that hand, she's a god. I have to wake up in like five hours. I'm flying early in the morning. Oh. Mont to, to Montreal, of course. Uh, is, that, is that why I haven't seen a glass of wine yet? I'm 12 hours I know, and I haven't seen you with a glass I'm of wine. I'm going to go over there and I'm going to drink all week. Don't worry. Bye. <laughs> uh, by the way, Mona, uh, excuse me, Paris is an incredible host of her beautiful city. She's going to take you to the best places in that beautiful city of Montreal. It's March, so it might be cold, but uh, there's a lot of beauty in that city. If you've never been to Montreal, you're going to love it. Um, by the way, earlier, I don't know uh, if you noticed, Sarah, or not, but I was asking Isabella, you know, how was your Noru's? And she, like, looked at her mom and looked at me, and she said, uh, I didn't do anything. And it was because... <laughs> She's been here, so I have to apologize to Isabella. I apologize to all the producers. Uh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen who are watching, if we never do a 12-hour <laughs> live stream again, it's because nobody wants to help anymore. So, so I hope you all enjoyed the last 12-hour live stream ever. You guys are lucky this is not the 24-hour live stream. I've done 24-hour <laughs> no, ones. No, no. This is only half. What kind of... You're from another planet, Iman. I don't know how, where you get this will, honestly. I, I am from the <laughs> planet called Loka, Loka, Loka. The Loka, Loka. Uh, so, Hassan Abushin, how, how do you feel? I'm tired. Yeah, yeah go ahead. You want ahead. me to go first, Mona? I feel, I feel, you know, proud. I feel proud. This is not something easy to do. And I feel proud to have been able to contribute in a small way in a short amount of time. And, Big way. You know... Yeah, you know, I, I just, uh, I feel, I feel proud. I feel honored that you guys gave me a platform to have that experience with my dad and my daughter, something I'll never forget. Um, so just a lot of, a lot of emotions and tired is the, the least significant of them. I really do feel honored and, and proud of what we were able to pull off today. Yeah. And, and once again, truly thank you to your father. I mean, he was for sure the cornerstone of this program. Um, I mean, it was like this program for Norus, like he like he touched everything with the sprinkles of poetry for poetry about Iran, poetry about fish. I was hearing that in the background as I was having Sabzi Polo Mahi. I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> this, this poem is about what I'm eating. It's great. Um, and so, I mean, it was just beautiful. And then just him sharing his his uh, his reasoning for what he's doing and then just the connectivity between it's just, it's just beautiful. It's great. And having Mona and Isabella and Mona and Mariam. Uh, it's been it's been pretty pretty amazing having all the facts that Paris spit out. No, and all the day. fact that Paris went through all day despite not having been feeling well and how ill she was feeling, just such a trooper, Paris. Like I, I if you know people don't if people don't know she was just I not know. feeling well at all, and you wouldn't be able to know it if it wasn't <laughs> for the napkin she had wiping, you know, sniffling and doing it on mute. It's just and such a a not, queen not, and not, and not, not a single and not a single complaint yeah exactly yeah. just unbelievable it's wonderful it's a, yeah so any any, uh, any closing words paris and then mona i promise not to cry as much as i usually do i think that's gonna be my resolution i need to get my emotionals i do go to therapy and i get these things out and i get it but especially when I'm in the company of other Iranians and when we're sharing our stories like this, I mean, 
Shiva Sabe, like, she'll share her stories, but, like, they stay with me. Like, I literally think about these experiences that she has, and I internalize them. And I promise not to cry as much. So that's my parting words. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Mona, and then also Shiva is actually trying to come on. So, oh, okay. you, have to, you want to go, Sarah? Yeah, I'll go so okay. she can come. Definitely. I love you guys all. Please, oh, thank please you Please give your dad a big hug on my behalf. Will do. And Sabahun and your mom, too. Oh. 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 Bye, guys. Bye. And then as Sarah June is leaving, going to bring in Shiva no, June. I, uh, go ahead, Mona June. I feel like I'm going to bring in Shiva June. Go ahead, Mona June. I feel extremely uh, proud of not just, you know, the, the contributors of the program, the, the viewers, the ones that stayed on all day long. I see you guys, believe me. Uh, I mean, I don't know how you do it all day long <laughs> but we we love you thank you those that participated the uniters they've been here commenting i see you all um i'm just really proud this is this is who our people are you know and and i mean i know this but for those that are not iranian this is who we are uh so uh supporting each other just amazing, amazing people. I'm, I'm very, very proud to call myself Iranian. Uh, I'm proud to spend my new year with you guys, um, especially the year that I wasn't feeling um, celebratory at all. And so you guys made it bearable for me. Thank you, I appreciate it. I'm not gonna cry, I love you guys. Love it, good morning, John. You know what? What's up? What, I forgot. Maybe it was one of you or one of the guests, but they were saying the only difference between us and those that are fighting for freedom and sacrificing their life is just where they were born. You know, and like that's really what I look at it. I'm like, my goodness gracious! There's a group of fifty, sixty people in Iran that knew each other, but one day one of them is getting killed, the other one is getting raped, the other one's getting tortured, and so like that's why we have to continue to just. Uh, build this group up, find more leaders, get louder, get other organizations, other cities involved so that we can eventually drown them. Uh, Shiva, it's been an incredibly long day for you as well. Uh, would love to hear your closing thoughts. And just like everyone else, I'm incredibly honored to spend the day with all of you. Um, I've seen like everyone that's been on all day and they've been like, you know, part of the conversation. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't want to spend my no rules any other way. Um, maybe not from 11 to 11. I'm feeling it right now, but I still have some energy left. Um, it just reminded me of like, you know, the live stream. I, even though we were done, you know, at the end of it, we all had like a, this boost of energy. Um, this just goes to, you know, as a reminder to everyone that, you know, the conversation will continue. The fight will continue um, until we have a free Iran. This is for everyone in Iran and all of the Iranian outside, um, the Iranian diaspora. And I am so grateful that you have given me a community that I could come and I could share my experience and, you know, have that some of that feeling that I had, you know, celebrating no rules at home in Iran and have some of that feeling um, again. And I'm incredibly honored to be part of this in a small way. We're honored to have, have you a part of it. Um, I just want, want to take a moment. Actually, you know what? If you all don't mind, we I started to, I, I know, I'll, I'll, I'll do it when I'm alone. I was going to do a little moment of silence like I did in the beginning to just kind of honor everybody. But um, I, I'll give you guys an opportunity to share anything else you'd like to share in the last few minutes, any last topic. At 11 o'clock, I'll just do a little intro. So we got five more minutes. I'm open to whatever you you guys would like to talk about can i add for the next because that's our celebrations are for 13 days it's not just one day um and you know no one should tell anyone how to celebrate we're not telling anyone how to celebrate and we know that it's with heavier hearts much heavier hearts this year um but i just keep thinking of those people who are languishing in jails whose names we don't know and whose names we obviously do know. And for us to be 
louder around our celebration and to tie it into this revolution is so important to keep this momentum going. It's not necessarily about no rules, but it's about us triumphing and in keeping our message alive. Just it, that's all it is. You don't have to sing or dance. You don't have to, you know, throw parties and like feature your half scene left, right and center. But you know, I actually was reading that one of our, our ethnicities in Iran, part of their tra traditions for Noruz is after they've had their dinner and after they've, you know, done the presents and all that, they'll go to their cemetery and, and celebrate with their loved ones and pay respect to their loved ones as well. So it doesn't need to be mutually exclusive. We are in, in mourning. And obviously, if you want to celebrate and do your thing, that's great. But those of us, I know, Mona Jr., you're explaining how, like, how, how heavy it is for you this year. But in honor of those we've lost and who lost their lives begging for freedom and for our our right to celebrate and to have these momentous occasions together, let's let's do our best to do it. And Parishan, I promise you that next year there's no fourteen oh three. I will either uh, use the, the correct number or we'll call it something else. Whatever it is, I will run it by you. What am I doing? <laughs> oh, no. And again, we're just sharing those facts. I don't want to, I don't want any of our um, Iranian Muslim compatriots who do recognize 1402 for, for them to feel nullified. All we're saying is that in 1979, when the revolution happened, our clocks were reset. Um, and it's just a lack of recognition for the Islamic revolution. Now, if after the revolution, Iranians are like, no, no, let's keep the state, let's move forward, you know, let's do it. So next year, Imanjun, it'll be up to you. There is no enforcement of any code. We'll see. And, um, and for those of you watching, these three individuals are also the producers for our weekly Countdown to Freedom Iran series. So this Wednesday night, we'll be back in action. It's going to be another great program. It's going to start off with Parashu with the latest news and updates. I'm sure she's got a lot to update us on. Um, and then we're going to have uh, Shiva Jun, you're going to actually be doing your debut on Countdown. So this was kind of like a prelude. Um, so we're going to figure out exactly what the topic is going to be for the United segment. We have Dr. Som, who's going to have a, uh, a, a, um, a health uh, segment. And then we're going to have, um, oh yeah, of course, Chelsea Hart is going to be our special guest in the evening. So 8 p.m. Eastern time this Wednesday, another episode of Countdown to Freedom Iran. It's episode Number 12, which would not be possible without these three amazing ladies and Sari Kazami and Shiva Jahani and, um, and Aida uh, Moifad. And am I missing anybody? Negin. Negin Jun, of course. Negin Jun, yes, of course. Negin Derak uh, And um, yeah, so we're looking forward to Wednesday's program. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we, we wish we had more Chelsea hearts in the world that could be the voice of our people uh, outside the Iranian community. So we get to uh, really thank her for everything she's doing on Wednesday. And so here we are, ladies and gentlemen, I will let you go and enjoy the rest of your Noruz. You have uh, another uh, 61 minutes to enjoy um, tonight's Noruz. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart for, for helping out, truly, all three of you, and Sare, and, um, and it's it's just been a it's been a wild ride. Thank you to Mariam June. I hope she made it safe to Houston. I think is where she was going. So I uh, appreciate y'all very much. And I hope that this year is the year that we see freedom in Iran too. So that all this chasiki, all this work, will be all for a good reason. Thank you, Iman June. We love you. Yes. Love you too. Thank you, Iman June, for, for these yes. twelve hours, as nutty as they are. Pa Paris and Mona have a great time in Montreal. Father uh, Fasfado. Can I wait to see those pictures? Take care. Oh, and you're gonna have a fun time <laughs> oh, getting to know yes. Isabella too. Have fun. In for a trip. Can't wait. It's gonna be. Bye, bye, bye. 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 So it's 11 o'clock, and I have the distinguished pleasure of doing a closing 11 minutes, and I figured I'll end it with a prosecco as I figure out exactly what to say to to end this evening and. I really would like to say, uh, I want to give my my love and my thanks to um, to everybody watching. That's part one. You all made this program uh, memorable.
horrible because really it was all for all of us. So if there was nobody watching, then it wouldn't have the same impact. So I know that in and out there were a couple thousand people that came. So thank you so much for that. Um, it just made it worthwhile because if you weren't here watching and tuning in and sharing and commenting, then then what are we doing it for? You know. So you really made us realize that um, that this is important what we're doing. That when we're looking for ways and creative ways and impactful ways to to do something for our people, that this works. You know, yes, we're not reaching millions of people, but in our capacity, this is uh, for us. This is progress. So thank you so much for um, spreading the word about the event, for coming and for commenting and joining and just being a part of our community. Thank you. And um, as always, whatever type of feedback that you have, please share it with me. Please always drop it in the comments. We're 100% committed to improving all elements of what we're doing at Unite and Conquer. This is by us, for us, you know? And so as a result, um, if our community is not benefiting, then we're not doing something right. And we should be corrected. We should be um, guided uh, because we have a bunch of really amazing people that are committed to being of service to our community. And so we're always listening. We're always reading. And we're always welcoming of constructive feedback. So please uh, don't ever be shy. Thank you. And once again, thank you to the amazing Sexy Mexi uh, Notice crew, uh, individuals that decided to step up on short notice and spending uh, really all of their um, notice to be with us. Uh, from Mariam Aronson to Mona Ayri to Paris Mansuri to Sarah Kazumi to Shiva Saber. Uh, really, you all went above and beyond. And again, I'm sincerely sorry that it took up so much more uh, time and, and work to make this happen. But I hope that as tired as you are, that your cup was filled with, with more hope and optimism, that we have an incredible community that is really ready to fight harder, louder, and is more energized than ever before. So if you ever had an ounce of doubt that things are dying down, that you are reminded today that nothing has died down, that we have some awesome revolutionaries that are uh, ready and willing to do everything and anything um, to take over uh, the regime and take back our country so we can go celebrate in our country, so we can go explore our country, so we can go eat our food, so we can go dance in our country, so we can go and, and, and go to all the bars of our country, so we can celebrate weddings in our countries. Um, so we can raise children in our country, so we can learn our language in our country, so we can appreciate the arts and the poetry in our country. You know what I mean? This is all that this freaking regime stripped of us. 99%, if you, if you really paid attention to all the guests that were here, most of them have never been to Iran. If they've been, it's been once or twice. They haven't spent no rules there. Yet look at all that they're fighting for. They're fighting for it because they realize that something was stripped away from them. And sometimes we don't realize it until we're 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 years old. That, Holy shit, our identity was stolen. <laughs> our culture has been stripped from us. They're taking away our, our rights, our liberties. The things that you, know, you appreciate life for has been taken away. There's so many people that uh, they haven't met their grandparents, their aunt, uncles, their some people haven't seen their children in years. I mean, it's just, it's just horrible. And then add to the fact all the tortures, the killings, the blinding, the raping, the the the, the kidnapping, the um, the list goes on and on. I feel like I've repeated all those things, but you know all the atrocities that are happening. And so, like, we cannot turn our cheeks to that. We have to really just look at it straight face to face and fight it and beat it. It's like David and Goliath, you know, and like we are the little ones, but we're a lot of little ones that will make it much bigger than what we're dealing with right now. So we just have to continue to strategize. We need to work harder, smarter, um, and, and just get creative. And, um, and lastly, or second to last, I want to take a moment uh, and send my love and my respect and my gratitude to especially my shirzan of a mother, Mahina Ushman, to my shirzan of a sister, so Gula Afshar Javan, and um, and also I want to thank my my niece 
Francis Dorsa and my uncle uh, Dai Beruz for for essentially having to experience Noruz without me being present, which I felt very very bad. Um, that I wasn't able to really spend this Noruz with them to the degree that I probably should, especially considering that this is the first Noruz without my father. Um, and that leads me to the last part. Um, you know, I lost my father on July 7th, 2022, and Pavis Hushband was, um, was, was a, a class act of a gentleman. Uh, he was an incredible father. He was a loving uh, husband to my mother. Um, just an incredible family member to his siblings. Um, a caring and devoted son. Uh, one of the kindest human beings who really would, um, would really, he, can't, he couldn't even watch action movies. If there was any kind of crime, if there was any shootings, if there was any killings, he literally could not watch it. He would get up. The only time he would get upset is if there was yelling or if there was uh, something on TV that was just not pleasant. That's how how fragile of a human being that he was. Yet he was such a strong force as far as a loving human being. And um, I dedicated this to my father. I de dedicate this to anybody that has. Uh, been spending this Noruz without their mother, without their father, without somebody that is extremely, extremely important to them. You know, at the end of the day, our, our time on this earth is really just but a few seconds. And so we're all coming and we're all going. But it is very hard to lose uh, a lo loving um human being that uh, has, has played a profound role in your life. And so considering that the greatest loss that I've experienced in my life has been my father, I know that uh, there's others that have also experienced it. I understand that my uh, experience is not unique, but I, that's why I always like to remind people that I understand your pain. I understand your heartbreak. Um, and I know that at times it's just so damn hard to understand and really grasp uh, that this person is no longer there. And so, so the only thing that I've been trying to do in the past um, uh, eight or nine months since the passing of my father is to really just make him proud, to remember him, to honor him, to believe that he is with me and with my family uh, in spirit. And that, that he's like, like rooting for me. And so if I, I've been doing uh, things that Unite and Conquer, just know that there's this spirit behind me <laughs> or in front of me or above me. That is my father. And so Unite and Conquer is, my, is, is like his legacy that I'm trying to um, continue. Because I really think that Iranians, they need this. Um, I, don't, I don't know why something like this doesn't exist, but I know that something like United Conquer needs to exist. And I know that there's got to be a lot of improvements to it to get it to the place I want. And it's going to need a lot of support. And so I just want to thank you all for all the support, whether you're a uniter or a viewer or any way, other way that you've supported. Thank you so much for being a believer. And that's really all we need. We need to believe. We need to have faith. We need to have hope. And if we do, then United and Conquer will be amazing. Our community will be amazing. And then the Iran that we all yearn to see free, it will come to fruition. With that in mind, and it almost being 11, 11 p.m. Eastern time, thank you so much for joining the celebration of Noruz. Thank you so much for believing that Iran will be free and we just have to do this one final push. So in whatever capacity that you can, Please give as much as you can, because as you saw with all the guests today, you saw a whole variety of individuals doing everything in their unique ways. So just do whatever you can, and just know that the United and Conquer family is here to support you in whatever you need.
به امید آزادی 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 